The opening scene is daytime at the Lushun Sword Sect in the Fengyue continent. The scenery here is picturesque with mountains and landscapes full of life. On the cliffs are ancient architectural structures, accompanied by cranes soaring in the sky. These things make others inevitably imagine the phrase immortal realm. At this moment, at the Taoist array of the sword array, there is a woman wearing ancient costume standing opposite a young man also wearing ancient costume. Strangely, this young man is not standing but sitting, leaning against the rock platform behind his back. The woman suddenly adopts an extremely demeanor and introduces herself as Diaoxin. She discovers that the young man before her is the rare Jiuyang Jinganti and silently thanks the gods for blessing her. Diaoxin approaches the young man in front of her in a posture that cannot be more suggestive. She raises her hand to caress the young man's face and expresses regret for being one step too late. She wonders who would have wasted such a handsome young hero like this. It turns out Diaoxin is the sect leader of the Hwan sect. No wonder she is so bold. And the unfortunate young man's name is Tiaoja. Diaoxin slowly removes Tiaoja's clothes, wanting to practice dual cultivation with him while his body is still warm. At this moment, Tiaoja suddenly opens his eyes. He panicked and shouted, asking where this was and what the girl in front of him intended to do to him, while on the other side, Diaoxin was also extremely flustered and blushed in embarrassment. Tiaoja wondered if he wasn't just opening a blind box at home. So how did he suddenly end up in this situation? Tiaoja recalled that earlier, he received a blind box worth $9.9 .9 on Shopee. In his memory, the delivery person gave him a friendly smile and handed him the blind box. Tiaoja took a box cutter and opened the box. Inside the box appeared a mysterious Azure portal. Tiaoja's eyes lit up, thinking it was a 3D hologram, so he reached out to touch it. He was suddenly alarmed when he felt an extremely powerful suction force from what he thought was a 3D hologram. His whole body was pulled into the blind box, he shouted wait a minute, but it was too late. Back to the present, Tiaoja wondered if he had really crossed into another world. A sudden headache appeared, causing him to hold his head. As for Diaoxin, she maintained her suggestive posture on top of Tiaoja. A stream of memories flooded into Tiaoja's head. From those memories, he learned that the owner of this body shared the same surname and name as him. And this body was an outer disciple of the Lushun Sword Sect in the Fengyue continent. Today, the Lushun Sword Sect was besieged by evil cultivators attacking the Mountain Gate. The Mountain Protection Grand Array could not be activated. So Tiaoja in this world went to check the array formation behind the mountain. Unfortunately, during that process, he was assassinated. As for Tiaoja from the modern world, after being sucked into the blind box, he crossed over into this body. After being startled, Diaoxin regained her composure and excitedly told Tiaoja to feel free to shout. Even if he shouted until his throat was hoarse, it would be useless. She affirmed that today, she would definitely devour Tiaoja. Diaoxin's attitude and words made Tiaoja a little overwhelmed. He panicked, exclaiming that he never expected to cross over right when the original body's owner was being molested. Diaoxin displayed a seductive demeanor, saying she wanted to drain Tiaoja dry today and told him to be afraid and tremble. Upon hearing this, Tiaoja's attitude did a 180 degree turn. He put on the most indecent, joyful expression, wondering if there could be anything better than this. Witnessing Tiaoja's rapid change of face, Diaoxin was momentarily stunned. At this moment, a voice rang out from above, Demoness, look at this, accompanied by a sword flying towards Diaoxin. Annoyed at being interrupted during her excitement, Diaoxin glanced behind her with displeasure. A pink silk ribbon blocked the incoming sword the two colliding and sparking. At this point, Diaoxin had left Tiaoja's body. She turned towards the incoming sword, with an annoyed expression, asking who dared to interrupt her good time. Then, a delicate white hand grabbed Tiaoja's collar. He once again fell into panic, wondering who was pulling his collar and dragging him away. The one pulling Tiaoja's collar was a girl named Lu Shang, an inner disciple of the Lu Shun sword sect. Lu Shang reassured Tiaoja, telling him not to be afraid, as she came to rescue him. Diaoxin watched as Lu Shang dragged Tiaoja away, loudly threatening that they couldn't escape, because the evil cultivators would soon destroy the Lushun sword sect. Diaoxin smiled triumphantly, secretly thinking that the man she had her eyes on would definitely not escape her grasp. Lu Shang turned and informed Tiaoja that the evil cultivators were attacking the mountain gate, and her senior brother instructed her to retreat and guard the sword pavilion. Tiaoja was now scared, clinging to Lu Zhang's leg and panicking, telling her to fly steadily. In the sky above the Lushun Sword Sect's sword pavilion, 
three groups of people appeared. In the middle was a group of women in pink attire. On the left was a group dressed mainly in white, and on the right was a group wearing black cloaks. All three groups were riding swords in flight. The leader of the women in pink attire was none other than Diaoxin. She now spoke up, threatening the Lushun sword sect to surrender quickly. If they surrendered, they would be spared from death, but if not, they would be killed regardless of their crimes. As Diaoxin finished speaking, the disciples of the Lushun sword sect below began to make a commotion. During the commotion, a pair of feet appeared at the sword pavilion of the Lushun sword sect, none other than Lu Shang bringing Tiao Zha. Lu Shang, with a sorrowful expression, informed the disciples that the three major evil sects had joined forces to attack the Lushun sword sect. The array formation of the Zushun sword array had been destroyed. This time, the Lushun sword sect was in grave peril. Upon hearing the dire news from Lu Shang, the faces of the Lushun sword sect disciples turned grim, except for Tiao Zha, who seemed to have motion sickness and was dazed. Lu Shang turned to Tiao Zha with a sorrowful gaze and said the evil cultivators would soon attack, telling him to prepare to die together. Hearing this, Tiao Zha could hardly believe what he had just heard. Die? He had just crossed over and now he was being asked to die already. He lamented his misfortune, crossing over into the body of a disciple about to be annihilated. Tiao Zha cried out in resentment, thinking it would be more comfortable to just let Diao Xin drain him dry. At this moment, a male disciple stepped forward, pointing his sword to the sky with a heroic tone telling the Lushun sword sect disciples that the mountain gate has been breached, the grand array has been destroyed, the enemy is overwhelming. The destruction of the Lushun sword sect is an inevitable fate. This young man named Ming Kong was the senior disciple of the Lushun sword sect. He now continued, saying that this was the will of heaven, unavoidable no matter what. Ming Kong turned to address the female disciples, saying the evil cultivators were brutal, acting worse than beasts. If they fell into their hands while still alive, the female cultivators would be trampled upon death being preferable to living. Standing behind Lu Shang was Tiao Zha, who listened to Ming Kong's words with an expressionless face, as he was not a woman. Lu Shang, however, had an unyielding will, preferring death over surrender. Ming Kong then addressed the male disciples, saying the evil cultivators viewed them as playthings, be drained of their young essence until death. Hearing this, the male disciples were enraged, cursing the evil cultivators as despicable. Upon hearing this, Tiao just smirked, thinking that even in death, they might not be spared by these evil cultivators. At this moment, Ming Kong, with a resolute demeanor, told the disciples that for the glory of the Lushun sword sect, for the dignity of the righteous path, they would never surrender. After saying this, he shouted the slogan, Death Before Dishonor. The disciples, their martial spirits raised, repeated Ming Kong's slogan, Death Before Dishonor. Seeing this, Tiao just stroked his chin, wondering why they didn't scatter and break through the enemy's encirclement. Instead of scattering to break through, they were rushing to die together. Suddenly, Lu Shang pointed her sword at Tiao Zha, saying that to prevent him from being trampled by the evil cultivators, she would liberate him right now. Tiao Zha panicked, thinking Lu Shang didn't speak human language. Suddenly, a mechanical sound rang out, it was the system notification. Tiao Zha had activated the blind box registration system. A system panel appeared with a notification asking if Tiao Zha agreed to log in at the sword pavilion position. In the system space, Tiao Zha was overjoyed, as he had finally activated the system that most transmigrators had. Without hesitation, Tiao Zha pressed agree, his divine moment was finally about to arrive. Tiao Zha's eyes sparkled in anticipation of the miracle the system would bring. In the outer space, Lu Zhang's sword was approaching Tiao Zha's body. Lu Shang consoled Tiao Zha, saying that after he ascended, she would follow him soon. Inside the system space, Tiao Zha was stroking his chin, staring intently at the blue box in front of him. He secretly hoped the blind box would contain something from the 21st century. He really didn't want to die so soon after transmigrating. Tiao Zha's eyes were fixed on the blue box. Suddenly, the system voice sounded, announcing that the item inside the blind box was the Katsuya triple-barreled rocket launcher experience package of the highest rarity level. As the system voice sounded, a triple-barreled rocket launcher appeared before Tiao Zha, making his eyes light up. After seeing the triple-barreled rocket launcher, Tiao Zha confidently said that with such a formidable weapon, the defeat of those evil cultivators was certain. Lu Zhang's expression was one of astonishment, wondering if the formidable weapon Tiao Zha mentioned was some ancient celestial weapon. Ming Kong's face was covered in sweat, puzzled how Tiao Zha, a mere fourth-level qi cultivator, 
could possess a celestial weapon. The group of evil cultivators charged forward to attack the disciples of the Lushun Sword sect, saying if they refused to surrender, they would all die. Led by Diaoxin, she taunted Tiaoja, Little darling, I'm coming for you. Seeing this, the Lushun Sword sect disciples panicked crying out it's not good, the evil cultivators are here. Ming Kong was equally flustered, urging the disciples to quickly commit suicide instead of descending into chaos. At this moment, Tiao Zhe grasped the crank of the triple-barreled rocket launcher, rambling about the three Galilean tribunals, not believing in God but in science. He declared he would show the evil cultivators the power of science. After his rambling, Tiao Zhe shouted triple rocket barrage. Following his shout, a barrage of rockets flew from the launcher towards the evil cultivators. The evil cultivators, seeing the barrage of projectiles heading towards them, were astonished. Some wondered what these things were, questioning if it was a sword formation. One of them suddenly leapt into the air, catching a projectile with his bare hands, a smug look on his face. He scoffed, thinking the projectile was nothing formidable, merely that. He arrogantly tried to crush it with his hands, boasting, let me crush you. As he finished speaking, the projectile exploded, killing him instantly. The Lushun Sword Sect disciples witnessing this were utterly astonished. Unable to fathom how a Zuji cultivator could be instantly reduced to ashes, the evil cultivators, seeing this scene and the continuing barrage, were panic-stricken. They deemed Tiaoja's tactics exceedingly cruel, questioning who the real evil cultivators were. Some even doubted if this was the legendary true immortal sword formation. The explosions from the projectile barrage caused havoc among the evil cultivators, dropping them like flies. Witnessing this, Tiao Zhe apologized to the evil cultivators, saying he only did this for survival. Meanwhile, Ming Kong was overjoyed to tears, hugging a nearby disciple, exclaiming, fellow disciples, we're not dead, we're alive. He cried out joyfully. Witnessing the power of the triple-barreled rocket launcher, the evil cultivators turned and fled believing the true immortal sword formation had been activated. They urged each other to run for their lives. Deep Tam also thought they had fallen into a trap, urging everyone to flee quickly. After the evil cultivators left, the Lushun Sword Sect regained peace. At this time, in the scripture pavilion where the sect's martial arts were stored, Ming Kong, with a radiant smile, explained to Tiaoja that normally outer disciples were not allowed in the scripture pavilion, but due to Tiaoja's great merit, he was rewarded with permission to enter and study the secret manuals. Tiaoja turned and thanked Ming Kong. Then, Ming Kong went outside, closed the door, and placed a seal on the scripture pavilion's entrance. Ming Kong turned to Lu Shang, who had been waiting outside, and told her to send a message to her master. The message conveyed that Tiaoja had been taken hostage by evil cultivators, urging her master to return quickly. Lu Shang replied that she had sent the message, adding that in about half an hour, her master and the sect leader would return. Tiaoja, overhearing the conversation between Lu Shang and Ming Kong, was puzzled by their mention of being taken hostage. A second later, he reacted. Tiaoja panicked, not expecting his secret to be discovered so quickly by others. He frantically went to the door, banging on it and shouting for Ming Kong and Lu Shang to let him out, saying he didn't want to play anymore and wanted to go home. Lu Shang drew her sword slightly. She was angered by Tiaoja's loud shouting and unwillingness to accept his situation. Lu Shang threatened Tiaoja, saying whether he was a demon or a ghost, if he dared to take her fellow disciple hostage, she would definitely kill him. After a bout of banging and shouting, Tiaoja realized the door had been sealed. He was like a fish in a bowl, a bird in a cage, unable to escape. Tiaoja calmed himself, telling himself not to panic. He opened the system window and reasoned that this world had no science, only cultivation. So it was no wonder Ming Kong and Lu Shang thought he was practicing evil arts when he wielded the triple-barreled Katsuya rocket launcher. Since the Katsuya was just an experience package that disappeared after use, he had no way to explain it to Lu Shang. Tiao just stroked his chin and concluded that everything was due to the blind box. If he could reopen the interdimensional rift that brought him here, he could return to the 21st century. At this moment, the system notification sounded. A message appeared stating that it had detected his login location as the restricted scripture pavilion. It asked if the host wished to log in. Tiao Zhe joyfully pressed yes and affectionately addressed the system, praising it effusively. The system then notified that the restricted blind box contained three items, the heavenly ranked true immortal sword manual, the heavenly ranked nine swords of Lushun, and a top ranked space rain. Tiao Zhe was displeased to not see an interdimensional rift, silently cursing the system for toying with him. 
He put on the space ring and admired it, deeming it useful and convenient for travel without needing a huge bag. Suddenly, he remembered his current priority was finding a way to escape. Tiaojia picked up the Nine Swords of Lushun and flipped through it, accessing the original host's memories. He discovered these two manuals seemed very important. He sat down and began cultivating. Suddenly, two yellow beams of light shot from the manuals into Tiaojia's head, and a mystical blue aura enveloped his body. In the sky, three figures on swords flew towards the Lushun sect. Ming Kong, seeing them from below, recognized them as the sect leader and two elders. These three were highly respected figures in the Lushun sword sect. The three who had just arrived were the most revered elders of the sect. Ming Kong clasped his hands in greeting to his master and the two elders. The old man with a beard, wearing red robes, was named Shi Chiang Zi. He was the sect leader of the Lushun sword sect and Ming Kong's master. The beautiful elderly woman in pink robes was named Wei Jiu Zi. She was the pill cultivation elder of the sect. The middle-aged man with slight dark circles was named Kong Shu Zi. He was the sword cultivation elder of the Lushun sword sect. Shi Chiang Zi asked Ming Kong where the disciple who helped repel the evil cultivators was. He considered that disciple incredibly talented and wanted to pass the sect's legacy to him making him the future sect leader. Ming Kong replied that Tiaojia was only at the fourth level of qi condensation, yet could wield demonic energy to slaughter indiscriminately. He suspected Tiaojia might have been possessed by evil cultivators, so he temporarily deceived and imprisoned him in the scripture pavilion. Shi Chiang Zi was astonished to hear from Ming Kong that Tiaojia was possessed by evil cultivators and had demonic energy. Wei Jiu Zi commented that Ming Kong did the right thing, as the scripture pavilion was restricted, only orthodox cultivators could enter freely. Shi Chiang Zi and the two elders went to the scripture pavilion. At the door, Shi Chiang Zi kicked it open and shouted, Evil cultivator, you and I cannot coexist under the same sky. At this moment, Tiao Zhou was still sitting in cultivation. With his eyes closed, he told Shi Chiang Zi to be quiet. Then Tiao Zhou opened his eyes, annoyed, and continued, saying that he had helped Shi Chiang Zi and the others drive away powerful enemies, protecting the sect. Yet they repaid his kindness with resentment, falsely accusing him of being an evil cultivator. Tiao Zhe said he had never met anyone as shameless as Shi Chiang Zi and the others. At this, Wei Jiu Zi formed a hand seal, intending to read Tiao Zhe's mind and determine if he was truly an evil cultivator or not. A stream of spiritual energy flew from Wei Jiu Zi towards Tiao Zhe, enveloping his body. Wei Jiu Zi saw in Tiao Zhe's memories a scene of him watching a movie about a pig. Tiao Zhe did not resist, anxiously awaiting the result. Wei Jiu Zi's expression turned horrified as she pointed at Tiao Zhe, confirming he was possessed. And moreover, she saw a scene of people practicing martial arts without clothes. Kong Shu Zi's eyes lit up, suspecting the scene Wei Jiu Zi witnessed in Tiao Zhe's memories was the harmonious union replenishing Yang technique. Tiao Zhe silently cursed that those vulgar novels were all deceptive, feigning ignorance could not hide the truth. At this, Shi Chiang Zi drew his sword towards Tiao Zhe, shouting loudly, Evil cultivator, I will kill you. Facing Shi Chiang Zi's sharp blade, Tiao Zhe let out a light chuckle. His expression suddenly turned solemn as he questioned Shi Chiang Zi's group, asking when he had denied possessing this body. Shi Chiang Zi gritted his teeth in anger when Tiao Zhe blatantly claimed to have possessed the body of a disciple from his sect. Tiao Zhe pushed Shi Chiang Zi's sword aside and explained that when he descended, this body was already dead. He was merely borrowing the soulless husk, not possessing it. He turned around, hands clasped behind his back, with an imposing manner, stating that his descent into this body was a blessing for both the body and the Lushun sword sect. Shi Chiang Zi's group looked exasperated. Shi Chiang Zi silently cursed, realizing he had been deceived. Meanwhile, Wei Jiu Zi thought to herself that Tiao Zhe's commanding aura was overwhelming like a noble tree withstanding the wind, not at all like an evil cultivator. She speculated that Tiao Zhe might be a great cultivator who had failed in transcendence and thus possessed another's body, becoming a fallen immortal cultivating from the beginning again. Hearing this, Shi Chiang Zi panicked and knelt down, never dreaming that Tiao Zhe could be a fallen immortal elder. As for Tiao Zhe, he thought to himself that this was Wei Jiu Zi's own conjecture, as he had not said anything. Suddenly, Kong Shu Zi pointed out a flaw in Wei Jiu Zi's reasoning, explaining that after the Celestial Demon War 8,000 years ago on the continent of Feng Yue, martial arts had been lost, and spiritual energy was almost non-existent, making the existence of immortals a distant dream. Kong Shu Zi continued to question, for a thousand years, no great cultivator has achieved transcendence, so how could a fallen immortal elder appear now? 
Hearing this, Tiaojia was utterly panicked, silently cursing Kang Shuzi's mother for speculating in such a situation. Shi Qiongzi drew his sword again, complaining that drawing it repeatedly had made him very tired. But to slay an evil cultivator, he had no choice. At this, Wei Jiu Zi stood in front of Tiaojia, reasoning that Tiaojia had achieved transcendence in the immortal realm so those in the mortal world would not know. She said she had a plan to verify if Tiaojia was truly a fallen immortal elder. Shi Qiongzi frowned and asked what Wei Jiuzi's plan was. The scene shifted to the pill refining room of the Lushun Sword Sect. In the pill refining room, Wei Jiuzi explained her plan was to have Tiaojia refine a righteous qi pill as only orthodox cultivators could refine such a pill. Wei Jiu Zi added that evil cultivators could not refine righteous qi pills due to limitations in their cultivation methods and mental state. So no matter how high an evil cultivator's cultivation base, they could never refine a righteous qi pill. So she believed that if Tiaojia could refine the righteous qi pill, it would prove his identity as a fallen immortal. Hearing this, Tiaojia tensed up and asked what if he couldn't refine it. At that moment, Shi Qiangzi suddenly shouted, get into formation. Upon Shi Qiangzi's command, the members of the Lushun Sword Sect immediately took up combat stances, ready to attack at any moment. Tiaojia let out a panicked I understand, realizing that if he failed to refine the righteous qi pill, he would be cooking meals instead. The sect members went outside, slammed the door shut, and shouted in that Tiaojia had only one hour to refine the pill, urging him to hurry up. Tiaojia crossed his arms and puffed out his cheeks in a sulking manner. He cursed the original owner of this body for being useless, with only a good physique but no real skills. He didn't even remember the formula for refining the righteous qi pill. Tiaojia tossed some herbs into the cauldron, unsure if he was doing it correctly, only following the original owner's vague memories. After a while, black smoke started billowing from the cauldron. Seeing this, Tiaojia's eyes widened in shock, silently cursing the Lushun sword sect for being too clever. With the original owner's cultivation level, only a fallen immortal possessing the body could possibly refine a righteous qi pill. Tiaojia slumped to his knees on the ground, tears streaming down his face. Even controlling the fire for pill refining was an immense challenge for him. Suddenly, the system notification appeared, indicating a possible login location had been detected, which was the pill refining room, a restricted area. Log in or not? Seeing the system notification, Tiaojia breathed a sigh of relief, confidently saying, what's so difficult when the system is here to help? He then pressed the yes button. Tiaojia stroked his chin, pondering, finally realizing the system's mechanism. As long as he changed locations, he could log in and open the mysterious box. The system notification showed that the restricted area's mysterious box contained two items. The celestial pill recipe, a heavenly grade item, and the primordial righteous qi pill, a top grade item. Seeing the notification, Tiao just slapped the system angrily and cursed, claiming the system was tricking him. What he needed was the righteous qi pill, not the primordial righteous qi pill. Tiao Jia thought he was doomed this time. At that moment, the door to the pill refining room opened, and Shi Qiangzi's group announced that the time was up. They inquired about Tiao Jia's pill refining progress. Seeing the black smoke billowing from the cauldron, Kang Shu Zi assumed Tiao Jia had failed in refining the pill. He deemed no further words were needed and wanted to execute Tiao Jia. Shi Qiang Zi drew his sword, pointing it at Tiao Jia and affirming he was an evil cultivator, intending to kill him with one strike. But his sword struck the blind box Tiao Jia was holding, causing the pills inside to scatter out. Seeing the scattered pills, Shi Qiang Zi's eyes lit up with astonishment and confusion. Tiao Jia laughed, saying these were the pills he had refined. He admitted making a slight mistake, as what he refined was the primordial righteous qi pill instead. Hoping Shi Qiang Zi's group would be lenient, Shi Qiang Kong Zi's mouth hung open in shock, unable to believe these were the top grade spirit pills, the primordial righteous qi pills. Seeing their reactions, Tiao Jia innocently wondered if the primordial righteous qi pill was better than the regular righteous qi pill. Wei Jiu Zi hurriedly explained that the primordial righteous qi pill was not only better than the regular one, but it was the highest grade version of the righteous qi pill. She said the regular righteous qi pill should call the primordial one great great grandfather. Wei Jiu Zi added that on the Phoenix Moon continent, those capable of refining the primordial righteous qi pill could be counted on one's fingers. And someone who could refine so many primordial primordial righteous qi pills within an hour was an extremely rare occurrence throughout history. At this moment, Shi Qiangzi's group hurriedly paid respects to Tiaojia, 
confirming that he was indeed a fallen immortal elder. As for Tiaoja, he breathed a sigh of relief, having finally escaped this calamity. The scene then shifted to another location within the Lushun Sword Sect, where there was a very grand-looking chair. Surrounding Liu Shang were two female disciples with ample busts and backsides, waiting to serve Tiaoja. Shi Qiangzi respectfully invited Tiaoja to take a seat on the chair. Tiaoja's nostrils flared, and he smiled broadly, giving a humble thumbs up, telling everyone not to be so courteous. After the arrangements were settled, Shi Qiang Zi went outside, putting his arms around Wei Jiu Zi and Kang Shu Zi, joyfully saying, The descent of a fallen immortal is a blessing for our Lushun sword sect. This is an opportunity for us to raise our heads among the righteous sects. Hearing this, Wei Jiu Zi's expression became pensive, stating that a fallen immortal was a terrifying existence, close to ascending to true immortality. Kang Shu Zi excitedly interrupted, saying that the Lushun Sword Sect might soon have to change its name to the Lushun Immortal Sect. Wei Jiu Zi's expression turned worried as she continued, the ancient texts record that fallen immortals usually cultivate within immortal abodes. Wei Jiu Zi feared that Tiaoja might not stay at their sect for too long. She stammered for a moment, then said, unless we invite Tiaoja to become the master of our sword valley. Hearing Wei Jiu Zi's words, Shi Qiang Zi's expression darkened as he shouted, no way. He pointed at Wei Jiu Zi and went on a rant, scolding her that the sword valley was a forbidden area of the Lushun sword sect. With the sect rules clearly stating that no one except the sect leader was allowed to enter. Yet Wei Jiu Zi wanted to invite Tiaoja to become the master of the sword valley which was tantamount to asking Shi Qiang Zi to destroy his own sect. After saying that, Shi Qiang Zi punched Wei Jiu Zi's chest. Kang Shu Zi pondered from the side. This time, the evil cultivators attacked the Lushun Sword Sect precisely because of the Sword Valley. Even the spirit formation at the entrance of the Sword Valley had been destroyed by those evil cultivators. Kang Shu Zi added that the Sword Valley was where ancient immortal swords were buried, including immortal aura. Their sect's founding ancestor had also secluded himself in this sword valley for a hundred days, and upon emerging, he established the Lushun sword sect that exists to this day. Shi Qiangzi sternly stated that the Sword Valley was a treasure trove of their ancestral heritage left by their founder, and they absolutely could not let it fall into the hands of others. After saying that, Shi Qiangzi turned to berate himself for his foolish nature, unable to break the Sword Valley's restrictions. Otherwise, the Lushun Sword Sect would have become the Lushun Immortal Sect long ago. As he spoke, he suddenly became alarmed, suspecting that Tiaoja might have chosen to possess one of their sect's disciples precisely because he was interested in the Sword Valley. Hearing Shi Qiang Zi's suspicion, Wei Jiu Zi and Kang Shu Zi also seemed to have just realized this possibility. The two of them gave Shi Qiang Zi a thumbs up, praising his perspicacity. Shi Qiang Zi clenched his fists angrily, saying that if Tiaoja dared to scheme for the Sword Valley, he would risk his life tonight to utterly destroy Tiaoja both physically and spiritually. The scene shifted to the room Shi Qiang Zi had prepared for Tiaoja earlier. Liu Shang now had a dejected look as she massaged his shoulders. At his feet, a red-haired girl knelt, massaging his legs, while above, a girl with light purple hair fanned Tiaoja. Tiaoja himself sat leisurely on the chair, looking extremely satisfied. He opened the system window to check where the next login location would be. The system displayed the main mission login information. The location was the Sword Valley, a secret realm level, with a mission duration of three days. Seeing the words secret realm level, Tiaoja's eyes lit up. He silently deduced that if it was in forbidden realm level, he would receive the Katsuyu triple barrel rocket launcher item. For a prohibited realm level, the reward would be a heavenly secret manual and top grade spirit pills. So for a secret realm level, the reward must be even more formidable, but the difficulty would also increase accordingly. At this moment, three people were approaching Tiaoja. It was Shi Qiang Zi's group. Seeing the three of them, Tiaoja cheerfully said that they arrived at the perfect time, as he wanted to inquire about something from them. Shi Qiang Zi's group respectfully paid respects to Tiaoja. Shi Qiang Zi, representing them, said they were willing to accept Tiaoja as their supreme guest. This meant Tiaoja could utilize all the Lushun Sword Sect's resources and did not need to listen to anyone's orders. Hearing this, Liu Shang panicked and quickly covered her mouth to prevent any words from slipping out, while Tiaoja did not know what a supreme guest was. He asked Shi Qiang Zi's group curiously if it meant he would be the senior guest elder. Shi Qiang Zi explained to Tiaoja that a supreme guest was not a senior guest elder, but a position solely for Tiaoja. 
higher than all the elders in the sect. Hearing this, Tiao just smiled happily, saying that having free food and accommodation was not bad. Lia Shang looked a bit speechless, thinking to herself that for an outer sect disciple to suddenly become a supreme guest, second only to the sect leader, yet Tiao Zhe merely said it was not bad. Tiao Zhe suppressed his smile and accepted the position of supreme guest. Shi Qiong Zi's group was delighted to hear this. Shi Qiong Zi praised Tiao Zhe for being unrestrained and having character saying he really liked that. He declared they would hold a celebratory banquet today and not leave until they were drunk. Kong Shu Zi also chimed in joyfully. He said it felt great to be on equal footing with Tiao Zhe. Otherwise, he would have to look at his junior's face and respectfully address him as senior all day long, which would be really unnatural. As for Wei Jiu Zi, she noticed that Tiao Zhe had wanted to inquire about a location earlier. She respectfully invited Tiao Zhe to state the name of the place, assuring that if they knew it, they would absolutely not hide anything. Hearing this, Tiao Zhe leaned back casually and calmly asked about the location of the Sword Valley. He even said he wanted to enter it for a few days of secluded cultivation. Upon hearing Tiao Zhe's words, Shi Qiang Zi's group looked alarmed and were rendered speechless. Finally, the situation they had most feared had come to pass. Kong Shu Zi gestured for everyone to take up battle formations. All those present in the room immediately drew their swords, pointing them at Tiao Zhe, ready to attack at any moment. Tiao Zhe slowly approached Shi Qiang Zi silently cursing this group for scaring him nearly to death countless times. If they wanted to hack and kill, they should just do it quickly, for his frail and weak heart had grown too weary. Shi Qiang Zi angrily charged at Tiao Zhe, gritting his teeth as he said, You dare dream of the Sword Valley? Kill. No mercy. At that very moment, a secret manual dropped from Tiao Zhe's body. Seeing the words Immortal Cultivation Manual written on it, Shi Qiang Zi's eyes looked like they were about to pop out of their sockets in alarm. But Tiao Zhe's expression was somewhat disdainful. In fact, he had deliberately dropped that secret manual earlier to bribe Shi Qiang Zi. Picking up the Immortal Cultivation Manual, Shi Qiang Zi became so emotional that he cried. This was the lost manual from 8,000 years ago of the Lushun Sword Sect, and he never expected it to finally return to his hands. Shi Qiang Zi felt he was the pride of his ancestors and the one who would revive the glory of the Lushun sword sect. Depressing his emotions, Shi Qiang Zi turned to pay his greatest respects to Tiao Zhe. He begged Tiao Zhe's forgiveness for his earlier rudeness and acknowledged that from today onwards, Tiao Zhe was the master of the Sword Valley. Kong Shu Zi, standing beside him, witnessed the scene speechlessly. Kong Shu Zi firmly stated that he did not agree to Tiao Zhe becoming the master of the Sword Valley. His expression turned solemn as he reasoned that as the sword discipline elder, he oversaw the sect's sword arts and had the authority to supervise the sect leader. He further explained that the Sword Valley was a forbidden ground of the Lushun Sword Sect. So how could it be casually handed over to an outsider? At that moment, another secret manual dropped, with the words Nine Swords of Lushun written on it. Seeing this, Kong Shu Zi's mouth gaped open, and he could no longer speak as fluently as before, stuttering incoherently. The Nine Swords of Lushun was the ultimate skill of the Lushun Immortal the founding patriarch of the Lushun Sword Sect. When he failed in his immortal cultivation and his path was extinguished, this sword manual also turned to ashes. Yet, unexpectedly, Tiao Zhe possessed this sword manual. Kong Shu Zi immediately knelt down, gazing at Tiao Zhe with admiration, fawning over him as the esteemed senior immortal he truly was. After dealing with Shi Qiang Zi and Kong Shu Zi, Tiao Zhe turned to Wei Jiu Zi and asked her what she intended to do. Wei Jiu Zi, dazed from witnessing the previous events, was startled when Tiao Zhe addressed her. She bit her lip, looking quite conflicted, then suddenly pushed Liu Shang towards Tiao Zhe, saying she gifted Liu Shang to be Tiao Zhe's disciple. Tiao Zhe inwardly laughed in delight, silently praising Wei Jiu Zi for her timely wisdom. But then Wei Jiu Zi knelt down her eyes sparkling like stars, extending her hands towards Tiao Zhe like a child begging for candy. Tiao Zhe immediately understood her intention. He took out the Zianhe secret manual and handed it to Wei Jiu Zi. Upon seeing the manual Tiao Zhe gave her, Wei Jiu Zi recognized it as the sect protecting treasure of the Zianhe sect. This Zianhe secret manual recorded many ancient pill formulas, some of which, if successfully refined, would even trigger the descent of heavenly tribulations. Hearing Wei Jiu Zi's words, Tiao Zhe's expression became pensive as he wondered why the Zianhe sect's manual was present at the Lushun Sword sect, implying some hidden story behind it. At this point, Shi Qiang Zi, Kang Shu Zi, and Wei Jiu Zi all knelt down, respectfully inviting Tiao Zhe to accept the Sword Valley. 
Tiaoja's expression turned solemn as he said, If you are so sincere, then I shall reluctantly accept. Hearing the words reluctantly accept from Tiaoja's mouth, Liu Shang looked at him with slight disdain. It was clear that he had bribed Shi Yang Zi's group, yet he still had the audacity to claim he was reluctantly accepting the Sword Valley. How shameless. The scene shifted to the back mountain of the Lushun Sword Sect, where the immortal cultivation sword formation was laid out. Kong Shu Zi respectfully informed Tiaoja that they had arrived at the entrance to the Sword Valley. Seeing the cracked formation plate placed at the center of the formation, Tiaoja asked Kong Shu Zi if this was not the eye of the immortal cultivation sword formation. Kong Shu Zi explained that this formation plate served both as the eye of the immortal cultivation sword formation and the entrance to the sword valley. He continued to explain that within the sword valley, Sword Chi raged in all directions. It was by borrowing the Sword Chi from the Sword Valley that the Immortal Cultivation Sword Formation became an unparalleled sword formation. After speaking, Kong Shu Zi, Shi Qiang Zi, and Wei Jiu Zi formed hand seals and channeled their spiritual power. Shi Qiang Zi shouted open. After his shout, the spiritual power from the three of them was transmitted into the formation plate. Suddenly, a mystical gate appeared. Witnessing this scene, Tiaoja excitedly curled his lips into a smile. He silently wondered if the gate was the entrance to the secret realm. If so, it was truly miraculous. At this moment, he was burning with eagerness to enter and explore what rewards this blind box contained. Without further thought, Tiaoja began to step through the mystical gate into the interior. At this time, Shi Qiang Zi respectfully invited Tiaoja to enter the Sword Valley as its master. Ming Kong, standing by, silently admired Tiaoja. This was the blessed secret realm that everyone dreamed of. Those without destiny could never enter. Suddenly, Wei Jiu Zi spoke up. She told Tiaoja that there were many inconveniences inside the Sword Valley and suggested letting Liu Sheng enter with him to serve his daily needs. Hearing her master say this, Liu Sheng couldn't help but be startled. As for Tiaoja, lecherous thoughts arose in his heart. He thought to himself, with a young man and woman together, it would be like leading a goat into a tiger's mouth. Why refuse such foolishness? But outwardly, Tiaoja maintained a solemn demeanor. He turned back and accepted Wei Jiu Zi's suggestion, citing the reason of giving the youth an opportunity to study in the Sword Valley. Before Liu Sheng entered the Sword Valley, Wei Jiu Zi advised her that whether serving Tiaoja or entering the Sword Valley itself, it was a once in a thousand years opportunity that she must seize. Outwardly, Wei Jiu Zi instructed Liu Sheng this way but inwardly, she was filled with regret. If possible, she too would have liked to cast aside her dignity to take Liu Shang's place. Tiaoja and Liu Shang entered the Sword Valley, where an ancient building stood before them. Behind the building was a towering mountain range, while in front were countless swords floating above the ground. Beneath the swords was some kind of formation, and in the sky, thunder rumbled incessantly. The scene looked terrifying. Liu Shang warned Tiaoja that restrictions were everywhere telling him to stay close to her. Don't run around, she said curtly. Tiaoja was displeased by Liu Sheng's blunt manner towards him. He demanded that she address him as your excellency. Liu Sheng gave him a disdainful look but said nothing. Inside the Sword Valley was a place called the Land of Sword Burial. Liu Sheng reminded Tiaoja that the light formation under the swords was a restriction, some strong and some weak. From Shi Qiang Zi, Liu Sheng learned that even the weakest restriction could instantly kill a golden core cultivator. Even Shi Qiang Zi, the sect leader, did not dare recklessly enter the restrictions. With good intentions, Liu Sheng warned Tiaoja not to touch the swords here, not even to graze them. Otherwise, with his fourth stage of qi condensation cultivation, he would. Before she could finish, Liu Sheng was utterly astonished to see Tiaoja pick up a sword. She panicked, stammering, Your Excellency, what are you doing? As for Liu Sheng, she was terrified, thinking they were doomed, as drawing the sword would trigger the restriction. Tiaoja did not believe Liu Sheng's words, thinking she was joking. He even stomped on the restriction and commented that it didn't seem so formidable. Liu Sheng could hardly believe her eyes. This was clearly an ancient restriction that even the sect leader dared not touch. Yet Tiaoja broke it so easily. Tiaoja drew the sword from its sheath. Examining the sword, he felt a chilling aura. Indeed, it was a fine sword. As for Liu Sheng, she was utterly amazed, never expecting the sword in Tiaoja's hand to be a supreme spirit sword. Tiaoja raised the sword towards the sky, 
and a terrifying azure spiritual energy burst forth from the blade, shooting straight up. Under the pressure of that horrific spiritual energy, Lia Sheng felt she could barely withstand it. According to Lia Sheng's understanding, on the continent of Primordial Moon, the number of supreme spirit swords could be counted on one's fingers. Moreover, each one was a sect preserving treasure or a nation stabilizing weapon. Yet Tiaoja could easily draw a supreme spirit sword from the ancient restriction unscathed. It was beyond imagination. Now Liu Sheng's gaze towards Tiaoja had completely changed. Outside the sword valley, Shi Chiang Zi's group was utterly astonished to see the azure spiritual energy column shooting into the sky. They recognized this as the phenomenon of the moon encircling halo, which only occurs when a spirit sword emerges. Witnessing this, Wei Jiu Zi affirmed that it must be Tiaoja inside the sword valley who had broken the restriction, and obtained a high-grade spirit sword. Hu Kong Zi chimed in, saying such an anomaly could only be caused by a top-grade spirit sword. Shi Chiang Zi marveled from the side. He believed this was truly a once-in-a-millennium opportunity for their Lu Cloud Sword sect to rise again. Wei Jiu Zi worried, saying the spirit ice stone had been shattered, meaning the sword valley could no longer suppress the celestial omen. She feared the commotion would would attract greedy onlookers to the Lu Cloud Sword sect, and suggested they prepare for the worst. Hearing this, Hu Kong Zi finally spoke up. He had already set up a formation here. Without an inside response, it would be difficult for cultivators to detect the disturbance. He knew there was a traitor within the sect, but did not know who it was. This made him very angry. At this moment, Shi Chiang Zi suddenly interrupted. He said the matter of the traitor could wait until after tonight. The most important thing now was to activate the Mountain Protection Grand Formation. Wei Jiu Zi spoke up, saying the Mountain Protection Grand Formation required all three of them to activate it together. If all three of them left, who would guard the entrance to the Sword Valley? Hearing Wei Jiu Zi's question, Ming Kong stepped forward and respectfully cupped his fists. He said he was willing to take on the important task of guarding the Sword Valley's entrance, and would accept punishment according to the sect rules if he made any mistakes. Seeing his disciples so obedient and understanding, Shi Chiang Zi smiled and praised Ming Kong for his honesty and simplicity, saying with him guarding here, he was reassured. Watching Shi Chiang Zi's group leave, Ming Kong revealed an extremely sinister smile. In his heart, he secretly rejoiced, having waited for this day for a long time. At the Dianyuan Gate, the layered mountains and the bright moon hanging in the starry night sky created an extraordinarily transcendent scenery. In the midst of this serene night, a pillar of azure light suddenly appeared. That was none other than the celestial omen created by Tiaoja when he drew the supreme spirit sword from the ancient restriction. In the back courtyard of the Dianyuan Gate, two people were observing the celestial omen. According to them, it had been a hundred years since such an omen last appeared. It seemed that an ancient spirit energy had emerged. One of them noticed that the direction of the celestial omen was from the location of the Lu Cloud Sword sect. At this point, the word Sword Valley suddenly appeared in his mind. He was alarmed, thinking that if the Lu Cloud Sword sect had broken the Sword Valley's restriction, their strength would increase rapidly, and his position as the leader of the Orthodox Immortal sect would be threatened. He hurriedly formed hand seals and circulated his energy. The person beside him did the same. The spiritual energy around him surged violently as he wanted to seize this opportunity to break through to the reuniting realm. Suddenly, he clapped his palms together and shouted reunite. A second later, he coughed up a mouthful of blood. The person beside him gradually dissipated into white smoke. This proved that his breakthrough had failed, and the person beside him was merely his spiritual clone. The one who had just failed his breakthrough was the sect leader of the Dianyuan sect, named Dianyuan Kong. In his heart, he now harbored the intention that he must obtain the ancient spirit sword, for he believed that such a spirit sword, nurtured by the powerful sword intent of the Sword Valley, would definitely be able to help him break through the realm he had been stuck in for so long. And once Dianyu and Kong broke through, he would surely dominate the orthodox immortal sect. Dianyu and Kong took out a yellow talisman and infused it with spiritual energy, carving two lines of words on it. Looking towards the celestial omen, he murmured, My disciple, after a hundred years of slumber, it's time for you to return home. The scene shifted to inside the Sword Valley. Tiao just sheathed the sword, handed it to Liu Sheng and said, if the martial uncle likes it, then I'll gift this sword to you. Liu Sheng was astonished, stuttering, unable to believe that Tiao Zhe would gift her the supreme spirit sword. Liu Sheng's face flushed as she secretly thought, is this the benefit of being Tiao Zhe's Dao companion? Now she understood why her master was so jealous of her. 
However, Lia Sheng still had a lingering concern. If she accepted this sword, it would be tantamount to becoming Tiao Zhe's Dao companion, and being a Dao companion inevitably meant dual cultivation. Thinking of this, Lia Sheng bit her lip, extremely awkward. Although Tiao Zhe had protected the sect, he was still the one who had killed her martial brother. She didn't seek revenge, but now she was to become his Dao companion and dual cultivate with him? How could she accept this? After thinking it through, Lia Sheng knelt down and returned the sword to Tiao Zhe with both hands. She gave the excuse that her body was weak and her mortal physique couldn't aid Tiao Zhe's cultivation. She said she was unworthy of the sword and asked Tiao Zhe to take it back and find another Dao companion for dual cultivation. Hearing this, Tiao Zhe frowned slightly and pondered silently. Observing Lia Sheng's conflicted expression, he deduced that she still harbored doubts about him taking her martial brother's body. Hence, she remained guarded and couldn't let go. If he kept someone like her by his side, he wouldn't be at ease, fearing that one day Lia Sheng might stab him in the back. So he decided he must quickly subdue her. Outwardly, Tiao Zhe feigned anger and questioned Lia Sheng. Dual cultivation? Do I look like that kind of vulgar person? I was just offering the sword since you seem to like it. If you don't want it, fine. But why accuse me of improper intentions? That's like calling me a lecher. Hearing Tiao Zhe's words, Lia Sheng felt remorseful. She thought to herself that she had misunderstood him. She looked down at the spirit sword and appraised it. This sword emanates a chilling aura. It must have been tempered in an extremely cold place for thousands of years. It perfectly matched her physical cultivation method. If Lia Sheng accepted this sword, her strength would undoubtedly soar to new heights. She would definitely be able to secure victory in the sect's Dian Yuan discourse this year. Thinking of this, Lia Sheng suddenly felt awkward. She had just refused Tiao Zhe. But now if she accepted the spirit sword, wouldn't that be a bit improper? Just then, a hand snatched the spirit sword from Lia Sheng's hands, saying they needn't pass it back and forth. This sword has its rightful owner. The speaker was Ming Kong. Lia Sheng asked why he had entered here. Ming Kong replied that he was following the sect leader's order to retrieve the sword. Ming Kong rejoiced upon recognizing it as a supreme grade spirit sword rarely seen in a hundred years. He had thought it was only a high grade spirit sword. Seeing Ming Kong's attire, Tiao Zhe felt a sense of familiarity, as if he had seen it before. Tiao Zhe recalled the original owner's memories. In the past, it was Ming Kong who had launched a surprise attack on the original owner, catching him off guard. The attack caused the original owner to cough up blood and die immediately after. Tiao Zhe remembered the original owner's death was caused by this traitorous senior brother Ming Kong. He used Morse code by blinking at Lia Sheng, signaling that Ming Kong was the traitor. Lia Sheng didn't understand Tiao Zhe's signal. She gave him a disdainful look, thinking he was flirting with her right in front of their senior brother. Then Ming Kong asked Lia Sheng to help him test the sword's sharpness. Lia Sheng innocently asked how to test it. Ming Kong smiled slyly and thrust the sword towards Lia Sheng. Tiao just shouted be careful. He pushed Lia Sheng away and took Ming Kong's sword thrust in her stead. Seeing Tiao Zhe take the blow for her, Lia Sheng cried out martial brother. The sword pierced Tiao Zhe's chest, blood gushing out. Seeing Tiao Zhe grievously wounded by his own sword, Ming Kong gloated that he had intended to kill Lia Sheng, then take Tiao Zhe back to the Dian Yuan sect. After all, Tiao Zhe was a senior immortal. If Ming Kong brought him back, it would be a great merit. Unfortunately, Tiao Zhe took the blow for Lia Sheng. After Ming Kong's strike, Tiao Zhe collapsed grievously wounded. Lia Sheng rushed to support him. She questioned Ming Kong's actions. Only then did Tiao Zhe explain to Lia Sheng that Ming Kong was the traitor planted in the sect, and he was the one who killed her martial brother and sabotaged the spirit stone formation. Ming Kong flashed an evil smile confirming that everything Tiao Zhe said was true. He admitted to being the sect leader of Dian Yuan sect's younger brother, hiding in Liu Yin sword sect for hundreds of years. He had done all this while waiting for an opportunity like today. Only now did Lia Sheng realize the truth. She also realized she had wronged Tiao Zhe all this time. As for Tiao Zhe, he thought to himself, I'm done for. Once Ming Kong revealed everything, he would surely not let Lia Sheng and Tiao Zhe leave alive. Thinking this, Tiao Zhe coughed up another mouthful of fresh blood. Seeing this, Lia Sheng embraced Tiao Zhe, tears streaming down her face. She scolded him as a fool. She was no longer his martial sister, yet he risked his life to take the sword blow for her. Outwardly, Tiao Zhe feigned heroic righteousness, saying to die beneath the peony is romantic, even for a ghost. He told Lia Sheng not to feel guilty, as it was his own choice. With his face pressed against Lia Sheng's bosom, he found it a bit hard to breathe. Inwardly, he was furious, as he had not chosen to take the blow for Lia Sheng. 
It was the lingering emotional bonds of the original owner that had forced him to act that way. Liu Sheng was completely deceived by Tiao Zhe's righteous demeanor. She felt regretful for previously misunderstanding him. After all, Tiao Zhe was a senior immortal. He had treated Liu Sheng so well, yet she had misjudged his noble character. She berated herself for her inability to discern right from wrong. Now Liu Sheng supported Tiao Zhe to one side, while unsheathing her sword, prepared to fight. She wanted to help Tiao Zhe take revenge on Ming Kong, to repay his kindness towards her. Liu Sheng glared hatefully at Ming Kong, as if wanting to tear him into a hundred pieces. Hearing Liu Sheng demand revenge for Tiao Zhe, Ming Kong smiled contemptuously. For someone like Liu Sheng to want to kill him was simply overestimating herself. Ming Kong considered Liu Sheng's cultivation to be merely ordinary, while he was a kind and cultivator wielding a supreme spirit sword. The gap in their strengths was as vast as heaven and earth. Hearing Ming Kong's mockery, Liu Sheng smirked, then attacked the floating swords on the ground. Ming Kong panicked, cursing Liu Sheng as insane. Liu Sheng's aim in attacking the floating swords was to trigger the seals beneath. Once triggered, even the Dianyuan sect leader himself could not survive their power. The swords triggered by Liu Sheng scattered in chaos. Liu Sheng angrily yelled at Ming Kong, wanting to drag him to die together with her and Tiao Zhe. Ming Kong used his sword to block the incoming blades, solemnly stating that making him perish with Liu Sheng and Tiao Zhe would not be easy. Now the sealed triggered swords were also charging towards Liu Sheng. She resigned herself to death, telling Tiao Zhe that if they had another life, she would never fail him again. Suddenly Tiao Zhe rushed to embrace Liu Sheng, shielding her from the swords. Panicked, Liu Sheng stammered, Senior Tiao Zhe, no, you can't. Don't worry, Tiao Zhe reassured her, these swords cannot harm me. He told Liu Sheng to hold on to him. He would shield her to escape. Only then did Liu Sheng recall Tiao Zhe could retrieve spirit swords from seals unharmed, so he must be able to withstand the seals. She then embraced Tiao Zhe and flew away on his sword. Seeing them leave, Ming Kong shouted for them not to run away. A moment's distraction caused a sword to graze Ming Kong's cheek, drawing blood. He circulated his inner energy, and his clothes suddenly transformed into the heavenly remnant immortal armor. With this armor protecting him, Ming Kong no longer feared those swords. He flashed an evil smile and said, Since I've revealed the secret to Tiao Zhe and Liu Sheng, how can I let them leave alive? Liu Sheng and Tiao Zhe had fled to the sword sacrificing platform. Liu Sheng told Tiao Zhe they were safe here. Tiao Zhe looked worried and said, Not yet. If you leave me, you may be in danger. Seeing Tiao Zhe still clinging to her, Liu Sheng reminded him again that this was the sword sacrificing platform. They were safe here. Only then did Tiao Zhe let go of Liu Sheng. He sighed, We've reached safety so soon? Realizing his words sounded off, Tiao Zhe laughed and corrected himself, that's great. Taking advantage of his injury, he leaned against Liu Sheng's bosom. His real aim was to rest his head on her ample mountains. Liu Sheng remained completely unsuspecting. She angrily cursed Ming Kong as a vile bandit for attacking Tiao Zhe leaving his organs devastated by sword chi. She predicted Tiao Zhe could not survive past the next watch. Saying this, Liu Sheng's tears streamed down. She blamed herself for implicating Tiao Zhe. Suddenly, a system notification appeared saying the sword pond entrance was 5 meters away, a secret realm level area. Seeing the system notification, Tiao Zhe saw a glimmer of hope for survival. He thought to himself, if he could enter the sword pond, there might still be a chance to heal. With that thought, Tiao Zhe asked Liu Sheng to help him reach the entrance. As his dying wish, Liu Sheng could not refuse. Liu Sheng praised Tiao Zhe, true to being a senior immortal. Even in death you choose a place, unlike you small characters who can die anywhere. Finally, Liu Sheng helped Tiao Zhe reach the entrance. The system prompted if Tiao Zhe wanted to enter. Without hesitation, he pressed yes. A box then appeared from nowhere. Seeing the sudden box in Tiao Zhe's hands, Liu Sheng wondered where it came from, guessing perhaps his spatial reign. In Tiao Zhe's mind, this was his first time entering a secret realm level area. He was excited imagining receiving a nuclear weapon. But when he pulled out the item from the blind box, Tiao Zhe was furious, raising his middle finger as if wanting to curse the system. His anger stemmed from the item he pulled out of the blind box being a rusty sword. He angrily threw the sword down, feeling the system was mocking and bullying him. Liu Sheng, standing beside him, noticed a bottle of elixir still in the box. She reached in and took it out. Her eyes lit up, muttering the words great elixir pill. 
She rejoiced, saying Tiaoja would be saved this time. Seeing the elixir bottle in Liasheng's hand, Tiaoja warned her not to consume it recklessly. But before he could finish, Liasheng tossed a pill into his mouth, telling him to swallow this immortal pill quickly. As Liasheng knew, the great elixir pill was an ancient immortal elixir that could revive the dead and strengthen the body to prolong life. Caught off guard, Tiaoja choked and told Liasheng that consuming medicine carelessly could be fatal. Liasheng added that the Xianyi sect treated this great elixir pill as their sect's treasure. Just one pill would be enough to establish a sect and join the ranks of major orthodox sects. And this bottle contained 17 pills, it was truly terrifying. Suddenly, Tiaoja hugged Liasheng from behind. Startled, she asked what he was doing. Tiaoja asked if the elixir had any side effects, as he felt an intense heat in his body. At this point, Tiaoja could no longer control himself. His face moved closer to Liasheng's, and his hands began to wander over her body. As Tiaoja groped her, Lia Shang's eyes became half-lidded and her face flushed red. She mumbled, trying to stop Tiao Zha. Lia Shang felt Tiao Zha's body temperature was extremely high, especially his hands which were burning hot. She told him to take his hands off her. The more Lia Shang tried to stop him, the more aggressive Tiao Zha became his hands touching her sensitive areas. Lia Shang turned and slapped him hard, saying he had gone too far. After Lia Shang's slap, Tiao Zhe lay motionless on the ground, seeming to feel extremely uncomfortable. Lia Shang murmured not good, the medicinal power of the great elixir pill is too strong, Tiao Zhe's body can't withstand it. It seemed he was about to explode. Lia Shang bit her lip, looking troubled. She thought the only way to save Tiao Zhe now was for them to cultivate together. Lia Shang felt very conflicted. Tiao Zhe ended up like this because he saved her. How could she let him die? But she worried about facing Tiao Zhe after cultivating together. Would he think she was easy? As Lia Shang hesitated, not knowing what to do. Suddenly, Tiao Zhe turned Lia Shang around from behind and kissed her passionately. After that, the inevitable happened. Lia Shang and Tiao Zhe had a memorable period of dual cultivation together. During Tiao Zhe and Lia Shang's dual cultivation, the system displayed notifications. 1. Tiao Zhe successfully used the Great Elixir Pill gaining 100 physique points. His nine young indestructible body upgraded to the second realm. 2. Tiao Zhe's first successful dual cultivation, gaining 100 more physique points, and his nine young indestructible body upgraded to the third realm. Three hours later, Ming Kong finally caught up to the sacrifice sword platform. Luckily he had the inherited heavenly remnant immortal armor, allowing him to survive the ancient taboo. After such a long time, Ming Kong thought Tiao Zhe must have gone to sell salt. He felt accomplished, thinking he had attained immortality. Ming Kong declared only he and Lia Shang remained in the sword pond now. At this moment, Ming Kong showed a sinister smile, suddenly remembering Lia Shang was the number one beauty of the Liu Yin sword sect. Normally he had to disguise himself as upright and chaste, so he dared not reveal any improper intentions towards Lia Shang. But now things were different. The situation had changed. He no longer needed to hold back or restrain himself. He decided to take Lia Shang as his woman. Entering the sacrifice sword platform, the first sight that greeted Ming Kong was Tiao Zhe and Lia Shang in the midst of dual cultivation. Ming Kong was shocked to realize not only was Tiao Zhe not dead, but he had also beaten him to dual cultivating with Lia Shang. He silently praised Tiao Zhe, living up to his reputation as the immortal deflecting elder. Seeing Ming Kong arrive, Tiao Zhe stood up, straightened his clothes, and asked why Ming Kong didn't return to the Dianqian sect after escaping the taboo, instead coming here to seek death. Hearing this, Ming Kong clicked his tongue derisively. He said Tiao Zhe was merely a tiny fourth stage cultivator plus Lia Shang's mid-level innate realm. He could send them both to the Yellow Springs with just one move, yet Tiao Zhe dared to say he was seeking death. Ridiculous. Not to mention the supreme spiritual sword in his hand. Today, Lia Shang and Tiao Zhe could only meet their demise. Saying that, Ming Kong attacked. Seeing this, Tiao Zhe made a hand seal, and spiritual energy appeared around him. The technique Tiao Zhe used was the Immortal Cultivation Technique, a supreme cultivation method of the Liu Yin Sword Sect. When cultivated to the peak, it could allow one to battle a true immortal. The spiritual energy around Tiao Zhe's body grew increasingly intense. As Ming Kong's attack was about to strike him, Lia Shang worriedly shouted, warning Tiao Zhe to be careful. Suddenly, Ming Kong's face turned pale. 
Tiao Zhe easily caught his sword between two fingers. Ming Kong's world shattered in that moment, a cultivator catching a full force strike from a qi condensation realm with ease. Just what sorcery was this? Tiao Zhe's heart was filled with joy. The immortal cultivation technique in his third realm nine young indestructible body did not disappoint. Seizing the opportunity, Liu Shang swung her sword at Ming Kong, cursing him as a traitor, telling him to die. To her shock, her sword shattered against Ming Kong without leaving a scratch. Only then did she notice the abnormality of Ming Kong's armor. Could this be an immortal armor? Ming Kong grinned, confirming it was indeed the immortal armor left by the ancestral founder of the Dionkian sect. He put away his sword, arrogantly stating that although just a semi-immortal armor, to pierce through it would require immortal energy. Hearing this, Liu Shang finally understood how Ming Kong escaped the ancient taboo. It was thanks to the semi-immortal armor he was wearing. Ming Kong grinned arrogantly, believing that with this semi-immortal armor, Liu Shang and Tiao Zhe could do nothing to him. Seeing Ming Kong's overbearing manner infuriated Liu Shang, who wished to teach him a lesson. Then, the rusty sword Tiao Zhe had tossed aside began to stir, surrounded by a black mist. Suddenly, it flew towards Ming Kong. Ming Kong's face drained of color at this sight, only managing a miserable scream. As the rusty sword pierced through his body, after stabbing Ming Kong, the rusty sword flew back before Tiao Zhe. Seeing the rusty sword, Tiao Zhe quickly recognized it as the one he obtained from the blind box. Liu Sheng wondered, didn't Ming Kong say only immortal energy could pierce his semi-immortal armor? Could this rusty sword be immortal energy? As for Ming Kong after being stabbed, he was truly unwilling to be killed by a mere rusty sword while wearing a semi-immortal armor. At this moment, the system notified that Tiao Zhe had killed a qi condensation cultivator, awarding him 1000 physique points. The system also reminded that to upgrade to the fourth realm of the nine young indestructible body, 9,000 more physique points were needed. The system then revealed the names of the items in the mysterious top-tier blind box. The Heavenly Flawed Immortal Sword, an Immortal Grade Weapon, and the Great Circle Pill, an Immortal Grade Dan. Holding the Heavenly Flawed Immortal Sword, Tiao Zhe marveled. No wonder it was a top-tier mysterious box, containing Immortal Grade items. Tiao Zhe ordered the system to explain the Nine Yang Indestructible Body, which displayed information stating it had nine realms in total. Accumulate Accumulating enough physique points allowed advancing to the next realm, strengthening the body, equivalent to a body cultivator. The first realm was on par with the Qi Refining Realm, the second with the Zuji Realm, and so on until the ninth equaled the Great Realization Realm. Stroking his chin, Tiao Zhe monologued that his current Nine Yang body was in the third realm, making his strength equal to the Qi Condensation Realm. Moreover, he could not only temper his body, but also cultivate inner qi. The system further informed that a stronger body allowed storing more inner qi. After reading the newly displayed system information, Tiao Zhe was amazed to realize that by cultivating one, he gained two, body tempering and qi cultivation. Truly an overpowered internal and external dual cultivation. With a self-satisfied air, he mused that if he cultivated the nine young indestructible body to the ninth realm during the qi refining stage, wouldn't he become as formidable as Bai Zunian? Tiao Zhe then asked the system if his immunity to taboos was due to possessing the nine young indestructible body. The system replied that it wasn't. The taboos were created by the forces of heaven and earth, and the taboos here could only sense souls from the moon cloud continent. Since Tiao Zhe's soul came from another world, the taboos couldn't detect it, hence his immunity. Tiao Zhe rejoiced, thinking this was a bug, but one that not only didn't harm him, but brought great benefits. Truly, good deeds beget good fortune. Seeing Tiao Zhe's sudden cheerfulness and glances towards her, Liu Shang thought he viewed her as an easy woman. Turning away, she told Tiao Zhe to respect himself, explaining that her reason for dual cultivation was merely to repay his life-saving deed. Now they owed each other nothing. Liu Shang asked Tiao Zhe to act as if nothing had happened between them. Tiao Zhe feigned a hurt expression accusing Liu Shang of wanting to back out and calling her a heartless woman. He approached Ming Kong's corpse, picked up the top-grade spirit sword, and tossed it to Liu Shang, calling her a heartless woman and saying this sword was compensation for her broken one. Catching the sword Tiao Zhe threw, Liu Shang felt remorseful. Despite her mistreatment, he not only didn't hold a grudge but gifted her this fine sword. She felt she had been a bit too harsh on Tiao Zhe. However, she wondered what heartless woman meant, thinking he was complimenting her beauty. Tiao Zhe suggested naming the unnamed sword the Liu Shang sword, which deeply touched Liu Shang, and she thanked him for the gift. Tiao Zhe then removed Ming Kong's damaged immortal armor, 
pierced by the heavenly flawed immortal sword, rendering it unusable. Suddenly, Tiaoja grinned mischievously, a bold idea forming in his mind. Placing his hand on the immortal armor, he uttered login. The system notified a successful login, and he received a blind box. Opening it, Tiaoja found a red, outfit-like item inside. The system displayed information about the armor, the Kylan Radiant Armor, an ancient immortal battle armor remnant, a complete version of the heavenly remnant immortal armor. It was forged from the bones of Kylan and Mystic Spirit Mountain Metal, granting immunity to all attacks within the immortal realm. Tiaoja donned the armor, enhancing his already handsome looks with an aura of masculine charm. Lia Shang couldn't help but be captivated by Tiaoja in the armor, praising his good looks. Not only powerful and elegant but possessing an awe-inspiring charm. But she soon realized the armor Tiaoja wore was an immortal artifact. While top-grade spirit swords were already rare and hard to find, Tiaoja could casually produce immortal armor and swords. Lia Sheng doubted if Tiaoja was truly just a cultivator. What cultivator could be so formidable? Seeing the armor granted immunity to all energy attacks, Tiaoja beamed. Thinking as long as he didn't provoke realization realm cultivators, he was basically invincible. In other words, he was unmatched up to the Yuan Ying realm. After this thought, Tiao Jia stored the immortal armor in his ring, reminding himself to remain humble and not be too ostentatious. The innocent often bear undue blame. He understood this principle, especially in this cultivation world, where killing and plundering were not uncommon. The scene shifted to the night at the Dian Yuan sect. In the back courtyard, Dian Wu sat staring at a broken yellow jade slip in his hand. The jade slip was Ming Kong's life token and its breakage signified Ming Kong's death. Seeing his junior brother's life token shattered, Dian Wu cried out in disbelief, thinking Ming Kong's immortal armor should have protected him from any mishap. Dian Wu angrily slammed his hand on the table, more concerned about the heavenly remnant immortal armor than his brother's life. At that moment, someone approached and called out father, asking what had happened. It was Dian Wu's son, Dian Shizen. Hearing his son's question, Dian Wu replied, Ming Kong has been killed. Take men to the Liuyin sword sect at any cost to retrieve Ming Kong's body, even if it means war. He stressed the importance of reclaiming the heavenly remnant immortal armor. Dian Shizen respectfully accepted the order. As he left, Dian Shizen instructed a subordinate to notify the four great protectors, bringing 200 elite disciples each, as he intended to raise the Liuyin sword sect to the ground. The scene shifted to the back mountains of the Liuyin sword sect during the day. There Shi Chidongsu's group was arguing with Dian Shizen in front of the sword valley entrance. They were shocked when Dian Shizen revealed Ming Kong's identity especially Shi Qi Dongsu, who never expected his disciple to be from the Dian Yuan sect and Dian Shizhen's uncle. Dian Shizhen continued speaking, explaining that around a hundred years ago, Ming Kong had left the Dian Yuan sect and joined the Liu Yin sword sect as a disciple, praising Ming Kong's diligence and caution. At this, Dian Shizhen angrily pointed at Shi Qi Dongsu's group, accusing them of discovering Ming Kong's identity and using treacherous means to kill him causing his life token to shatter. Xu Kongzi's face darkened with anger, calling Dian Shizhen's accusations of robbery and deception outrageous. Uwazi affirmed that Ming Kong was a traitor who destroyed the spirit stone array and colluded with evil cultivators to attack their sect. Shi Qi Dongsu, on the other hand, praised Tiao Jia for being able to kill a golden core cultivator with his qi refining skills, truly living up to his cultivator elder title. Dian Shizhen did not come alone. With 800 people from the four great protectors behind him, they shouted in unison to raise the Liu Yin sword sect. Dian Shizhen called Shi Qi Dongsu's group martial uncles and said, The Dian Yuan sect demands to see the body when someone dies. Hand over Ming Kong and the culprit who killed him. Otherwise, do not blame me for disregarding our alliance and escalating this matter. Shi Qi Dongsu raised his hand and shouted, Form ranks. The Liu Yin sword sect disciples formed up, ready for battle but they were vastly outnumbered. Wu Wazi advised Shi Qi Dongsu to remain calm, saying they were no match for the Dian Yuan sect. Xu Kongzi agreed, stating Dian Shizhen was merely the vanguard. If they truly fought, the Dian Yuan sect's 28 protectors would appear, undoubtedly annihilating the Liu Yin sword sect. Shi Qi Dongsu then said, Ming Kong was a traitor. Tiao Jia killing him was eliminating a threat, nothing wrong with that. Moreover, Tiao Jia is a benefactor of our sect. How could we betray his kindness? Besides, we have the immortal sword formation. We need not fear the Dian Yuan sect. Hearing this, 
Dian Shizen laughed loudly, acknowledging the Liyun Sword Sect's immortal sword formation was formidable, but not overly terrifying. He mocked that despite being sword cultivators, they possessed no spirit swords. The inner disciples used ordinary swords, while the elders used low-grade spirit swords, and even the sect leaders was only a mid-grade spirit sword. In contrast, the Dianyuan sect had 28 mid-grade spirit swords, 7 high-grade ones, and their sect leader wielded the supreme-grade void-rending sword. Dian Shizen arrogantly claimed his high-grade spirit sword alone could break the Liuyin sword sect's immortal sword formation. Xu Kongzi frowned, saying the equipment gap was too vast, leaving them no chance of victory. Wu Wuzi was astonished by the Dianyuan sect's wealth, far exceeding her expectations. Shi Qi Dongsu sank in despair, feeling heaven willed their sect's destruction. Then a voice from the Sword Valley mocked, The swords in your hands are just scrap metal. It ridiculed the Dianyuan sect, saying their swords were mere broken blades. What is there to boast about? Enraged, Dian Shizen pointed his sword toward the Sword Valley entrance, demanding to know who dared call their swords broken blades and thought themselves so impressive. As Dian Shizen finished speaking, a sword flew out from the valley, shattering his high-grade spirit sword. Xu Kongzi was astonished, unable to fathom how a high-grade spirit sword could be broken. He guessed the sword that flew out must be a newly emerged supreme-grade spirit sword. Dian Shizen caught the sword, prompting Xu Kongzi to grip it with two fingers, resulting in a tug of war. Dian Shizen shouted at Xu Kongzi to release the sword, but he refused. Then, a hand emerged from the valley entrance, and the same voice uttered a single word, Return. The supreme grade spirit sword flew back to its owner, none other than Lu Shuang. She stepped out, saying there was no need to fight over this sword, as it was a gift from Tiao Jia. Dian Shizen patronizingly called Lu Shuang martial niece, telling her to hand over the sword, and this incident would be forgotten. With a vile smile, he extended his hand, advising Lu Shuang to prioritize the greater situation. She should not jeopardize the entire sect for personal gain. Lu Shuang felt conflicted after Dian Shizen's words, unsure of what to do. Then, a black figure emerged from the Sword Valley, saying it seemed he had to make an early appearance. Based on the voice and demeanor, the Liuyin Sword Sect disciples immediately recognized it was Tiaoja. They respectfully welcomed Tiaoja's emergence, seeing their reverence towards Tiaoja. Dian Shizen grew uneasy, sensing Tiaoja must be a formidable figure. Tiaoja stepped out, with the silhouettes of several swords floating behind him. He mocked the Dianyuan sect as mere brats daring to cause trouble here. Tiaoja looked at Dian Shizen, calling him a brat and asking if he wanted the sword. Dian Shizen put on an arrogant air having expected Tiaoja to be someone terrifying, but he was just an ordinary qi condensation cultivator. Dian Shizen boldly answered Tiaoja's question, affirming he wanted to take the supreme grade spirit sword, and even Shi Qi Dongsu could not stop him. Tiaoja smiled wickedly, telling Dian Shizen he could take the sword, but he must prove if he has the capability. After saying that, from behind Tiaoja in the sword valley, a barrage of swords flew out towards Dian Shizen. Seeing countless swords flying out from the valley towards Dian Shizen, Shi Qi Dongsu's group was utterly astonished. Shi Qi Dongsu wondered if this was the legendary 10,000 sword sect. While Xu Kongzi evaluated the swords grades, mid-grade, high-grade, supreme-grade, Wu Wuzi thought this was the grandest sword formation since the great immortal demon war 8,000 years ago on the continent of moon and sun. Dian Shizen was terrified, crying for help, certain he would die. In Dian Shizen's despair, Dying Kong appeared, riding a sword. Dying Kong formed a hand seal, shouting go. His sword flew towards Dian Shizen, shielding him. It emitted a yellow energy barrier around Dian Shizen's group. The sword formation's attack was blocked by the yellow barrier, but cracks appeared as soon as it made contact. Seeing this, Dying Kong politely advised Tiaoja to withdraw the formation to avoid harming fellow cultivators. Hearing that, Tiaoja sneered. Dying Kong told him to withdraw, but if he did, wouldn't he lose face? Dying Kong asked what Tiaoja wanted in order to withdraw the sword formation. Tiaoja replied that if Dying Kong slapped Dian Shizen twice for disrespecting Shi Qi Dongsu, he would withdraw. Upon hearing Tiaoja's condition, the enraged Dian Shizen cursed at him, but before finishing, Dying Kong slapped him across the face. As he slapped Dian Shizen, Dying Kong lectured him that Shi Qi Dongsu was his martial uncle's master, yet he dared disrespect his senior, showing no discipline. Then Dying Kong slapped Dian Shizen again, 
continuing to reprimand him for daring to force his master to answer in rebel. He would make Dian Shizen pay for his crimes. Resentfully, Dian Shizen told Dian Kong he was not his father. But before finishing, Dian Kong gave him another slap for talking back disrespectfully. Seeing this, Tiao Zhu gladly withdrew the sword formation, which was the second technique he borrowed from the nine sword stances of Liu Yin mimicking the 10,000 sword sects phenomenon. If he maintained this technique any longer, he feared he might not withstand it. As Tiaojo withdrew the formation, the swords simultaneously plunged into the ground, with yellow pillars of light shooting straight up, the phenomenon of the sword valley's grand opening, the swords returning to their origin. Tiaojo turned to the Liuyin sword sect disciples, telling them to choose a sword befitting their cultivation level. The Liuyin disciples were overjoyed, hardly believing they would receive such precious spirit swords. A male disciple reached for a supreme grade spirit sword, saying he wanted that one. Another disciple reminded him that supreme grade swords were for the sect leader. How could mere disciples like them deserve it? He was daydreaming. A female disciple said there were many supreme grade swords, and inner disciples would surely get their share, no need to fuss. Seeing the Liuyin disciples receive supreme grade swords, Dian Shizen gritted his teeth bitterly. He was the sect leader's son, yet treated the same as those Liuyin disciples. Dian Kong assessed that this tripled Liuyin's strength, enough to threaten his position as the Immortal Alliance's leader. Shi Chi Dongsu happily counted the spirit swords, around 18 supreme grade, 99 high grade, and innumerable mid-grade swords. Dian Kong's face darkened, admitting the Sword Valley's wealth rivaled a nation's. Contrary to Dian Kong, Shi Chi Dongsu was overjoyed, believing the heavens were blessing their sword sect. Suddenly, he realized he was mistaken, it wasn't the heavens blessing, but all thanks to Tiao Zhe. Shi Chi Dongsu turned and respectfully bowed to thank Tiao Zhe. Tiao Zhe said these were originally spirit swords from the Sword Valley, the sect's heritage, so they were simply returning to their owners. He told Shi Chi Dongsu there was no need for such courtesy. Shi Chi Dongsu insisted that without Tiao Zhe, they might never have retrieved the swords from the valley even after a thousand years. The Liu Yin sword sect disciples thanked Tiao Zhe for bestowing the swords. Seeing this, Dian Kong wondered, who was this Tiao Zhe that could defy the valley's restrictions, earning even Shi Chi Dongsu's reverence? With Tiao Zhe's support and the spirit swords, Liu Yin was rapidly rising, unstoppable. Dian Kong felt this wasn't the right time to attack Liu Yin and should retreat to find another plan. He told Dian Shizen to apologize to Tiao Zhe and Shi Chi Dongsu, saying Dian Shizen should endure this humiliation and he would make it up to him a hundredfold later. Dian Shizen scoffed that a hundredfold was far too little, demanding a thousandfold compensation instead. Dian Shizen went before Shi Chi Dongsu and Tiao Zhe, clasped his hands and apologized, saying he was new to the world and hoped the seniors would forgive his transgressions. Dian Shizen explained he only wanted to retrieve his uncle's remains to bury him properly with their ancestors. Upon hearing this, Tiao Zhe brought Ming Kong's corpse before Dian Kong and Dian Shizen saying he killed Ming Kong for disrupting the immortal slaying sword formation and causing chaos. Ming Kong destroyed the formation and conspired with evil cultivators, so he was killed. Dian Shizen checked Ming Kong's body but didn't see the tattered immortal armor, so he questioned Tiao Zhe. Tiao Zhe casually replied that during their fight, he had destroyed the tattered immortal armor. Dian Shizen didn't believe a mere qi cultivator like Tiao Zhe could destroy the tattered immortal armor. Before he could say more, Dian Kong shouted at him to shut up. Dian Shizen was surprised his father could tolerate this. He wanted to persuade Dian Kong, but Dian Kong said there was no need. Ming Kong conspired with evil cultivators, so his fate was deserved and no one else could be blamed. Inwardly, Dian Kong was furious. He silently told Ming Kong's corpse to rest in peace. He vowed not to let Ming Kong's death be in vain. Soon, he would level the Liu Yin sword sect and capture Tiao Zhe to avenge Ming Kong. Before leaving, Dian Shizen pointed at Tiao Zhe and cursed, challenging him to a duel in a month to teach him manners. He dared Tiao Zhe to come to the immortal discourse if he was skilled enough. Shi Chi Dongsu warned Tiao Zhe that Dian Shizen now harbored deep hatred towards him, and being narrow-minded, would definitely cause trouble. He advised Tiao Zhe to be wary of Dian Shizen. Tiao Zhe dismissed Dian Shizen as an empty barrel making noise, not worth fearing. The one he was wary of was the old fox Dian Kong 
who knew when to advance or retreat and had foresight. Dying Kong must be plotting something sinister, so he couldn't let his guard down against him. Tiao Zhe asked Shi Qi Dong Su what the immortal discourse Dian Shizen mentioned was. Shi Qi Dong Su explained it was a competition for the younger generation of the five major orthodox sects. The strongest would be crowned heavenly pride and the main prize was spiritual energy enhanced by the five sect leaders. Tiao just stroked his chin, thinking it sounded similar to the National Youth Martial Arts Tournament in his world. Tiao Zhe asked which were the five major sects. Shi Qi Dong Su replied they were the Dianxian sect, Liu Yin Sword sect, Zhenwo Immortal Court, Qianhe sect, and Wanxian religion. Tiao Zhe noticed only the Liu Yin Sword sect didn't have immortal in its name, and asked the reason. Wu Wuzi explained, the other sects had immortal because their patriarchs ascended to immortality. The Liu Yin Sword sect never had an immortal, so they lacked that title. Xu Kongzi added that since they never had an immortal, they were often mocked, looked down upon by their own sect and ridiculed by smaller sects. Shi Qi Dong Su frankly said they made Tiao Zhe their leader partly out of self-interest, hoping he could become the sect's first immortal and ascend, allowing them to rename to Liu Yin Immortal Sect. Only then could they be one of the five great immortal sects on equal footing. Wu Wuzi panicked, telling Shi Qi Dong Su blurting out their wish could jinx it. Tiao just solemnly promised the Liu Yin disciples he would take care of ascending to immortality. Even if he didn't ascend, he would definitely cultivate a true immortal for their sect. Tiao Zhe was extremely grateful for Shi Qi Dong Su's previous actions. Despite facing a powerful force like the Dianxian sect, he resolutely led the entire sect to risk their lives protecting Tiao Zhe. So Tiao Zhe vowed to himself that he must repay their wish. Tiao Zhe's expression suddenly turned lecherous, thinking he must also take good care of the maiden Liu Suang. The Liu Yin disciples didn't know Tiao Zhe's thoughts, only that he promised to fulfill their wish. The three bowed in gratitude to Tiao Zhe saying they would engrave his kindness in their bones. From then on, even if ordered to scale mountains or dive into seas of fire, they would never hesitate. Tiao Zhe found the ancient etiquette tedious and boring. He said he wanted to surf the internet, as it had been too long since he used a phone. He felt very uncomfortable. Shi Qi Dong Su said they would try their best to find what Tiao Zhe wanted, but they had never heard of surfing before. Tiao Zhe explained it involved sisters singing and dancing. He wore light clothing. He laughed at himself for foolishly mentioning those things to the Liu Yin disciples, as how could they understand? But the disciples excitedly looked at each other, saying they got it and would arrange it. In a room of the Liu Yin sword sect, a woman was playing music, while another danced. In the center, Tiao just sat before a banquet, with Liu Suang beside him, surrounded by serving women playing flutes and zithers. Tiao Zhe enjoyed it, feeling this was better than surfing the internet. Women danced before him, while Liu Suang served him wine. Tiao Zhe felt this was the pinnacle of life. Beside him, Liu Suang inwardly cursed Tiao Zhe as a lecher. If not forced by her master, she would never serve wine to such a debauched man. Tiao Zhe pulled Liu Suang close by the waist, grandly ordering the music and dancing to continue. The scene shifted to the sword valley. Liu Suang helped the drunken Tiao Zhe to the sacrifice sword terrace, complaining he didn't know his limits, had poor alcohol tolerance yet still drank recklessly, forcing her to support him back. Liu Suang laid Tiao Zhe on the bed, informing him the sword valley would be his residence from then on. The sect leader had people buy more furniture and assigned her to serve him. Liu Suang removed Tiao Zhe's shoes, mumbling about how the other disciples envied her role, not understanding why they would envy such a thankless task. Tiao Zhe turned and hugged the heaven's defect sword, mistaking it for Liu Suang, saying Shuang Shuang, don't go, I'll take responsibility. Liu Suang looked disgusted, scoffing that he couldn't even distinguish her from a sword, but fantasized about improper things with her. Liu Suang left the room and closed the door, leaving silence inside. Suddenly, a voice came from the heaven's defect sword, saying it was finally quiet, remarking that Tiao Zhe really knew how to torment it. It then glowed brightly, and a second later transformed into a green-robed girl, saying after 8,000 years, she finally saw the sun's light and breathed the human world's fragrance, filling her with joy. This girl was Kweka, the sword spirit of the heaven's defect sword. She praised her new master Tiao Zhe as very handsome. Moreover, he had the rare nine young indestructible body at the third level. She guessed Tiao Zhe must have encountered some fortuitous chance to cultivate it to such a high realm. Truly an opportunity difficult to seek but possible to encounter. Kweka reached out to caress Tiao Zhe's face, planning to first use Tiao Zhe to help find her elder brother, then have her brother help her restore her sword body, 
and finally devoured Tiaoja to quickly regain her full power. Licking her lips as she spoke, suddenly, Tiaoja opened his eyes, repeating Kweka's words, startling her. She panicked, not expecting Tiaoja to be awake. Tiaoja explained his nine young indestructible body at the third level not only made him immune to energy attacks but also helped him sober up quickly. Seeing Tiaoja had woken up yet pretended to hug her, Kweka bluntly said, No man in this world is good, they all like to deceive others. Tiaoja frowned, telling Kweka not to generalize like that. Just because one man deceived her didn't mean all other men were the same. He reminded her that he had saved her from the Sword Valley, yet she showed no gratitude and even wanted to devour him which was repaying kindness with enmity. Kweka realized Tiaoja made sense. Feeling she had gone too far, she appeased by introducing herself as Kweka, the sword spirit. Kweka told Tiaoja that as long as he helped her find her elder brother, she would not devour him. Tiaoja readily agreed to Kweka's condition, asking where her brother was so he could take her to find him. Kweka explained they had not seen each other for 800 years, so she could not sense his direction, leaving the responsibility entirely to Tiaoja. Startled by the 800 Hundred year time frame, Tiaoja quickly asked if Kweka had any memento from her brother. Kweka took out a yellow token with the word demon carved on it, saying it was her brother's battle token. Seeing the word demon, Tiaoja pondered Kweka's origins. Tiaoja tapped the token and said log in but the system said it could not due to the distance being too far. Additionally, it notified him of a main side quest to log into the Celestial Demon Secret Realm, a secret realm level with a three-day time limit. Tiaoja clicked on the Celestial Demon Secret Realm's location to find the route. The Secret Realm's location was at Donghai Fishing Village in Dongzhou. The distance from Lu Yun Sword Sect to Donghai Fishing Village was thousands of kilometers, which Tiaoja considered too far. Seeing Tiaoja staring blankly, Kweka asked where her elder brother was. Tiaoja replied that her brother was in Dongzhou, but they couldn't go there immediately, telling her not to rush. Without airplanes or cars, such a long journey would take at least a month. Kweka called Tiaoja an idiot, explaining that by flying on a sword, they could travel 10,000 miles a day so the distance would only take half a day, not a month. Tiaoja realized he had forgotten, but he was still worried since he was only at the Qi refining stage and couldn't fly a sword. Tiaoja suggested Kweka let him ride her. Kweka stuttered, asking if she had heard correctly. Tiaoja calmly confirmed he meant exactly that. Kweka thought Tiaoja had impure intentions, yet he brazenly affirmed it. Furious, she grabbed his neck, warning if he dared use such vulgar words again, she would kill him without hesitation. Tiaoja hurriedly explained it was a misunderstanding. He meant since he couldn't fly a sword, he wanted to ride her, as in ride her sword to fly, not in the way Kweka had assumed. Realizing her misunderstanding, Kweka released her grip. Tiaoja fell to the ground, coughing. He thought to himself that Kweka was truly a dangerous old woman and he would find a way to punish her. Kweka told Tiaoja that if he agreed to find her brother, she would let him ride her to fly. Tiaoja didn't want to ride on Kweka's body, so he suggested she transform into a sword. Finding it reasonable, Kweka transformed into a sword without suspicion and told Tiaoja to climb on but to wipe his shoes clean first. Seizing the chance, Tiaoja sealed the sword form Kweka into a sword sheath. Kweka panicked, asking what Tiaoja was doing. Tiaoja saw her trying to escape and told her not to waste her efforts. He had used a sealing talisman from the Zhu Xi'an scripture, which even Yuanying cultivators couldn't open. Tiaoja threatened that unless someone opened this sheath, Kweka would never be able to escape in this lifetime. Hearing Tiaoja's threat, Kweka begged him not to treat her this way. She even tempted Tiaoja to release her, promising to let him ride her, but Tiaoja wasn't easily fooled. He told Kweka to stay silent or he would throw her into the toilet. Kweka obediently fell silent upon hearing this. After Kweka fell silent, Tiaoja returned to bed to rest. He muttered that the journey to Dongzhou was arduous and full of obstacles. Who knew what dangers might arise on the way? He was no idle person to suddenly travel so far just to meet some brood. At most, he would abandon this mission and focus on cultivation instead, which would be much safer. At this moment, the system warned that failure to complete the mission would result in punishment. The punishment for not completing the mission would be spinal inflammation, soul dispersion, and complete annihilation. Seeing the system's warning, Tiaoja sat up abruptly, cursing. At the Lu Yun Sword Sect's mountain gate, someone was practicing swordsmanship, and it was Lu Shang. Disciples standing by praised her for breaking through from the middle to late stages of the Zuji realm within just a few months. They called her a genius. Combined with her top-grade spirit sword, they affirmed Lu Shang would surely win the immortal realm debate. They congratulated her. 
Facing the praises of her fellow disciples, Lu Shang felt not joy but great anxiety. While others thought she had peerless talent, her rapid breakthrough was actually due to her dual cultivation with Tiaoja at the Sacrifice Sword Altar. The Immortal Realm debate was approaching, but she had yet to break through to the Golden Core Realm. It would be difficult to bring glory to the sect, let alone win the championship. Originally, Ming Kong was supposed to participate in this Immortal Realm debate, but he's now dead. The heavy responsibility fell on Lu Zhang's shoulders. She wondered if dual cultivating with Tiaoja was the only way to quickly raise her cultivation base. But she immediately dismissed the thought, as she was not a promiscuous woman. At that moment, a disciple came and informed Lu Shang that the sect master had summoned her to the sword pavilion for an urgent matter. She replied that she would be there soon. The scene shifted to the outer courtyard of the sword pavilion. Inside, Lu Shang stood before Shi Yang Zi and Tiao Zhe. Lu Shang wondered why Tiao Zhe was present and greeted Shi Yang Zi and Tiao Zhe. Shi Yang Zi told her there was no need for formalities and cut straight to the matter. He had summoned her regarding the plague in Dongzhou. Rumors said it was caused by evil cultivators, so the righteous path invited the Lu Yun sword sect to go and exterminate the demons. Hearing this, Lu Shang immediately agreed. Shi Yang Zi praised her enthusiasm saying it was good to have such spirit. So he felt reassured to entrust this matter to Lu Shang. Additionally, Shi Chiang Zi mentioned that Tiao Zhe also planned to travel to Dongzhou for training. He suggested they go together and assist each other. On a cliff, Lu Shang and Tiao Zhe were discussing with each other. Being only at the Qi condensation realm, Tiao Zhe couldn't fly on his own sword, so he asked Lu Shang to take him across to Dongzhou. Seeing Tiao Zhe's unabashed expression, Lu Shang realized he had planned this beforehand. Tia just shamelessly claimed it was a mission assigned by the sect master, urging Lu Shang to depart quickly. Lu Shang smiled wickedly, having a plan to get back at Tiao Zhe. She warned him to stand firm, or don't blame her if he fell. Tiao Zhe said he was standing steadily. Hearing that, Lu Shang immediately took off into the sky on her sword. Caught off guard, Tiao Zhe's hand reflexively grabbed onto Lu Zhang's chest. Tiao Zhe was extremely flustered and didn't notice where his hand was. He thought he was about to die. Feeling Tiao Zhe's hand on her chest, Lu Shang scolded him as a scoundrel and tried to swat his hand away. Tiao Zhe was terrified, staggering as he begged Lu Shang to stop, or he would really fall to his death. Lu Shang had to reluctantly accept the loss. She silently slowed down so Tiao Zhe could remove his hand from her body. After a while, they arrived at Dongtansheng, where the plague was raging. The Donghai fishing village, where Tiao Zhe needed to go, was about 100 li away. Lu Shang told Tiao Zhe she would take him there tomorrow. They landed safely in Dongtansheng. Tiao Zhe pleaded with Lu Shang to take him to the Donghai fishing village, claiming he had an urgent matter. Lu Shang refused to help Tiao Zhe, as she had flown all day and needed rest. Tiao Zhe took out a bottle of spirit pills, telling Lu Shang to take them so she could continue flying. He claimed the pills were very effective. Lu Shang turned away, saying she didn't need them. Out of options, Tiao Zhe looked around and noticed there wasn't a single person in the city in broad daylight. He assumed everyone was self-isolating due to the plague. Lu Shang didn't think they were isolating. She led Tiao Zhe to the Lu Yun Sword Sect's branch in Dongtansheng saying they would rest there for the night. It would be convenient for investigating the origin of the plague. When they opened the door, they saw many people lying scattered in the courtyard. Lu Shang was bewildered, unsure what strange situation she was witnessing. She ran to a motionless disciple lying on a table and asked what had happened. Suddenly, Tiao just stopped Lu Zhang's hand, telling her not to touch these people. He explained that they were all dead, and it's unwise to directly touch the corpses of those who died from the plague. Doing so risks contracting the disease. Lu Shang noticed these people weren't just infected, but had their souls and blood drained. She affirmed this was definitely the work of evil cultivators. A commotion came from inside. Lu Shang assumed it was an evil cultivator and charged in with her sword. Her sword was blocked by a tall blade. The one who blocked Lu Zhang's sword was a girl with yellow hair, wearing yellow-themed clothes. She taunted Lu Shang for being rash and attacking without discerning right from wrong. She claimed Lu Shang was jealous of her beauty. An enraged Lu Shang attacked while cursing the yellow-haired girl as a wench. Lu Shang said if she wasn't an evil cultivator, then who else could it be? She told the girl to surrender and accept death. At this point, Tiao Zhe ran in to stop Lu Shang. He insisted the people weren't killed by this yellow-haired girl. 
Lu Shang accused Tiao Zhou of being blinded by the girl's looks, thus defending her. She questioned him, with so many fellow disciples dead, and only the yellow-haired girl remaining at the scene. If she didn't kill them, then who did? Tiao Zhou explained that these people had been dead for days. The killer had long since left, not foolish enough to wait here to die. Lu Shang was stunned by Tiao Zhou's reasoning. The yellow-haired girl then spoke, praising Tiao Zhou's intelligence, and introduced herself as Lam Ying Ying a disciple of the Wan Xian sect, like Lu Shang. She was also dispatched to investigate the plague situation. Tiao Zhe tried to mediate between them, politely apologizing to Lam Ying Ying. Lu Shang then spoke up, saying she had heard of Lam Ying Ying, but this yellow-haired girl didn't seem like a Wan Xian disciple at all. Lu Shang demanded the yellow-haired girl prove her identity. The girl said it was simple, telling them to wait as she retrieved something. She reached into her bosom and took out a yellow token, showing it to Tiao Zhe and Lu Shang, claiming it was proof of her Wan Xian identity. Seeing where Lam Ying Ying kept her belongings, Lu Shang scoffed and called her a demoness. Lam Ying Ying coyly called Tiao Zhe little brother and said Lu Shang was so fierce. She pretended to ask Tiao Zhe if Lu Shang wanted to attack her. Tiao Zhe silently evaluated the situation. Lu Shang wasn't the type of woman with a big chest and small brain. So why did she call Lam Ying Ying a demoness? Tiao Zhe guessed it must be a woman's intuition. At this point, Lam Ying Ying was still acting coy, hugging Tiao Zhe's arm and saying she was terrified by all the dead people around. She asked Tiao Zhe if he would be willing to protect her. Tiao Zhe found Lam Ying Ying a bit too flexible and suspected there was something off about her. He pretended to smile, patting her shoulder to reassure her not to be afraid, promising to protect her. Inwardly, Tiao Zhe wanted to test and verify Lam Ying Ying's true nature. Unfortunately, Lam Ying Ying couldn't read Tiao Zhe's thoughts, so she smiled brightly, praising him as a real gentleman. But in her heart, she was furious, cursing him as a pig for taking advantage of her. She vowed to tear Tiao Zhe into a hundred thousand pieces. Lam Ying Ying then turned to invite Lu Shang to join her and Tiao Zhe. Lu Shang realized Lam Ying Ying was trying to take over as the host. At this moment, Tiao Zhe suddenly took action wanting to test who Lam Ying Ying really was. He reached out and touched Lam Ying Ying's back, causing her to let out an awe and surprise. After touching Lam Ying Ying's back, Tiao Zhe exclaimed Mark. The system notified him, active marking successful. He received a mystery box. Tiao Zhe held the mystery box, wanting to verify Lam Ying Ying's true origins. Inside the box was a pink camisole. Holding it, Tiao Zhe drooled and exclaimed wow. Lam Ying Ying's expression turned unpleasant, suddenly feeling a chill, as if not wearing her camisole. But she remembered putting it on that morning. Lu Shang then told Tiao Zhe she would stay to properly bury their fallen fellows before heading to Donghai Fishing Village. If he couldn't wait, he could go ahead. Tiao Zhe quickly hid the camisole from the mystery box, saying as a member of Lu Yun sect, he would stay to help Lu Shang bury the deceased. Having more experience handling plague victims remains than her. Inwardly, Tiao Zhe chided himself for being so deviant, hiding a woman's undergarment. Though the circumstances were unavoidable, the system notified that the mystery box contained Lam Ying Ying's camisole and a Tian Ma sect token. If the system hadn't reminded him, Tiao Zhe would have forgotten about this Tian Ma sect token. He picked up the token, engraved with the three characters Yu Quaner. So the yellow-haired girl's real identity wasn't Lam Ying Ying, but Yu Quaner, the holy maiden of the Tian Ma sect. Yu Quaner heard Tiao Zhe say he would stay to help Lu Shang bury the deceased, so she used being from the Immortal Alliance as an excuse to also stay and assist them. Tiao Zhe decided not to expose Yu Quaner's true identity yet, wanting to observe what this girl's intentions were. He agreed to let Yu Quaner stay and help bury the dead. The three worked until evening to lay the deceased on the pyre, preparing for cremation. Yu Quaner asked Tiao Zhe why they had to cover their mouths and noses, thinking it was a Lu Yun sect custom. Tiao Zhe read the five precautions to her and explained it was an effective way to prevent disease transmission. He further explained that plague victims' bodies needed cremation, and the grounds required liming for disinfection. After Tiao Zhe's explanation, Yu Quaner praised him for being so knowledgeable. Lu Shang whispered, feeling fortunate that Tiao Zhe agreed to stay and help bury their fellows. Otherwise she risked contracting the plague. Tiao Zhe lit the pyre. The flames roared. Standing before the pyre, Lu Shang told her fallen fellows, Rest assured, I vow to avenge you all. Though new to Lu Yun sect, Tiao Zhe saw it as his home. He promised the deceased their deaths would not be in vain. Yu Quaner chimed in, vowing to seek justice for them. The next morning, a signal flare rose in the sky. 
Lu Shang recognized it as a distress call from the Gen Wu Immortal Court. She deduced Gen Wu cultivators were besieged by evil cultivators, so decided to aid them. She and Tiao Jia rode a flying sword towards the signal's direction with Yu Quaner hurrying after them. Coincidentally, the Gen Wu distress signal originated from Donghai Fishing Village's direction. Tiao just silently wondered if this involved KGE's brother. In Donghai, a man and woman sat cross-legged before an azure blaze. The man, Li Qin Quan, was the Gen Wu crown prince. He called the woman Sis Ngu. He instructed her, if absorbing this soul fire drove him insane, do not hesitate to kill him. This Sis Ngu was actually Ngu Yao Shi the senior master of the Xi'an Ha sect. She gave Li Qin Quan a similar warning. Hearing their mutual instructions, the sword-wielding man mocked them with laughter. This was Hei Feng, the left Dharma protector of the Tianma sect. The azure soul fire came from his nine demon soul scorching formation. Once caught in this formation, an easy death was impossible. Hei Feng waited for the soul scorching energy to exhaust Li Qin Quan and Ngu Yao Shi before draining them dry. Lu Shan arrived, sword raised, demanding Hei Feng surrender. Seeing her reckless charge, Hei Feng scoffed at another offering their life. He thrust his sword into the soul fire, the azure flames wreathing the blade. He parried Lu Zhang's sword, the azure flames transferring to her blade. Alarmed as the flames spread to her arm, Li Qin Quan warned Lu Shang it was soul fire, urging her to flee quickly. But it was too late, a searing pain lanced through Lu Zhang's head, making her clutch her skull and scream feeling her very soul burning. Hei Feng approached the writhing Lu Shang. He lured her, saying the pain would cease if she looked into his eyes. Before Lu Shang fell for the trap, Hei Feng adjusted her head, forcing them face to face, eyes locked. Now he could examine the beauty before him. Lu Shang of Lu Yun sect, blossomed unexpectedly gorgeous. Hei Feng intended to defile Lu Shang in front of Li Qin Quan and Ngu Yao Shi claiming the flavor of righteous disciples was most delightful. Lu Shang froze and collapsed. Hei Feng scoffed, bidding her sleep well. In her dazed state, Lu Shang mistook him for Tiao Jia, urging him not to do this shameful act here. Tiao Jia and Yu Quan are observed from afar. Seeing Hei Feng's vile intent towards Lu Shang, Tiao Jia cursed his grandmother. How dare he touch Tiao Jia's woman? Tiao Jia moved to attack, but Yu Quaner stopped him, warning he was no match for the Golden Core Hei Feng with his nine demon soul scorching formation. Even a Yuan Ying expert would struggle. Tiao Jia disregarded Yu Quaner's advice. If he couldn't protect his own woman, what kind of man was he? He charged recklessly towards Hei Feng, determined to fight despite the odds. Yu Quaner could only watch anxiously as the fierce battle unfolded. Seeing Tiao Jia's resolve, Yu Quaner warned him not to look into Hei Feng's eyes to avoid the soul scorching fire. Just as Hei Feng was about to touch Lu Shang, Tiao Jia approached, pointing at his face, ordering him away. He asserted Lu Shang was his woman, and only he could defile her. Li Qin Quan and Ngu Yao Shi whispered joyfully, thinking help had finally arrived. Based on Tiao Jia's spirit, they guessed he was a Yuan Ying cultivator, but their hopes were dashed when they realized Tiao Jia was merely at the Qi refining stage. They deemed him a fool offering his head to the enemy. Hei Feng, seeing Tiao Jia's low cultivation, laughed that today was a great harvest, he could drain Tiao Jia freely. Hei Feng raised his sword, saying there was no need for soul fire against a mere qi refiner like Tiao Jia. A casual swing would crush him. Hei Feng thrust his sword at the nonchalant Tiao Jia, who showed no fear or panic before the strike. Li Qin Quan and Ngu Yao Shi watched in disbelief as Tiao Jia stood motionless against Hei Feng's attack. They expected him to be instantly killed, but Tiao Jia remained calm and unflinching. They assumed Tiao Jia would surely die. But when Hei Feng's sword struck Tiao Jia, an unexpected phenomenon occurred. Tiao Jia remained unharmed, while Hei Feng's sword inexplicably shattered. Hei Feng broke out in a cold sweat, unable to believe what happened. He wondered if his sword was a fake. Li Qin Quan was equally astonished, having assumed Tiao Jia's imminent death moments ago. Yet Tiao Jia stood unscathed, while Hei Feng's sword was damaged. He wondered what was happening. Then Tiao Jia clenched his fist and punched towards Hei Feng, saying he wouldn't draw his sword. He told Hei Feng this was already an advantage for him. Tiao Jia shouted righteous light. A radiance illuminated the ground as he punched Hei Feng, making him cough up blood and fly back. Witnessing this, Ngu Yao Shi gaped in disbelief. A qi refiner punching a golden core? What sort of situation was this? Knocked down, 
Hei Fung clutched his chest, pondering. Though he didn't know why his sword couldn't pierce Tiao Zhe, even Tiao Zhe's formidable defense was useless. He was confident, for next he would use his Daozong Zinmo technique. Although not at its peak, he had attained some proficiency. Hei Fung looked at Tiao Zhe, his eyes emitting a purple glow. He lured Tiao Zhe to gaze into his eyes, see what's there. Yu Quaner quickly warned Tiao Zhe about Hei Feng's gaze. Then a handful of lime powder flew into Hei Feng's eyes, causing him excruciating pain and rolling around screaming. Li Qin Quan and Ngu Yao Shi didn't expect Tiao Zhe to counter Hei Feng by throwing lime in his eyes. It was an unpredictable move, and they found Tiao Zhe quite interesting. Tiao Zhe dusted his hands, saying he luckily had leftover lime from sterilization. Hei Feng lashed out blindly asking where Tiao Zhe was and vowing to kill him. Tiao Zhe kicked Hei Feng towards the soul fire, telling him to find his ancestors. Hei Feng fell into the soul fire, eyes bulging, screaming incessantly. His Daozong Zinmo only needed one more soul to reach completion. He refused to die like this. The system announced that after killing a late golden core cultivator, Tiao Zhe's physical body gained 200 points after killing the late golden core cultivator. Li Qin Quan and Ngu Yao Shi, freed from the soul fire's control, stood up and thanked Tiao Zhe. Carrying Lu Shang, Tiao Zhe said they were all fellow cultivators, no need for courtesies. Seeing Lu Zhang's condition, Ngu Yao Shi offered to help, but Tiao Zhe declined. Ngu Yao Shi tried giving healing pills, but Tiao Zhe refused again. Ngu Yao Shi realized Lu Shang only needed a sobering pill but didn't understand why Tiao Zhe declined her goodwill. Tiao Zhe asked Li Qin Quan and Ngu Yao Shi if there was a nearby place with a soft grassy area to rest. Puzzled by the strange question, they both let out a confused huh? Li Qin Quan quickly said the nearby houses had plagues, so they couldn't stay there. But if they went two miles east, there was a shore with fishing boats to rest on. Upon hearing this, Tiao Zhe swiftly carried Lu Shang eastward. Li Qin Quan and Ngu Yao Shi watched him hurry off wondering aloud, does healing really require a soft grassy area? At the azure shore, a fishing boat was moored. Tiao Zhe carried Lu Shang aboard. He removed his clothes to line the boat for Lu Shang to lie on. Then he supported her head and gave her a pill, telling her to quickly take it. Lu Shang asked what the pill was. Tiao Zhe replied it was a great revitalizing pill. Hearing this, Lu Shang blushed and turned away, saying such a precious pill was unworthy for her. Tiao Zhe said it was fine. He would give Lu Shang the remaining great revitalizing pills, one per day, as a tonic. He then put the pill in Lu Zhang's mouth. She then asked about potential side effects. Tiao Zhe laid her down and said, Don't worry about that, I'll help you expel any side effects. It will just be a bit taxing for me, nothing major. Tiao Zhe then began removing Lu Zhang's clothes. Blushing shyly, Lu Shang said if it was to help her, she had no reason to blame Tiao Zhe. Then the boat rocked violently. Lu Zhang's voice rang out, My lord, please be gentle. The next day at dawn, Tiao Zhe stepped to the front of the fishing boat, shrugging his shoulders, sighing he didn't envy birds and immortals, only envied his own daily life. Lu Shang then emerged from the boat's cabin, telling Tiao Zhe the demon cultivator was eliminated. The disease investigation mission is also over. My task is done, do you need my help with yours? Tiao Zhe, seeing Lu Shang, praised her beauty. He silently marveled that a well-tended woman grows lovelier each day. Embarrassed, Lu Shang told Tiao Zhe to respect himself. Tiao Zhe left the boat, asking Lu Shang to come along. He had a feeling the path ahead might lead to Donghai Fishing Village. Now Lu Shang, Tiao Zhe, Li Qin Quan, Ngu Yao Shi and Yu Quaner had gathered around a well. Li Qin Quan said this was the source of the plague. Yesterday, Hei Feng ambushed them from here. Yu Quaner asked what was inside the well. Li Qin Quan deduced the plague's cause was in this well. Tiao Zhe frowned, intending to descend and inspect. Lu Shang then asked about the plague's origin. Li Qin Quan explained Hei Feng intentionally spread the disease, waiting for people to suffer before devouring their souls. Aside from Dongda Sword Sect, all of Dongtai City had become a plague zone. Ngu Yao Shi added that Hei Feng's goal was to refine his Daozong Zinmo technique using those souls. Only by eliminating the source in this well could the plague be stopped. The dead were as numerous as fallen leaves. Grave 
leaves sprouted like mushrooms, and the population loss was immense. Hearing this, Ngu Yao Shi cursed Tian Masect as worse than beasts. Cultivating such a heaven defying and unrighteous technique, Yu Quan er refuted Ngu Yao Shi, saying although Tian Masect cultivated demonic arts, their rules forbade devouring living souls like this. This was solely Hei Feng's doing. Li Qin Quan noticed something amiss, asking Yu Quan er why she defended Tian Masect. He asked this because currently Yu Quan er was using her fake identity Lam Ying Ying not her real one. Yu Quan er waved her hands dismissively, laughing it off and telling Li Qin Quan not to misunderstand. She explained the ultimate goal of cultivating the great Tao was to ascend as an immortal or demon. Devouring souls incurs karmic retribution, leading to tribulation lightning during tribulation trials, preventing successful ascension. Tian Ma sect, though demonic cultivators, still wished to ascend. Doing so would cost more than gain. Tiao Jia found Yu Quaner's words reasonable. He revealed before dying, Hei Feng mentioned the Daozong Zinmo, an ancient secret technique of Tian Ma sect. Tiao Jia deduced Hei Feng devoured souls to cultivate this technique. Hearing Tiao Jia mention Daozong Zinmo, Yu Quaner said it focused on cultivating divine consciousness and primordial spirit. Devouring others' souls could indeed hasten the process but this technique had been lost long ago. Suddenly, a strange phenomenon occurred at the well. A passageway appeared with crows circling above. Seeing this, Ngu Yao Shi deduced the well was an entrance to a secret realm. Li Qin Quan stated such realms were extremely rare in the mortal world, countable on one's fingers. Encountering one today was a great opportunity. Li Qin Quan cautioned this was the realm's first appearance. Though treasures awaited, it would be extremely dangerous. With their cultivation, entering would be perilous. He suggested reporting it to the righteous sects, letting the elders retrieve the treasures safely. Lu Shang agreed with Li Qin Quan. Tiao just silently evaluated Li Qin Quan as cautious and leader-like, with high potential to become the next leader of the Righteous Sects Alliance. As for Yu Quan Er, she was secretly worried as this demonic realm belonged to her Tian Ma sect. What right did those Righteous Sects have to come here and exploit it? The truth was, Yu Quan Er was sent by her father to eliminate Hei Feng and retrieve the stolen demon sect decree. But from the current situation, it seemed Hei Feng had used the demon sect decree to enter the secret realm, and learned the Daozong Zinmo technique from within. Daozong Zinmo was the lost supreme heart technique of the demon sect. Yu Quan Er was determined to obtain this heart technique for her sect, and prevent it from falling into the righteous sect's hands. But if she informed her father now, it would be too late. So before the righteous experts arrived, she had to act quickly. At this moment, Dian Shijian led a group over, saying there was no need to bother the sect elders. He reasoned that after years of bitter cultivation, wasn't this the moment they had awaited? Seeing Dian Shijian, Li Qin Quan angrily questioned him, the Dian Yuan sect was nearest, yet you arrived last. Did you not see our distress signal yesterday? Dian Shijian arrogantly replied, so what if I saw it? You think you're in the Zhenview Immortal Court or something? He warned Li Qin Quan not to put on airs, here. Li Qin Quan was nothing. Hearing Dian Shijian's vulgar yet accurate words, Li Qin Quan was furious but could only grudgingly acquiesce. Dian Shijian turned to Tiao Jia mockingly, Oh, look who's here, our Qi refiner friend. Tiao Jia asked if Dian Shijian's tardiness was due to visiting his late uncle's grave. Dian Shijian gritted his teeth in anger, but was powerless against Tiao Jia. He turned to persuade the young disciples, saying their gathering today must be fated. Asserting Dian Yuan sect status, Dian Shijian took the lead, proposing the five sects ally to enter the realm for treasures. Any sect withdrawing would forfeit entry. He urged a swift decision. Lu Shang protested, they risked their lives discovering this realm. Yet this scoundrel Dian Shijian shamelessly claimed ownership. Ngu Yao Shi also objected to following Dian Shijian's lead, deeming him unfit. Li Qin Quan advised unity over infighting. Tiao just silently re-evaluated him, retracting his earlier praise. Though farsighted, Li Qin Quan lacked decisiveness. He could only be a prince, not the sovereign ruler the five sects needed. At this point, Yu Quan er raised her hand, agreeing with Dian Shijian's proposal to enter the realm. Pleased to have a follower. Dian Shijian invited Yu Quan'er in first. She leapt into the well's mouth and vanished. Seeing her enter, 
Li Qinquan and Ngu Yao Shi also decided to go in. The two jumped into the well simultaneously and disappeared. Lu Shang then asked Tiao Zhe if the two of them would enter as well. Tiao Zhe replied that they couldn't let others monopolize this opportunity, and the two entered the secret realm. Inside, they found themselves in the Demon God Hall, a simple place, with a stone statue in the center and another at the main seat. Dian Shijian mocked, you call this crude place a demon god hall? In other secret realms, even the floor tiles are millennium old jade, yet here all we have is a rock. Li Qinquan suggested searching for any hidden treasures. Lu Shang noted the massive statue, then observed everyone rummaging like starving tigers, finding them quite frightening. Tiao Zhe thought the frightening thing was not the people, but the statue seated in the main position which he regarded with trepidation. He deduced this statue was the master of the demon sect's secret realm, emanating an overwhelming oppressive aura. At this moment, Tiao Zhe's incomplete sword trembled slightly, leading him to guess this was the person KCA was searching for. KCA confirmed Tiao Zhe's speculation. The statue was of Tian Mazhanshan, her elder brother. She could sense her brother's aura from it. KCA told Tiao Zhe to release her. Li Qinquan approached Tian Mazhanshan's statue, noticing its hands held a token, the demon sect decree, the sect's supreme treasure. As Li knew, the decree was an heirloom of the ancient patriarchs, containing inherited techniques. He couldn't believe it was here. As Li reached for the decree, Yu Quaner hurriedly stopped him, warning him not to touch it. Li asked why. Yu Quaner explained the decree was the key to this realm. Taking it from the stone statue would immediately trigger a lockdown, endangering everyone present. Hearing Yu Quaner's explanation, Li Qinquan thanked her for the warning, admitting he had nearly doomed them all. Then, a hand snatched the demon sect decree. It was Dian Shijian. After taking it, he told Li Qinquan and Yu Quaner that since they didn't want such a treasure, he'd take it. Yu Quaner and Li Qinquan quickly retreated from Tian Mazhanshan's statue, cursing Dian Shijian as a scoundrel for dooming them all. Tiao Zhe calmly called Dian Shijian a foolish pest. Dian Shijian dismissed it as a forgotten realm, denying Yu Quaner's claim of a lockdown and mocking their cowardice. Suddenly, sounds came from Tian Mazhanshan's statue. Its head began spinning. Seeing this, Ngu Yao Shi thought she was hallucinating. Yu Quaner panicked, exclaiming they were doomed. She grabbed Tiao Zhe's hand, urging everyone to flee. But when they reached the entrance, Yu Quaner couldn't find it. Only a stone wall. She frantically patted it, muttering open up, please, open up, please. Tiao Zhe, standing beside her, advised her not to waste effort. Once the lockdown was triggered, they couldn't leave without disabling it. Suddenly, the statue's eyes emitted a red beam of light, shining directly on a group of disciples. Those the red light hit, their eyes turned red, a sign of demonic possession driving them to slaughter each other. Li Qinquan and Ngu Yao Shi witnessed this, puzzled why they were attacking their own. Their pleas for them to stop fell on deaf ears. Reason had left them. Soon after, those struck by the red light had massacred each other, none surviving. Tiao Zhe recognized this as the demonic heart seed. He warned everyone to avoid the statue's gaze, lest the red light possess them too. The statue's head began spinning again. Tiao Zhe urged them to flee. Li Qinquan swiftly grasped the situation, shouting for everyone to run. Desperately trying to escape the red light's range, some managed to, others did not. Tiao Zhe noticed the red light's area had expanded. Those caught in it became possessed, their killing intent heightened as they viciously slaughtered their peers. A gruesome scene. After a while, the statue's head began spinning again. Ngu Yao Shi worried about where the red light would spread to next, and what fate awaited them. Li Qinquan angrily berated Dian Shijian for taking the demon sect decree, landing them in this predicament. Dian Shijian showed no remorse, nonchalantly admitting he didn't expect such a formidable lockdown. The stone head stopped, signaling the red light's imminent expansion. Lu Shang told Tiao Zhe, Your Excellency, I'm scared. Yu Quaner too was terrified, never having witnessed such a high-level demonic heart seed. Tiao Zhe shamelessly put his arms around the two beauties, saying he was scared too. As the red light emanated from Tian Mazhanshan's statue's eyes, the three, Tiao Zhe, Lu Shang and Yu Quaner, feigned fear, pleading for the red light to avoid them. It passed in front of them. Dian Shijian sighed in relief they weren't hit. Yu Quaner worried if it was in front this time, wouldn't they die next time? Tiao Zhe reassured them not to panic. The more danger, the calmer they must be. He analyzed that any lockdown mechanism has a way to disable it, following its own principles. If they could find that principle, they could disable the lockdown. 
Tiaoja noticed the statue in the center of the hall, recognizing it as the three monkeys, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. Tiaoja suddenly understood the lockdown's principle. He explained to everyone that by not hearing, seeing or speaking, they wouldn't be affected by the lockdown. Dian Shijian doubtfully asked if that was true. Yu Quanar chose to trust Tiaoja, as they had no other options left. The stone statue had finished turning its head, preparing to expand the red light. Tiaoja reminded Lu Shang to cover her ears, eyes and mouth. Fearing she might harm Tiaoja if possessed, Lu Shang considered suicide. The statue's eyes now glowed red. Tiaoja saw time was running out, covering his own ears. Suddenly, a system notification appeared. Login successful. Received a blind box. The item inside was headphones. The red light expanded, shining directly at them. Tiaoja had put on the headphones, covering Lu Zhang's ears with his hands, and sealing her mouth with a deep kiss. Dian Shijian had also closed his eyes and covered his ears, while a few others succumbed, collapsing beside him. At this point, Dian Shijian became confused. Unable to see or hear, he didn't know the current situation. A thought suddenly crossed his mind, why should he trust Tiaoja? With his cultivation level, he was confident he could resist the red light. Thinking this, he opened his eyes and uncovered his ears, exuding confidence. Confidence. Then his eyes turned red, a sign of demonic possession. Dian Shijian drew his sword and massacred those in front of him, now out of control, filled with murderous intent. After killing those around, he turned his sword towards Tiaoja's group. An idea formed in Tiaoja's mind. He planned to have Yu Quaner deal with Dian Shijian. He kicked Yu Quaner's bottom, enraging her. In her anger, she forgot to cover her ears, eyes and mouth. She turned, cursing and looking for the culprit who kicked her bottom. Immediately possessed, she grabbed her dagger and slashed at Dian Shijian. Seeing Yu Quaner attack, Dian Shijian quickly switched to defense, deflecting one of her dagger strikes. The statue then stopped emitting the red light. Dian Shijian and Yu Quaner regained consciousness, unaware of their actions while possessed. From behind, Tiaoja struck Dian Shijian's head with a staff. Tiaoja's strike knocked Dian Shijian unconscious. Tiaoja then smiled brightly, explaining he was possessed and couldn't control his actions. But deep down, Tiaoja silently cursed Dian Shijian. If he hadn't greedily taken the demon sect decree, they wouldn't be in this situation. Knocking Dian Shijian out was letting him off easy. If others weren't present, Tiaoja would have taken his life. Yu Quaner asked Tiaoja if he had kicked her bottom. Tiaoja denied it, blaming Dian Shijian instead. Lu Shang reminded them not to dally, urging them to quickly return the demon sect decree. From afar, Yu Quaner kept hitting Dian Shijian, unconcerned about the other two. Tiaoja continued observing the wooden figure. This contraption looked just like the Mugungwa doll from Squid Game. It would count to 123 then turn around. If it detected movement, it would shoot. Was the designer a Squid Game fanatic? The wooden doll began moving again. Fortunately, he had logged into the headphones from the blind box earlier. Otherwise, he wouldn't have survived the first wave. The statue's eyes glowed red. He placed the decree in its hand. Finally done. In front of him, a group mourned those who had died. Huhu, junior sister, I couldn't protect everyone. Why did they all die? How can I explain this when we return? He calmly told everyone, that's enough. You all should leave. This place is not meant for you. The group slowly stood up and bowed. Thank you, Senior Tiaoja, for saving us today. We'll repay this life debt another day. Let's take our leave. Dian Shijian raised his hands to stop them. Don't go. Don't be fooled by him. The mechanism is unlocked. The demon sect museum is right before us. And now he wants us to leave? He wants to monopolize the museum. Dream on. If you don't leave, suit yourselves. Even if you stay, you'll only eat shit. Ting. Location verified for accessing the secret realm. Demon sect secret realm. Initiating auto login. Login successful. Received secret realm blind box. Open or not? Best not to open the blind box hastily. Let's leave this troublesome place first, then decide. Suddenly, a sword tapped the statue. The protagonists turned to look. It was Dian Shijian playing tricks. He said the museum must be hidden inside this statue. He was certain of it. This guy really was a ticking time bomb. At that moment, the statue's eyes suddenly opened. Its face looked terrifying. She thought silently, no, this can't be. He covered her mouth with his hand, telling her not to scream. It wasn't that he wouldn't save Dian Shijian, but if she screamed, the ones who would die are them. 
That person has ill intentions, if he doesn't die, there will be no justice. On this side, Dian Shijian was about to flee but stopped. A chain pulled him back. A primordial Yuan Ying of the Golden Steel Body Realm grabbed him. He cried out in fear, save me. The five sects are like one family. How can we not save him when he's facing death? We must risk our lives to rescue Senior Dian. Junior Sister Lam makes sense. Go ahead then. Yu Quaner said, I'll go home and eat first. Another chain appeared, binding her tightly. Her undergarments were exposed. Embarrassed, he saw this and got a nosebleed. The tiger's buttocks belonged to the sect leader. You really know how to have fun. Li Qin Quan told his junior sister, please help me. The alchemist introduced the hallucinogenic pill, which could temporarily upgrade his supreme spiritual sword to the apex grade. He leapt up, sword pointed at the beast. Vile beast. I'm at the middle golden core stage, cultivating the supreme martial arts of the true martial immortal dynasty using an apex spiritual sword killing you is like killing a dog contrary to his imagination the beast raised its hand crushing his sword the siblings were shocked the sword broke the beast grabbed them both they cried for help allies and friends how can you just watch and not care but her cultivation was no match for the golden steel body only the senior lord could save them now she begged him please save them i'll repay you he happily accepted this favor. Since ancient times, beauties have brought disaster. In the end, he couldn't resist the lure of a beauty. Tiaja unsheathed his sword, flying towards the beast. Its eyes opened wide, locking onto the target. He shouted, Lu Yun Ninth Sword Art, Glacial Strike. In an instant, the beast was sliced into pieces. The crowd watched in shock. One sword killed three primordial Yuan Ying beasts. How terrifying for just the Qi refining stage. She marveled, he's grown so much stronger in just a few days. Yu Quaner smirked, amused. Indeed a hidden master. Thank goodness he didn't reveal it earlier, or I'd be done for. The system notification appeared. Harvested primordial Yuan Ying Beast, plus 1000 physical constitution. Congratulations, host has advanced to the fourth cycle of the Nine Yang Golden Steel Body. Ting, killed primordial Yuan Ying Beast, plus 1000 corporeal vigor. Ting, killed primordial Yuan Ying Beast, plus 1000 corporeal vigor. 77,000 more corporeal vigor needed to advance to the fifth cycle. He savored this advancement. His body now possessed the power of the primordial Yuan Ying stage. Combined with divine armor and a divine sword, he finally had the ability to defend himself. Shui Kaya appeared behind him, smirking mockingly. HMPH, self-defense? You think too highly of yourself. Go die, you scum. She grabbed his head, intending to twist it with force. He told her to wait and brought up the box. Indeed, he had guessed correctly. Her brother must be the celestial demon war god. And this is the celestial demon museum he left behind. If she wants to find him, the only clue lies within. This is just a storage box after all. She could kill him first, then open it, no problem. You're mistaken, he said. This is an interdimensional object. If I die, it will disappear. Then you can forget about seeing the celestial demon museum. Hearing this, she withdrew her hand. This guy is quite special. She'll trust him for now. She warned him not to seal her again, or else the Celestial Demon Museum will kill him, whether she wants it or not. He promised her, this time he absolutely won't deceive her. Lu Shang told him she had gone around but couldn't find the exit. It seems they're trapped here until death. Tiaoja assured her, don't worry, I'm here. Holding the sword, he asked Shui Kaya, since this is your brother's territory, you must know the way out, right? Shui Kaya suggested he try integrating this token with the statue. Hearing that, he did as instructed. Yu Quaner was surprised to see the war god token in his hand. As expected, the gate finally opened. Everyone cheered happily and rushed inside. Yu Quaner recalled, ancient legends said when the celestial demon order and war god order unite, they can access the demonic Tao, allowing demon cultivators to ascend to demonhood. Possessing both tokens means commanding all demon cultivators. She excitedly approached, about to become the foremost demon cultivator. A hand suddenly patted her back, telling her to wake up. Tiaoja took the two tokens, cheerfully declaring he'd help Shui Kaya keep them first. Then the secret realm started shaking. Oh no, it has a self-destruct mechanism. Run. After exiting, Dian Shijian pondered deeply. Tiaoja also brought him out. Everyone was out, yet he didn't sheathe his sword. Could he intend to kill Dian Shijian? Perhaps he misunderstood. Shui Kaya never goes into a sheath. Dian Shijian angrily left a line. The lofty mountain remains unchanged. The long river flows on. Wait until they mock immortals and debate the Tao. To see how Tiaoja handles it. Then he flew away. 
Tiaoja felt vexed, since when did he offend this foolish lord's son? Yu Quaner angrily complained, finally out. I almost got crushed in there. Li Qianqian sighed, we shouldn't have gone in. Not only did we find no treasure, but so many fellow cultivators were needlessly injured. Just then, an elderly man pushed a cart with a corpse on it. Foolish alchemist gestured for him to stop. This person may still be breathing. Why wrap him up to discard him? The old man sighed, once infected, death is certain. Only the child and I remain at home. Fearing I'll go first, I plan to find him an auspicious resting place. Moved, foolish alchemist confidently said she could cure this illness. Tiaoja kindly reminded her, don't use bare hands, you'll get infected. She angrily said as a golden core, immune to a hundred toxins, how could I fear this minor sickness? Tiaoja said, foolish fellow, please don't be careless. Treating plagues requires covering the nose and mouth with cloth, wearing gloves, and using lime water for disinfection. Foolish alchemist laughed dismissively. Isn't he making a mountain out of a molehill? Curing the sick is our Zeonhe sect's specialty. Just a few detoxifying pills and this illness will be gone. Tiaoja frowned, angrily telling her to shut up. It's because they were careless about the plague and ignored warnings that it has spread so severely. If she cures him like this, in a few days she'll also perish here. She refused to back down, arguing loudly. If you understand plagues so well, let's have a contest. I'll go to the high river shore and treat the 28 plagued villages there. You go to Dongjin City to handle the epidemic. Let's see who finishes first. They glared at each other, determined. A contest? I'm not afraid. Before leaving, Li Qianqian told him to wait. This is the tiger tally of the Gen Wu Immortal Court. Holding it can mobilize the elite troops of Dongjin's main camp. Tiaoja should use it. He handed the tiger tally to Tiaoja, who solemnly said he accepted it on behalf of Dongjin's citizens, thanking the prince. Then he and Lu Shang flew away on swords. Foolish alchemist thanked Yu Quaner for agreeing to help. Unfortunately, she rushed off, saying she shouldn't have come and must help the Supreme Lord instead. She must seize the Celestial Demon Order and War God Order. Back to Tiaoja's side, Lu Shang asked where they should go first. This cannot be delayed to Dongjin's main camp to borrow troops. He then smiled happily, didn't you say you wanted to repay me? Let's get started. Lu Shang blushed, doing that while flying? I might lose control. Yu Quaner cursed angrily from the side at their flirting. At Dongjin's location, soldiers reported the situation. General, Chief Clerk Zhang has brought two virgins. When will you enjoy them? The man on the pavilion was Li Fei, a golden core cultivator, the general of Dongjin's main camp. He smiled delightedly, that Zhang Renqi really knows how to have fun. Take them to bathe first. Before finishing, he noticed arrivals. Cultivators? The soldiers brought in Tiaoja's group, saying they were important guests. Li Fei thought, the court said they'd send people to handle the plague. It must be them. He looked at Lu Shang lustfully, never imagining such a beauty existed in this world. One a peak nascent soul, one an early golden core. Taking them wouldn't be easy. Looks like I hit the jackpot today. Tiao just sternly showed the tiger tally, ordering Li Fei to ready the troops immediately. To follow his command, seeing the tally, Li Fei was shocked and knelt obediently. Tiao Jia ordered him to gather all soldiers, covering their mouths and noses with cloth, each carrying ten caddies of lime. After a while, follow him into the city. Li Fei obeyed, calling the soldiers in. He whispered to the guards to bring his fairy intoxicating wine. After a while, the soldiers had assembled, ready to depart. Li Fei eagerly offered wine, saying it was military custom for officers to drink before battle to avoid drunkenness later. This scoundrel didn't have good intentions. On this mission, who knows if they'd survive. Their lives entrusted to this man. Holding the wine cup, Tiao Jia pondered. The Dongzhou plague had lasted months. Previously, the Gen Wu court sent Li Fei to aid them, but he delayed and didn't help. So the court sought help from the orthodox sects, even sending the prince with the tiger tally. Yet when he showed it, Li Fei didn't verify his identity, quickly agreeing to mobilize troops. Now offering wine, he feared something was amiss. Li Fei also offered wine to the two ladies beside him. You two drink up too, for our soldiers' safe departure. Tiao just suddenly realized, there was a problem with the wine. All three held the cups as Li Fei inwardly rejoiced. First, I'll kill this man. Then one girl to the left, one to the right. After playing enough, I'll refine them into pills. The wine cups dropped, the two ladies dizzy, unaware of what Li Fei had laced the wine with. He smiled lecherously, you're drunk, let me take you to rest. The ladies paled in horror, we don't need that. Tiao Jia, ignored, spoke up, didn't you forget something? Li Fei turned, surprised he wasn't affected. Forget it, the answer means nothing to you. He just needed to deal with Tiao Jia. 
Tia just scoffed, kill me, you dream, Li Fei mocked. Tia just just a qi condensation cultivator, killing him is like swatting a bug. Li Fei smiled smugly, condensing his power. A green dragon appeared, to die by the Li family's divine martial art under the Gen Wu court. Tiao Zhe won't feel too bad. The soldiers felt worried for Tiao Zhe. Oh heavens, that's the royal family's divine martial art. He's doomed. The general has offended fate. Contrary to expectations, Tiao Zhe easily dodged and struck back with his sword. Li Fei couldn't believe it, collapsing. How's that possible? He's just qi condensation? Impossible. Everyone was shocked. The general was defeated. With one sword strike, he killed the general. This person is terrifying. Li Fei's head was severed as he cried out in pain. Tiao Zhe coldly said, You are all soldiers of Dongtai City. Today, the traitor Li Fei has been executed on the spot. Immediately follow me into the city to aid the people. Any negligence will lead to this fate. The soldiers chorused their obedience. The two ladies from afar kept praising him. Valiant and resolute, perfectly fitting the Tianma sect's teachings. The Marquis braved the Gen Wu court's wrath to save the people from disaster. Truly a righteous gentleman. Tiao Zhe worriedly asked if they were all right, blaming himself. Fearing exposure, he didn't secretly inform them, causing their suffering. They said Yu Quaner had an antidote in her bag. He could retrieve and give it to them. He kept patting her body searching for the antidote. She guided him up, then realized something amiss. Her face flushed red. She had forgotten not wearing undergarments. He happily found the antidote, feeding it to Yu Quaner and Lu Shang. Their faces turned alluringly red from the medicine. The sword he carried lit up. Kaiat Ca asked when he would give her the Tianma treasure. He told her not to be impatient, dealing with the plague was more important. He'd give it to her when free. Kaiat Ca licked her lips, smiling eerily. If I don't get it soon, every deity needs to drink blood, and it must be fresh blood from the living. He'd better hurry, or the dead one will be him. Tiao Zhe frowned. She must be a blood-sucking sword spirit. I'll get her some black dog's blood to try. Finally, they reached Dongtai City. After the plague spread, County Magistrate Zhang Renji gathered the people in his mansion to protect them. It seems the County Magistrate is a good official caring for the people. The gates opened, and Dongtai City's Magistrate Zhang Renji appeared. He politely said, My apologies for not greeting the Imperial Envoy from afar. Please, come in to discuss. He asked if all Dongtai's survivors were here. The Magistrate affirmed, They're all here. This is a medical station, where all the infected receive treatment. Before recovery, none may leave. He praised, isolation for treatment. You did well. Lu Shang happily said, it seems well managed here, the plague should end soon. Yu Quaner pondered silently, this is karma created by our Tianma sect. I wanted to make amends, but it seems there's no chance now. Suddenly, a man rushed in frantically, screaming to be helped. He said he regretted not selling his daughter anymore. He begged Tiao Zhe to return the girl to him. Tiao Zhe was puzzled. What girl? Zhang Renji pointed at him, ordering, You, shut up. Tomorrow your daughter will return. Don't bother the Imperial Envoy. He then ordered the man dragged away. Tiao Zhe quickly said, Stop, everyone leave. Tiao Zhe asked the man what happened. The man cried, explaining, Having no money for food, I sold my wife yesterday. Today I had to sell my daughter too. I'm not human anymore. Lu Shang was shocked, selling wife and child, just for food? Tiao Zhe found it odd. The man was a county official, yet couldn't afford food. How much is a bushel of grain? Zhang Renji said, 5 wen a bushel. But the man said, 50 tails. Tiao Zhe was stunned. The Gen Wu dynasty has had bountiful harvests every year. 5 wen is the market price. But 50 tails for a bushel? Isn't that terribly excessive? The man kept kowtowing, begging to be forgiven for speaking recklessly in panic. He had no choice but to sell his family, swearing he dared not misspeak. It was the exorbitant grain prices that caused so many to starve to death. His money depleted, he was forced to sell wife and child. Zhang Renji pointed at Tiao Apti, saying he had truly lost his mind. The evil deeds of demons caused this plague, leading the people into misery. He always cared for the people, how could he commit such heartless acts? Clearly, failing to get an official post from him, this man intentionally slandered him before the imperial envoys. Tiao Apti protested, you colluded with General Li, sealed the city gates, imprisoning the plague victims. Suddenly, music rang out. A beautiful girl stood playing a horn. Tiao just sensed something amiss, the sound was peculiar. Tiao Apti suddenly coughed blood, then collapsed in pain. His condition was unstable, the plague flaring up. 
but Tiaoja found it odd. Even for the plague, it couldn't flare so rapidly. He looked towards the tree where she stood. Who's there? Tiao Apti's death may be related to her. Zhang Renji hurriedly suggested. Sir, we cannot linger here. Please, to another courtyard. You seem fatigued. Rest first. Tonight, I've arranged a banquet to welcome you. He didn't refuse. Zhang Renji smiled contentedly. It seems these scoundrels can no longer be kept here. I must inform the celestial maiden to eliminate all those involved. In a courtyard of Zhang Renji's mansion, Tiaoja's group sat discussing. Yu Quan are reported, as you instructed, I visited every household to inquire. Indeed, a bushel of grain costs five wen. I also sent my divine consciousness to inspect Dongtai and Qin cities, but found no place imprisoning the common people. He was puzzled, could I have been too suspicious? Moreover, Tiao Apti's grievance seemed personal. His claim of selling wife and child for food must be fabricated. This place is very orderly, with people settled. How could such a tragedy occur? Yet he still felt something was amiss. All the people they saw today were well dressed, perhaps from wealthy families. Where are the poor? Could they all have perished? He asked Kaya Tsie, what do you think? Yu Quaner wondered if he was talking to his soul sword, but she sensed no soul within his sword. He was a bit surprised. You can't sense it? Kaya Tsie explained, your cultivation is low, so you can't see or sense me, unless I manifest before you. I'm curious, why do you care about the life and death of the common people, even if that magistrate truly harmed them? Treating human life as disposable grass, would you really kill a mortal? As cultivators, you should understand cause and effect. Ascending leads to the karmic cycle of reincarnation. Aren't you afraid? He calmly shook his head. Though he agreed with the sect leader to ascend to immortality, he absolutely could not ignore those needing rescue. His actions followed his heart, not fearing karmic consequences. His face grew solemn. As long as his conscience was clear, he didn't fear the cycle of reincarnation. Kaya Tsie was slightly surprised. He was unlike those hypocritical cultivators. Changing her attitude, she decided to help him. She flew up, using her divine consciousness to investigate. Soon, she found the target. No wonder no one could detect it. This place was under a top-level concealment spell. Even those below the immortal realm couldn't perceive it. The three moved towards that forest. Could they really be imprisoned within these trees? Yu Quaner felt it was impossible to investigate further. We'll only know by trying. He said, then broke the concealment spell. Yu Quaner was astonished. Such skill. Does he have a golden hand? Deep within the forest was a tragic scene. Suddenly, someone appeared and asked, Who are you? How could you bare-handedly break the high-level concealment of the heartless sect? The heartless sect? Demonic cultivators? Why are they also involved? Lu Yunjiamen sect's Tiaoja replied. You're Tiaoja who defeated the three saint sects at the sword sect? No wonder you could dispel the concealment bare-handed. He stroked his chin. The three saint sects must be the celestial demon sect, the harmonious sect, and the heartless sect. But, am I that famous? Lu Shuang stepped forward, surprised. Why waste words with this demoness? She's from the heartless sect, committing evil deeds. Let me kill her. Wu Yu scoffed, relying on you? She played a tune, shaking heaven and earth, summoning a golden Dan late stage demonic beast. Lu Shuang fearlessly declared war, leaping to attack it, but was flung away, its claws inches from her face. She realized her inferiority. Lu Shuang was terrified. Then, something slashed at its claws, saving her. Tiaoja had arrived just in time. Wu Yu, being vicious is one thing, but don't threaten my Shuang. He severed the beast's tail with one strike? No wonder he defeated the three saint sects. Behind her was Zhang Renji. You colluded with General Li to seal the city gates, imprisoning the plague victims. He kept urging the celestial maiden to execute these scoundrels quickly. He had suspected this before. He pretended to be surprised. Why is the lord here too? Tiaoja angrily said, you're truly a beast in human skin. Killing people to cover up the plague, is that your solution? You're just impatient, urging the celestial maiden. Why are you still standing there? Act now. Kill them all. He laughed triumphantly. What imperial decree? With the celestial lord here, you all must die. But things didn't go as he expected. The one attacked was Lord Zhang himself. He painfully clutched his neck. Wu Yu scoffed. Dare you yell at me? Relying on him? You mutt. Zhang Renji lost all strength, kneeling. Tiaoja asked her, what exactly happened in Dantai City? Please explain. 
when the plague began, Li Fei sealed the city gates, prohibiting entry and exit. Zhang Renji took this chance to collude with merchants, raising material prices. Within a month, more people starved to death in the city than died from the plague, using the celestial demon sect's protector Hei Feng killing outside as an excuse. Zhang Renji gathered the city's people to Liulin Mountain Villa and divided them into two classes. The upper class stayed in the villa, receiving 50 tails of grain and rice, free to move about if they could pay. The lower class slept outdoors in the willow forest, only given leftover pig food. If the upper class ran out of money, they would be expelled to the forest. Lu Shuang didn't believe this. She saw people in the villa say they had ample rice. That's because Zhang Renji used their families to threaten them. Anyone telling the truth would die mysteriously. If that's true, why did Zhang Renji protect the poor? not just the rich for money, clearly to let you suck their fresh blood. Zhang feared Hei Feng would attack the villa, so he kept the forest people to appease Hei Feng later and secure a path to survive. Then why did you appear here? The concealment here couldn't be arranged solely with your power. Originally I wanted to go to Donghai Fishing Village. While resting, Zhang Renji used 2,000 spirit stones to ask me to set up the concealment here. That concealment talisman was a heartless sect heirloom but unfortunately it's been destroyed. He asked the main question, have you killed any commoners in the forest? She affirmed, except for that Zhao Ati who sold his wife and daughter, she knew no one else. She didn't resist him, he could strike or kill as he wished. She calmly left her fate to him. Tiao Zha raised his hand, calling his sword. Successful random mysterious box entry. The mysterious box opened, revealing a heavenly concealment talisman. He took the talisman and returned it to Wu Yu, saying she could leave. A heavenly concealment talisman? Both Lu Shuang and Yu Quan Ji were surprised. This is the supreme concealment talisman. There are not many on this entire continent. She was a bit surprised that he gave her the supreme talisman and wanted to let her go. Lu Shuang raised her sword to approach. How can we believe this demoness? I want to kill this evil cultivator. He stopped her, saying he trusted Wu Yu. She was touched and thanked him. She had a warning. He should be wary of those around him. Beware of traitors. The two girls were furious. Sparing your life is one thing. But you dare try to sow discord too? Who are you referring to? Speak plainly if you dare. Wu Yu, aren't you also called the heartless one? Why do you suddenly care about a righteous man? You dare betray us openly. Wait until we return to see how we deal with you. Wu Yu bid them farewell with joined palms. Lu Shuang found it hard to understand why he trusted her. She seemed so arrogant and aloof. Surely she wouldn't lie. The two girls puffed their cheeks in disbelief. That's right, based on Wu Yu's words. Then what Zhao Adi said was all true. So where was his daughter taken in the end? A while later, soldiers reported that Zhao's daughter had hanged herself in General Li's sleeping tent. He angrily swung his sword at Zhang Renji. You deserve to die. He ordered all grain merchants to the main hall. Just say he wanted to treat them to a meal, with two rather tough dishes. In the grand hall, the invited merchants excitedly discussed. The commissioner looks quite formidable. I wonder what delicacy he's treating us to today. Whatever he serves, we must praise it as delicious. Exactly, we must all praise it together. If he wants to become an immortal, we'll gift him 10,000 spirit stones. If he wants a beauty, we can provide that too. Speaking of beauties, I'm reminded of that 1,000 tales for Gao's young made last night. Just ripe, shy and fragrant, hee <laughs> hee. The group laughed lecherously as they spoke. Soon, Tiaoja appeared. You all look quite refined, don't you? The food was brought up, and everyone excitedly guessed what it was. I'm sure the commissioner is treating us to something tough. Dragon gall bladder or phoenix brains perhaps? Open it and see, gentlemen. His expression looked dangerous, who knows what he intends. The merchants cheerfully opened the lids, but they did not expect to receive the heads of familiar officials. General Li, Prefect Zhang. Oh heavens, everyone was horrified to see these things. Though wearing human skin, they were no different from beasts. One dough of rice for five wen became fifty tails, a heinous crime against heaven. The entire city died as hungry ghosts, all due to your greed. Today, I will act as heaven's enforcer. He then drew his sword. The merchants were terrified. What are you doing? You can't kill us. As cultivators, you cannot slay mortals. It will affect karmic retribution. Yes, yes, it will bring the Hung Chen calamity, then your soul will scatter. He whispered to his sword, don't you want to drink blood? Wait and I'll slaughter them for you. Drink your fill. But sorry, it will be the blood of beasts again. With each sword strike, a person died, another head fell. One hurriedly ran out, immortal, save me. 
The commissioner has gone mad. Lu Shuang urged him to stop. Commissioner, cease this slaughter. You cannot kill mortals. Yu Quan Ji also pleaded, Tiao Jia, stop at once, or heavenly thunder will strike, scattering your soul. But he ignored them, his sword continuing to fall. The man who ran was also slain. Even if flesh rots and bones crumble, I absolutely won't let these dog and pig scum live another moment. The two girls were surprised. Kuexia licked her lips approvingly. This one is getting more and more interesting. After dealing with the merchants, he ordered everyone not ill to leave Mount Luliu, telling them to stay indoors. Then he arranged for all the plague victims to be brought into the mountain, managing them according to the severity of their illness. He gathered all the physicians, devoting full efforts to treat the sick. His subordinates obeyed, turning to face the manor gate. There was one final important matter. Open the granaries and distribute grain. Everyone knelt, moved to thank him. The system also gave notifications. Ding slaying the evil prefect Zhang Renji, plus 1000 primordial essence. Ding slaying the heartless grain hoarding merchant king, plus 1000 primordial essence. Ding slaying the heartless grain hoarding merchant Zhu Bobby, plus 1000 primordial essence. Ding slaying the heartless grain hoarding merchant Lu Miaozong plus 1000 primordial essence. Hearing these notifications, he suddenly realized something. Killing evil people actually gave so much primordial essence? The merit from that prefect alone could match an entire primordial realm cultivator. Ding received gratitude of the people, plus 1000 divine sense. Ding received reverence of the soldiers, plus 1000 divine sense. Ding received beauty's glances, plus 1000 divine sense. What is this divine sense used for? The system showed that his divine sense was untrained. Divine sense also needs cultivation? This was news to him. Kuexia explained, of course it needs cultivation. Without strong divine sense, there's no way to break through the innate realm. In the demonic secret realm, the mental attacks you faced were the primordial spirit power left by my senior brother. The cultivation method he practiced aimed to refine the divine sense, called the demonic mind Dao. It seems you should cultivate your divine sense as soon as possible, so the system can give you more rewards. But the login mission hasn't updated yet, so I don't know where it wants you to go next. Kuexia had a sinister look, asking when he would give her that treasure. She couldn't wait any longer. He was startled. Can't escape now, can I? That night, in his room, he asked if she was ready. I'm about to show you the treasure. She was all prepared. He opened the system, Kuexia, the war god of the demon sect, your brother, has finally appeared. He yawned long. How long have I been asleep? 6,000 years or 7,000 years? The siblings looked at each other in surprise. Why did you become this demonic form, sister? Kuexia angrily snorted. Isn't it because of you that I became like this? Where were you when I was sealed? Why didn't you come rescue me? He scratched his head and laughed wryly. I, I encountered some issues. She mocked, isn't it because I took the sect leader position from you that you're still angry? Seeing the tension, he tried to mediate. Hey, calm down a bit. You two siblings haven't seen each other for thousands of years, don't fight as soon as you meet. Kuexia scolded him, you little rascal, get away. Don't touch my sister. All right, all right, I'll leave you two to catch up. She asked him why he didn't take that final step. Kuexia hesitated, this story is long. 8,000 years ago, who could have foreseen the celestial demon war shifting to the continent of moon and stars? Our demon sect was the demon lord's human envoy. You and I are the demon lord's children, with a bright future ahead. Flashes of their memories appeared. This is the demon order and war god order. If we two combine these orders, we can open the gate to the demon realm, and I will lead the demon armies to exterminate the celestials. With me personally commanding, we can definitely unify the six realms. At that time, I would have made you the demon queen and demon king. Shout Tree showed disbelief. You two clearly had such a multi-level path, yet you don't believe it? The siblings said in unison, don't slander the demon lord. The demon lord passed down the demonic mind doubt to us. By sincerely cultivating within half a step's range, we could open the passage, risking our lives to cultivate. But at the critical moment, an accident and betrayal occurred. My disciple Li Wood stabbed me from behind, then robbed my entire sect, taking many heaven-grade cultivation methods and pills. Because of that, I underwent demonic reincarnation, committing a grave sin. After the reincarnation, I used the demonic mind Dao to forge a resentful body. 
my mind lost control, and a plague spread, eventually becoming a thousand mile plague. To prevent further mistakes, I sealed the demonic mind down and a strand of my primordial spirit in the war god hall. Then I ended my own life. He found it hard to believe. Wasn't Kuexia a demon cultivator? How could she be unwilling to harm others? Who says demon cultivators must harm people? Our demon sect's tenet is to do as we please, not take joy in killing. Kuexia ran over and hugged him. Brother, I misunderstood you. Forgive me, I was foolish. Don't worry about it, it was my fault for being late. Sister, how did you become a sword spirit? Kuexia explained how she became a sword spirit after being sealed by the celestials. Kuexia cried as she explained, at the halfway point, I was blocked by the northern celestial sage. He wanted to dual cultivate with me, but I didn't fight back, only protecting myself. I hid my primordial spirit in a celestial sword, and sealed myself within it. Luckily, this person rescued me later, allowing me to reunite with you, brother. Kuexia raged, that dog northern celestial sage deserves to die. If not for my last strand of soul, I would have skinned him alive. Then, a knife appeared outside the door, someone trying to pick the lock. It was Yu Chuanru. She thought happily, he's asleep, the perfect time to take back the demon order and war god order. Kuexia asked, sister, who is that? A junior of our demon sect, she replied. He felt disappointed. You can't be serious. Has our demon sect fallen so far as to resort to petty thievery? Yu Chuanru tiptoed closer, seeing he kept the orders here. She reached inside, but what she pulled out was her own bra. She clearly remembered wearing it, but suddenly it went missing later. So this pervert had stolen it. The siblings watched helplessly. Sister, your host is quite depraved. Honestly, I don't know when he stole this bra. He's very mysterious. Sometimes I can't understand him either. Yu Chuanru took out a knife. She only wanted the orders, but didn't expect him to be such a lecher. She had no choice but to kill him to preserve her chastity. Kuexia worried. Sister, hurry and act. Your host is about to meet his end. Kuexia calmly said, what's there to fear? If he dies, he dies. How does that concern you? The knife was getting very close to him. Kuexia was very anxious. Oh no, he's going to die. If he unseal you, can you watch your benefactor die without saving him? But as the knife touched him, it broke in half. All three were surprised. Does he have celestial armor? Kuexia calmly smiled, as if expecting it. I told you, he's very mysterious. Even if I don't help, he won't die so easily. Yu Chuanru didn't believe it. This is the demon sect's soul scattering powder. Inhale it and your soul will scatter, leaving you powerless. And even with celestial armor, I can still take your orders. Shao Tree suddenly opened his eyes, blowing the powder back at Yu Chuanru. She realized in shock that he wasn't asleep, but tricking her. Her limbs started going numb. He had predicted she would come to the door herself. She felt a little afraid of what he wanted to do to her. He bluntly revealed her identity. Her name wasn't Lam Ying Yang, but Yu Chuanru, right? Unexpectedly, he had known all along. That's right, from the moment we met, I knew. He took out paper and pen, placing them on the table, telling her to write. Write a letter to your family, asking them to pay 100,000 top grade spirit stones for your ransom. Impossible. You're a righteous cultivator, how can you kidnap me? She was taken aback when he pulled her close, placing his hand over her mouth. If you don't want to be kidnapped, then should I hand you over to the righteous sex? Let's see how those gentlemen will deal with you. She conceded, acting cute and pleading with him. Top grade spirit stones are so rare, my family doesn't have that many. Could you consider our affection over time and accept lower grade ones instead? Shao Tree immediately refused. No way, you're quite clever. Brother Shao Tree, do you think she's worth 100,000 top grade spirit stones? Looking at her alluring body and beautiful face, he got a nosebleed. She's worth it. The siblings felt embarrassed on his behalf. Such debauchery, what kind of conduct is this? Quickly let her dress properly. The demon sect has really degenerated these days. She lifted her skirt invitingly. Brother, if I'm worth it. Then hurry over here. She still held the knife behind her back. You're really cunning. Tiu Triet wasn't used to being watched. Ngu Chuaner sat on the chair, hiding a dagger behind her back. There's only you and me here. Who else would be watching? She then raised her tender legs up. But at this moment, there were two others watching as well. She was flustered, unsure of what to do. As those two claimed they had been there all along. She looked at them, 
feeling a sense of familiarity, as if she had met them somewhere before. On the wall of the ancestral hall of the Tianma sect, portraits of the patriarchs through the ages were hung, and in the center were those two individuals, the Tianma patriarch and the Tianma war god. She hurriedly knelt down to pay respects to the patriarch and the war god. Then the war god told her that he had passed the title of Tianma war god to Tiu Triet, and from then on, they must not disobey any of his requests. She agreed. The Tianma patriarch beside him heard this, and said, she hasn't agreed yet. She added, also, tell the current sect leader, she wants to cultivate in seclusion, he doesn't need to come and pay respects anymore. News of her appearance must be kept secret, and not spread outside. She replied that she would follow those orders. Tiu Triet asked her, your father is the sect leader? That's great. He orders you to bring 200,000 spirit stones, 100,000 to ransom you, and 100,000 to pay respects to the war god. She refused. How about 150,000? 200,000 is really too much. He reluctantly replied, at least 180,000. 180,000 for you. The entire sect's annual expenses don't even reach that much. She held a carrier pigeon. He took the pigeon from her hand, telling her to hurry and get it. Is this carrier pigeon reliable? It will definitely reach its destination. He kicked her and said, nothing else, you can go. But before the spirit stones arrive, don't leave East Capital City, or else I'll break your legs. The demon sect ancestor Kuexia asked the demon war god, who was also her senior brother, why is your primordial spirit diminishing so much? But senior brother died 6,000 years ago. His primordial spirit will soon dissipate too. She covered her face in shock and sorrow, saying, We just met. Her senior brother consoled her not to grieve, for the future awaits ascension. Perhaps we'll meet again in the immortal realms. She made a vow to that. The demon war god took Shout Tree's hand and Kuexia's, entrusting her to him telling him to treat her well and not bully her. He said he would never bully her, only fearing she might grind him to dust instead. Then the demon war god consoled, she's just threatening you. The sword spirit patriarch would incur heaven's wrath. By then, your soul will scatter, and the harm will outweigh the benefit. He said, so you bluff that quickly. Shout tree distinguishes right from wrong, his heart embraces all living beings. He is the true successor of the Tao heart demon sect. He has inherited the great dharma, so he must remember to stay true to his original heart, and not delve into evil ways. Checking the Tao Heart Demon Sect's spiritual cultivation method, it's of the true demonic level. Then it upgrades to the first level, second level, third level. To reach the fourth level, 7,000 more spiritual awareness is needed. He didn't have a sea of consciousness before. How did he suddenly gain such a vast one? He wondered. In an instant, he had reached the third level, which took the demon war god over 2,000 years to attain. Finally, the time to part has come. Kuexia cried bitterly. Shout Tree bears a great destiny. You must hold firm to the great path and loyally pursue it. Kuexia will surely await you. Shout Tree consoled her, promising to take good care of her. She leaned on his chest, crying. He predicted she would cry for quite a while, so he took the opportunity to test the Tao Heart Demon Sect's efficacy a bit. Then he used demonic arts. In the night, he could observe the entire landscape, like a wide-angle drone camera, capturing the whole mountain scenery in his mind's eye, an incredibly wonderful feeling. The radius his spiritual sense could perceive was 10 miles. This far surpassed Yu Chuanru's Golden Core Realm. The Tao Heart Demon Sect's method truly deserved to be called a true demonic cultivation. He saw a group of people climbing ropes out of the city. He wondered why they were all fleeing like that. Oh no, the alchemists are escaping. They're carrying medicine inside. Shao Tree asked, Why did Lu Shang let the alchemists escape? How can we deal with the plague now? But the Xianhe sect is the holy land in all alchemists' hearts. When they heard foolish alchemist sister opened a pill furnace in East Sea Fishing Village, they all rushed to pay respects. It was my own oversight. Lu Shang will go capture them. He ordered to let it go guessing the foolish alchemist purposely leaked the news, aiming to lure away all their alchemists, causing them to lose. But how could foolish alchemist sister be so careless? With all the alchemists gone, can the common people do anything but wait for death? The demon secret realm mission ends. The new login point has changed. Login mission timer starts. Login location. East Capital Pharmacy. Time is limited. He saw this and said, so it's finally come. Will I lose? I want her to come beg me. He asked Shang Shang where the East Chin Pharmacy was. It's in West City, the biggest pharmacy in the city. He took her hand. They rushed to the pharmacy at top speed, but couldn't breathe. They arrived at the gate, mission successful. 
a mysterious box appears, choose to open or not. He wanted to see what surprise awaited this time. Shang Shang was so exhausted from the rush that she could barely breathe. The box opened, revealing medical supplies, exactly what they needed. It could resolve the plague. There were masks that could prevent infection, but had to be replaced every two hours. Distribute these masks and medicines to patients, then sterilize the entire city with disinfectant. Half a month later, in East Capital City, officials came to pay respects to the great war god. Following the ancestor's orders, he could not request an audience, so he apologized. 180,000 spirit stones were enough. If needed, he would assign more tasks. The saint was disrespectful before. He said Shao Tree could punish her as he wished. Did my father really say that? It's like pushing me into a fire pit. He said the spirit stones had arrived. No need to mention excessive punishments anymore. He told the official to inform the sect master, to let him cultivate in peace, and not cause more trouble. The official obeyed and told her to leave. Yu Chuanru still didn't submit to him, but had to leave reluctantly. The carriage rolled down the road. Zhang Renji and the grain merchants in the manor had all been thoroughly inspected. A total of 2.2 million tails of silver, 20,000 spirit stones of various kinds were accounted for in the three-year Qingli manor. The 10 million snowflake silver, plus many inhumane grain merchants who devoured people without spitting out the bones. All this was the sweat and tears of the people. He put on a diamond ring, only taking back the spirit stones. The remaining silver was distributed to soldiers and commoners. Everyone has suffered enough over this period. Hearing this, people rejoiced, cheering long live the great man. Respected by the commoners, spirit sense plus 1000. Respected by soldiers, spirit sense plus 10,000. Plague eliminated successfully, spirit sense plus 20,000. Dao Heart Demon Sect upgraded to 4th level, 67,000 spirit sense remaining to reach 5th level. His current spirit sense radius was likely 100 miles. With such powerful spirit sense, if he could reach the primordial spirit realm and refine his primordial spirit, it would undoubtedly be extremely formidable. Eliminating the plague this time granted him considerable spirit sense. It seems he should do more good deeds like this in the future. Speaking of the plague, the battle between Shao Tri and the foolish alchemist must also be reaching its conclusion. Wonder how she's faring over there. A person approached, holding a staff, clothes tattered. The two of them said he had arrived, but he didn't recognize him, thinking they were beggars. It turned out to be the Marquis, the Crown Prince Li Qianchun and the Alchemist. But why had they ended up in such a state? The raging plague spared no one. Even the foolish sister couldn't escape this calamity. Marquis, they have admitted defeat. It's better to quickly save the commoners of East Sea Fishing Village. The wind blew across his face, and the alchemist fainted to the ground. A while later, Shao Tree ordered Shang Shang to immediately bring the lotus purifying pellet, masks, disinfectant, and soldiers to East Sea Fishing Village to rescue people. Ten days later, the last infected person in East Sea Fishing Village finally recovered. The mission to rescue the people of East Province was perfectly accomplished, truly worth celebrating. Shao Tree said this time, the subordinates he entrusted were fortunate to have the Marquis's aid. He raised a glass to show respect to the Marquis. At the banquet, they all raised their glasses together. The Marquis's method of treating the plague was truly unique, worthy of being recorded in history books for later generations to learn from. The Marquis modestly said, you all flatter me too much. Shang Shang seemed unhappy. Three days later was the immortal discourse, but she was still stuck at the foundation establishment realm. The cultivators attending this discourse were almost all at the golden core realm. She didn't want to embarrass her sect. Shao Tree said, do you still remember taking the great elixir pill before? You've only absorbed one-tenth of its effects. If you could fully absorb it, then forming your golden core naturally wouldn't be a problem. But how to absorb it? He asked if she remembered how she saved him in the sword ravine. He absorbed it that way back then. He whispered in her ear, she blushed, he held her close. She seemed a bit tipsy, perhaps why she looked so shy. In the palace, at this moment, Shao Tri and Lu Shang were being intimate. She breathed heavily as he approached. The next morning, Shao Tri pondered. No, they had done it six times, why couldn't she form her core? Did he misunderstand something about forming the golden core? Lu Shang came up behind him and said, Forming the core means condensing spiritual essence into a pill. 
The essence must be sustained without interruption. She had a mid-grade supplementary spirit pill from her master, plus the great elixir to refine her body. Theoretically, there shouldn't be an issue. He suddenly realized something and firmly pulled her along. He was shirtless, she only had a sheet covering her. He wanted to change locations. In the ice cave, she didn't understand why Shao Tree brought her there. He replied, Foundation establishment transforms vital energy into spiritual essence. It's actually a phase transition. Forming the core transforms essence into the golden core, solidification. And the basic condition for solidification is low temperature. Shout Tree told her to absorb the spirit stones there. Thousands, millions, don't hesitate. Using so many top grade spirit stones just for her to form her core? She was grateful for his kindness, unsure how to repay him. She figured she could repay him by letting him upgrade a few more times. She finally succeeded in forming her golden core. Shout Tree said, No wonder those great primordial realm elders became rare specimens. It turns out upgrading costs so many spirit stones. Using only spirit stones to form a golden core would likely cost over 10,000 top grade stones. Not to mention the primordial realm. It seems his path of hoarding spirit stones wasn't wrong. Three days later, at the Immortal Discourse, Sword Debate Platform, the discourse officially began. Representatives of the sects began taking the stage. Previously there was a rope bridge here, but for some reason it had disappeared. Couldn't the representatives just fly over? Lu Shang offered to take Shao Tri. He agreed. Dian Shisan slowed them down. The immortal discourse is most sacred. To take the stage, one must fly over with their own sword. Using another sword is not allowed. She protested, this rule didn't exist before. Dian Shisan said this new rule was likely unknown to her. She berated Dian Shisan for being unreasonable. Shao Tree was the Marquis of Lu Cloud Sword Sect. Causing trouble for him is causing trouble for the Sword Sect. Shao Tree told her not to worry. If he must fly with a sword, then he'll fly over. He unsheathed his sword. Dian Shisan and the others laughed loudly. A fourth level Qi refiner wants to fly with a sword? What a fool dreaming. Shao Tree, a fourth level Qi refiner? Is Lu Cloud Sword Sect here to be a laughingstock? Another said, if he can't fly up soon, it'll be too embarrassing. And if he falls directly, it'll be even more humiliating. Yet he still stepped onto the sword, standing on both feet calmly. What's this situation? Isn't he a fourth level Qi refiner? Lu Shang watched, thinking to herself. She absolutely wouldn't tell them he's the scattered immortal elder. A voice rang out. Everyone looked up. Above, someone asked why Patriarch Lam didn't bring Don Don. But Don Don was injured by the Demon Lord on the way and is currently recuperating. She won't participate in this discourse. The one answering was the Patriarch of Wan Xi'an sect. Lam Feng Feng, a primordial realm peak. What a pity. I heard the Crimson Sun Immortal didn't come either. But the Marquis Immortal from the Piao sect did. What is Lu Cloud Sword sect doing? Li Hong, a golden core peak. The East Rolling King of the Authentic Martial Immortal Dynasty said, It's been so long, yet they still haven't arrived, truly disrespectful. Hu Gao, initial transcendence stage, sect leader of Xi'an He sect, also looked over. Although Xiao Tri was only in the Qi refining stage, his skills were considerable, not to be underestimated. Xiao Tri had just killed Li Fei, Li Hong's own younger brother, adding fuel to the fire. There might be an interesting drama to watch. One of them said, sending a Qi refiner to deceive them, the Crimson Sun Immortal is going too far. The Patriarch of Wan Xi'an sect said, at such an important discourse, they're making a disorderly scene like this. Shout Tree stepped before them, apologizing for being late. Everyone was surprised. He really was just a fourth level Qi refiner. Someone stood up, demanding silence to deal with him. He saw an empty seat, arrogantly thinking it was his, and tried to sit down. But the chair was kicked away, frame broken. That person said he lacked the qualifications to sit on par with them. Witnessing this, Dian Shisan loudly said he dared to demand the head seat based on his cultivation. Truly dissatisfying the elders. Lu Shang frowned, don't go too far. Offending Shao Tri is offending the sword sect. He asked what cultivation was required to sit on par with them. At least the golden core realm. As soon as he finished, Shao Tri said he would enter the golden core realm. Everyone was dumbfounded. Is he really going to break through before taking the stage? It seems he did say he wanted to reach the golden core realm. Even if he's skilled, he can't possibly do something so outrageous and against the heavens. Does he think the golden core is a joke? That he can just break through as he pleases? I thought this guy had talent. But he's just the type that likes to show off. Shao Tri stood before everyone his aura indicating he was truly breaking through, and at an extremely fast pace too. The 5th, 6th, 7th level of Qi refining, then the 10th level. 
Shout Tree successively broke through to the tenth level of qi refining. Truly a miracle in the cultivation world. Dian Shisan was still unconvinced, advancing six realms in one day. What's so special about that? There have always been talents like this. Shao Tri continued. He wasn't going to stop at just condensing his core, was he? If he could condense his core, Dian Shisan swore he'd eat his own sword. Condensing the core meant converting qi into origin energy, a process of purification and sublimation. His body was the indestructible four cyclic Nanyang Golden Vajra, his mind the fourth heavenly demon seed heart. Aided by the Zhu Xi'an quintessence, condensing his core was as easy as turning his palm for him. Those below kowtowed to him, while those above admired him. Going from the fourth level of qi refining to condensing his core in an instant, he was truly extraordinary. No wonder the sword sect made him their marquee. He truly has some skills. But there were also those who disliked him. He said he would do it and just did it. One could say he's a prodigy. If he continues developing like this, as he's still raising his cultivation, what is he aiming for? The first level of condensing core, the initial condensing core realm, the fourth level, the middle condensing core realm, the seventh level, the late condensing core realm, the tenth level, the highest realm of condensing core. The spectators took turns counting the number of times he advanced realms. Could he really be aiming to form his core? He absolutely cannot form his core. From the middle stage of qi refining to the highest condensing core realm, he has expended a huge amount of spirit stones. He cannot possibly have enough spirit stones left to form his core. Even if he had enough spirit stones, his body couldn't withstand that immense spiritual power. He opened his bag, still with spirit stones, not lacking at all, richer than a prince. Where did he get so many spirit stones? It makes one want to rob him. He continued using spirit stones. The golden core realm, that's about it. But it seems he still intends to go further. Power enveloped him, his absorption of spiritual chi was so fast, forming a spiritual chi vortex, a sight unseen for a hundred years. Such a large spiritual chi vortex, all the spiritual chi within a hundred meters was absorbed by him. A dazzling golden light radiated from Shao Tree's body. It would not stop unless he stopped absorbing the abundant spiritual chi of the Zan Zan sect. The middle stage, Shao Tree felt it was not enough. He closed his eyes tightly, highly focused, concentrating all his efforts on his Dantian, striving to break through directly to the late stage, the great perfect realm. He thoroughly absorbed the spiritual chi of the Zan Zan sect before the astonished eyes of all. Everyone's eyes and mouths were wide open in shock. Dian Shisan could not believe he was facing such a monster. The great perfect realm, 26 realms in one day. Is this still human? Shao Tree made him doubt life itself. I, the prime genius of Zan Zan sect, took three years to reach condensing core, over twenty years to reach golden core. Can I still call myself a genius? After breaking through to the great perfect realm, Shao Tree was still unsatisfied, feeling he could advance further. He had to take advantage of this abundant spiritual qi. Such a rare opportunity must not be missed. His next goal would be the Yuan Ying realm. What? He still wants to assault the Yuan Ying? At this rate, there won't be a shred of spiritual qi left in Zan Zan sect. Perhaps no one knew that. The abundant spiritual qi Shao tree was freely taking actually came from Zan Zan sect's treasury pavilion. While the elders and disciples were all gathered at the arena, Kui Mu Lang, one of the 28 Zan Zan sect's late Yuan Ying realm elders, Kui Mu Lang, was taking inventory of the sect's treasures stored here. Seeing the countless items, he kept praising, this year we've received quite a lot of good stuff from various places. Missing a few items, the sect leader probably won't pursue it. With so many treasures here, who has time to count every single one? While Kui Mu Lang was busy counting, suddenly the seven-colored yin-yang treasure vanished, along with a few nearby items, as if something was absorbing them. What's going on? Why is all the spiritual qi being absorbed? Zan Kong, representing the orthodox sects, if he let Shao Tri assault the Yuan Ying realm, all of Zan Zan sect's spiritual qi would be drained by him. Yet he couldn't kill Shao Tri in front of everyone. I must think of something. Got it. Zan Kong shouted loudly, Marquis Shao, quickly withdraw your divine ability. This was the fault of the king of Donglin. I'll have him apologize to you. He glanced at the king, terrifying him. The king quickly knelt, begging, Marquis Shao, it was my fault, my fault. If they didn't acknowledge their mistake, Shao Tree would drain all of Zan Zan sect's spiritual chi, not leaving a shred behind. Not wanting to cause more trouble, Shao Tree withdrew his divine ability, integrating it into his body. Since the sect leader had spoken, it was like offering his own face. Shao Tree stood imposingly on the flying willow cloud sword, 
descending and stopping before Zan Kong. Marquis Xiao, please. Xiao Tri and the elders took their seats. Originally there was no seat for Xiao Tri, but fortunately the king of Donglin knew better and quickly gave up his. As for himself, he just stood meekly beside. Seeing this, Xiao Tri mocked, the king of Donglin likes hitting chairs, he probably doesn't want to sit down, does he? He nodded repeatedly, answering quickly, right, right, sitting too long makes my legs numb, I'll just stand. The Zan Zan sect elders saw Xiao Tri's behavior and scolded him harshly. How dare he punish the king of Donglin by making him stand, he's too overbearing. Isn't he afraid the true martial heaven dynasty will come after him? Zan Kong snorted, his tone grim, if he's not afraid of me, why would he fear the martial emperor? Sitting in this position and looking down isn't bad at all, Xiao Tree calmly hummed and whistled. Suddenly, a pair of hands appeared from nowhere grabbing his thighs, startling Xiao Tree. The phantom hands stayed in one spot but kept groping randomly. Marquis Xiao, you're still young, you probably don't have a partner yet, what do you think of me? The sect leader Lamb of the Myriad Immortal Sect was being too enthusiastic. Is this really the behavior of an orthodox cultivator? Why do I get the feeling I'm encountering a fairy from the Harmonious Union Sect again? Her face was fully covered, her dress revealing, causing Xiao Tri to stare fixatedly. His expression made her laugh out loud, just kidding. But that laughter sounded somewhat familiar to Xiao Tri, though he couldn't recall from where. This sect leader Lam is quite mysterious. Finally, it was time. Zan Kong presided and loudly declared, the Zan Zan sect's martial arts meeting commences. The martial arts competition proceeded according to convention with pairs fighting perfunctorily, nothing particularly noteworthy. Every year, these immortal cultivator bouts are the most boring, only the martial arts moves look nice, but no one has real ability. Since the Great War against demons 8,000 years ago, the continent of Celestial Moon has had no outstanding talents, lost its secret manuals, and its spiritual chi is no longer as abundant as described in ancient texts. Even the cultivation of the orthodox sects has become extremely difficult, let alone these scattered cultivators. Seeing this, Zan Kong boldly suggested, so it's best for our five sects to unite, integrate our resources, and gather all our strength to nurture an immortal who can transcend this realm. The sect leader of the Celestial River sect felt annoyed hearing this, how could he say such things? Senior brother Zan Kong, are you saying this transcendent immortal is you? Without letting Zan Kong respond, the king of Donglin continued, indeed, among the five sects, the one with the highest cultivation is senior brother Zan Kong. Who has reached the separating spirit peak realm. Seeing the tense situation, Zan Kong tried to deflect, although I didn't specify, within our Zan Zan sect, I alone have the highest cultivation. Don't misunderstand, I only hope to gather our strength to nurture someone who can stand behind and handle any unforeseeable situations. Eavesdropping, Xiao Tree was curious when Zan Kong mentioned unforeseeable situations and blurted out, could it be about the Diu Ling spiritual chi? Is there a hidden matter behind the lost manuals? Their faces changed, revealing innocent expressions. I didn't say anything. You misheard. I don't know anything. Hmm. Their reaction made Xiao Tree certain there was a hidden matter. They just didn't want to tell him. Sect leader Lam leaned slightly towards Xiao Tree, her arm resting on his shoulder, gently reminding him. Indeed there is a hidden matter, but it's too complicated. Unless you reach the great achievement realm, with the body of an immortal descending to the mortal world, you won't be able to unravel this profound mystery. After sect leader Lam's advice, he pondered seriously, if that's the case. It seems the continent of Celestial Moon is a place brimming with hidden talents. On the surface, it appears only Zan Kong has the highest cultivation. But in reality, there are still hidden experts. Judging from their tight-lipped manner, this hidden expert must at least be a scattered immortal. Xiao Tree frowned, silently reminding himself. It seems I shouldn't be too arrogant, I need to be more humble, or I'll easily get killed. Seeing Xiao Tree deep in thought, sect leader Lam smiled and whispered in his ear. Don't think too much, look, your little sweetheart is going on stage. Xiao Tree was brought back to reality. He raised his hand high, cheering loudly, little sweetheart, go for it. Lu Shang stepped forward, then stood facing senior sister Wu. Before she could speak, senior sister Wu reminded her, Junior sister Lu Shang, you've just formed your golden core, the gap between us is quite large, you should concede to avoid damaging our sisterly affection. Lu Shang paid no heed and immediately retorted, My golden core is fine, 
I want to give it a try. Hearing this, senior sister Wu dropped her courtesy. Her gaze turned serious as she sternly replied, then don't blame your senior sister. A large spirit cauldron was quickly placed down, slamming onto the brick steps before flying up to shield senior sister Wu. She formed an X with her arms in front of her chest, only loudly uttering one word, drink. Instantly, raging red flames gushed out from the cauldron's mouth. Without a moment's hesitation, Lu Shang leapt high, gripping her sword and swinging it fiercely towards the blazing flames. Lu Zhang's sword strike collided violently with the red flames, creating a tremendous sound. Immediately after, senior sister Wu's face turned pale, her eyes filled with shock, blood spurting from her mouth. Before she could recover, Lu Zhang's sword strike had cleaved her cauldron in two. Seeing this, senior sister Wu quickly leapt back. The broken cauldron now lay scattered on the brick steps. Watching from afar, Li Kangkan and Zan Shisan couldn't help but be astonished. Li Kangkan's eyes widened, his voice full of amazement. Junior sister Lu Shang defeated senior sister Wu with just one sword strike? Zan Shisan standing beside him also exclaimed, how could Lu Wan's sword sect become so formidable? The battle had now paused. Lu Shang quickly approached, bending down and extending her hand to help senior sister Wu up, her eyes revealing embarrassment. Senior sister, I'm sorry. I didn't expect that move to be so powerful. I apologize. Senior sister Wu took Lu Zhang's hand, smiling as she replied, a loss is a loss, no need to apologize. After standing up, she continued smiling at Lu Shang and said, congratulations to my junior sister for such great progress in your cultivation. Having said that, she didn't wait for a reply and quickly turned to leave. Lu Shang stood there, turning to Xiao Tri and smiling, your excellency, thank you. Xiao Tri gazed at her intently, pondering the previous battle. I didn't expect Shang Zhang's comprehension to be so high. I taught her the Zhu Xian Ju and Lu Wan Nine Swords not long ago, yet she has already grasped them to this level. While Shao Tri was lost in thought about the Nine Swords, Li Kang Khan suddenly appeared, leaping in front of Lu Shang, waving his sword before her and shouting loudly, Junior sister Lu Shang, let me challenge you. Lu Shang swiftly leapt up, responding, then I hope the prince will be careful. As soon as she finished speaking, she swung her sword a few times, creating a massive force like towering icebergs overwhelming Li Kangkan. Li Kangkan couldn't resist at all. Standing there, his entire body seemed sealed as he shouted loudly. Her sword intent is immense, almost completely sealing me. Lu Shang struck down fiercely, the impact shaking the heavens and earth with a tremendous explosion. After the thunderous blow, smoke gradually cleared. In the center, Li Kangkan knelt on the ground, one hand supporting himself, the other in front of his chest, his expressionless face uttering three words. I concede. Lu Shang beamed a radiant smile running into Xiao Tri's embrace. She smiled and recounted her own exploits. Your Excellency, Elder Sister won again, Elder Sister won again. Xiao Tri put his arm around her waist, holding her tight and smiling. Good, keep it up. Lu Shang suddenly realized she was being improper. Her cheeks flushed red with embarrassment, her eyes lowered, not daring to look at him directly. She said in a soft voice, Elder Sister, Elder Sister is too happy, I was rude. Xiao Tri only smiled, not reproaching her but comforting her gently instead. It's nothing. Then his expression turned serious. He looked at Lu Shang and asked, Who's your next opponent? Lu Shang replied, Zan Shisan. Over here, Zan Shisan was punching the iron pillar repeatedly, his eyes full of anger, his tone extremely vexed. She couldn't even beat Li Kangkan. Although I'm stronger than Li Kangkan, I still can't be sure of winning against her. I can't lose. If I lose, I'll have nothing left. What should I do? As he pondered, a hand appeared before him, drawing his attention. On the hand was a round yellow pill, accompanied by the owner's voice. Eat it. Your strength will at least triple, and you'll easily defeat her. As Zan Shisan reached out to take it, the man explained further, the Lu Wan sword sect has taken all our precious treasures from the cave. I want them to pay the price. Zan Shisan held the pill and asked him, are there any side effects from this pill? The man replied, just some difficulty controlling your strength. Without hesitation, Zan Shisan popped the pill into his mouth and swallowed it. It was time for the decisive battle between Lu Shang and Zan Shisan. The two stood facing each other. Zan Shisan cupped his hands respectfully. Junior sister Lu Shang, forgive me. Lu Shang returned the gesture politely. Senior brother Zan, please guide me. As soon as the greetings ended, 
Zan Shisan unleashed a flurry of sword strikes towards her. Lu Shang nimbly evaded his attacks. Inwardly, she assessed Zan Shisan. Zan Shisan is the most arrogant youth in the upright path. Can I defeat him? Seeing Lu Shang constantly evading without counter-attacking, Shao Tri shouted from behind. Lu Shang, listen. If you've chosen to fight, then fight decisively and joyfully. If you lack the will to win, then get down here and let me do it. The Lu Wan sword sect has no cowards. His final words rekindled her spirit. Lu Zhang's eyes grew more determined than ever. She furrowed her brow, her face full of resolution. She pondered Shao Tri's words. Yes, this concerns the honor of the Lu Wan sword sect. I absolutely cannot retreat. Lu Shang gripped her sword tightly and forcefully blocked Zan Shizan's strike. Zan Shizan's face immediately darkened more than ever before. He gritted his teeth and said, The Lu Wan sword sect's sword techniques are indeed formidable. Then Zan Shizan broke into a delighted smile. Red streaks of blood now flowed throughout his body making him look terrifyingly fierce. Zan Shisan showed no fear towards Lu Zhang's sword strikes, but rather grew more excited than ever. He laughed softly, the stronger you are, the sweeter it will feel when I trample you into the ground. He pressed two fingers against his sword's blade, and behind him manifested a giant wolf with blazing red eyes. Zan Shisan stood there holding his sword, his robe fluttering, uttering just one word, drink. Zan Shisan stepped onto the arena, sheathing his sword and standing upright, as if the sword in his hand did not belong to him. Then whose was it? Raising countless unanswerable questions among those present at the martial arts contest. Suddenly, a voice rang out, it's the demon sword of Shu Mu Lang. Murmurs of discussion grew louder. With the demon sword's golden dance stage, Lu Shang is sure to lose. Elder, please assist her. The Dian Xi'an sect has gone too far. The current situation made everyone feel sorry for a talent like Lu Shang, as it was clear who would emerge victorious. This was too unfair. Facing the powerful aura of the demon sword, Lu Zhang's wrists trembled slightly, her heart uneasy. As expected, after just a few moves, Zan Shisan defeated her. Lu Shang fell heavily to the ground. Struggling to sit up, she gripped her sword. Cough cough. Last night, your excellency wanted to give me the celestial armor. But for fairness, I absolutely refused. Now it seems. I was foolish. Zan Shisan stepped closer. His face seeming to ponder something. Strange markings covered his body, his eyes looking different than before, as if he was no longer himself. His aura grew increasingly dense, making it hard for Lu Shang to breathe. He thought, although killing here is unwise, the urge to shout and kill is growing stronger, beyond my control. Zan Shizen's mind seemed controlled by something else, murderous intent rising thick. Gripping his sword, he seized the chance to take Lu Zhang's life, satisfying his growing bloodlust. Seeing the situation was awry, Li Hong shouted, not good. Zan Shisan is suddenly filled with killing intent. From the start of the contest, Xiao Tri had been closely watching Lu Zhang's every move. Looking at the sword on the ground, an idea came to Xiao Tri's mind. He swiftly used his inner force to transmit sound to Lu Shang as quickly as possible. Shang Shang, use the Lu Wan Nine Swords, second technique. I understand. Immediately, Lu Shang summoned the Lu Wan Nine Swords, second technique. Borrowing the sword's power, it swiftly flew towards Zan Shizan's face, clashing violently and knocking him back. A forceful stab to his abdomen rendered him unconscious on the ground. Everyone was dumbfounded, unable to believe Lu Shang could reverse such an overwhelming situation. But perhaps the most stunned was Dian Kong. He trembled, refusing to accept that his son Zan Shisan could be defeated so quickly by a frail girl with a single sword strike. Lu Shang, you're from the same sect. How could you use such a lethal move? He blamed her entirely. Even she didn't expect the Lu Wan Nine Swords to be so powerful. I, I didn't mean to. Dian Kong refused to listen and growled. Seize her for me. Arrogantly, Xiao Tree flew over, signaling her to retreat as he would handle this. Someone like Lu Shang cannot deal with these unreasonable people. Do you think the Lu Wan Sword Sect has no one left? Lu Zhang's mind was somewhat reassured. Dian Kong simply wouldn't let her explain. It was Zan Shisan who wanted to kill me. I was only defending myself. That sword somehow didn't listen to my command. She turned to Xiao Tri, her voice full of grievance. Seeing this, Xiao Tri reassured her, telling her not to worry and leave it to him. He didn't want his junior sister to suffer any disadvantage. Dian Kong refused to concede, 
seizing the opportunity to shift all blame onto Xiao Tri. Lord Xiao, you drew your sword and killed, violating the rules of martial ethics. I need an explanation from you. Explain? Explain my ass. Xiao Tri was also helpless against the old man. You. He was so angry. Those words made him choke. Look at that demonic state of your son. Anyone can see he used forbidden drugs. You violated the rules first. And now you're accusing us? Isn't this rich? The barrage of questions left the old man speechless. Forbidden drugs. Hearing this, based on his knowledge, Li Hong was certain Zan Shisan had consumed dragon immortal wandering. As the name suggests, it can greatly enhance one's abilities for a short period. But it is a yin-tainted object, unsuitable for humans, driving them into a murderous frenzy, stimulating uncontrolled urges. Aia, like a wild beast then. Everyone around felt nauseated. No one expected Zan Shisan to resort to such means. Even his father was equally astonished. Wanting to disown this son who had made him lose face. Zan Shisan was still in a daze, not fully conscious. When Dian Kong slammed him hard to the ground, causing him pain. He hurriedly explained, Father, it wasn't me. Kun Yu Lang forced me to eat it. Hu Hu, he's selling me out. Such ingratitude. Kun Yu Lang didn't expect Zan Shisan to reveal everything, so he dropped his pretense, revealing his true face. So what if it was me? You dare act so shamelessly in the Dian Xi'an sect. I want you to leave and never return, gone without a trace. His tone was arrogant. Do you have the ability to back that up? The old man didn't disappoint Xiao Tri, who said contemptuously, he's no match for me. Seeing the situation clearly, Kun Yu Lang didn't know where to hide his shame, so he cut his palm and used his blood to challenge Xiao Tri. Dare you accept? If not, admit defeat obediently, and withdraw from the Dian Xi'an Martial Ethics Assembly. Kun Yu Lang, don't make trouble, Dian Kong warned, not expecting him to go so far. His son had already taken a risk, and now Ku Mu Lang was staking his life, for he knew, swearing by blood was no trivial matter, implying he wouldn't stop until death. Seeing the situation escalating beyond his expectations, Lu Shang tried her best to dissuade him, Lord Xiao, Ku Mu Lang has reached the Yuan Ying later stage, you absolutely cannot defeat him. We should still inform the sect leader. She didn't want him to get hurt because of her. But Xiao Tri saw how hard Lu Shang had worked to attain first place. How could he just give it up? Let all her efforts go to waste? With that, he cut his palm in response to the life and death challenge from the reckless Ku Mu Lang. The old man immediately unleashed his skills, the powerful aura of the Yuan Ying later stage emanating, making everyone present wary. Ku Mu Lang's cultivation had progressed further than before. This Lord Xiao is in a bit of trouble. Although Lord Xiao is at the Golden Core Peak, compared to the Yuan Ying later stage, the actual gap is too vast, posing no real threat. Behind her veil, the Wan Xian sect's purple sect leader had observed everything clearly. The more she interacted with Xiao Tri, the more she felt he was not easily defeated, hiding formidable and mysterious power. She thought, you can die and be reborn. Increase your realm by 26 levels in a day. The scent of the nine cycles adamantine body grows stronger. Just how many secrets are you hiding? She chuckled, I look forward to your performance, Xiao Tri. Sadness was evident on Zan Shizan's face as he spoke to his father, Father, I really didn't. His father cut him off, anger clear in his words, Shut up. Kun Yu Lang was my arrangement. If it wasn't to help you secure the top spot in the martial ethics assembly, I would have killed them. Zan Shisan fell silent for a moment, then replied, Father, you are still the most cruel. Contrary to his outward appearance, his inner self screamed at Xiao Tri, even though I cheated to reach the adamantine Yuan Ying early stage, I had to die today without any regrets. The early and later stages of Yuan Ying differed vastly. For one in the later stage to kill 10 in the early stage would be as easy as killing dogs. Zan Shizan's mouth curved slightly, Xiao Tri, you're dead for sure. Scene shift, an old man with a jaded look appeared before Xiao Tri, confidently launching his three claw strike at him. But Xiao Tri evaded it, with a disdainful look. Ah? Uh? The old man was dazed, thinking to himself, how is this possible? Enraged, the old man unleashed his zither nai lung chow strike before Xiao Tri, who mocked that his painstakingly cultivated skills were flawed. How appalling. Those words inflicted severe damage. Before the old man could react, swords rained down from nowhere. 
The old man was stunned, struck by Shao Tree's sword and fell back, to everyone's astonishment. It turned out to be Shao Tree's swords, hitting their mark perfectly. He sternly told the old man, don't recklessly make blood oaths with others, as it gives them a reason to kill you. Then the system notification appeared, killed a top Yuan Ying later stage cultivator. Essence, 30,000, need 12,000 more to upgrade. Truly the glory of the main character. Lu Shang, senior sister of the Lu Wan sword sect appeared, admiring Shao Tree's rare ability to kill a Yuan Ying later stage with one strike. Having Shao Tree as Lord Shao was an honor and pride for Lu Shang and the Lu Wan sword sect. The shy senior sister replied, but deep down Lu Shang was screaming, no wonder he's the man Lu Shang recognized. He's indeed very powerful. Kang, the gong signaled the end of the Xi'an Martial Ethics Assembly round. Along with it came the announcement of the one who attained the title of Celestial Peerless Orthodox. None other than, Lu Shang of the Lu Wan Sword Sect. All eyes and applause were on Lu Shang. Shao Tree's gaze was no exception towards this beautiful and shy senior sister Lu Shang. The reward was a five-colored jade belt made by the five great sect leaders, able to rapidly increase dressing speed and protect the body. But most of the credit belonged to Shao Tree, so logically the reward should have gone to him. Lu Shang thought, without Shao Tree, she would still be stuck at the Zhu Ji period. Meeting Shao Tri was her luckiest encounter. So this reward should be given to junior brother Shao Tri. The right person, at the right time. Senior sister Lu Shang put the jade belt on him in broad daylight. Ah, senior sister is so kind-hearted. Shao Tri didn't refuse her intention, his smile gradually losing humanity. Seizing the opportunity, he invited senior sister Lu Shang to go down the mountain and find an inn to thoroughly understand this jade belt together. Shao Tri his intentions were no less pure. You naughty junior. The joy didn't last long, when suddenly Shao Tree was startled by a notification from the system. Alas, the time to understand with senior sister had to be temporarily postponed. It turned out the system notification summoned him to the forbidden Ning Kong Palace within 12 hours. The notification came at such an inopportune time. Outside, the scenery was deathly still, the noon sun filtering into every corner of Ning Kong Palace. Contrary to the outside, the atmosphere inside the meeting of the sect leaders was tense, with Lord Shao Shao Tree also present. In the main hall, father and son of the Zan Void sect raised their wine cups together, expressing gratitude to sect leader NGU for helping his son Shisan turn danger into safety. Sect leader NGU replied with the wine cup in his hand, We're all fellow cultivators, it's only right to help each other. The senior brother seated next to sect leader NGU, with a beaming smile, spoke up, hoping Zan Void sect leader and Lord Shao could reconcile using this wine to dispel any resentment, so they could greet each other easily when meeting again in the immortal realm. Ahem. With an ignorant gaze, Lord Shao inwardly questioned the communication skills of the orthodox path. Clearly they were sworn enemies, yet he still maintained that pitiful demeanor. The atmosphere grew tense. Zan Void sect leader's solemn expression showed he thought junior brother Li was mistaken. If my son erred, he must face the consequences. Why blame Lord Shao? As fellow cultivators, how could there be any resentment between us? Sect leader Li hesitated, his face showing he misspoke. Let us raise our cups and dispel any grievances. Zan Void sect leader greatly admired Lord Shao's exceptional talents. Not disappointing the sect leader, Shao Tri accepted the wine cup and replied that he was just ordinarily skilled. Aia, this person is too hypocritical. Shao Tri is about to be embarrassed. Though he inwardly scoffed, he enjoyed this. As the wine reached his lips, before he could drink, the blonde sect leader laughed heartily, praising Zan Void sect leader's magnanimity. Truly the best choice for acting lord. Sect leader Li responded, what's this about acting lord? You can drop those two words, acting. Amidst the lively chatter inside Ning Kong Palace, Luke Shang seemed puzzled by the absence of Uncle Lam. Zan Void sect leader replied that junior sister Lam had returned to the Wan Xi'an sect, then raised his cup toasting to the eternal prosperity of the orthodox path. Bottoms up, wonderful. The atmosphere was truly lively. Amidst everyone's laughter, Lord Shao whispered to senior sister Lu Shang, instructing her to go down the mountain alone in half an hour. If she didn't meet him, return to the sword sect first. No hesitation. Lu Shang was surprised by her junior brother's instructions. One surprise after another. Lord Shao suddenly shouted that he needed to go out due to stomach pain, shocking everyone around. Zan Void sect leader was puzzled, 
having reached the zoo general realm, one can endure long periods without food. Why would Lord Xiao still have such human needs? Xiao Tree shouted loudly. Enough talk. I've been cultivating to reach the fourth level all day. I can't starve myself to death. Xiao Tree was absolutely right. The sect leader couldn't argue. Scene change, under the guidance of a beautiful lady, Xiao Tree arrived at the room's entrance to unburden his heart. As he was about to enter, he suddenly turned back, wondering why the lady hadn't left yet. Following the sect leader's instructions, the lady must always stay by his side, afraid the great lord might get lost. So this little girl wants to monitor his every move. Herm, seems this setting isn't quite right for you, girl. Xiao Tree picked up the lady, wanting her to serve him. The lady turned pale, tears falling. This serving should stop now. This kind of serving is a bit weird. She clung to the door, apologizing to Xiao Tree. After successfully scaring the little girl into crying and running away. Hoo hoo hoo, wild beast. Xiao Tree laughed triumphantly. Just like that? Soon he began circulating his inner energy, searching for the location in the system. Quickly Xiao Tree found the Void Ning Palace. Lightly circulating his energy, Xiao Tree swiftly set foot inside. The path guidance was still missing 7 meters? Let's see which direction. The system clearly showed he was only 4 meters away. After announcing he had arrived, Xiao Tree was dumbfounded that the registered location was on a bed. This system is getting more and more depraved. Though calling it depraved, for a lustful person like him, he couldn't help but look forward to it. So he hurriedly pulled back the bed curtains. Upon seeing, Xiao Tree wanted to bite his tongue off. It was the sect leader of Wan Xian sect, Lam Feng Huang. The woman on the bed, clothes disheveled revealing skin, was lying provocatively. A sensual expression as she called out, Ho ho ho, I want a man, I want more. Immediately there was a ting sound. Registration successful, reward one blind box. Getting a reward is nice. But at this moment, Xiao Tree couldn't laugh. Because now the beauty was breathing warmly and whispering into his ear. Phew. Next to his ear, Xiao Tree couldn't help but get enraged. Ah yo, damn it. This trash actually dares to ambush me. Putting aside his irritated thoughts for a moment, noticing the woman's unusual demeanor, Xiao Tree became suspicious. Considering the situation, he realized sect leader Lam's whole body was burning hot. Her consciousness out of it, looking like she had taken aphrodisiacs like euphoria powder. Seeing her flushed cheeks and moist eyes. In the depths only the infatuated image of the current female sect leader toward her partner. It was indeed the case. Faced with this unscrupulous act, Xiao Tree had to silently curse that scoundrel a few times. Zan Void, that beast disguised as cultivator, actually resorted to such vile means. Even a deviant like myself feels he's gone too far. Though I'm a deviant myself, I have rules. I don't just pounce on anyone. Suddenly there were footsteps outside. Two men, one in red robes, the other all in black, were calmly discussing. One said, Wu Fatn. This time I was fortunate to have your help in dealing with that vile Miao Shen. Wait for me to take advantage of her Ju Yin Zan body to break through the fusion realm. Then we'll share the world together. Hearing the commotion, Xiao Tree, in the intimate embrace of sect leader Lam on the bed, suddenly realized. Oh, someone's here. Outside was Wu Fatn the sect leader of the Wu Xin sect, at the initial separation stage, he cast a cold gaze. Calmly considering the situation, it was clear the demon Dao was currently a headless dragon, divided into factions. I originally took this opportunity to cooperate with Brother Zan. The new Zhuzhong of Tian Ma sect will seize this chance to dominate the demon Dao. But who knew he didn't know what to do? naturally retreating like a turtle not daring to come out. If he has given up vying for dominance, let me take the lead of the demon Dao. The other was Zan Void. He was pleased. Very good, I like having a junior with the same ambition. Behind the curtain, Xiao Tree was being crushed. No, he was struggling under Lam Feng Huang's body, letting that woman do as she pleased. As for himself, he was busy wondering why Zan Void had returned so quickly. Thinking carefully, that wasn't right. The separation stage at the banquet was a clone, this was the real body. Only now did he die of vexation, realizing his previous suspicions were correct. How could this lecher have any sense of righteousness? It turned out to be Zan Void's clone. Outside, the real Zan Void, still oblivious, casually asked Wu Fatn about the situation at the Wan Xian sect. The initial separation stage clone proudly said that the evil dragon Wan Xian had suppressed for a thousand years had been released. Guessing that place must have already become a demonic wasteland, he carefully recounted his insidious plan. In a few more days, once we from the Wu Xin sect subdue the evil dragon, 
All the huge premium spirit vein hidden in the dragon's den will be ours. By then, we'll divide the spirit vein that can let us ascend in a thousand years. The vast heavens and earth, who can do anything to us? Shao Tree was still in the situation of Wukong being pressed under the Five Elements Mountain. But at this moment his mind was elsewhere. This Wu Fatn was actually from the Wu Xin sect. Moreover, the Wan Xian sect seemed to have run into major trouble. Whether the Wan Xian sect was in trouble or not, Xiao Tri was about to be crushed to death. Outside, Wu Fatn was cupping his hands in gratitude. Brother Zan's divine strategy is ingenious and ruthless. Your victory is assured far and wide. I am in utmost admiration. With a sinister look, Wu Fatn plotted to advise Zan Void to first deal with the Tian Ma sect. Have the Wu Xin sect and Euphoria sect, along with the Xin sect, jointly besiege the Lu Yun sword sect, forcing the sword cultivators to spread out. Immediately after, he revealed the location of the Tian Ma secret realm to Hei Feng, the protector of the Tian Ma sect. Borrowing Hei Feng's hand to obtain the key to the secret realm, ordering the Tian Ma treasury to manifest, simultaneously luring out the evil dragon, massacring the Wan Xian sect. To conceive such a profound and insidious plot, Wu Fatn's capabilities must be deep indeed. But regrettably, Zan Void was apprehensive in evaluating the situation. Unfortunately, only one of the three schemes succeeded. We didn't get the swords of the sword cultivators, nor did we see the Tian Ma treasury. If not, our plan to dominate the world would have been completed at least 800 years ahead of schedule. As he lay listening to the situation, suddenly from inside the bed, the woman let out a moan. XXXXX. Ah. It immediately alerted the two outside. Shout Tree panicked. It's over. She made a sound. The two outside had lecherous looks, smiling victoriously. Ha ha ha. It seems our great beauty can't hold it in any longer. Zan Void squinted as he laughed. It's all because this initial separation clone gave the woman two pounds of euphoria powder. Even an ox couldn't stay sober. Seeing the blossoming spring scene. Wu Fatn looked like a madam welcoming a guest. He gently advised Zan Void not to feel regretful over the sword cultivators and Tian Ma secret realm. As long as we can enjoy Miao Xin's Ju Yin Zan body today, you'll be able to immediately break through to the fusion realm. By then, our plan to dominate will only be delayed by 500 years compared to before. Zan Void excitedly agreed. Indeed, who would have thought? Behind the curtain, Xiao Tri was in the beauty's embrace. Hmm. He was surprised to realize she was Miao Xin, the sect leader of the Euphoria sect. That woman whose head I almost. He reached out to lift the wide-brimmed hat. Seeing the woman's face, Xiao Tri couldn't help being startled. It really is you. Before the stunned beauty could react, a lecherous figure approached from outside. My beauty, I'm coming. Xiao Tri recognized the imminent danger. Only the celestial sword suppressing his aura had prevented detection earlier. Now he was caught in bed. But I didn't do anything to be caught, did I, brother Xiao Tri? Regardless, Xiao Tri could only cover his face in trepidation, facing two top experts of the current world. Once exposed, even with his immortal defying cultivation, he would be attacked by their divine senses, scattering his soul. Just thinking of that tragic fate made Xiao Tri shudder. He couldn't escape or hide. On one side was his life, on the other feminine beauty, both equally important to him. Hey, suddenly a system notification about receiving a mysterious box. But at this moment, Xiao Tri could hardly move, his whole body locked down by Miao Shen. Xiao Tri's mind raced. System, I'm counting on you. He pressed the button. The screen appeared, received a mysterious box. Open or not? Open. Ting. The mysterious box opened, receiving a paper box, a strand of martial hair, and a mask. The items appeared one by one. Ah, just in time. The system is helping me, he thought. Seizing the chance, Xiao Tri quickly grabbed the mask and put it on to disguise himself, changing his clothes in the blink of an eye. Outside, Zan Void and Wu Fatn were eager to see Miao Xin's passionate state, her burning desire at this moment. Swish. He pulled aside the curtain. Suddenly his face changed, as if struck by lightning, frozen in place, his hand halfway. The smile petrified on his face. Ah, this. Who the hell are you? Playing games, huh? Ruining my great opportunity. In this situation, Xiao Tri is definitely not a match for the two of us. Seizing this chance, there was only one way. Escape. Xiao Tri carried the semi-conscious Miao Xin, flying out the window with his sword, shattering it. So he overheard everything all along. Wu Fatn pulled Zan Void to quickly give chase. He stood dazed for a few seconds before regaining his senses, hastily pursuing to catch up with Xiao Tri at all costs. While chasing, he shouted loudly, 
Damn it, release that girl. Wu Fatn swiftly followed behind, yelling, Our secret plan has been overheard by him, he must die. Shout Tree flew with all his might, his sword cutting through the wind, carving a path for their pursuit. In a flash, the two caught up to him. He halted midair, realizing there was no place to hide. Better to conceal himself in the water flow if he could escape. Shout Tree quickly descended to the nearby sea, using a concealment technique to temporarily hide his tracks and evade Zon Void and Wu Fatn's pursuit. He flew so fast, Wu Fatn grumbled. We've lost sight of him now. Zon Void continued. At this moment, he only noticed the two swords Shout Tree flew with. At least they must be top grade spirit swords. Zon Void looked around, seeing no one but the two of them. His breath had completely vanished, the scene utterly still. The two didn't expect that kid could evade their pursuit. His cultivation was clearly no ordinary level. Wu Fatn originally thought it very difficult for a master to avoid them let alone such an advanced concealment technique. Two speculations arose. One, his cultivation surpassed theirs. Two, he possessed a top-grade spirit aura mark. Of course, after the Celestial Demon War 8,000 years ago, all the top experts had gone missing simultaneously. Could they all be dead? Zon Void thought it was unlikely. If they all disappeared simultaneously, then how to explain that kid just now? It's really hard to say. 8,000 years ago, when he and Zhu Ji, the martial emperor of the new celestial dynasty, swept the mortal realm. Their power was at least at the primordial realm. 3,000 years later, he still claimed to be at the primordial realm. This person, I don't understand him. At this, Wu Fatn guessed, could that person just now be the martial emperor? Zon Void found it plausible. But to be sure, I need to check who left the banquet earlier. Zon Void immediately employed his skills quickly infiltrating the tranquil void palace to observe the situation. A golden light flashed, entering his subconscious. All those who left the banquet must die. His clones were everywhere. Wait, Xiao Tri and Lu Shang are nowhere to be seen. So that kid earlier was Xiao Tri. Zan Void quickly withdrew from his subconscious. As he opened his eyes, he said, the masked one wasn't the martial emperor, but Xiao Tri. At this moment, Xiao Tri, concealed underwater, heard the whole conversation, tightly embracing the unconscious Miao Xin, not daring to move. It seems I can't escape this demon today, Xiao Tri thought silently. Wu Fatn saw an opportune moment, I've heard of him for a long time, but seeing Xiao Tri is truly interesting. Brother Zan, can you let me deal with him? He wanted to probe Xiao Tri's true power. Zan Void felt that a mere Xiao Tri didn't require his brother's intervention. I'll send the four patriarchs, four primordial realm masters, to surround him. He'll definitely die without a doubt. As for my brother, I'm afraid there may be changes. Please return to the myriad immortal sect to take charge. Definitely leave no survivors, kill them all without evidence. Wu Fatn felt a little disappointed, but no matter, there were more important matters. Let Zan Void's subordinates deal with Xiao Tri. No need to dirty his own hands. After pondering, he turned and flew towards the myriad immortal sect, firmly stating, rest assured, even the dogs at the myriad immortal sect, I'll kill them all. Wu Fatn's figure faded. Zan Void immediately flew after, muttering, Xiao Tri, old and new deaths settled together. Seeing the situation above temporarily safe, he turned to Miao Xin, who seemed unable to endure any longer. Her body burning hot, sweating profusely, groping his body. Might as well help her out now. Since he was helping, might as well go all the way. His muscular figure, crane-like stature gradually revealed, merging as one under the chilly water, yet he felt warmth. This was the first time the land sect leader did this. She devoted herself to satisfying him. After a very long time, the aphrodisiac in the land sect leader was partially neutralized. She felt this long-awaited opportunity had arrived. Xiao Tri had an immense appeal. She had craved him since they met. Thanks to that aphrodisiac, she smoothly had her first night with him. After their intimate time, they emerged from the water. Under the dazzling sunlight, the rays revealed the land sect leader's curvaceous figure. Her fair skin like snow. Her flowing hair caressed the water, clinging tightly to Xiao Tri's robust body. My precious treasure, I finally have you. As she spoke, she gently kissed his cheek. Ahem, Xiao Tri didn't refuse me, nor push me away, but said, 
I'm no longer pure. After changing clothes, they boarded a phoenix carriage and flew away. The land sect leader was overjoyed, laughing incessantly. Seeing his slightly melancholic face, she felt pity. Smile, don't be so unhappy. Seeing Shao Tree's displeasure, the land sect leader moved closer. Using her voluptuous body to caress him, gently lifting his chin, rest assured, I will take responsibility for you. I am the sect leader of the myriad immortal sect. I absolutely won't let you suffer any grievances. It turned out that until now, Shao Tree thought she would discover his true identity. Looking closely, he found the land sect leader before him not that bad, so they had more intimate contact. The land sect leader couldn't resist the man's charm, silently praising her discerning eye. He was so handsome she had to exclaim, oh, so handsome. Ah, so many talented youths. Is this how one's life is ruined? At this time in Donghai City, from afar, lively discussion could be heard from nearby people. It turned out to be the Zan Xi'an Gate disciples sent by Zan Void to surround and eliminate Shao Tri at all costs. Zan Shi 13 and the four patriarchs were Lu Tu Zhang, Shen Yuowei, Tan Shui Yuan, and Qi Huo Zhu. Each had their own unique look, some talented and handsome, others talented but unsightly. The ugliest were Qi Huo Zhu and Tan Shui Yuan, one had a protruding snout, the other resembled a toad. Though each had a different appearance, their skills were formidable, thus trusted by Zan Void. One among them with a keen sense of smell, likely Qi Huo Zhu, said, I quickly detected it, indeed I wasn't wrong. Lu Zhang's aura is within Donghai City, Shout Tree should be nearby, no need for us to go far. Just wait here like catching a rabbit under a tree. But with Chi Huo Ju's impulsive and impatient temper, he couldn't just sit and wait. As he spoke, he shouldered his butcher's cleaver, eyes bulging, ready to prove his power. Why be courteous? Let me burn Donghai City to the ground. See if Shao Tri dares show up. Seeing his manner, Shin Yuowei couldn't help but laugh. Patting Chi Huo Ju's shoulder, she calmly said, Brother Zhu, the sect master ordered us to kill Shao Tri, not harm civilians. Aren't you afraid of being punished? Punished? Zan Shi 13 wasn't afraid. He wanted to take this chance to get revenge on Shao Tri and Lu Shang for humiliating him during the martial arts competition. Settling old and new scores together. We'll do as we please here without the sect master. Only the junior sect master. He laughed wildly. The junior sect master is more fun. Old Zhu hasn't tasted human flesh for a hundred years. Today I must eat my fill. His heart rejoiced like a full moon festival. He suddenly flew up, using part of his power to swing his cleaver down. Wherever the cleaver went, fierce flames erupted, sending flames towards Donghai City. He laughed arrogantly, screw the transcending the mundane world crap. I don't want to ascend, I just want to indulge in pleasures. The sharp flames devoured small houses, nearly burning larger ones too, smoke increasing. Soon, Donghai City was engulfed in a sea of fire. Ha ha ha, the raging fire is huge. Charred things taste crunchier and better. Chi Huo Zhu ignored the civilian screams, freely enjoying himself. Wooden beams fell one by one, burning like red torches. Cries and shrill screams of civilians, the elderly and children huddled, seeking shelter. But where could they hide from this boundless sea of fire? Mama. A child's voice, separated from parents, uncertain if they still lived. Soon the fire reached Lu Zhang's residence. Seeing the unstable situation outside, she kicked open the door and flew out. What's going on? Who's setting fires? Unexpectedly, Zan Shi 13's group appeared. Oh no, it's Zan Shi 13 and Patriarch Chi Huo Zhu. Lu Shang thought she couldn't defeat them, but the civilians suffered unjustly because of her. If she hid like a turtle, the people of Donghai might not survive. Zan Shi 13. Quickly stop them. You're righteous cultivators. How can you burn down the city? I won't kill innocents if you tell me where Shao Tri is. Don't dream of it. Only a fool would reveal that. Even if I die for Shao Tri, this life would be fulfilling enough. Lu Shang resolutely defied them. A girl like her didn't deserve Zan Shi 13's hand. It would only dirty his hands. He waved dismissively. Elder Lu, she's yours. Lu Tu Zhang looked about to die his emaciated body pitiable. His sunken eyes suggested he hadn't slept in ages. Seeing the beautiful Lu Shang, his eyes lit up. Rest assured, junior master, I've long wanted to taste this proud holy maiden. Today I'll make her wish for life and death. Lu Shang gripped her sword tightly, slashing at him. Dream on. But the power gap was too vast. Without Shao Tri, she couldn't win. Little girl, daring to face a Yuan Ying cultivator just with a good sword? He clenched his fist, unleashing the power of the Yuan Ying realm. 
The realm gap can't be bridged by a sword, little girl. Lu Tu Zhang punched straight at Lu Shang, a satisfied look on his face. At one strike defeated Lu Shang, his expression one of utter satisfaction. Little beauty, next we can have some fun. He wiped his hands clean, his gaze sizing her up, pondering where to start. Lu Shang didn't want to suffer this humiliation, being forced to this desperate situation. She prayed for someone to rescue her, Lu Tu Zhang. Finally, someone from the Zan Xi'an sect spoke up. Xin Yu Hu. Lu Shang secretly hoped as a fellow woman, she would help her in this broad daylight. Are you still human? If you want to kill, why humiliate her? Lu Zhang's eyes filled with hope, but the next words were like a cold bucket of water to her face. Xin Yu Hu, this sword is yours too. Everyone gets a share. Don't speak ill of me in front of the sect master. So she was like the others. Blinded by the so-called supreme spiritual sword, Lu Shang lost all hope. Xin Yu Hu happily hugged the sword, ignoring Lu Shang. Take your time, guys. I'll stand guard. Perhaps now she had learned, she couldn't trust anyone, only rely on her own strength. She regretted not focusing on cultivation to protect herself and her loved ones. The more she thought, the more she blamed herself. The Marquis told me to return to the sword sect, but I acted willfully, staying in Donghai City. All the civilian suffering here is my fault. I'll just detonate my golden dan and perish with them. She knew detonating her golden dan was no simple matter, but she wanted him to die with her. Tears streamed down her cheeks, her distant gaze a final farewell. As golden light radiated brightly, sensing the situation was awry, Zan Chi 13 didn't want to lose his leverage for finding Xiao Tri. He didn't want things to escalate. Want to self-detonate? How laughable. I want you to suffer humiliation. To see how long Xiao Tri can hide. He swiftly fired three soul-sealing nails, piercing Lu Zhang's body. The nails tearing through her flesh caused excruciating pain. She cried out in agony. Seeing Lu Shang was helpless, the lecherous Lu Tu Zhang lumbered over, greedily grabbing her trembling soft hand. The junior sect master's nails have sealed your cultivation. You're just a powerless mortal woman now, able to struggle and scream but not die. Isn't this feeling exciting? No, no. Lu Shang refused to believe what she heard, tightly shutting her eyes, tears streaming down. Marquis, I'm sorry. Suddenly, a brilliant sword light flashed. Xiao Tri had arrived to rescue her. A whistling wind grew louder as a familiar sword flew in, piercing Lu Tu Zhang's dantian and shattering his golden dan, killing him instantly. That's Xiao Tri's sword. Xiao Tri is here. Xiao Tri arrived just in time. Those nearby screamed in terror. The aura emanating from him made even Zan Shi 13 wary, momentarily losing his arrogant demeanor, fearfully backing away step by step, seeking cover from Xiao Tri's line of sight. The three remaining Yuan Ying experts of the Zan Xian sect remained indifferent. The old Lu Tu Zhang's departure didn't seem to faze them much. Shi Huo Zhu spoke up. One sword killed a Yuan Ying elder, such unreasonable power. Could he have plotted against Kui Mu Lang? This golden dan cultivator is quite interesting. As the saying goes, the foolish have reckless courage, and the Zan Xian sect was no exception. The three remaining Yuan Ying experts charged forward. Gentlemen, forget any notion of chivalry. Let's go together. Right. If we want to kill him, we must join forces. Give it your all. They roared loudly. Chi Huo Zhu rushed ahead first. Xiao Tri. Taste the Zhu family's hatchet. He puffed up menacingly, swinging his hatchet forward. But no, against such small fry, Xiao Tri didn't need to exert any effort. He caught Chi Huo Zhu's hatchet with his bare hands, crushing it to pieces in an instant. Chi Huo Zhu stared in disbelief, stumbling backwards. But this is the 8000 Caddy Crimson Flame Sky Smasher. How could it be destroyed so easily? Destroyed. Destroyed. Chi Huo Zhu froze in shock. Xiao Tri could not tolerate. Those who called themselves righteous committing such unforgivable acts. So it was you who set fire to Donghai City. You deserve to die. Xiao Tri stood imposingly in the air, delivering a fatal sword strike, executing heaven's judgment. Chi Huo Zhu was cleaved in two, dying with eyes wide open. One sword killed the Yuan Ying Peak expert Chi Huo Zhu. Is this really just a golden dan cultivator? Han Shui Yuan and Xin Yu Hu trembled in fear, clutching each other, ready to flee. Xiao Tri slowly turned his head towards them. Now it's your turn. Die by my sword. It will be the greatest honor you could have. Sunlight glinted off the sword in Xin Yu Hu's hand, causing Xiao Tri to turn his gaze that way. It seems to be Shangers. Xiao Tri thought to himself. He squinted for a closer look. There was no mistaking it. It was the very sword his beloved always carried. How did it end up in her hands? You're holding Shangers' sword. 
Did you bully Shang'er? He wanted to kill her immediately, but since she might lead him to Lu Shang'er, he restrained himself. Calmly asking more questions in hopes of finding her, Shen Yu Hu raised the sword with both hands, seeking a way to escape, not wanting to end up like the previous two. Marquis, you misunderstand. I was forced to. Zan Shu killed my entire clan and forced me into dual cultivation. A weak girl like me, how could I resist him? Shen Yu Hu moved closer, tearing her robe further to reveal her rosy swells, attempting to seduce her way out. By then, sect master Lan on the hovering carriage had mostly guessed Shen Yu Hu's ploy to bewitch men with her beauty. Unable to hold back any longer, you vixen, die. Immediately, a silk ribbon slithered through the carriage curtains, swiftly binding Shen Yu Hu's neck. She cried out in pain. The silk tightened, choking her breath away in mere seconds. She died resentfully. Daring to vie for a man against me? You're far beneath me. Sect Master Lan laughed coldly. Seeing the ribbon's trajectory, Xiao Tri knew it was the Wan Xian Sect Master. Tan Shui Yuan saw his chance as Xiao Tri was distracted, swiftly drawing his sword to stab Xiao Tri's back. Ha ha, I've succeeded. I'll kill Xiao Tri. Oh, what's this? Tan Shui Yuan's sword had shattered into pieces. Holding the broken hilt, he knew he stood no chance. For Xiao Tri wore an immortal armor impenetrable to mortal blades, let alone a puny Yuan Ying cultivator. Tan Shui Yuan's face fell. How's that possible? He used my full power. His fate was sealed. Death. Ting. The system announced, killed 4th level Yuan Ying Peak Cultivator. 200,000 spirit souls. A nearby rustle caught Xiao Tri's attention, a familiar presence. Lu Shang'er was here too. He breathed a sigh of relief. First, he should deal with Zan Shi 13. Xiao Tri landed lightly before him. You're next. Zan Shi 13 panicked, fumbling as a scroll fell from his robes. Luckily father gave me this painting scroll. It can transmit over a thousand meters. I can definitely escape. He opened it, tossing it high. The scroll unfurled, stretching towards him. Delighted, thinking Shao Tree couldn't catch him, he quickly leapt in. The scroll retracted, disappearing without a trace. A while later, Zan Shi 13 emerged triumphantly. But the scenery before his eyes looked all too familiar. He stood frozen, eyes wide. What's going on? Is this painting scroll a fake? Why did it bring me back here? No, it's a top grade spirit artifact. An heirloom passed down in the Zan clan. Shao Tree calmly replied, the scroll is real, but you cannot escape. Why? Why not? Zan Shi 13 backed away in fear. Shao Tri smiled. Zan Shi 13 looked up. It was a heaven and earth prohibition array. No wonder he couldn't flee. Correct. I've set up a heaven and earth prohibition array here. You cannot run. Now it's your turn. A flash of light, and Shao Tri's sword was at Zan Shi 13's neck. He stammered, Shao Tri, I admit you're powerful but my father is the paramount celestial being, the number one expert of the Feng Yuan continent. If you dare kill me, he rambled on, but Xiao Tri slashed his throat decisively. Blood spurted as he clutched his neck in vain. It was his own doing. Living would only bring trouble to others. Ting, killed late Golden Dan Cultivator. 2,000 spirit souls. Ting, Congratulations on successfully comprehending the fifth stage of the Nine Yang Indestructible Diamond Body. 790,000 spirit souls needed to reach the sixth stage. Ting. Host has slain demons and eliminated evil. Rewarded by the Heavenly Tao. 280,000 Divine Consciousness. Ting. Congratulations, host's Taoist heart demon seed has advanced to the fifth stage. 787,000 divine consciousness needed to reach the sixth stage. The system notifications kept ringing. He wiped the blood off his hands and rushed to embrace Lu Shang'er, who apologized profusely through tears. I'm sorry, I caused the Dong Tai Town disaster. Thankfully, Xiao Tri arrived in time. He used his inner energy to force out the soul-binding talisman in Lu Shang'er. The culprit had been killed. Now's not the time for sorrow. We must put out the fire first. Let me. Lu Shang'er quickly recovered her cultivation power. Not disappointing Xiao Tri. She went to a nearby well, chanting incantations. Vast cosmos chaotic formation, infinite reinforcement spell. Her sword trembled with dazzling sword light as the water surface stirred. Rise. The water surged upwards, enveloping her sword, then transforming into a soaring dragon, bringing down heavy rain to douse the blazing fires. It's raining. Hooray. The townspeople cheered joyfully. Seeing the situation temporarily under control, Xiao Tri only needed to build a reservoir. He instructed his guard, I have an important matter to attend to. 
Leave the reservoir construction to you all. If the Zon clan finds me, no need to hide. Tell them the killer is Shao Tree. Understood. The guard bowed respectfully. He and Lu Shang are quickly returned to their carriage. The grateful townspeople knelt respectfully, bidding farewell, farewell, Lord Savior. Their voices echoed throughout the town. Drawing aside the curtain, Lu Shanger saw the patriarch of the myriad immortal sect was already seated inside, likely accompanying the Lord Savior. Without much thought, Lu Shanger calmly took a seat opposite her. After witnessing Shao Tree eliminate the Zan clan, even daring to kill Zan Shi 13, Patriarch Lam found Shao Tree's strength an enigma. The more she probed, the more elusive it became. She stared at him intently. Shao Tree, you've really won the people's hearts. I think you should just become emperor. There are still many unclaimed territories. He crossed his arms and snorted dismissively. Suddenly, Shao Tree remembered an unopened gift box from the Ning Kong Pavilion. He immediately opened it. Ting. Inside was a top-grade spirit sword, the Sword of Void Piercing. A premium spirit pill, the Soul Restoration Pill and half of a supreme technique, the Great Zon Immortal Manual. As the items appeared, ting, a new mission notification opened. Mission Location, Coiled Dragon Cave of the Myriad Immortal Sect. Difficulty, Secret Realm. Time Limit, 24 Hours. The word death was written in red, emphasizing the gravity. No need to spell it out like that, the system remarked. Accept mission? Shout Tree glanced at Patriarch Lamb, then nodded firmly. Ting, Mission accepted. Entering Coiled Dragon Cave. He knew failing the mission meant death. The Myriad Immortal Sect and the Sword Sect are Orthodox allies. Now that they're in trouble, as the Sword Sect's Lord Savior, I cannot sit idly by, for reasons of both sentiment and principle. This is a good opportunity to investigate. Shao Tree waved his hand, and a writing brush appeared before him. He quickly wrote down the Zan clan's misdeeds. Lord Savior, what are you writing? Lu Shanger leaned over to look, informing the sect master of recent events, to warn him about the Zan clan. But with their four elders captured, they shouldn't trouble the sword sect. Shao Tree skimmed the letter, rolled it up, and tied it to a small phoenix's leg to send off. Lu Shanger watched admiringly, the Lord Savior is truly meticulous in his considerations. After the letter flew off, Shao Tree sat back down, examining the sword in his hand. This seems to be Zan Kong's treasured sword. Why is it here? Zan Kong treated it as his most prized possession. Could this be a fake? Patriarch Lam recognized it immediately. Tree Tree, when did you take Zan Kong's sword of void piercing? He didn't know how the system had brought it to him. Its appearance was too abrupt. There must be some mystery behind it. It could be useful for the next mission. Facing the myriad immortal sect patriarch's interrogation, Shao Tree wanted to brush her off and end the matter. Going with her could risk exposing himself. Seeing his serious expression, the patriarch quickly moved closer to Shao Tree, shoving a surprised Lu Shanger away. The patriarch leaned in, her face inches from Shao Tree's, and breathed softly. What's wrong? Still mad at your sister? Should your sister help relieve your frustration? You can't come over here, Shao Tree said loudly. Nearby, Lu Shanger found it inappropriate. Unable to bear it, she angrily said, Patriarch Lam, as a sect leader, how can you act so brazenly? Oh? The patriarch turned to Lu Shanger, pinching her tender cheeks. The little one wants a share too? Fun activities can be shared. Your sister doesn't mind. The patriarch stroked Lu Shanger's cheek sensuously. Chow Tree tried to stop her. Temptress, release Shanger. If you want it, come to me instead. No one could touch his Shanger. Yet this woman dared caress her before his eyes. Oh ho, if you insist. The patriarch turned and embraced Shao Tree tightly. Cake ha cake ha, aia, ha ha ha. Thanks to the patriarch's antics, the carriage's atmosphere became lively. Soon, the news reached the Zan clan. A subordinate quickly reported to Zan Kong. Master, bad news, terrible news. The subordinate reported anxiously. What's got you so flustered? Did Shao Tree escape, or is the emperor hunting us down? Zan Kong disliked the subordinate's demeanor, which ruined his peaceful tea time. The young master led the four elders to face Shao Tree in Dongtai City. The battle went poorly, and they've all been captured. Hearing this, Zan Kong slammed his teacup down and grabbed the subordinate's collar in disbelief. What do you mean they've all been captured? And 13? Did he use the talisman I gave him? Surely he's unharmed? Speak. Zan Kong's expression terrified the subordinate, who trembled but replied. Shao Tri activated the heavenly interdiction in Dongtai City. The talisman wasn't powerful enough to break through. The young master, he's gone cold. Gone cold. Zan Kong let out a muffled groan and pounded his chest. My son, 13. 
I grieved deeply. He mourned the loss of his beloved son. Shout tree. I must avenge this. Only then can my son rest in peace. He grabbed the cosmic bag from his waist and rummaged through it. I want to take the void cleaving sword to kill the sword sect. And annihilate the two sword sects. But why is my bag empty? Where is my void cleaving sword? Ah. Where are my soul returning pills? He pondered with pursed lips. No, the heavenly interdiction is an esoteric technique of the heartless sect. While the soul pills are the antidote to their soul binding art. No matter how formidable Shao Tri is, he couldn't have captured all my four elders alone. So someone must have aided him. Moreover, the only one who could get close enough to steal my void cleaving sword without alerting me has to be. Memories surfaced. That mutt, lawless heaven. He suspected lawless heaven had taken it, unaware the system had actually claimed it. Meanwhile, Shao Tri, Lu Shang'er, and Patriarch Lam had arrived at the Daxing Mountains, home of the Myriad Immortal Sect, the location for their next mission. Why are we at the Myriad Immortal Sect? Lu Shang'er quickly answered the Patriarch. Ah, how can you call it, it, when we're home? The Patriarch took the opportunity to lean on Shao Tri, saying proudly, Since I'm Shao Tri's woman, the Lingxuan Sword Sect is my home. The Myriad Immortal Sect is just my maiden home. Of course, we've arrived. Lu Shang'er was helpless. Lu Shang'er didn't know how to respond to her, as if she was performing a little skit. Shao Tri stood pondering, ignoring the Patriarch's words. I overheard a conversation between Zan Kong and Lawless Heaven at the Ninkong Hall. They planned to release the Scourge Dragon from the Dragon's Den to massacre the Myriad Immortal Sect. The Sword Sect and Myriad Immortal Sect are allies of the Righteous Path. We cannot sit idly by. Shao Tri thought to himself, without revealing his true motive motive was to log in. Then, he turned and entered, with Lu Shang'er and the Patriarch following. From behind, they whispered, praising Shao Tri. Shao Tri upholds righteousness and virtue. A true exemplar of the chivalrous. The exalted lord carries the world's burden. Caring for all beings, a true paragon of the cultivation realm. Lu Shang'er turned to the Patriarch. The myriad immortal sect faces massacre. Yet you don't seem too anxious? In fact, the patriarch before Lu Shang'er was Miaoxin, abbess of the Harmonious Union sect. Masquerading as the myriad immortal sect's patriarch, Shao Tri knew her true identity but chose not to expose her for now. Her identity could still be useful to him. No need to deal with this demoness now. The fake patriarch was caught off guard by Lu Shang'er's suspicion. She waved her hand dismissively, changing the subject. Aha, that, that's just a minor distraction. No need to worry. They quickly entered, seeing a group waiting to receive them, welcoming the patriarch. The group greeted them respectfully. See? Everything's fine, Miaoxin smiled wryly. The myriad immortal sect is unharmed. No need for unnecessary worries. We're doing great. Oh, if there's no problem, then good. Shao Tree glanced around, his eyes lingering on the leading woman. Isn't she Wook, the saint of the heartless sect? Her presence here must mean the heartless sect is also involved. I see, they don't know Miaoxin has been exposed, so they're putting on an act, trying to deceive me. Very well, I won't stir up trouble for now. After logging in at the dragon's den, I'll avenge the myriad immortal sect's disciples. Seeing they were tired, Miaoxin thoughtfully instructed, Xiao Yue, please escort the exalted lord and Lu Shang'er to their guest rooms to rest. Oh, arrange separate rooms for them, a little distance apart. Highs, her boy craziness hasn't been cured yet. Soon after, Xiao Tri and Lu Shang'er arrived at the guest rooms, finding the serene scenery comfortable, putting Xiao Tri at ease, perfect for resting. Lu Shang'er felt the girl looked familiar. So she asked boldly, Xiao Yue, haven't we met before? You seem very familiar. The girl replied hesitantly, I've never left the myriad immortal sect before. You must be mistaking me for someone else. Xiao Yue quickly reminded Xiao Tri, exalted lord, be cautious. The area behind the myriad immortal sect is forbidden. Outsiders are not permitted to enter, especially during the third night watch. You absolutely cannot go beyond the hundred trees forest. After the warning, she hurriedly left, fearing prolonged contact would expose her disguise. Soon, only Miaoxin and the heartless sect's left protector remained in the courtyard. Lady Miaoxin, they're just two golden core cultivators. Why did you have to go through so much trouble to summon us and put on this act? Wouldn't it be easier to just kill them directly? Miaoxin smirked, but what if? You're underestimating them. If they had different fated chances, how would we handle it? At most, they're just Yuanying cultivators, still within our grasp. It seems Lady Miaoxin has taken a fancy to that boy? 
The left protector understood Miao Xin's intentions. I sense he may have an extraordinary physique. Wu Feng, the left protector, knew Miao Xin well. Xiao Tri possesses the rare indestructible diamond body. How could she bear to kill him? Moreover, he's talented and handsome. Miao Xin couldn't bring herself to kill him. Oh, and that Lu Shanger girl, you must not harm her either. I don't want my little darling to be heartbroken. Wu Feng turned away. As long as he doesn't interfere with our plans, I can spare him. But if he causes trouble, don't blame me for being inhospitable. That night, after leaving the Hundred Trees Forest at midnight, Xiao Tree said aloud, The lady invited me here. Why won't she show herself? Suddenly, the sound of a flute came from somewhere. Xiao Tree understood and asked, Is this the same flute I heard when I first arrived at the Willow Creek Villa? Is she warning me this place is dangerous, and I shouldn't linger too long? The flute sounded again, implying he should leave soon. Without hesitation, Xiao Tree leapt towards where Wook stood, startling her. At this moment, he gazed at Wook and said, Thank you for your concern. I should express my gratitude in person. Wook turned away, avoiding Xiao Tree's gaze, saying, You helped me at the Willow Creek Villa. I'm just repaying the favor. Hearing this, Xiao Tri questioned her, repaying a favor? Is this by using beast taming arts to lure the evil dragon to massacre the myriad immortal sect? Repaying a favor by monopolizing the spirit minerals? Is this how you repay me for sparing your life that day? Wook backed away, denying her involvement and explaining it was Wu Feng. Only his beast taming arts could summon the evil dragon. She couldn't stop him. Xiao Tri placed his hand on her shoulder and said, if you truly want to repay the favor, show you still have humanity left. According to your conscience, tell me, are there any myriad immortal sect survivors? And where is the entrance to the dragon's den? What's inside? Wook hesitated but decided to tell him. The myriad immortal sect survivors have fled into the dragon's den, their fate unknown. The dragon's den is extremely dangerous, not only containing top-grade spirit minerals, but also evil dragons and various demonic beasts. She continued, the entrance is north of the Hundred Trees Forest. The cave has a hazy atmosphere, with numerous seals both inside and out, absolutely forbidding entry or exit. Don't test those formations, or you'll be reduced to ashes. Hearing this, Xiao Tri became more determined. If that's the case, I only need to kill Wu Feng. Then I can rescue the myriad immortal sect survivors in the dragon's den. Wook firmly objected. Wu Feng used his soul to set up a hypnosis formation, which keeps the evil dragon in a deep slumber. If Wu Feng dies, the formation will be broken, and the evil dragon will leave the dragon's den. Then the entire Great Xing Mountain will be in peril. Wook added, that dragon is terrifying. Xiao Tri found her reasoning sound. He told Wook, if I can't kill Wu Feng, then I'll enter the dragon's den first and adapt accordingly. At that moment, Wu Feng arrived, and Xiao Tri vanished. Wu Feng asked Wook, who are you talking to? Not wanting him to know about Xiao Tri, she said she was practicing beast taming arts. Wu Feng snorted, reminding her to be honest. You're the newly appointed consort, destined to cultivate with the sect master. It's best not to get too close to any other man, or let them near you. Annoyed, Wook turned away, saying, aren't you the closest man to me, brother? Wu Feng flew up, warning her not to be glib. Do you think I didn't see? You kept making eyes at that scoundrel Xiao Tri. Wu Feng added, now I'll go check his room. If he's not there, it proves you were just talking to him. Then both you and him are doomed. Worried, Wook called out, Xiao Tri, come out quickly. Wu Feng is checking your room. Leave the myriad immortal sect immediately, or your life will be in danger. Xiao Tri calmly replied, in front of this lady, I'm not human. Wook's eyes and mouth formed an O shape. Based on what you just did, that seems true. But how is that related to Wu Feng wanting to kill you? Hearing this, Xiao Tri uttered soul separation and vanished. Wook watched in disbelief, wondering to herself how his soul could separate like that. Just then, Wu Feng kicked open Xiao Tri's door, calling him a shameless scoundrel for seducing the holy maiden. Are you seeking death? But he realized the person before him wasn't Xiao Tri. Wu Feng said in surprise, you're cultivating? It seems I misunderstood. But looking closer, he found Xiao Tri motionless, realizing something was amiss. He noticed Xiao Tri wasn't moving at all. Could it be soul separation? Thinking to test it, Wu Feng drew his sword, but Xiao Tri opened his eyes and asked, What do you want to do? Wu Feng could only laugh awkwardly. Apologies, I was just joking around. After Wu Feng left, Xiao Tri thought to himself, if not for worrying about the evil dragon being released and endangering all life, the grass on his grave would have grown meters high by now. Then Miao Shen came running, asking what happened. Xiao Tri didn't answer, only saying, You're just in time. I've been waiting for you. Miao Shen warned, this isn't good. If the disciples hear, they'll think their sect master is improper. Xiao Tri smiled radiantly, 
Hurry up, I can't hold back much longer. Miao Shen blushed and lay down. I'll try to be as quiet as possible, but please don't go easy on me, she said shyly. Shout Tree found it amusing. Go easy on you? I wish I could trample you to death. As he thought this, Shao Tri placed a talisman on Miao Shin's forehead. He silently rejoiced, I need soul separation, and conveniently lack a bodyguard. Miao Shin is the perfect cover. Then Shao Tri lay beside Miao Shin and separated his soul, a soul separation ability. Afterwards, he left his soulless body beside Miao Shin's to conceal his absence. Shao Tri flew out, thinking how freeing soul separation felt, lightly floating as if walking in midair. Moreover, his separated soul had no physical body, like an immortal, immune to physical attacks. And his soul power was extremely potent, not much weaker than his bodily strength. Standing before the towering cave entrance surrounded by dense seals, he knew this must be the dragon's den. Shao Tree entered effortlessly, as if someone was guiding his way, for as a foreign soul, he was immune to the seals. Passing through all obstructions, he finally stopped before three small cave entrances. After pondering which path to take, he recalled the system map. The map appeared, revealing every corner. After tracing a route, he decided on the middle entrance, as indicated. Inside was pitch black, but thankfully the system guided him towards a faint light ahead. He had found it. A beautiful woman lay motionless, sleeping on an icy slab. The dragon's lair? He was surprised to find such a beauty here. Approaching, he admired her exquisite, gentle looks. Was she the rumored ice beauty? Her fair skin, delicate features, she was indeed a breathtaking beauty. Unsure of the woman's identity, Shao Tri heard a melodious sound and traced it to a wooden box. Music box? He opened it, realizing it played a lullaby. After inspecting the internal mechanisms and finding nothing concerning, he set it aside. No more distractions, I need to log in first, he thought, prioritizing his mission. The system map indicated an underground cave, likely beneath this icy slab. Using all his strength, Shao Tri pushed the slab aside, revealing a cave entrance. Oh, there's a cave here? A voice startled him, he had accidentally woken the woman while moving the slab. It was in Gao Biyu Lane, the peak lord of soul separation. Though she didn't reveal her identity to Shao Tri, since she seemed harmless, he paid her no mind. Shush, keep it down, he whispered. There's an evil dragon here, be careful not to wake it. In Gao Bi Yu Ling nodded vigorously, mouth sealed shut. Shao Tri jumped into the dark passage below and opened his system interface to log in. Random blind box reward, a handheld flashlight. How thoughtful of the system. He turned it on, illuminating the path ahead. Suddenly, a voice came from behind. Oh wow, what is this thing? It looks so mystical. Shao Tri jumped, startled. It was the woman from the icy slab, who had silently followed him this whole time without him noticing, focused on his mission. Why did you come down here? Shao Tri asked, but in Gao Bi Yu Ling ignored him, fixated on the strange glowing object, something she had never seen before and desperately wanted. Can I trade these stones for your treasure? If this isn't enough, I have many more. High-grade spirit stones. Shao Tri was taken aback. High-grade spirit stones in the cosmic continent were equivalent to the purest diamonds in the modern world. To trade such a valuable item for a mere flashlight, was this girl simple-minded? But given her demeanor, she seemed to be one of the demon captives of the evil dragon, understandably ignorant. So Shao Tri decided to accept her spirit stone offer. He tossed her the flashlight, and the spirit stone slid into his sleeve in exchange. A successful trade, in Gao Bi Yu Ling rejoiced, you're a good person. You can follow, but stay quiet, Shao Tri warned. Along the way, in Gao Bi Yu Ling curiously waved the flashlight around unintentionally lighting their path. Her excitement made keeping quiet difficult for her. She seemed fascinated by the strange, unfamiliar object. Shao Tri had calculated well. Seeing she meant no harm, he let her follow and conveniently light their path, while he gained an unexpected reward of spirit stones. Soon they saw light emanating from a cave ahead, where members of the Wan Xian sect lay motionless, cocooned. Ah, I understand, Shao Tri investigated with his spiritual force. They've fallen under Wu Feng's hypnosis spell. Their souls sleep deeply. He recalled the medicine from Wu Song Hall could cure this condition. Shao Tri quickly tossed the medicinal powder into the air where it dispersed over them. Gradually, they awoke, dazed. Where are we? Weren't we all unconscious? Before blacking out, I saw senior sister Ma take master and the others away. Regaining consciousness, they grew anxious and afraid. Seeing this, Shao Tri reassured them. Fellow Taoists, do not panic. I am Shao Tri, 
the newly ordained Shang Khan of Lu Yun Sword Sect. Learning of the Wan Xian Sect's plight, I came to provide assistance. Shao Tri? I've never heard of such a person from our sect elder, said Xing Hao Ying, skeptical. Their skepticism was understandable, until an old woman's voice nearby dispelled all doubts. Thank you, Shang Khan, for your timely rescue. My frail body cannot move to bow properly. It was none other than Lam Feng Wang, the true sect leader of Wan Xian sect. The young lady beside her was Lam Ying Ying. Facing her benefactor, Lam Ying Ying could only express her gratitude to Xiao Tri the Shang Khan. Thank you for saving our lives. Realizing the old woman was the Wan Xian sect leader, Xiao Tri felt awkward, his body still being clung to by the sleeping sect leader. He shuddered, witnessing the stark contrast between her true and false appearances. Setting that aside, his priority was freeing everyone. Xiao Tri directed his power at the Wan Xian disciples, forcefully shattering the cocoons binding them. Suddenly, wait a moment, someone called out, but before they could finish, Xiao Tri had already completely freed them. Ropes loosened and fell as dust clouded the air. Oh no, more trouble incoming. Senior sister Ma's lair is destroyed. She won't let this slide. If fighting draws the evil dragon above, we'll be trapped in Dragon's Den Cave. But their warning came too late. Seeing their worried faces, Xiao Tri sensed the situation was quite serious. He turned to Lam Ying Ying. Very serious. You just saved us. We cannot blame you, but unfortunately, even your own life is now threatened. The ground began to tremble, the sound of marching feet growing louder. A disciple pressed his ear to the ground. I sense an army of unknown numbers approaching. Realizing the dire situation, sect leader Lam Feng Wang urgently rallied everyone to prepare for battle. They're here. Everyone listen up, get ready to fight. They clutched talisman charms before their chests. Eyes fixed on the growing rumble. Long, fiery red antennae emerged from the ground, slowly rising. An army of Bing Yi ants, at the Golden Dan realm, stood rigidly holding their staves, awaiting orders. Just some Golden Dan demonic ants, and you're all so frightened? Shao Tri scoffed. Oh no, not just a few. More and more ants surfaced, endlessly emerging. Seems we've stumbled into their nest. Suddenly, they charged forward to attack. Sensing danger, Lam Ying Ying felt she had to act. Fire. Only it can stop this demonic ant army. She swiftly ignited, let you taste my fire immortal raging flames. With deft movements too fast to capture, Lam Ying Ying swiftly affixed talismans to the front ant ranks. One by one, explosions rang out as charred corpses fell. Seeing their underlings perish, two demon ants quickly employed their final tactic, death headbutts. Use the old ways against them. Release your golden dan. They charged, for our ant nest. Fueled by desperation, they recklessly self-detonated their golden dan, determined to die with Shao Tree's group. Fall back quickly, they're going to kamikaze. Sect leader Lam urgently ordered everyone to flee. Their bodies swelled as explosions boomed, raining debris everywhere. Oh no, with such commotion, the evil dragon above will surely awaken. Everyone, help me break through this encirclement. Don't get separated. The sect leader led them running for the cave exit. A voice echoed from within, a figure appearing faintly. Too late, you've already roused senior sister Ma. She approached slowly, belly heavy, steps labored. Didn't expect you all to wake up. What a surprise. Senior sister Ngi Hao Ma sneered. Lam Feng Wang raised her hand, signaling everyone not to proceed further. Danger lay ahead. They might be buried alive in this cave. Senior Sister Ma, if you're willing to let us go unharmed, the entire Wan Xian sect will belong to you in the future. But if you insist on forcing me to destroy that spawn in your belly, and ruin your nest, so be it. The Wan Xian sect leader revealed three talismans. HMPH, big words. Putting on airs in my dragon's den cave? You must be tired of living. One of my spawns births 108 offspring. What do you have to challenge me with? She spread her arms as tens of thousands of demon ants emerged from her belly, growing larger in size, scuttling towards them. The sight left Shao Tree dumbfounded. Ants don't plan their breeding? This is way too many. Is she the multi-bearing mother or what? Meanwhile, behind Shao Tree, in Gao but Ling was fiddling with that strange object, having found the light switch. She kept turning it on and off, playing with it, inadvertently shining the flashlight up at her chin. The backlighting on her face delighted her even more. That expensive spirit stone wasn't wasted after all. In Gao but Ling rolled her eyes back, stuck out her tongue, slowly emerging from behind Shao Tree. Ants? I want meat, I want meat. Ngi Hao Ma and her demon ant horde gave them quite a fright. She quickly turned and ran away. Don't eat me, don't eat me. 
Ants don't have meat. In Gao but Ling proudly stuck out her nose, defiantly placing her hands on her hips as she turned to Xiao Tri. See how formidable I am. I scared them all away. Xiao Tri didn't expect that with that object in her hand, her silly antics would actually terrify them. He laughed with squinted eyes. Oh, so formidable, so formidable. Then he remembered he hadn't introduced in Gao but Ling to the Wan Xi'an sect people. He pulled her close, draping an arm over her shoulder. Ah yes, let me introduce her to everyone. Before he could finish, he noticed the Wan Xi'an sect members staring at them, petrified. It can't be that bad. She was just pretending, yet you're all so scared. Could they really have been terrified by in Gao but Ling to the point of paralysis? Dragon, dragon, dragon. Voices rang out from the group. Xiao Tri looked around in confusion. There was no one else besides him and Ngao but Ling. They must have been scared out of their wits. Talking nonsense. Xiao Tri patted Ngao but Ling's head, laughing. Dragon? She calmly replied, oh yes. Her, a dragon? He looked her up and down, nothing dragon-like. He playfully smacked her bottom. You don't even have a dragon tail. What kind of joke is this? Lam Feng Wang and the Wan Xi'an sect turned to stone. For before being trapped in the dragon's den cave, they had witnessed her dragon transformation with their own eyes. How could I be mistaken? In Gao but Ling stood dazed, glancing back over her shoulder. This can't be. I was just hiding it before. A shimmering silver dragon tail slowly emerged from behind her. Oh no. Not only did Xiao Tri befriend an evil dragon, he even smacked its butt. She pouted, I'm in Gao but Ling. A true dragon race, not some evil dragon. Xiao Tri didn't dare believe this girl was an evil dragon as they claimed. There must be some misunderstanding. Seeing this, Lam Feng Wang burned with anger. No more pretense. You were sealed in the dragon's den cave for thousands of years, harboring resentment all this time. A few days ago, the Wuxin sect released you. Have you forgotten how many you've killed? Master Lu pointed at Ngao but Ling. Half of my martial brothers were slain by you. You are an evil dragon. A demonic dragon. His words deeply disturbed in Gao but Ling's mind. Horrific memories of merciless killing resurfaced. She shuddered in fear. Why do I have those memories? No, I didn't do that. It wasn't me. Her head pounded excruciatingly. In Gao but Ling pounded her head but the pain intensified. Flashing scenes of death. No, I didn't kill anyone. I didn't kill anyone. She clutched her head and ran away. In Gao but Ling seemed truly harmless, not pretending. But her infamous reputation preceded her, and the Wan Xi'an sect harbored deep hatred towards her, believing she must have committed many misdeeds. What was this situation? Did she have a split personality? Xiao Tri wondered to himself. The Wan Xi'an sect prepared for battle, but in Gao but Ling's behavior now contrasted with before. Seeing her flee, they were taken aback, having expected an all-out fight. Wan Xi'an sect leader Lam Feng Wang was also worried for her people, ready to sacrifice herself to protect her sect to the end. Within Gao but Ling's retreat, she felt relieved. The heavens had not destroyed her Wan Xi'an sect. Lam Feng Wang gripped Xiao Tri's hand tightly, staring intently as she spoke. Your Excellency is our sect's benefactor. If you can enter, you can surely find a way out. Please allow us to follow you outside. As the Wan Xi'an sect leader, I vow that if we escape, I will repay your immense kindness a thousandfold. Having met the true Wan Xi'an sect leader, Xiao Tri finally saw her up close. This skin, these lips, he could hardly believe it was real. His impression of Miao Xin's disguise was so ingrained. He and her had once shared the same breath. Even now, he couldn't directly face this title of Wan Xi'an sect leader. He shuddered, abruptly pulling his arm back and retreating a few steps. Rest assured, I'll save. I'll save you. At first, Xiao Tri had to complete the login mission then rescue these fellow cultivators. The system interface appeared, and he quickly logged in, as time was running out. Dang. Dragon's Den Cave Secret Realm Login Mission Reward. One blind box. Dragon's Den Cave Blind Box. One Fung Long Pearl. One ton of top grade spirit stones. 100,000 physical cultivation. 100,000 spiritual cultivation. Not bad, his physical and spiritual cultivation were now equivalent to the ethereal opening realm. He could challenge spirit severing realm cultivators now. Xiao Tri inwardly rejoiced. The next step was to find a way to safely lead the Wan Xi'an sect people out. He suddenly remembered the heaven and earth scroll he got from Zan Shi 13. He quickly took it out and tossed it to Lam Feng Wang nearby. This is the heaven and earth scroll. If danger arises, you can open its inner space, and no one outside will be able to find you. He could so casually gift away a top-grade artifact? Everyone gaped in astonishment. Wait here, I'll retrieve my fleshly body, break the seal, 
then come back for all of you. His body gradually faded and disappeared. Everyone was still stunned. His fleshly body? So he was an ethereal opening cultivator's spirit? Soon, he was before the room where his physical body awaited. Voices came from inside. Xiao Tree wanted to listen to what was happening. Inside, Miao Xin sat atop him. Her sword pointed at his throat. Little lover, you're awake. If you've learned the secret here, I can't let you live. As she spoke, she leaned down. The sword's tip barely an inch from him. The slightest move could end his life. Shao Tree's body whispered in her ear. You plan to kill me? That honeyed voice gave Miao Shen pause. She turned away, afraid facing him would stay her hand. No, don't look at me like that, as if I'm fickle. I just don't want you to die here. After a pause, perhaps she had softened. Miao Shen sheathed her sword and hurriedly went to the window. Wu Fatn is on his way. Should I send someone to stop him? He's already ascending the mountain. Take that little sword sect scoundrel away from here. Never let him return. As Miao Shen opened the door to leave, you, why are you outside? Your highness, is it really you? Creek. Miao Shen froze upon opening the door, stunned to see him there. She rubbed her eyes in disbelief. Shout Tree was also a bit surprised, only smiling in response, I haven't actually entered yet. His physical body inside the room suddenly sat up, legs crossed. No, no, you've been stuck in this room all along. Miao Shen looked back and forth, unable to tell which was real and which was fake. I'm real, you're fake no, I'm real, you're fake. Neither would concede, infuriating Shao Tree's physical body. Not wanting to argue further, Shao Tree waved his hand, slashing at him. The physical body dissipated into smoke. Only then did Miao Shen understand. You've reached the spirit severing realm? This is your spirit body? But no, if the spirit body is killed, it would backlash on the true body. This is the transcendental spirit projection from the Great Traverse Scripture. The spirit severing realm only has one spirit body, but it has 3000 projections. Death and injury don't affect the main body, but it can still gain cultivation opportunities. Do you still think you can kill me now? Hearing Shao Tree's words, Miao Shen felt a chill down her spine. Her heart skipped a beat. Luckily I held back out of lingering feelings, or I'd be a corpse now. Outsiders only knew him as a minor pill formation cultivator. But when he killed that Yuan Ying cultivator in Dongtai City, expending some effort, just what realm was he in? Miao Shen couldn't tell at all. After retrieving his physical body, Xiao Tri quickly returned to Dragon's Den Cave to release the Wan Xian sect people and demolished the Wuxin Pavilion. Seeing Xiao Tri's hurry, Miao Shen asked, Where are you going? Don't be reckless. Although Wu Fatn isn't here, Wu Feng is equally formidable and knows beast taming arts. We should plan for the long term. How about, how about I host a Hongmen banquet? Kill him before he can react? A powerful surge rose in Miao Shin's heart. Before, she held back due to uncertainty. Now that the truth was clear, why hesitate? Immediately, she followed Xiao Tree towards Dragon's Den Cave. The night was pitch black, with a light breeze. Lu Shuang had been waiting, alerted by the door opening. It's your highness. Seeing Xiao Tree's urgency, though unsure of his purpose, she was determined to follow. Your Highness, let me assist you. After a few steps, the Wuxin Pavilion guards blocked their path arrogantly. Protector Wu Feng ordered none of you be allowed to leave. The leader drew his sword, shouting for the guards to charge. Stop immortals, punish immortals. And so they rushed forward in a clamor. But they were no match for Shao Tri. Without any effort, a mere wave of his hand sent them flying and falling unconscious. No wonder Miao Xin took a liking to this man. Such imposing aura. Your Highness is so valiant. By then, Wu Feng and the Wuxin Pavilion disciples had arrived at Dragon's Den Cave to stop Shao Tri from rescuing the people. He had set up numerous restrictions, determined not to let the Wan Xian sect members leave alive. They couldn't leave, but couldn't stay either. Wu Feng watched closely, spotting someone flying towards them from afar. Sure enough, it was Xiao Tri. Kill him. Spurred on, the Wuxin Pavilion disciples charged at Xiao Tri, intent on taking his life. Wu Yu nearby worried Xiao Tri was outnumbered. No matter his skills, he couldn't fend off so many Wuxin Pavilion disciples. But Xiao Tri remained calm, summoning the nine swords of flowing clouds. Sword light blazed forth, swirling with the mighty power of his sword arts. Let me show you the might of the nine swords of flowing clouds. The nine swords of flowing clouds, myriad swords descending technique. Instantly, nine swords fanned out. As if finding their path, 
shooting forward with increasing speed. The silver sword light connected, piercing through the Wuxin disciples' dantians and shattering their pill formations. They fell in a single move, swift and merciless. One move was enough to kill all the elite disciples of my Wuxin pavilion? Impossible. Just as I was feeling victorious, it ended in the blink of an eye. The smile froze on Wu Feng's face. This Shao tree is formidable. Moving closer to the cave entrance, Shao Tree shouted loudly. Listen, Wan Xi'an sect friends. I will now break the restrictions for you all. You can leave safely. You want to rescue them? You can barely protect your own life, let alone them. Though my Wuxin disciples lost, my power surpasses yours, Shao Tri. That was just the opening act. Wu Feng thought, how shameless. Do you know restrictions and beast taming are our Wuxin pavilion specialties on the Feng Yuan continent? Our ancestors tamed dragons and phoenixes, unmatched under heaven. There are over 10 restriction lines here, the highest being top grade. He spoke confidently, laughing inwardly. Shao Tri thinks his power can break these restrictions? Ridiculous. Ignoring his words, Shao Tri calmly approached, using one hand to gather all 10 restriction cords around Dragon's Den Cave. Ah, impossible. Using his hands to undo restrictions? Is he even human? Wu Feng's eyes widened, wondering if he was seeing things. With a forceful tug, Shao Tri undid the restrictions in an instant. Wu Feng cowered. Ah, they're broken. How could it be so easy? The restrictions are all undone. Inside the cave, the Wan Xi'an sect members could now move freely, their agility restored, no longer feeling suppressed. Lam Feng Huang and Lam Ying Ying led the way, flying out swiftly. Seeing Wu Feng before them, the old woman's blood boiled. You, Wu Feng, today, this old woman will definitely take your wretched life. She felt like slapping him silly. But no, she changed her mind. Perhaps he should taste the legendary might of the phoenix fire. Lam Feng Huang rolled up her sleeves, revealing taut muscles, talismans seemingly pre-attached. You brats, if you'd been born a thousand years earlier, you'd have heard of the phoenix fire's fame. The old woman quickly folded her hands, murmuring an incantation. Her palms touched lightly, flames flickering before bursting forth. Sect leader Lam soared high, arms spread like phoenix wings towards Wu Feng. Wu Feng, accept your death. He sneered, easily blocking her flaming punch with his palm. The searing flames passed through his hand, but he remained unfazed. Old woman, times have changed. The flames in his hand grew larger, the scorching heat unbearable. He frantically shook his hand, but the fire clung to him like glue burning through his flesh inch by inch. Wu Feng screamed in agony, what kind of fire is this that can harm me? Seizing the opportunity, Lam Feng Huang struck, leaving him no chance to counter. Do you know the old woman's prowess now? You dare challenge the one Xi'an sect? I'll smash your dog head. Wu Feng tensed, using force to break through her defenses and counterattack. Crack, his body glowed, emanating an eerie power that instantly transformed into a dragon soaring into the night sky. Sensing danger, Lam Feng Huang retreated swiftly. Our realms differ. You've just broken through the outer realm. While I entered it a hundred years ago, what makes you think you can fight me? Wu Feng spun, pointing at Lam Feng Huang. The dragon charged, mouth agape to swallow her whole. The old woman dodged, narrowly avoiding the fatal blow, but the force severely injured her. You managed to evade this strike, but can you dodge the next? Wu Feng lunged forward. Seeing this, Lam Ying Ying flew up. How dare you hurt my master? I'll take you on. Lu Shang could no longer turn a blind eye. I'll help you don't overestimate yourselves and seek death. If even Lam Feng Huang couldn't defeat him, Ying Ying and Lu Shang are definitely no match. Shao Tri could no longer stand idly by. He couldn't let these foolish teammates throw away their lives. It's better if I take action. Gripping the nine swords of Lu Yun, Shao Tri forcefully threw a sword forward. Move. The sword flew swiftly, seemingly unfamiliar with Shao Tri's skills. Lu Shang asked, What? What move is this? Shao Tri turned back with a friendly smile, throwing sword. Wu Feng swiftly unleashed his black dragon armor chi. No matter what you use, puny chi condensation cultivator can't break through my Wuxin pavilion's defenses. Murderous intent surrounded him. The sword pierced through him swiftly, blood not even staining the blade, spurting from his back. Ah, is this the power of the chi condensation realm? You've killed me. Wu Feng cried out in agony. He had underestimated Shao Tri. One sword broke through my Wuxin pavilion's ultimate technique? One sword injured Wu Feng? Terrifying. 
Witnessing it all, Wu Yu shuddered in fear. Facing such a strange and formidable move, forget counter-attacking, she couldn't even block it. The sword pierced through his chest. Wu Feng sat on the ground, clutching his bloodied chest. I'd rather die with honor than live in shame. Even if I die, I'll drag you down with me. He still talked big, unable to even stand. Well then, let me see. Chao Tri swung his sword, slashing Wu Feng who died instantly. Dang. Killed a Yuan Ying cultivator, gained 200,000 spirit points, need 510,000 more to level up, the system announced. Wu Feng's lifeless body lay on the cold ground. Plop, 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 a golden frog croaked, slowly crawling out from his sleeve, hopping towards the cave entrance. Shout Tree paid it no mind, thinking Wu Feng was dead and the threat gone but perhaps he was gravely mistaken. That golden frog was Wu Feng's lingering consciousness, intent on awakening the evil dragon within in Gao Bi Yu Ling's subconscious, determined to drag her down even in death. Plop, 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 its croaks echoed through the cave. After the Wan Xian sect members left, only in Gao Bi Yu Ling remained inside. She walked and hummed, fiddling with a flashlight. The golden frog quickly approached her, croaking plop, plop, plop. In Gao Bi Yu Ling stopped, shining the light to see the source of the sound. The beam hit the frog's eyes, glowing red with murderous intent. Its gaze locked onto her. The frog's gaze pierced towards In Gao Bi Yu Ling. Ah ah ah. A voice echoed in her head. Vague memories resurfaced, and she collapsed to the ground, clutching her pounding head. In Gao Bi Yu Ling could no longer control the surging inner forces within her body. She screamed, ah. In Gao Bi Yu Ling revealed her true raging form, madly charging forward. The loud commotion alerted the others outside. Oh no, the evil dragon has awakened. Quick, form a formation. In her frenzied state, In Gao Bi Yu Ling would attack anything in sight. She opened her jaws, exhaling a powerful gust that blew the Wan Xian disciples into a heap. This is troublesome. This dragon is at the outer realm peak with a berserk state. I fear no one can subdue it. That vile Wu Feng released this evil dragon before dying. Now the surrounding thousand miles face calamity. Miao Shen and Lu Shang were at a loss on how to resolve the situation, when suddenly, the sound of a flute pierced the air. Someone's playing the Zan flute. It seems to be working. In Gao Bi Yu Ling froze midair as if entranced. It was Wu Yu, the Wuxin Pavilion's holy maiden. Previously under Wu Feng's command, she had to follow his orders. Now that he was dead, she didn't want any more bloodshed, hoping to resolve the situation with her meager power. The moonlight illuminated Wu Yu's radiant face. She's beautiful, Xiao Tri blurted out. Seeing in Gao Bi Yu Ling calm down, Wu Yu quickly retreated. The others swiftly discussed countermeasures. We are the elite younger generation, the future of the continent of celestials. We cannot be destroyed by this rampaging evil dragon. I'm just an old cultivator stuck at the outer realm after thousands of years. I have no greater ambitions left. To everyone's surprise, Lam Feng Huang flew towards in Gao Bi Yu Ling. Evil dragon, this old woman will take you on. Were those her final words? There were still other options. The old lady can handle this. Why is she charging in herself? Master, don't. A heroic woman. Xiao Tri and the others watched in astonishment. Perhaps the commotion had awoken the evil dragon. It glared and exhaled forcefully, scattering Lam Feng Huang's talisman papers. Oh no. The sect master poured all her power into those talismans. At this close range, the old lady is done for. Well, I have no regrets about this old body. Sect leader Lam closed her eyes, resigned to her fate. She shut her eyes tightly, but something was amiss. Why hadn't the evil dragon attacked yet? She cracked open an eye. Huh? Can't reach me? It wasn't that it couldn't reach, but that it couldn't. Miao Shen had tightly bound Lam Feng Huang with a silk cloth, leaving only her skeletal frame. Evil beast, you shall not harm others. Miao Shen had changed, seeking the righteous path of unity. Yet the Harmony sect leader intervened. What's wrong with this world? To think we join forces. Even Wu Yu was surprised. In her current frenzied state, Miao Shen couldn't restrain in Gao Bi Yu Ling for long. Her fury peaked as she thrashed violently, dragon claws slicing the silk into shreds that flew back at Miao Shen. Not good, those are Dragon Kai Wind Blades, a heaven realm skill that can pierce even Qi Yun's adamantine body. My life is over. I thought I saved Lam Feng Huang, but now my own life hangs by a thread. Seeing the danger, Xiao Tree flew up and shielded Miao Shen, taking the blow. You shall not harm my woman. Miao Shen was deeply moved to tears. Silly boy, 
Did you think a minor wind blade could hurt me? Miao Shen wiped her tears, both relieved and exasperated. Seeing this, in Gao Biyu Lane spun around, attempting to constrict the two of them. Evil dragon, though we are acquainted, you slaughter indiscriminately, causing suffering. Today, I must eliminate this threat for the people, carrying out heaven's will. Shao Tree grabbed the dragon's horns with one hand. With the other, he punched its head repeatedly. I hit, I hit, I hit. Unsatisfied, he leapt onto its head, pulling back its horns with both hands. Let me twist your head down. The dragon cried out in pain, unable to bear it any longer. It crashed to the ground, semi-conscious. Everyone looked at him with admiration. Hanging from the dragon's horns, he's too powerful. Miao Xin beamed proudly. Look, that's my man, my man. A notification popped up, indicating a new mission. Mission. Mark the dragon's head. Requirement. Place the wind dragon pearl on the dragon's head. Mission rank. Forbidden zone. Reward. Forbidden zone luliu stone. Time limit. 10 breaths. Penalty for failure. Permanent loss of senses. A new mission appeared. Shout tree sighed deeply. Without senses, how can I appreciate this beautiful world? Fortunately, since he was on its head, placing the wind dragon pearl was easy. Even if the mission failed, resulting in permanent loss of senses, receiving the valuable wind dragon pearl was a consolation. However, Xiao Tri wasn't interested in it. After the pearl merged within Gao Biyu Lane, she gradually regained consciousness and reverted to human form. What happened? Brother Xiao Tri, why are you writing me? Ah, he was startled and fell backwards. In Gao Biyu Lane sat up slowly, feeling something amiss. Why does my face hurt? Who hit me? Xiao Tri grinned awkwardly and changed the subject. Oh, you fell carelessly earlier. Nasty fall. It had nothing to do with me. Seeing in Gao Bi Yu Ling's normal state, everyone quickly demanded her life. Evil dragon, your crimes are unforgivable. I must kill you. This dragon was extremely powerful to begin with. Now that the dragon pearl has returned, her strength has increased further. If we don't kill her, she'll cause more harm and disaster. In Gao Bi Yu Ling is different now. She was merely taken advantage of when she lost the dragon pearl. Wah, why do you all want to kill me? She sat down, crying like a child. What have I done to you? Seeing this, Xiao Tree tried to intervene. Wait a minute, you too. I know what happened to her. In Gao Bi Yu Lane must have carelessly lost the dragon pearl, causing her to go berserk. Wu Feng took advantage of this weakness, using beast taming arts to control her and make her kill. Now that I've helped her regain the dragon pearl, she's back to her old self. In Gao Bi Yu Lane is pure by nature. Definitely not a dragon that slaughters indiscriminately. The immortal Wei cherishes life, showing boundless mercy. Please spare her life. Boundless mercy? The immortal Wei cherishes life? Everyone was puzzled, having never heard of this in the cultivation world, yet feeling an abundant, refreshing aura. Is this the Wei's aura? This is too absurd. How can I, a demon cultivator, sense the Wei? Miao Shen was also perplexed. She had been in the cultivation world for a long time. But Lam Feng Huang had never heard of this. No, it can't be. The cultivation world's tenets have remained unchanged for tens of thousands of years. That is the indifferent great way, completely different from the immortal way that cherishes life. But why does the immortal way have the way's aura? I don't understand. Everyone was lost in thought, oblivious to their surroundings. Dark clouds suddenly gathered, threatening to swallow the night moon. Miao Xin slowly looked up. Why did the sky darken? It's ominous. It's the mindless lord of the lawless heavens. Silently and stealthily, the divine is unaware, the demonic is unnoticed. To the lawless lord of the lawless heavens, what are the so-called immortal way that cherishes life an indifferent great way? The heavenly way is supreme. None here are a match for the lawless lord. The situation seems to have changed. Miao Shen devised a plan, slowly approaching the lawless lord. Brother Wu, you've finally arrived. We've been waiting for you. Seeing her intending to return to the mindless palace. To the lawless lord's side, Xiao Tri didn't want her falling back into the old mire. Meow meow, come back to me. Meow Shen stood behind the lawless lord, deliberately avoiding Xiao Tri. HMPH, if not to buy time, I wouldn't have pretended closeness with you. Did you really think I wanted to stand alongside your righteous path? Dream on. The lawless lord was smug. The righteous path is nothing but a bunch of hypocrites. Miao Shen, don't delude yourself. Come back quickly. Xiao Tri was worried for her. She laughed in response, secretly drawing the sword at her waist to stab the lawless lord in the back. Xiao Tri, seize this chance and run. She wanted to buy time for Xiao Tri's group to flee as the lawless lord's power was formidable. Lam Feng Huang and the myriad immortal sect's disciples sought escape. A true hero doesn't dwell on immediate losses. Run quickly. The faster, the better. 
They scattered in disarray. Ha ha, that stab was nothing. You dare backstab me with your meager ability? Laughable. Dense killing intent rose around the lawless lord, forming a demonic chi shield that instantly blasted Miao Shin away. Looks like you've fallen for that righteous pretty boy. Even willing to sacrifice yourself to protect him. The killing intent solidified into ropes tightly binding Miao Shen. What a pity. The righteous are all hypocrites. Your sincerity is only fit for dogs. By now, he's probably fled hundreds of meters away, as he should. Ah. Miao Shen cried out in pain. Seeing her like this, Xiao Tri couldn't bear it. He quickly flew over and shattered the demonic chi shield, slapping the lawless lord hard enough to pop his eye out. Who are you calling a dog? I haven't even moved, and you claim I've fled hundreds of meters? You, you dot how did you break through my demonic chi shield? Impossible, absolutely impossible. How did he shatter it so easily? Why didn't I sense anything? I'll kill you for your incessant blabbering and sowing discord. Xiao Tri slapped him again this time bloodying his mouth and knocking out teeth. Wait, I'm a bit confused. Let me calm down first. Alright, I'll give you a chance to unleash your power. But remember to use that ultimate move. I don't have time to play around with you. The lawless lord staggered up. It wasn't easy to seize the initiative. How could I easily give it up? Lam Ying Ying regretted that Xiao Tri didn't kill him outright. Seeing Xiao Tri's actions, Lam Fun Huang thought this youth was either a hidden talent or a fool. The old woman could only talk, her actions were lacking. The lawless lord smiled cunningly, slashing his hand with a sword. Young one, you're too arrogant. My ultimate move is something you can't even imagine. You wanted to use blood to summon something. This is bad. The ultimate move the lawless lord is using. Only the mindless palace's sect leader can employ. Wu Yu has only heard of it, never seen it. But using blood to summon can only mean the demonic blood beast. This is trouble. Quickly stop him. He wants to awaken the demonic blood beast. Ha ha ha, too late. Once unleashed, no one can stop it. The lawless lord intends to wipe them all out at once. One sip of demonic wine, 3000 years of mortal life. Returning to the mundane world, immortality is hard to attain. The lawless lord, the fifth leader of the mindless palace, welcomed the blood beast's divine manifestation to cleanse the human realm. The summoning circle grew larger, occupying a vast space. From it emerged a red, one-horned dragon with piercing eyes. It was the celestial demon blood beast, the celestial demon wheel, the chaotic mind demonic wind, larger than in Gao Bi Yu Ling's berserk state. Shao Tri thought it wouldn't be an issue perhaps a bit tougher than in Gao Bi Yu Ling. At this moment, in Gao Bi Yu Ling was truly terrified, cowering and clinging to Shao Tri's arm, trembling. Even this dragon is afraid? This demonic blood beast seems formidable. The blood beast slowly approached, turning and sitting down. It spoke slowly, I've slept for 8,000 years and I'm very thirsty now, needing to drink much blood. If they cannot provide enough, you must offer yourself as sacrifice. Little celestial demon, do you understand? The lawless lord bowed obediently, yes, I understand. Little celestial demon understands. It was the sacred beast of the ancient celestial demon sect, wounded in the immortal demon war and fell into deep slumber. Unexpectedly, the lawless lord summoned it today. That's right, Lam Fun Huang had heard of it too. But how can the leaders of the Mindless Palace summon the Celestial Demon Sect's sacred beast? Of course, it's not by chance. In fact, the eight demonic sects all originated from the Celestial Demon Sect. After the Immortal Demon War, the Celestial Demon Sect's war god and sect leader disappeared simultaneously, leading to internal strife. The sect split into the Celestial Demon Sect, the Mindless Palace, and the Harmonious Alliance Sect. The Celestial Demon Sect inherited the Supreme Mind Demon Arts, the Mindless Palace inherited the Beast Summoning Arts, while the Harmonious Alliance Sect inherited the Illusion and Yin Yang Cultivation Arts. All these originated from the Demonic Realm's Supreme Heart Demon. It's a pity Miao Shen is the Harmonious Alliance's sect leader, unversed in beast taming arts. Otherwise, she could have ridden these beasts to defeat the lawless lord. The blood beast crouched and leapt towards the nearby crowd. No more talking now. Think of a way to escape. Lu Shang and the others quickly fled. The formidable blood beast charged towards Xiao Tri, kicking up clouds of dust. Stop. Xiao Tri commanded firmly. Hearing the order, the celestial demon wheel abruptly halted before him. Seeing this, the lawless lord laughed loudly. You're dead. It lowered its head, looking at the tiny human before it like an ant. Yet you dare block my path? Then you shall be my appetizer first. Hee hee, let me show you this. Shao Tree slowly drew the nine cloud swords. Ah, this sword. 
It is. The celestial demon wheel knelt and bowed respectfully. This servant, the celestial demon wheel, greets my master. E.H. Kneeling? Kneeling down? Lam Fung Huang was surprised. Is my husband the reincarnated demon lord? Even the blood demon is kneeling. Everyone was astonished by the blood beast's unexpected action. The lawless lord's face drained of color. What's going on? Why is it kneeling? Shao Tree wanted to borrow its aura. Immediately, the nine cloud swords trembled and glowed. A beautiful woman appeared. It was Shui Kaya. Celestial demon wheel. How dare you disrespect my master? It knew it had erred and didn't dare look up. This servant didn't know the great one was my master's master. This servant deserves death, awaiting punishment. She didn't have the heart to blame it. The celestial demon wheel has slept for tens of thousands of years, straying from its master. Fortunately, I appeared in time, or else the celestial demon wheel might have committed an unforgivable act. Very well, let it follow Shao Tree's guidance. From now on, you must obey Shao Tree. Don't slack off. Yes, this servant obeys. Master's master, please give your orders. It wagged its tail happily. Seeing the celestial demon wheel almost submitting to Shao Tree, the lawless lord urged it to kill Shao Tree quickly. Calling him the chief culprit. Why don't you attack him? What's the point of talking to him? Wait until I kill him, then you can talk to me. The lawless lord's rambling annoyed Shao Tree. This is your last chance to survive. If you can't defeat me, I'll destroy you. Skewer him. Shao Tree ordered the celestial demon wheel. Ah, no. The lawless lord became its quenching meal in an instant. Ding killed a demonic cultivator's initial soul split avatar, gained 300,000 spirit essence. The system announced, but something seemed off. The soul split avatar had a life protecting secret technique. Indeed, that was the lawless lord's real body. His main body hadn't died yet. He reappeared, using his full power for a final strike, intending to perish with Shao Tree. A foul murderous aura radiated from the lawless lord, demonic flames enveloping and swirling around his body. You managed to break through my demonic chi body protection and made the blood beast rebel against me. You must have great destiny. But it doesn't matter, you absolutely cannot survive my full powered strike. That was just my soul split avatar substitute. As he spoke, the scattered demonic heads merged into one, then flew towards Shao Tree. Man proposes, heaven disposes. Shao Tree caught it with his hand. You rely on this? Haha, ha, you're dead for sure. This is demonic flame. No one can extinguish it upon contact. Like maggots gnawing at your ankles until your soul is burned away. Before he could finish, Shao Tree absorbed all the demonic flames. What are you doing? Aren't you human? Delicious, I feel my power increasing. The supreme heart demon arts are the ancestral demonic cultivation techniques. These demonic flames help me advance my power. Shall I attack now? Ding congratulations, host killed the initial soul split avatar's main body, gained 400,000 spirit essence. Ding congratulations, host advanced to the 6th layer of the 9th young adamantine body, 981,000 spirit essence needed for the 7th layer. But this spirit essence reward is incorrect. An initial soul split avatar should be worth 1 million spirit essence. Why so little? He must have let his main body escape. The lawless lord is truly devious. He fled into the clouds. Just then, Zan Kong and his split avatars arrived, forming a formation. Brother Zan, you're just in time. Shao Tree is quite formidable. You must help me eliminate him, or he'll become a disaster later. Well said, well said. Zan Kong pointed at him, attacking the shocked lawless lord with the void severing sword art. Ah, why? Why? How dare you steal my void severing sword art? Die. The lawless lord cursed a few words before falling dead to the ground in resentment. Search for it. Zan Kong ordered his subordinates. Reporting to the sect leader, we couldn't find the void severing sword. No way. Shao Tree, I fell for your trick again. Shao Tree thought silently. How unexpected that you found it out. Shao Tree, you killed my brothers, my son. Killed the four elders of the Wind Thunder Palace. You've gone too far in oppressing others. Today. Today I must avenge them. Slice you into a hundred pieces. The system voice rang in his head. Ding congratulations. Host killed an initial soul split avatar. Reward 300,000 spirit essence. After confirming the lawless lord's death, he finally breathed a sigh of relief. Now he had to deal with the old man Zan Kong. Your brothers disregarded kinship and killed their peers. Your son stole demonic arts. Those four elders of yours oppressed the people, worse than dogs. You know better than anyone what kind of people they were. Yet you say I oppressed you? You colluded with demonic cultivators, massacred allies, but don't say you oppressed others? Ha! Huh. Zan Kong was struck speechless, his throat clenched, teeth gritted, eyes cold. Enraged by shame, 
Zan Kong unsheathed his sword to battle, condensing into a sword, the immortal spirit sword from the great illusion immortal scripture of terrifying might, opening the grand slaughter realm. Brother Zan, long time no see, who is it that has ruined my mood? Zan Kong turned around. It's the three greats of the Flowing Cloud Sword sect, sect leader Zich Duang Tu, and the two elders Tuyut Tuyut Tu and Kong Hu Tu. Brother Zan, are you going to kill a fellow disciple? If you want to harm our sword sect's senior Xiao, you must ask if our sword sect's swords permitted first. Luckily I'm here. Lam Feng Hoang hurriedly paid respects. Congratulations, seniors, your cultivation has advanced so much. Now in the Righteous Alliance, only our immortal cultivation sect remains from the previous generation. Righteousness today depends on you all. Rest assured, Junior Sister Phoenix with us here. The evil cults and heretics can do nothing. Zan Kong looked at them closely. No wonder they were so confident. Unexpectedly, in such a short time, they've all advanced so much. Peak Demonic Lord Stage, Initial Soul Split Stage, their innate Lord Stage power is formidable too. Rumor has it Shao Tree taught them the Talisman Lord Scripture and Flowing Cloud Nine Swords. Seems the rumor was true. Ahem, the Righteous Alliance has gathered here today. How could we true martial immortal dynasty be absent? The Celestial River Sect has also come to join the fun. Now the five great sects of the Righteous Alliance were all present. If Zan Kong acted now, he might be accused of colluding with demonic cultivators. Then everyone would surely unite to attack him. It would be very difficult for him to deal with them all. His reputation would also be ruined. So Zan Kong softened his tone. Everyone, it's a misunderstanding. The collusion with demonic cultivators was caused by the four elders of Wind Thunder Palace. I came here intentionally to explain to you all. Senior Xiao, I personally killed the lawless lord, to show my sincerity to the righteous path. Ha ha, a misunderstanding? Xiao Tree was dumbfounded. Zan Kong, look at who I am. Oh no, why is Xu Xin here too? As soon as she spoke, all eyes turned to her. You're the demonic head Xu Xin of the Hwan sect? That's right, it's her. They simultaneously pointed swords at Xu Xin. We must kill you. Oh no, I forgot all the righteous paths great figures are here in my anger. According to other novels, in this situation, all the male leads would deny their relationship with the female lead to protect themselves. Moreover, Xiao Tree wouldn't dare go against public opinion and admit his relationship with me. Doesn't that mean he'll abandon me? A moment of recklessness has brought disaster upon me. All the righteous path figures are here, they may not spare you. Wait, Xiao Tree quickly came to her rescue. Xu Shen is now my woman. Under my guidance, she has reformed and returned to the righteous path. Can you all give me face and not mind her previous demonic cultivation identity? He, he really dares to defy the world but how can the righteous path and demonic cultivation coexist? How can they be united? She's the demonic head, how can we spare her? Sect leader Zich Duang Tu didn't want Xiao Tri to tarnish the sword sect's name. Such great unrighteousness. This time I can't protect you. Xiao Tri was implicated because of Xu Shen. I'm sorry for causing you trouble. Once I expose Zan Kong's plot, I'll immediately commit suicide and absolutely not implicate you. You acknowledged our relationship in front of so many people. I'm very touched. For Xiao Tri, this is no big deal to part life from death, is it? Ridiculous. He tossed great return pills to the prestigious sect leaders of the Righteous Alliance. Smiling, Xu Shen and I are going to celebrate. Have some candy first. Great return pills? They couldn't refuse, quickly pocketing them. Beaming, reforming is a good thing. Congratulations, congratulations. Congratulations Madam Xiao. Congratulations Madam Xiao. Elder Tuyut Tuyut Tu was not too pleased, and gently pulled Lu Zhang's waist. Don't make a fuss. You're with me every day, yet someone snatched you away. I'm furious, master. I should have taken action myself earlier. Lu Shang was embarrassed, but they've succeeded, master. Now that Xu Xin had Xiao Tri's support, he didn't hesitate to expose the true face of the wicked Zan Kong. That Zan Kong, sect leader of Zan Xian sect, only pretends to be righteous but is actually a wolf in sheep's clothing. Attacking the sword sect, the celestial demon treasure and the massacre of the myriad immortal sect were all his plots. He wants to monopolize people and things, kill and plunder, and dominate the cultivation world. The demoness spoke arrogantly. Xu Shen seemed to have struck Zan Kong's black heart. Had his plan succeeded? Zan Kong didn't want Xu Shen to say another word and made a sudden move. Fortunately, Xiao Tri was quick and saved Xu Shen from his despicable trick. Otherwise his woman would have hardly survived. No one wonder he's the top expert of the righteous path, truly formidable. It's lucky he avoided it in time, otherwise he'd be like those shattered rocks over there. 
The Righteous Alliance could no longer tolerate Zan Kong. Isn't this an attempt to kill me and silence me? I understand now. It's because I didn't agree to make you the leader. So you attacked my sword sect, right? You previously stole the Supreme Spirit Stones from my Tong Long Cave. And when I refused you, you took action. The sect leaders of Lu Yun Sword Sect, Myriad Immortal Sect, and Xi'an Ha Sect questioned him relentlessly. Zan Kong's face turned red, not knowing where to hide. He summoned his avatar separations. Alone, he couldn't fight the so-called Righteous Alliance. In short, the heavens, the earth, and I are the greatest. You all before me are just a bunch of ants. If I can no longer be a good person today, then I'll have to destroy the Righteous Path. You worthless trash, come at me all at once. I'm not afraid. Provoked by his arrogance, they charged at him. Swords clashed incessantly, but Zan Kong wasn't afraid. How could they harm him? Each avatar separation attacked, the power gap was too great, the righteous path figures fell like scattered fruits. All were injured. Obey me and live, defy me and die. I am the righteous path, the righteous path is me. Who dares disobey? Zan Kong was arrogant and self-satisfied, pounding his chest proudly. I disobey. Shao Tri, in Gao Bi Yu Lane, and Celestial Demon Loon took their stances. If you disobey, then die. Zan Kong attacked Shao Tri with full force. Let me expand my knowledge on the so-called strongest righteous path. Shao Tri stood with arms spread wide, neither attacking nor defending just standing still to receive the blows. Just that much and you want to take Shao Tree's life? You're merely scratching an itch for him. Trivial. What's happening here? My great Zan Xi'an strike can shake defenses under the immortal realm. Even if you're at the great vehicle realm, you shouldn't be able to withstand it. Shao Tree seemed to struggle. Zan Kong was also at a loss, like searching for a needle in the ocean. Shao Tree stood with arms crossed. Smirking, you're the strongest of the righteous path, but I am. The ground shook. The nine swords of Lu Yun emerged slowly. The strongest on earth oh no, it's the Zhu Xi'an formation. A restraining barrier rose around them, its powerful force was overwhelming. Setting up the great Zhu Xi'an formation with one person's power. Shao Tri must be the reincarnation of an ancient ancestor, illuminating our righteous path. The righteous alliance had their eyes opened, witnessing a rare genius. In an instant, he became the nine swords pointing straight at Zan Kong. Kill. They flew simultaneously. So powerful, no wonder he could slay immortals. Dane killed one avatar separation of the peak separation spirit, gained 500,000 spirit essences. Dane killed two avatar separations of the peak separation spirit, gained 1 million spirit essences. Dane killed four avatar separations of the peak separation spirit, gained 2 million spirit essences. Oh no. Zan Kong didn't want Shao Tree to gain the upper hand, so he quickly merged the two remaining avatar separations. Seizing the opportunity to break through to the separation integration realm, Zan Kong truly lived up to his genius cultivator reputation of being rarely seen in a thousand years. Daring to take advantage of the Zhu Xi'an sword formation's pressure to break through on the battlefield. Since the Immortal Demon War, this was the first time someone had broken through to this realm. Zan Kong's power exploded momentarily, shattering the Zhu Xi'an formation. Cough cough, no wonder you're the number one expert of the righteous path, truly powerful. Unable to withstand the backlash, Shao Tri collapsed. I'm afraid even this immortal armor imbued with the Tao Heart Demon, cannot withstand it. Seeing his master in danger, Celestial Demon Loon leapt forward. You dare harm my master, I'll swallow you whole. No. Before Shao Tri could stop him, Celestial Demon Loon was kicked down by Zan Kong. Rolling back near Shao Tri. Useless beast, you dare provoke me? Sick of living, Shao Tri wasn't afraid of a powerful enemy, only of unintelligent teammates. It seems they need to join forces. The separation integration realm, one strike and they couldn't withstand it. It's over, the righteous path of the continent will perish today. Seeing Shao Tri and Celestial Demon Loon fall one after another, the righteous alliance was in utter dismay. Forget them, Shao Tri gave a silent order. In Gao Bi Yu Ling transformed and flew over. The two flew towards Zan Kong. I don't care if you're in avatar separation or integrated form. Either way, I'll beat you up. Let's go, shrimp. Kill Zan Kong. Roar. Roar. In Gao Bi Yu Ling spewed flames attacking, but it was just a prelude to Shao Tree's offensive. HMPH, all bark and no bite, Zan Kong sneered disdainfully. Shao Tree rode a dragon, wielding the six-vein spirit sword towards him. 
check out this sword. But, but it's an immortal sword. Zan Kong didn't expect Xiao Tree to use an immortal sword. Xiao Tree, I must burn your bones to ashes. Destroy your soul. Go. No matter what move Zan Kong used, Xiao Tree's immortal sword shattered it. Embarrassed into anger, he blamed loudly. You're just relying on two magic treasures to defend yourself. If my six vein spirit sword held the immortal sword today, you'd only have that immortal armor left, right? Immortal armor? If Zan Kong hadn't said it, the Righteous Alliance wouldn't have known. He actually had two immortal items. My goodness, what Xiao Tree wore was the Qilin Luminous Armor. Though ordinary weapons couldn't attack it, if Zan Kong used his primordial spirit to attack, Xiao Tree absolutely couldn't withstand it. A soul departure cultivator like the arrogant and superior Zan Kong. He was unwilling to accept defeat and determined to take revenge on Xiao Tree at all costs. He coldly snorted, closed his eyes and began forming hand seals, concentrating his breath before unleashing an attack. Ah, it's like my soul got hit by a cannon. Xiao Tree staggered, lost balance and fell down. If I hadn't cultivated the Dao Heart Demon Seed, my soul might have dissipated just now. Can't be underestimated. Zan Kong's guess was indeed correct. This was the fatal flaw. Next move, I'll incinerate your soul, Xiao Tree. The flames in his hands grew larger. Fortunately, in Gao Bi Yu Lane flew over to catch Xiao Tree, landing him safely. Facing that terrifying attack, he worried something might happen to in Gao Bi Yu Lane. But no, her body was completely unscathed. How could you be unharmed? The dragon race is born immune to all spirit attacks. She said while helping Xiao Tree up. I see, the dragon race is immune to spiritual attacks. And the immortal armor is immune to weapons. An idea formed in Xiao Tree's mind. Without a word he hugged in Gao Bi Yu Lane tightly, feeling around as if searching for something. Master, what are you doing? I'm looking for the mystery box. Huh? Why are you calling me master? Because he helped me find the dragon pearl. So you're Bi Yu Ling's master now. And you can ride Bi Yu Ling anytime you want. Master can ride me however he wants. Anytime he wants to ride. Those words sounded dangerous. The naive in Gao Bi Yu Ling has met the old wolf Xiao Tree. He averted his gaze elsewhere. Those words sounded dangerous. After feeling around for a while, he found it. He picked it up. Ah. What's that? In Gao Bi Yu Ling didn't know how it ended up on her body either. Or how Xiao Tree knew to look for it. That's the mystery box, it can open up good items. From the previous mission, he forgot to take it in the rush. It was still here. Open. A dragon-shaped necklace appeared. She quickly recognized it as the dragon race's sacred artifact. The dragon god's prayer bead. Formed by the twelve dragon gods, wearing it grants dragon god traits. Immunity to all spirit attacks. Only those who greatly benefit the dragon race can possess this ability. With this necklace, it'll be easy. You think you can kill me so easily? This time Xiao Tree has victory in his grasp. Zan Kong took the time to gather many soul flames. Xiao Tree, you're dead for sure. The soul flames will incinerate your soul into mere ashes. You won't even have a chance at reincarnation. Countless soul flames flew towards Xiao Tree from all directions, shaking the entire area. No, my Xiao Lang, Lord Shang Kong, I'll follow you. Miao Xin and Lu Shang watched from afar unable to believe their eyes. Could Xiao Tree really leave like this? Despite everyone's attempts to stop them, they wanted to go with him, but the raging flames forced them to retreat. The flames burned intensely before dying down, smoke billowing everywhere. Zan Kong inwardly rejoiced, thinking this round you're dead for sure. Let's see you escape this, Xiao Tree. A voice came from the smoke, so this is the soul flame cultivated by the integrated form? Xiao Tree? How is he still alive? Xiao Tree emerged from the smoke, slowly stepping out. He held the remaining soul flames, rolling them across his fingers. Not even a tingle. How boring. Why is that? It clearly had an effect earlier. Seeing Zan Kong's painstaking cultivation, let me open your eyes a bit. To satisfy his anticipation, Xiao Tree unleashed the six vein spirit sword of the great primordial immortal technique. How do you know the great primordial immortal technique? No, no, I can't end like this. I'm the number one in the world. Zan Kong fainted and dissipated completely. Want to crow again? No response. Dang. Killed an integrated form initial stage primordial spirit. Rewarded 1.5 million soul points. That's not right. Shouldn't it be 10 million soul points according to the rules? No, that's not right. He was initially at the peak of the separated spirit stage with 5 million soul points. I killed 7 of his separated spirits. So the reward he had left was only 300,000. And the integrated form stage was awarded 10 million soul points. 
so it should be 3 million soul points. No, that can't be right. Although Zan Kong's primordial spirit was destroyed, his physical body is still alive. So Zan Kong isn't completely dead yet, he's as tenacious as a cockroach, leaving a part of his spirit to gloat. Luckily I was smart and left a part in my body, otherwise my soul would have really dissipated. He turned and ran away quickly. Zan Kong, where are you running? A voice came from somewhere, but there was no response. Suddenly, a luxurious palanquin carried by eight people appeared, slowly flying over. It seemed there was someone inside. He unleashed a head-on attack, knocking Zan Kong back against a wall. The pain made him bury his head in the ground. Didn't even have time to gasp before dying. Damn, what a powerful punch. This is just the integrated form stage? Chow Tree was also surprised, which senior could be so powerful? Dang killed the strongest of the integrated form stage, rewarded 1.5 million soul points, 301 million soul points remaining to upgrade to the 7th level. The palanquin landed. Eight neatly dressed servants stood at attention on both sides. Shao Tree looked closely. These patterns, it's the martial emperor of the Tang dynasty. Why is he here? Long live your majesty. Your humble servants greet your majesty. The crown prince and attendants bow respectfully. The curtain slowly opened, and the martial emperor Li Wu De stepped out with an extraordinarily elegant demeanor. My morning duties kept me occupied, please forgive my tardiness. No need to apologize, we don't dare accept it. The martial emperor looked around, his gaze stopping on Shao Tree, staring at him intently. You are the new lord Shang Kong who took the ceremony at the sword sec, and you killed Zan Kong just now? M. Shao Tree didn't care much, wondering what the emperor wanted with him. Indeed a talented youth. However, you killed my Dong Tai Grand Camp General Li Fei and Prefecture Governor Zhang Ren Jia of Dong Tai. I must teach you a small lesson. He stepped back and unleashed a powerful palm strike towards Shao Tree. Can't have you bullying my chivalrous immortal dynasty. Shao Tree struggled to resist. Just a couple of beasts, already killed. Originally injured, the emperor's sudden attack left him staggering. Realizing the emperor's formidable power, Shao Tree leapt back, considering whether to attack again or use another strategy. As if understanding each other, the sect leader and two sword sect elders stepped in front of Shao Tree. Martial Emperor, do you wish to wage war against our sword sect? Whether war or not is up to you to decide. They looked at each other. Fight or not? Fight. Stop. Shao Tree spoke up, breaking the tension. The martial emperor merely wants to show off to me. No need to pay attention. The martial emperor looked at him askance. It's good that you understand. The celestial moon continent has existed for tens of thousands of years, with its own heavenly rules. If you wish to change them, you must have the ability to shake the heavens. Otherwise, in the end, your body will perish and your path will be ruined. Your soul will dissipate. As for this so-called immortal way you speak of, how ridiculous. It seemed the martial emperor wanted to warn Shao Tree not to be like a frog in a well deluding himself about his strength. The martial emperor flung his robe behind him and turned back to the palanquin. Resolve this satisfactorily. As he passed Lu Shang, he paused for a moment, then left. Lu Shang didn't know what that meant, as she didn't know him personally. Shao Tri wiped the blood from his lips. The celestial moon continent is indeed filled with crouching tigers and hidden dragons. I was careless. From now on, I must carefully consider every step, and not let a moment of recklessness ruin my long-term plans. Seeing him like this, Miao Xin felt distressed. Xiao Lang, you're injured. It's fine. Thinking back, he had forcefully withstood that palm strike, causing internal injuries that even his immortal armor couldn't block. The martial emperor's cultivation had likely surpassed the great vehicle stage. The martial emperor's cultivation is at least at the celestial being stage. Shao Tree didn't want the three powerful figures of the sword sect to take action, fearing they would die needlessly. Only now did he notice, KCA, what's wrong with you? You've been trembling since the start. She took human form, sensing a very familiar aura from him. Li Wu Da. That year, he secretly plotted against my brother. Yes, I never expected he would reach such a high realm. While I lost my physical body, no match for him. Even if I want revenge, I cannot. Tears welled up in her eyes. Seeing this, Shao Tri tried to console her, don't be discouraged. You have me. Since I inherited Kei Hai's legacy, I should avenge him too. If that martial emperor is indeed the former Li Wu Da, then I will definitely avenge our brother. In the Zhanghu, isn't it fine to take revenge? What Zhanghu? This is the cultivation world. Ah, he almost forgot that the original host's world and his were completely different. Never mind the details, the main point is the same. The martial emperor has left for a while. Lam Feng Hoang finally spoke. Lord Shang Kong, 
You have rendered great service to our sect. After discussion, we disciples have decided to gift you the Celestial Dragon Pond Estate permanently. Please accept it if you don't mind. How thoughtful. Shout Tree quickly put the Martial Emperor aside, making a mountain out of a molehill. Now there's something that needs to be handled. He smiled cheerfully. No, isn't this too much? Lam Feng Hoang continued. But Lord Shang Kong must understand that although the evil dragon in the pond has changed, there are still some ants occupying it. Whether you can exploit the supreme spirit stones within depends on your own ability. It took him less than a second to think. Do you have any candy? Can I have some sweets? Everyone in our sect has already cultivated, so of course we don't have any. But the outer sect's kitchen may still have some. Lam Don Don responded, I'll borrow two. Okay. Back at the immortal cultivation sect, due to her injury, Miao Xin was arranged to recuperate at the Wu Yin Palace. Remembering Xiao Tree's instructions, Lam Don Don took out a plate of sweets and placed it on the table. The candy is here, my lord, please have some. They looked incomplete somehow. Ah, they need sticks. That would be more convenient. He materialized some, placing each stick in the center of a candy, pressing them down firmly. This looks much more intuitive, the system should understand now. Mark, the five candies immediately transformed into a huge lollipop box. Whoa, this was something Lu Shang, Wu Yu, and Lam Don Don had never seen before. It looked delicious, the sweet aroma was irresistible. They were all drooling. Xiao Tri chuckled and handed each of them a lollipop to try the flavor. Lu Shang and Lam Don Don quickly unwrapped the lollipops. The sweet aroma became even stronger. They popped them into their mouths to taste. So sweet. The more they tasted, the more delicious it became. Wu Yu didn't find it tasty at all. How could a cultivator be affected by such simple food? But it seemed a waste to discard it, so she tried it anyway. Oh heavens, so sweet. Wu Yu felt like she was strolling through a sea of flowers, immersed in the fragrance. She had an epiphany. Could they possibly break through? Among the three, Xiao Tree saw that Lu Zhang's cultivation was the lowest, needing more training. He ordered that tonight he would teach her makeup lessons, inviting her to his room to warm the bed first. Ahem. He meant to tidy up the bed. Lu Shang obediently agreed, blushing. Xiao Tri hurriedly took the candy box and left, humming a tune. Now he just needed to lure the ant demons to diligently mine spirit stones for him, and cultivate hard to increase his strength and become stronger. At this moment in the room, Wu Yu and Lam Don Don curiously asked Lu Shang, Come on, tell us how the Lord is going to impart his skills to you. They wanted to know too. Hearing this, Lu Zhang's ears turned red. That, that is probably only known between the Lord and me. Everyone returned to their rooms to rest and recuperate. Several days passed without any unusual occurrences. Everyone was working hard to recuperate and regain their strength. Miao Xin was bored with the stuffy room atmosphere. So she went outside to the courtyard to breathe some fresh air and stretch her body, loosening her muscles and bones. From today onwards, I must change and become a completely new person. The first day on my righteous path, I must restrain myself, absolutely no killing of living beings. Yesterday he favored that woman again, and didn't come to me. I wonder if he thinks I'm too old now. If he dares to wrong me, I will kill all the righteous cultivators. Shao Tri was truly blessed, taking turns in dual cultivation with different women, changing partners every day. Truly nothing could surpass that. It seems someone was coming. Lady Miao Shen. Lord Shang Kong sent me to deliver spirit stones to you. It turned out to be Elder Marshal Sister Ma and her subordinates, bringing high-grade spirit stones mined from the Celestial Dragon Pond. Supreme spirit stones. I've been cultivating recently and was just lacking these spirit stones. I didn't expect you would still remember me. I must have misunderstood him. Yesterday, Lord Shang Kong brought a lot of candies to us and said if our ant tribe agreed to mine the ore for him, then every day we would receive a lollipop as a reward. HMPH. He didn't consider that we, the mighty ant tribe, cannot be ordered around by others like that. Do we not deserve some dignity? We need more candies, at least two, to make such a big compromise for mere candies. Miao Xin laughed. After receiving the spirit stones, Miao Shen also wanted to see how the ant demons were mining, so she went to the celestial dragon pond herself. Inside, the ant tribe was working diligently without a moment's rest. The ant tribe had never submitted to anyone's control before. The immortal cultivation sect demanded spirit stone tributes from them every year, and later the Wuzhen monastery fought them countless times, but never gained anything. It was unexpected that now they had become Shao Tree's tenant farmers. 
Was this the right person at the right time? Boo. Shao Tri suddenly appeared from behind, scaring Miao Shen. He hugged her tightly, unwilling to let go. My beloved, all these lands and rivers are what I have won for you. Ha ha ha, I'm more wicked than the martial emperor now. Shao Tri walked over and randomly touched a spirit stone, absorbing it. He felt a surging energy flow into his body. So refreshing. Casually taking one from here could provide a lifetime of wealth for commoners. But for me, I can have tens of thousands every day. This is thanks to the ant tribe. They were born to be workers. These ant workers have had 997 engraved in their souls for a long time, selling their lives to the landlord for just one lollipop. Dane, a new quest has been unlocked. Main quest registration. Location. Demon subjugation tower. Immortal realm level. Time limit, 7 days. Penalty, being torn apart by thousands of demons. Note, due to the extremely high level, navigation is impossible, so you must find your own way. He turned and asked, do you know where the demon subjugation tower is? It's said to be in a region of Thunder Continent, but my harmonious union sect has been there for hundreds of years and no one has seen it. Why are you suddenly asking about this? I must go to the demon subjugation tower, because if I fail the quest, it will be hard to keep my life. Elder Marshal Sister Ma spoke up, approaching them. You'd best abandon this thought. The demon subjugation tower imprisoned our King Huang Tam for over 8,000 years. By now, I'm afraid they're no longer just tribulation realm cultivators, but Mahayana realm. Moreover, they like to eat human flesh. Alive. Yet this did not deter Shao Tree's determination. Thank you Elder Sister Ma for the warning, but I must go. Seeing his resolve, Elder Sister Ma sighed. Very well, good advice is hard to give. If you must go, then take this hairpin of mine. When you reach Thunder Continent, if you meet a person named Second Sister, give her this hairpin. She may be able to help you. Thank you. The quartet of Shao Tree, Miao Shen, Lu Shang and Wu Yu bid farewell as they prepared to depart for Thunder Continent to find the Demon Subjugation Tower. After the flying ship took off, Chao Tri and the others waved goodbye to everyone. Everyone, don't forget our original aspirations. We'll meet again in the future. See you again. As they left, Lam Don Don felt a little sad, really wanting to go with them to the ends of the horizon. Oh, it seems they forgot Celestial Demon Wheel. It chased after them, wagging its tail. Master, oh master, wait for me. I haven't boarded the ship yet. How could you forget me? Hoo hoo hoo. Unlike the sad and regretful atmosphere of those left behind at the Immortal Cultivation Sect, Shao Tree and his companions on the flying ship were happily chatting. With a beautiful woman on each arm, Wu Yu played music. Come, have a grape, Lord Consort. Wu Yu, play a better tune, don't just go vu 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 vu. It seemed he disliked the old music. Wu Yu angrily said, You, fine, you play then. Shao Tree didn't hesitate, taking over and starting to play. He closed his eyes, breathing in rhythm with each melody. Heavens, this music could only exist in the heavens. His skills are formidable. Not only is his cultivation high, but he even understands music. His music has such expressiveness. I feel like I'm back in the flower fields of my hometown, carefree and frolicking. Like entering a fragrant floral forest. Wu Yu immersed herself in the freedom enjoying it in her consciousness. Her Yuan Ying has been broken. This girl's comprehension is truly high. Just a few melodies from Shao Tri helped her break through her realm. No wonder he's the number one genius in demon cultivation. In less than an hour, they arrived at Thunder City, Thunder Continent. They quickly landed. Miao Xin led the way. Shao Lang, up ahead is our harmonious union sect. Let's stay here for now. Finally, I have to go to the Scarlet Maple Institute. I, I'm no longer pure. They entered the front courtyard together, greeted by beautifully dressed ladies. Greetings to the sect master, Yan Zi, the manager of the Scarlet Maple Institute whenever Miao Shen is away. Miao Shen noticed something odd about Yan Zi but didn't think much of it, assuming her long absence caused some changes. Little did Miao Shen know, she was actually Chu Tam Moi, and the real Yan Zi had been killed three months ago. Yan Zi, Inform the sisters below to investigate the location of the demon subjugation tower. The demon subjugation tower? Chu Tam Moi asked doubtfully. You know about it? Oh no, no, I've just heard of it. I'll send people to inquire. Setting that aside for now, Chu Tam Moi hatched a plan and hurriedly prepared a feast to host them. Sect master and honored guests, please be seated. Hearing you were coming, I prepared some wine to entertain you. If there are any shortcomings, I hope you can forgive me. A small but sumptuous feast was laid out, its aroma filling the hall. But Shao Tree paid no attention to that, 
drawn instead to a wine jar in the corner of the table. As he approached, the fragrance grew stronger. He picked up the jar and examined it closely, giving it a gentle shake. Curious, he opened the lid. Oh, this familiar scent. It's been so long since he last smelled it. Wine? Grape wine. His eyes lit up. Seeing this, Chu Tam Moy approached and placed her hand over Shao Tree's. You have impressive knowledge, sir. I'm in awe. Shao Tree startled, quickly putting down the jar and pouting. This wine is produced in the flaming wilderness, made from Grape Valley grapes. It has a sweet, fruity aroma and a rich fire spirit. Chu Tam Moy picked up the jar, gently pouring a full glass. Taking a sip refreshes the whole body. The entire celestial continent only produces a thousand jars per year. It would be a waste not to drink such fine wine. If offered, Shao Tri wouldn't refuse. He took the glass and drank a mouthful. I didn't expect to be able to drink La Fight in this other world. It makes me miss home. Hoo hoo hoo. He cried tears of joy. In Gao Buli and Lu Shang also wanted to try, raising their cups and draining them. Truly an exquisite taste. Ka, I love drinking wine the most. In Gao Buli found a new hobby. Worth a try, worth a try. Why didn't I know about this wine before? Or did I forget it during my long absence? This wine even made Xiao Lang cry after drinking it. I must try it too. Miao Xin had just taken a sip when they had already downed several glasses. Ah, my head hurts. Xiao Tree felt dizzy. This wine is too potent after drinking it. S strong. The four of them collapsed on the table, unconscious. A while later, ha ha, I thought you were so skilled. You're just a bunch of fools. Chu Tam Moy now revealed her true face, thinking they were inferior, falling for her wine trap. One by one, she cocooned them in silk, binding their limbs tightly, leaving only their heads exposed to breathe. What happened? Miao Xin woke up groggily, looking around. It's clear, we've fallen into a trap. How could this be? Did Yan Zi betray the sect? I'm not Yan Zi. Your Yan Zi was eaten clean by a demon pig three months ago. Three months ago, I became the master here. It's your eyes that mistook me. Miao Shen was stunned. Just a few months away from the Scarlet Maple Institute, and it's changed owners already? As the sect master of the Harmonious Union sect, how did you not hear any news? Miao Shen didn't expect. Chu Tam Moi to eliminate her subordinates and cut off all outgoing information so it's no surprise she didn't hear. They revealed their true forms, a group of demon spiders. Chu Tam Moi didn't want to prolong this further, ordering her subordinates to present them to the demon lord Yang Lu. Weren't you looking for the demon subjugation tower? I'll take you there. The four of them were carried away one by one. Oh no, this is a brothel. Directly turned into a silk den, Shao Tree felt bitter recalling. Wrapped up like dumplings like this, leaving only our heads exposed, what can we do? He could only use telepathy to call for Shui Ji's help. Sister Shui Zhe, hurry and save me. This spider silk is too strong. I can't break free. Sorry, I'm powerless. Someone used a sealing technique on my sword body, preventing me from coming out. In her sword form, she smacked him hard on the cheek. Brother, I made a mistake. Let me out now, okay? Shao Tree used his tongue to lick near the sword hilt, not expecting him to be so vulgar. What are you doing? Don't. The pleasure built to a peak, forcing her to take human form. Wait, stop. Somehow the feeling became better. Taking advantage, Shao Tree's phantom hands began groping her body. Don't pin me down. Give me space to use my techniques. But Shao Tree didn't want to. In fact, too amazing. Shui Zhe broke free, slicing through the silk cocoons one by one. Phew, that's a relief. Shao Tree stretched his limbs for a moment. The demon spider felt something was off. Shao Tree was so heavy earlier, but now he's so light. Did he evaporate? He turned around, lips twitching. How did you get out? This isn't an important issue. You should be thinking about your life and death situation now. Shao Tree punched him hard. Ah, one by one, the demon spiders fell. Shao Tree, Miao Xin. Lu Shang, and in Gao Bullying turned the tables, using the demon spiders as shields to find clues about the demon subjugation tower, in the dense forest. After a while, they saw a faint glow in the distance. They approached cautiously. Perhaps it was the demon lord Yang Lu that Chu Tam Moi mentioned. They laid down the four unconscious demon spiders. Demon lord Yang Lu, please enjoy your meal. A booming voice rang out. Not bad, right on time. Small vines grew out, wrapping around and pulling them closer. It opened its huge mouth, over a jong wide, and stuffed all four demon spiders in, chewing noisily. The taste of demon spiders, how filial to offer me my own kind. Tell Chu Tam Moi, that I'm very satisfied. Next time, have her bring some younger demon spiderlings. The silk today was a bit tough. Shao Tree thought it would be a formidable demon, but it was just a demon plant. According to what Chu Tam Moi said, 
This must be the entrance to the demon subjugation tower. Hearing this, the demon lord Yang Lu raged. How dare outsiders infiltrate this place under false pretenses. You lowly beings, since you've come this far, you can be my fertilizer. With two more people, I can thoroughly recover my cultivation. The vines flew towards them in an intricate pattern. You want to eat my ass? Trying to touch Shao Tree's group won't be easy. He slashed, severing the vines one by one. Foolish sapling. You dare defy me? Let me show you the might of this demon lord. The demon plant unleashed its techniques. Its body glowing as leaves sprouted densely, sending forth countless vines. So you underestimated me, able to grow endlessly. Demon plant, you're dead for sure. The demon lord Yang Lu decided to deal with all four of them, ordering the vines to split up and attack. Lu Shang and Wu Yu coordinated their strength smoothly, one using a flute to obstruct the assault, the other slicing with a sword. But the gap in cultivation was too vast. The two of them were no match for the demon plant. Innumerable vines came from all directions. They could strike occasionally, but the vines showed no signs of thinning, only increasing. Seeing Shout Tree's group tiring, the demon plant exploited their weakness. Lu Shang had the lowest cultivation, relentlessly sending vines towards her, leaving her overwhelmed. The vines bound her legs, but one person may not be enough, so they also ensnared Wu Yu standing beside her. Ah, the vines quickly pulled the two of them closer. After observing for a while, the demon lord Yang Lu laughed loudly. These two are still too tender. Let you both be supplements for me, perfectly tender like this. He opened his mouth wide, about to swallow them. No way. Lu Shang screamed. Want to eat? I'll give you enough to eat. Shao Tree blew a breath, igniting a blazing fire, and with a palm strike, thrust it straight into its mouth. The demon plant was caught off guard. You, what did you feed me? The Tam Moi True Flame. Shao Tree calmly replied. No, absolutely impossible. The Tam Moi True Flame is an immortal technique. You're just a puny golden Dan. How could you? The fierce flames rapidly spread through the tree's throat, withering the leaves. Branches burned and fell. Lu Shang and Wu Yu were also released. No, I just came out of the demon subjugation tower. I've devoured 97 people already. Just two more and I could recover my peak strength. I don't care, I don't care. The demon lord Yang Lu thrashed in agony, teetering on the brink of death. Only by pushing it to this extreme would it perhaps reveal something. Shout Tree pressed for the location of the entrance to the demon subjugation tower. I'll consider sparing your life. The chance to become human was so close, yet Shao Tree's group destroyed it in an instant. Terrified, the demon plant burst out. The entrance to the demon subjugation tower was originally right beneath your feet. But when Chu Feng Lu and I tried to escape, it sealed itself. I don't know the other entrances. Sorry, then I can't help you. No, you can go find Chu Tam Moi. She definitely knows where another entrance is. Save me, please save me, the demon plant begged. Sorry, I thought it over, I don't want to save you. You humans, have no morals, do you? Wretched thing, if I hadn't been severely injured escaping my imprisonment, I would have devoured you all long ago. The demon plant collapsed, burning to ashes. Eating so many people yet still wanting to live? Cultivate some virtue. Shao Tree scoffed, and they turned to leave. Dang, killed demon lord Yang Lu, one of the three demon kings scattered spirit realm demonic avatars. Rewarded 5 million spirit awareness. Dang. Dao Seed Heart Devil advanced to the 6th rank, 468,700,000 spirit awareness remaining until the 7th rank. Why was I given this role in life? Standing before Chu Tam Moi's room, Shao Tree's group lowered their voices. Madam, we've brought what the demon lord Yang Lu asked us to deliver to you. Come, come, are those spirit stones or magic treasures? Chu Tam Moi excitedly opened the door. You're not. The old lady lost her soul. Sorry, to disappoint you. She hurriedly climbed out the window to escape. Before she could get through the window, Miao Shen's silk threads bound and pulled her back. Where do you think you're going? Chu Tam Moi tumbled, but she still had a sharp tongue. Even if you luckily didn't die, don't think you can dream of anything. I won't be easily entangled. Chu Tam Moi stood up abruptly, using her ultimate skill to shoot silk threads at Shao Tree in clusters. He grasped the silk bundle swiftly. You know some tricks too. Let me see how much silk you have. He kept pulling and pulling. Chu Tam Moi became truly afraid as her accumulated spider silk was depleted. With no strength left to resist, she hastily pleaded, at this rate, I'll dry up and die. I was wrong. Spare me, sir. The demon lord Yang Lu has been burned to death by me. If you dare lie once, I'll let you die with him. Dead, dead, he's dead. That was a demon king. 
just who are these people? If I had known earlier, I absolutely wouldn't have provoked them. Shout Tree shouted loudly, I'll ask you, where is the demon subjugation tower? I don't know, but the demon lord Yang Lu said you knew. I really don't know, don't lay a hand on me. I suddenly remembered. In Thunder Phoenix City, there's a place called the Royal Manor. The owner is my second elder sister. A few days ago, she took in a demon monarch. That demon monarch has an overwhelming demonic aura. If not a demon king, then definitely a demon emperor. He must know where the demon subjugation tower is. Let's go. So they set off towards the royal manor. The royal manor? Owned by your second sister? Shout Tree vaguely recalled elder sister Ma mentioning it before. Could it be elder sister Huang? Yes, could the demon lord also know your second sister? Chu Tam Moi was surprised. I don't know your sister, I know your elder sister. That sounds like an insult. The demonic aura from afar caught Shout Tree's group's attention. The demonic aura is indeed immense. Unlike ordinary demon spirits, it feels like it must be at the realm of spirit unification. We shouldn't provoke it. Let's go in first and adapt to the situation. That dense demonic aura belonged to the demon king Chu Feng Lu. He was happily hand in hand with elder sister Huang. This waste of yours is even more alluring than a mermaid's. Old Chu is about to lose control. You're still quite virile, looking young yet so passionate in bed. Suddenly, a knock on the door disrupted their passionate atmosphere. Second Grand Aunt, Third Grand Aunt has arrived, with some friends, saying they wish to meet you. Third sister is here? Quickly invite them to the main hall. Under the Demon Bee's guidance, Chow Tree's group and Chu Tam Moi entered the main hall. Yo, third sister, what wind blew you here? In a blink, she scurried behind elder sister Huang's back. Elder sister, something big happened. The demon lord Yang Lu has been burned to ashes, and my crimson mist sect was also robbed. What? Who dares bully my little sister? The demon lord Yang Lu is dead? Chu Tam Moi cried and pointed ahead. It was them. They also wanted to kill me, but luckily I was clever enough to lure them here. Elder sister, you must avenge me ah, is this a setup? Shao Tree thought silently, isn't this like walking into a trap? Chu Tam Moi had tricked them again. Elder sister's face turned purple with rage. You dare bully my little sister? Today, none of you will leave the royal manor alive. She charged quickly, then suddenly stopped. Ah, that, that's elder sister's hairpin. It's a good thing Shao Tree took it out quickly. Her resentment dissipated. Honored guests have arrived, yet I acted so rudely. Immediately, elder sister had her subordinates prepare a feast, and they gathered to chat and dispel the misunderstanding. So it really is the great watered torrent dragon manor. I didn't know it was our families. That means Lord Shao Shang came here to investigate the demon subjugation tower. Recalling the demon subjugation tower, she suddenly remembered Chu Feng Lu might know more. So she turned to ask him, Brother Chu, Lord Shao Shang is my sister's friend, and also my friend. Why don't you tell him about the entrance to the demon subjugation tower? He frowned, clearly angered by the demon lord Yang Lu's matter. He killed the demon lord Yang Lu, who was my dead brother. We barely escaped the demon subjugation tower by joining forces. Without him, how could I have survived? I must avenge my brother Yang Lu by killing this man. Chu Feng Lu slammed the table, stood up, and swiftly drew his hammer, about to strike Shao Tree's head. Fortunately, elder sister stopped him in time, or blood would have been spilled. Elder sister Huang tightly hugged Chu Feng Lu. No, no, Lord Shao Shang is my honored guest. How can a host kill a guest? Shao Tree wasn't afraid either. That spirit devourer deserved to die by my hand. The demon lord Yang Lu left the tower, and had already eaten 97 people, committing grave sins. Killing him was merely eliminating a threat to the people, carrying out heaven's will. Hearing this, Chu Feng Lu couldn't believe the demon lord Yang Lu had fallen to such a bloody path. Reflecting, he realized his actions were somewhat improper, so he sat back down. He only killed a few people. What's so big about that? Then you've also killed people. Shao Tree stood up abruptly, ready to fight. Seeing this, Chu Feng Lu quickly quickly explained, no, no, I would never kill an innocent person, but if they're thieves or robbers, no one can escape the heavenly way of the moon sun continent, it's formidable, but you killed Yan Zi, didn't you, true, I killed her, but she wasn't wronged, I treated her so well, with such sincerity, yet she deceived me and wanted to betray me, in a moment of anger, I killed her, Shao Tree sighed, alas, an unpayable debt, no wonder they say humans and demons are separated, Chu Tam Moi suddenly had an idea, everyone, quiet, I have a proposal for you, let Lord Shao Shang and Chu Feng Lu fight, if Lord Shao Shang wins, 
Chu Feng Lu must tell him the entrance to the demon subjugation tower. But if Chu Feng Lu wins, Lord Shao Shang can't trouble him about the demon subjugation tower's entrance. And you'll have to find it yourself. Shao Tree and Chu Feng Lu stared at each other, neither backing down, determined to defeat the other at all costs. This proposal is acceptable, said Chu Feng Lu with disdain. I have no problem with it, but how can a useless Zidane cultivator like him compare to a body integration cultivator like me? It's like comparing a child demon to an adult demon. Wouldn't that be bullying him? Who's bullying who is yet to be seen? After all, there are risks in combat. Since we're all family, instead of physical fighting, why not have a literary contest? One person poses a topic, and the other has to compose on it. A good idea. We can determine the winner without bloodshed. Chu Feng Lu thought, a mere Zidane cultivator, why bother? Let me test if he can lift this thousand soldier hammer. If you fail this, you lose. The thousand soldier hammer, as the name implies, weighs a thousand soldiers. One soldier is thirty caddies, so a thousand soldiers is thirty thousand caddies. Can Shao Tree even lift such weight? Elder sister Huang scoffed, and everyone feared Shao Tree would lose. Ha, huh, you want me to play with the divine thunder hammer? Do you really see me as just an ordinary Zidane cultivator? Shao Tree approached, grasping the hammer's handle and giving it a light spin. Elder sisters Huang and Chu giggled. Oh Lord Shao Shang, don't try lifting it, you might break your waist with that weight. No worries, my sister specializes in waist treatments. I'll personally massage Lord Shao Shang's waist tonight. Shao Tree wasn't phased. A mere 30,000 caddies is nothing. He effortlessly lifted the hammer high. He, he lifted it. 30,000 caddies. Before Chu Feng Lu could recover, he glanced at Shao Tree. Not only did he lift it, he even performed moves with it. And he's spinning Chu Feng Lu's thousand caddy hammer with just one finger? Shao Tree was already bored with such trivial feats. He looked at Chu Feng Lu with half an eye. Is that all? Is that all? Shao Tree is no ordinary Zidane cultivator. He didn't want to show off, but he's actually at the sixth cycle of the ninth young Vajra body, equivalent to a Chifan spirit cultivator. Lifting a mountain would be possible, let alone a mere hammer. He spun the hammer and gently placed it on Chu Feng Lu's shoulder, letting him feel the weight. Chu Feng Lu let out a sound now viewing Shao Tree differently. He no longer wanted to risk his life avenging Demon Lord Yang Lu, realizing he was partly at fault for provoking the situation. Well then, let's move on happily. Now it's Shao Tree's turn to pose a topic, let me see what talents he can display, and impress the ladies. Chu Feng Lu took a flower branch, discarding the stem and pinning the flower to his chest. Seeing Chu Feng Lu's demeanor, Shao Tri leaned in and whispered, displaying talents? Like tearing toilet paper? How embarrassing. Chu Feng Lu hid his face, turning away. The second contest began. It was Shao Tri's turn to pose a topic. He dripped water and quickly wrote a few words on the table. Using his hand as a seal, no one knew what he did. Seconds later, a chessboard appeared with the pieces already arranged. The rules are simple. Move the pieces inside. If you can bring down Cao Cao, you win. Ha, huh, this is too easy. Chu Feng Lu smiled confidently. One incense time passed. Two incense times passed. As Shao Tri and the others drank and chatted about life, everyone grew tired. They looked over at Chu Feng Lu's progress. Oh heavens, he's still not done? Chu Tam Moi rested her chin, staring blankly at Chu Feng Lu. When will he ever finish? I'm even getting drunk. Chu Feng Lu's face looked like a monkey that ate a chili, extremely concentrated. Shao Tree was also tired, wanting to nap and leave Chu Feng Lu to do as he pleased. To entertain everyone, he took out a chess set. In his world, this chess was very popular. Shao Tree wanted them to experience it. After explaining the simple rules, everyone eagerly joined in. They became so engrossed that Chu Tam Moi exclaimed, Lord Shao Shang, you're so fascinating, to invent such a wondrous game. You're a genius. This is so fun. So much fun. Shao Tree's eyes grew heavy. Looking around, he spotted a nearby bed. He quickly went over and lay down to rest. The next morning at first light, a rooster's crow woke everyone. Shao Tree wondered if Chu Feng Lu had solved it yet. Oh my. It even forced him to reveal his true form. Did Chu Feng Lu overdo it? This puzzle wasn't that difficult to warrant showing his original appearance. Shao Tree had forgotten one thing. That Chu Feng Lu is a pig immortal. No matter how hard he racked his brain, he couldn't solve it and cried out in frustration. I'm just a stupid pig. I really am just a stupid pig. It was so simple. Why couldn't I figure it out? Elder sister Huang hugged him to console his tears. It's okay, it's okay. We admit defeat. This scene reminded Shao Tree of Princess Jade of Journey to the West, who seemed far more trustworthy, 
like seeking a good husband, at least not judging solely on appearances. Chu Feng Lu raised his hand in surrender, insisting Xiao Tree solve it himself. If you can prove Cao Cao can truly get out of this formation, I'll tell you the entrance to the demon suppressing pagoda. Chu Feng Lu had given up, determined for Xiao Tree to solve it himself. As long as you can prove this Cao Cao can truly get out of the formation, I'll tell you the way into the demon suppressing pagoda. Look closely. First move, soldier bottom left corner, soldier bottom right corner down, chariot down, cannon right, soldier left up left, soldier middle up to position 2. Second move, cannon right, soldier middle down to 2, soldier middle down left, guard up left 2, soldier middle up right, soldier middle up to 2, cannon right. Third move, soldier middle down right, soldier middle up right, cannon left, guard down left 2, chariot up right, soldier left down right 2. Fourth move, soldier middle down left, chariot down left 2, cannon up right 2, soldier right up right, guard down left, cannon down, soldier middle left 2, soldier middle left 2, chariot up, chariot up, soldier last middle right 2, soldier bottom right corner up right 2. Twelfth move, chariot down 2, advisor right, 2 soldiers right, cannon right, horse up 2, sow left, soldier middle down 2, Soldier front down 2, advisor left, chariot up 2, soldier middle up right, click, sow sow fell out. This solution is called the sideways saber upright horse. There's another solution by splitting the soldiers into three groups, but the extraction is more complex. Chu Feng Lu was utterly defeated, admitting Shao Tree's mastery. Ting, earned respect of demon king Chu Feng Lu, initial unity realm, reward. 1 million spirit stones. Now Chu Feng Lu didn't understand why Xiao Tri had to find the demon suppressing pagoda with such effort. This demon suppressing pagoda is a calamity. 8,000 years ago, the demon race was prosperous, coexisting with humans in this world, sharing the divine heavenly path. Then, the demon queen caused chaos, scheming to control the continent of wind and moon. The human emperor borrowed the demon suppressing pagoda from the immortal palace to imprison the riotous demon race within. As long as they stayed in the pagoda for the set time, the human emperor would release them. Shao Tri had never heard anyone mention, isn't this just imprisonment? The demon race was given a prison sentence, to be released after serving their labor term. That demon suppressing pagoda was a special prison built for the demon race. Chu Feng Lu lowered his head in shame. He covered his eyes filled with sadness, reminding him of the memories he didn't want to recall. Originally, as you said, it was true. But during the immortal demon war, the demon suppressing pagoda changed owners. And we demons were imprisoned inside that demon suppressing pagoda pagoda, never to be released, confined for life. I was imprisoned once for 8,000 years. Do you know what I went through during those 8,000 years? You should know, back then I was only sentenced to 8 years. Now the owner of the demon suppressing pagoda is Wu Chong. He understands the rules within the pagoda. Even the phoenix demon queen is no match for him. On the 15th of every month, he comes to the demon suppressing pagoda to collect demon pills. Not a single time missed in 8,000 years. Only after a thousand years can a demon form one pill. After the demon pill is taken, the demon's body weakens. Countless have died of starvation and illness. Back then, tens of thousands of demons entered the pagoda. Now, less than five remain. Ah Hu, Chu Feng Lu, King Yang Willow, the Phoenix Demon Queen couldn't bear to watch them waste away here. They risked their lives to open a path for the others to escape. Staying in the demon suppressing pagoda meant no chance of survival. You all go. I'll risk my life to open the way for you. Whether you can escape or not, depends on your destiny. If you can find the human emperor, ask him why he didn't release us back then. Why did you have to treat us like this? The Phoenix Queen used all her strength to open a path. Chu Feng Lu and King Yang Willow escaped first. Only Ah Hu remained. She urged Ah Hu, Ah Hu, why don't you go? Ah Hu couldn't bear to leave the Phoenix Queen to fend for herself in the pagoda. You'll die trying to hold the path alone. Let me lend you some strength. Moreover, I was born inside the demon suppressing pagoda. If I go out, I don't know how to interact with others. The Phoenix Queen looked at Ah Hu with teary eyes, understanding his intentions without words. Chu Feng Lu and King Yang Willow went through immense hardship to escape. After getting out, they learned the human emperor had fallen in the immortal demon war. Now the demon suppressing pagoda was under the demon suppression division of the true martial immortal dynasty. Even the so-called Righteous Alliance had many who didn't know the pagoda's location, 
let alone oversee its operations. Moreover, they were severely injured passing through the passage. Chu Feng Lu had a dual cultivation technique to recover his power. He wanted to go to the Di Hong Institute to cultivate it, but was tricked by Yan Zi. Luckily, second sister took him in. Together they secluded to cultivate, gradually recovering his strength. As for King Yang Willow, he ate humans to regain his power. Chu Feng Lu didn't know about that. Though it was faster, it would attract the Demon Suppression Division's attention. If caught by the Demon Suppression Division, we'll be taken back to the Demon Suppressing Pagoda. That's the last place Chu Feng Lu ever wants to return to. Absolutely not. He clung stiffly to second sister. You've treated me so well here. Chu Feng Lu doesn't want to leave. It's okay, it's okay. We don't need to go back there. After much coaxing from Huang's second sister, he finally relaxed. After understanding the situation, Xiao Jie also realized, the Demon Suppression Division, they're just a branch of the true martial immortal dynasty. How could they capture a demon king? Huang's second sister sobbed, humans, you don't know the hardships of us demons. The Demon Suppression Division uses vicious and cruel tactics. Many demons have fallen victim to their poisonous hands. Nowadays, demons either stay with their sects, like the redundant elders of immortal sects. They hide and run. My elder sister is in the dragon cave. Third younger sister disguises herself in the harmonious sect. And I run my own business. It's all because back then, we refused to join the true martial immortal dynasty's national preceptor's recruitment. That's why the demon suppression division has been hunting us. In recent years, as the true martial forces expanded to Wind Thunder City, the demon suppression masters also took notice of us. So Huang's second sister has been preparing to move. Clop clop, the sound of hooves approached from afar. Accompanied by a loud shout, the demon suppression division is here to pass judgment. Servants, get out of the way. They stopped their horses in front of the Huang family manor. Two demon guards tried to stop them. Who dares to trespass on the Huang family manor? The leader lashed his whip at the spider demon guards, his face full of killing intent. The demon suppression division, Jade Isla, Jade Isla's initial spiritual sense. The notorious demon suppression division has arrived. Inform your master, hand over that demon pig immediately, or I'll kill you all. Hearing the demon suppression division, the two demon guards panicked and hurried to report. It's bad. The demon suppression division is here perfect timing. I wanted to probe them anyway. Xiao J said, just let brother Chu pretend to be captured. We'll follow them to find the demon suppressing pagoda's location. What? The demon suppression division? Chu Feng Lu turned pale, terrified. As a rare integrated being, the continent of wind and moon was the pinnacle existence. You're such a coward. Miao Shen and Wu Yu didn't expect Chu Feng Lu to be so scared. It's not cowardice. That place is hell on earth for demons like Huang's second sister. Everyone, I'm sorry. Xiao Jie's group clearly saw Chu Feng Lu, second sister, and third younger sister trembling. Seeing this, Xiao Jie said, wait, we can turn this around. They huddled and discussed. After agreeing, Xiao Jie disguised himself as Chu Feng Lu. He tied him up with ropes. Second sister took a deep breath to regain her composure and led him out to hand over to the demon suppression division. Didn't expect this fool to be so important. My oversight forced you, Jade Head, to come in person. It was my carelessness. Holding the arrest warrant, Jade Isla compared it, the demon Chu Feng Lu. You were involved in the case of eating humans at the Dihong Institute about three months ago. Now you're under arrest for that crime. Any objections? The little demon had no objection. The suspect is under arrest. Let's head back. They turned their horses, escorting the disguised Chu Feng Lu played by Xiao Jie. Before leaving, he reminded them, don't scatter. Wait for my return. Take care, Lang Jun. They waved goodbye to Xiao Jie. On the way, Jade Isla stared at Xiao Jie for a while. Didn't expect your pig to be so popular with women. Too bad you can't go back either. Why not? Aren't you arresting me? Xiao Jie asked. That's right. She spurred her horse to gallop faster, ignoring Xiao Jie's shouts. Slow down, beautiful sister. You naughty golden pig, let me punish you. The road was treacherous with many twists and turns. No wonder Xiao Jie couldn't find this heaven's creation demon suppressing pagoda, hidden in a magnetic mountain that blocked spiritual perception. After entering, Xiao Jie finally saw its true appearance. It was exquisitely crafted. Before the main hall, 
Jade Isla cupped her hands and told Preceptor Wu Chong that she had brought the person he wanted to meet. The Preceptor asked if bringing Xiao Jie back went smoothly. Jade Isla replied, very smoothly, he didn't resist. The Preceptor praised Jade Isla's good work and ordered her to quickly extract Xiao Jie's demon pill, then put him in the demon suppressing pagoda. Following the Preceptor's orders, Jade Isla acted swiftly, reaching toward Xiao Jie's heart to extract the demon pill. But something was amiss. Jade Isla realized he didn't have a demon pill. The preceptor saw this and said Jade Isla had been tricked by Xiao Jie. The preceptor said Xiao Jie was never Chu Feng Lu. The preceptor had discovered his true identity. Xiao Jie didn't hide it anymore, removing the pig head he had worn the whole way, which almost turned his real head into a pig's. He turned to Jade Isla and thanked her for caring about him during the journey. Xiao Jie revealed his handsome face, leaving Jade Isla stunned. She had to stay alert, or she'd fall for Xiao Jie's charm offensive. As she finished speaking, Jade Isla drew her precious blade, wanting to strike him for deceiving her the whole way. As the blade swung, Xiao Jie caught it between two fingers. With his charming demeanor, he told her one can play with sticks but not swords. Jade Isla sensed his immense strength, caught off guard by Xiao Jie's unexpected power, or perhaps distracted by his charming good looks, she almost fell over. Seeing Jade Isla about to fall, Xiao Jie swiftly moved toward her. Seizing the chance to show his gallantry, Xiao Jie used his body to support Jade Isla. He told her to be careful, asking why she was so careless. Jade Isla froze, awkwardly telling Xiao Jie to let her go. The preceptor had witnessed enough of this cliched damsel in distress act. Now it was his turn to perform. The preceptor said Xiao Jie was indeed capable. But you know, this is the demon suppressing pagoda. Such unruly behavior won't end well. The preceptor Wu Chong used the nine yin demon capturing halberd to attack Xiao Jie. Jade Isla thought Xiao Jie was doomed. But Xiao Jie recognized the weapon's techniques resembled those recorded in the Tao Heart Demon scripture. Xiao Jie evaded the preceptor's attack. The preceptor had never failed with this ultimate technique before. Who is this person? It's been ages since I met an opponent of this caliber on the continent of wind and moon. As the preceptor prepared to continue their martial exchange, the mysterious man said, hold on. He revealed the prince's tiger tally. Seeing the tiger tally, Jade Isla knelt down and cupped her hands, greeting the superior. The preceptor was surprised, wondering why he had the tiger tally. Chao Jie said, seeing the tiger tally is like seeing the prince himself. Now that the prince wishes to enter the demon suppressing pagoda, no one can stop him. Preceptor Wu Chong seemed to ponder something, then muttered an incantation and pointed toward the pagoda's entrance. He said, inside the demon suppressing pagoda, where demonic beings have run rampant for over 8,000 years, few have the strength to enter. If you insist on going in today, you'll have to face the consequences yourself. Don't blame the preceptor for not warning you. Xiao Jie had heard the preceptor's warnings before. The pagoda's entrance opened, and Xiao Jie confidently stepped inside. Preceptor Wu Chong called out from behind, go in and come back quickly. You only have one incense time before the bridal sedan arrives. Then the pagoda's entrance will close forever. Hearing bridal sedan, Xiao Jie seemed even more excited. Looks like there'll be a celebration today. As Xiao Jie entered, the pagoda's entrance closed behind him. Inside the demon suppressing pagoda, the demon race had been imprisoned for over a millennium, enduring immense suffering. Their resentment knew no bounds. Although the demons were frequently drained of their demon pills, limiting their power, one could not underestimate them or let one's guard down. After all, whatever remained here, were demon beasts with thousands or tens of thousands of years of cultivation. According to Xiao Jie's impression of the demon suppressing pagoda, there must be levels of slaughter, and the highest level would grant access. In his calculations, the demon monarch was currently wounded on the highest level, so Xiao Jie planned to seize this opportunity to infiltrate and then leave. As he schemed, Xiao Jie was suddenly ambushed from behind, the dense demonic aura causing him to let his guard down. The ambusher, a tiger-faced demon, struck Xiao Jie with a large club, knocking him unconscious. The ambusher dragged Xiao Jie by the legs, muttering it had been ages since anyone came, and he would use Xiao Jie to nourish Sister Phoenix's body. Sometime later, Xiao Jie woke with a pounding headache. He gradually opened his eyes, relieved to not have been eaten yet. In the corner, the ambusher, a Hu, was talking to the girl combing her hair, Phoenix, about something. A Hu was the one who knocked Xiao Jie out and brought him to Phoenix to eat, but she refused to harm him. According to A Hu, 
Phoenix had never harmed humans before, but humans had inflicted grievous injuries upon her. Who even urged her to eat Xiao Jie's flesh, saying he looked delicious and would surely taste good. But Phoenix refused, gently telling a Hu that the demon race was imprisoned for their evil deeds. Do you really want to go on like this forever? Phoenix asked her brother. Her words rang true, but a Hu argued that with no witnesses, if she remained stubborn, the demon race would face annihilation by humans. Their conversation was punctuated by Phoenix's ragged coughing, her health seemingly deteriorating. For years, demon pills had been extracted from her inner elixir, leaving her body covered in wounds. The injuries penetrated her bones and marrow. Without consuming human blood, she could not last much longer. Phoenix reassured a Hu, I'll be fine. She knew the demon clan was impatient, and told a Hu to have them wait a few more days. She had a plan to free them, but needed time. You, don't tell me you want to enter the palace as a concubine? A Hu shouted, no, you can't do that. None of the demon maidens we sent to the palace ever returned alive. He angrily waved his arms. That emperor is no human. He won't let you live. My words are falling on deaf ears, he told Phoenix. She paid him no mind, her vacant gaze fixed as she calmly applied rouge and lipstick. It's too late. I've already agreed with Wu Chong. The bridal sedan will arrive soon. When I'm gone, don't do anything bad. From outside, I'll urge them to open the demon suppressing pagoda soon. A Hu was infuriated, clenching his fists tightly as he forced a laugh. Ha ha ha, I don't agree. You raised me from childhood. I see you as my own mother. I don't believe the others will listen to your arrangements. Aren't you just seeking death? I must take a risk with them. Risk. A slapping sound rang out as Xiao Jie struck him. You're too loud. It's scorching hot outside. And you've been yapping non-stop. A Hu nursed his reddened cheek, glaring over. You hid me? Yes, you were too noisy. Hateful human, I'll tear you apart. And let Phoenix sister drink your blood. He bared his fangs, lunging to claw at Xiao Jie a few times in anger. Such childish behavior. Unfazed, Xiao Jie grabbed A Hu by the scruff, lifting him up. A Hu dangled, flailing his limbs but unable to reach Xiao Jie. Let me go. I must hit you. With that temper, you won't last long outside before getting killed. Pardon me, your excellency. It's my failure in discipline. Please spare his life out of pity for his childish age. I'll take his punishment. Child? How can one be called a child at seven or eight thousand years old? This child is a bit too grown. Suddenly, Phoenix felt darkness closing in, her limbs losing strength. Oh no, Phoenix's sister is falling ill. She's dying. Xiao Jie supported her. Without hesitation, he cut his palm. My blood will help you. Drink it. No, I can't drink your blood. It will harm your body. Without a word, Xiao Jie clamped her mouth open with one hand and squeezed with the other. Mm. Phoenix drank continuously. In seconds, she returned to normal. Her body brimming with vitality. How is this possible? I've regained over 10 levels of cultivation. And my body feels much stronger than before, as if it's been refilled. This feeling is so comfortable, so relaxing. Your inner energies were severely injured, while I possess the 6 revolutions 9 young golden physique. My blood benefits you more than eating the monk's flesh. A Hu stood frozen, eyes wide. So he possesses such formidable power? The phoenix didn't know what the monk's flesh meant. It was indeed very beneficial. A Hu regained his senses and immediately begged. Please, your excellency, give your blood to my phoenix sister. I'm willing to pull out all my bones for your excellency to make bone wine. Your loyalty is admirable, but I'm not weak. I don't need that, Xiao Jie pondered. Phoenix didn't harm me when I was unconscious, so she can be considered a good demon. I don't mind losing some blood, but her illness needs long-term treatment. Yet I only have an hour left in the demon suppressing pagoda. How can this be resolved? Ah, I can divide it into small bottles to carry. She can drink one every three days. After ten doses, her illness will be cured. Faced with Xiao Jie's magnanimity, treating her so well, Phoenix didn't know how to repay him, except, no, surely he doesn't think I'll repay him with my body? Isn't that cliche? Alas, even this sickly body no longer belongs to me. Truly, I have nothing to repay the young master. If I survive today, I vow to repay this great debt, even if I must become a cow or horse. Forget it, it's fine. We're just duckweed floating on water, meeting by chance. It's just a little blood, no need to worry about it. I have things to do, I'll go first. After saying that, Tiu Triet quickly left. Are there really such kind people in this world? Feng Wu seemed to have developed feelings. She immediately took some bottles containing Tiu Triet's blood and gave them to a Hu, carefully instructing him, make everyone drink the blood. When the door opens, we'll charge out together. Today, I'll resolve the thousand-year grudge of the demon race. 
Understood, your majesty. It seemed that Tiu Triet had stirred a bit of compassion in her with just a few bottles of blood. While he was lying on the bed, Feng Wu and A Hu had tried every possible way. If it weren't for the fact that blades and axes couldn't harm you, I would have crushed your bones long ago. You're really tough. Swords and blades couldn't pierce Tiu Triet, so they thought he had an iron body. But in fact, it was because Tiu Triet was protected by the Kylan brilliant armor, making it difficult for those below the immortal realm to harm him. The suffering strategy, this is the only option now. When dealing with men, demon ladies have hundreds of thousands of tricks. The human race has imprisoned our demon race for over 8,000 years, causing countless deaths and bloodshed. If I can successfully escape the demon suppressing tower today, I will definitely slaughter all the humans, so that the Feng Yu continent will belong entirely to our demon race. According to the system's guidance, the location ahead seems to be it. The scenery is so serene and poetic. Xiao Jie paused, taking in a breath of the fresh air. It seems there's a rabbit demon sweeping leaves. He eagerly approached, thinking, is there only one demon sweeping at the peak of the demon suppressing pagoda? The contract location is not within this spatial realm, so the contract cannot be completed here. This place likely has spatial spell formations sealing off the contract location. As expected of an immortal realm, it's not easy to form a contract. He spoke gently, this humble one is Xiao Jie, seeking an unusual spatial zone. Please guide me, senior. Ha ha, with that figure, you must be a beauty. Xiao Jie's heart raced. I've been on the continent of Bright Moon for a while, yet never encountered a rabbit demon. It's a bit regretful. Today I finally have a chance to make up for that regret. The rabbit demon turned, her face gradually revealed as a voice rang out. You misunderstand, sir. I'm just an old cleaning lady, unqualified to answer your questions. He couldn't believe his eyes, frozen for five seconds. Ugly. And old too. I thought she'd be a stunning beauty. Xiao Jie hesitated, you must be joking, senior. One who cultivates the Tao must be a great immortal. As for why you're sweeping here, you probably just want to experience it. That's natural. There's no way you're really just a cleaning lady. No cultivator would dare look down on an old woman sweeping. Seeing Xiao Jie's smooth talk, the rabbit demon's mood lightened. Alright, I won't make it difficult for you. Solve this chess game and you'll get what you want. He glanced over, thinking it was a dragon chess game, but it was just a remnant 7 star formation. But why is there a chess piece here? Could someone else have crossed over before me? Xiao Jie pondered deeply. The rabbit demon spoke, countless have tried to break this formation since ancient times. It all failed without exception. Some even died here from overexertion, staining the surrounding leaves red. I advise you to stop here and not waste your life. The rabbit demon tried to scare him, but these weren't red maple leaves? Who was she trying to scare? Although a draw doesn't count as a win, the predecessor's blood and sweat have produced chess manuals. The key to breaking the formation isn't winning, but, while thinking, he decisively moved the pieces step by step, soon breaking the formation before him. It's not about winning, but understanding the predecessor's painstaking efforts that led to the chess manuals. With that insight, he swiftly solved the formation. Oh heavens, he actually broke it. The chessboard cracked open, revealing a stone tablet. Isn't this a trap? Before he could understand what was happening, the system suddenly announced. Dane, the demon suppressing pagoda registration location at the immortal realm has been found. Initiating automatic registration simulation. Dane, registration successful. Obtained immortal realm hidden box. Strange, isn't this some kind of scam? Inside was a letter. He quickly opened it. Respected owner, apologies, but a mouse ate your reward. If you still want the reward, please find the remnant soul human emperor to confirm your next mission. If successful, I'll help you catch that mouse to reduce your losses. Your dear sister system, Moaf. Damn it, where do I find that old human emperor's remnant soul now? Shui K took human form. Don't you sense an ability? The human emperor has always been by your side, hasn't he? Huh? The rabbit demon playfully said, young one, your emperor has returned. Furious with nowhere to vent, seeing the rabbit demon's words, he didn't hesitate to punch her hard, knocking out her dentures. Go to hell. Dad has put up with you for too long. What a slap. Shui K already hinted at it, but Xiao Jie didn't realize it, and he even dared to hit the human emperor he was seeking. To hit the human emperor? The rabbit demon staggered up, dusting off her clothes. She smacked her lips, young one, don't be so agitated. The battle between immortals and demons affected the continent of Bright Moon. I was severely injured, then Li Wudu ambushed me. Backed into a corner, I had to leave a strand of divine consciousness in the demon suppressing pagoda. The demons downstairs hated me, so I could only disguise myself as a rabbit demon. You were also ambushed by Li Wudu? Just like my brother Shui Hai. They share the same enemy, Li Wudu. 
That person is too despicable. What does he want to do? The rabbit demon continued. He's very ambitious, likely holding back his trump card. The rabbit demon paused. Why is there a woman's voice here? It's not Xiao Jie. Then who? The rabbit demon looked towards the sound. It's Shui K. You're the demon sect's female demon leader, the demon race's big hunting dog. Ah, I didn't expect to meet an acquaintance here. Excited, the rabbit demon leapt up, grabbing Shui K's hands tightly. Human emperor, you really know how to talk. I'm honored, honored. All right, let's get to the main point. The human emperor's remnant soul moved closer to Xiao Jie, patting his shoulder lightly as if entrusting him with a great responsibility. Young one, your mission now is to reclaim the demon suppressing pagoda and subdue the phoenix demon emperor. In the future, you will rule over the realms of humans, demons, and spirits, gaining the strength to negotiate with the immortal realm, and protect the fortunes of the three realms. With immense merit, you can cultivate immortality. Xiao Jie interrupted the human emperor. I understand the demon sect and demon race, but why would humans let me rule them? Even the martial emperor's peerless skill couldn't make him a leader. What qualifications do I have? The demon realm is likely extinct. Don't count on it. Rely on this. The rabbit demon took out a green object from her robe. The human emperor's imperial jade seal. With the imperial seal, the emperor's token. Its bearer commands the world, reigning supreme. Heed the human emperor's will. Accepting the three realms means opposing the immortal realm. But now, the three realms have been devastated. How can they oppose the immortal realm? If Xiao Jie accepts the seal, it will only bring great trouble. But if he doesn't, the system said it won't give him the immortal realm level reward. A heartbreaking loss. Seeing Xiao Jie's hesitation, the human emperor felt dejected. His remaining remnant soul might have been in vain. What a pity. This imperial jade seal is truly a pearl lost in the dust. No one dares to take it. It seems the fortunes of the human race have truly been extinguished. No, no, Xiao Jie didn't say he wouldn't accept it. He's just contemplating for a bit. Protecting the fortunes of the human race is the duty of every person. If I don't go to hell, who will? Let me bear this suffering. The human emperor sighed in relief. Someone has taken on the will to protect humans. Now I can leave without regrets. My mission is complete. The future of humans, I entrust to you. As he finished speaking, the human emperor's body faded and dissolved into the void. At this moment, outside the demon suppressing pagoda, a strange phenomenon appeared in the sky. Dark clouds gathered, streams of energy swirled atop the pagoda. Hua Chong Yun and Jade Era with their subordinates sensed an ominous omen. Did something happen inside the demon suppressing pagoda? The time isn't up yet, why don't we wait? Jade Era hesitated, shuffling her feet. Seeing this, Hua Chong Yun didn't wait any longer. I'll go to the demon emperor now. Order Jade Era to lead the purge of the demon suppressing pagoda. Leave no survivors. As for Lord Shang, everything here must become a secret. So he must die. Anyone in my way will die, even if it's Xiao Jie, I won't spare him. The pagoda door opened slightly. Hua Chong Yun stepped inside. Kill. A five-fingered hand, with fingers of different lengths, grabbed at him. Luckily, Hua Chong Yun was agile and dodged to the side. Ahu had been guarding the entrance, listening to Hua Chong Yun and Jade Era's conversation. Ahu thought Hua Chong Yun only dodged by luck. You didn't expect it, did you? I've regained my full power. Killing you is like killing a dog. Seal. Hua Chong Yun didn't say much, pointing his index finger at Ahu's acupoint. How is this possible? Ahu's body became immobilized. He gritted his teeth, trying to move but couldn't. You overestimated yourself. Hua Chong Yun struck with his palm, sending Ahu crashing to the ground, tumbling. Ahu collapsed. Only the Phoenix Demon Emperor remained, refusing to surrender. She didn't want to die without a fight. At all costs, she had to drag Hua Chong Yun down with her but her strength was limited. Merely defending wasn't a good approach. Hua Chong Yun disdainfully smiled at her appearance. I didn't expect you to be so severely wounded. It's quite frightening. But that's good, it'll make a better supplement. He snorted, shattering the Phoenix Demon Emperor's defenses, then seized the opportunity to kick her hard in the stomach, sending her tumbling. Beasts will always be beasts. How can they compare to humans? The Phoenix Demon Emperor suppressed the pain and struggled to stand. You're just a despicable beast. I won't let you off so easily. Hua Chong Yun mocked her relentlessly. She drank the nine yang blood essence without hesitation in one gulp. This should be enough to trigger my phoenix blood, although I won't live much longer after this. But as long as I can save the demon race, the phoenix demon emperor's death will have meaning. Immediately, the phoenix demon emperor's body entered a wondrous state, radiating scorching heat, her blood boiling like raging currents in her veins. For Ahu, for Xiaolu, for Zhu Wei, for thousands of demon clansmen, 
I must make Wu Changyun pay with his life. Her body emanated azure flames, rising and glowing brightly. It was the earth fire of the phoenix, refined over thousands of years into the earth fire palace. Today, Wu Changyun will taste the phoenix demon emperor's earth fire. The phoenix demon emperor slammed her palms into the ground, cracks spreading towards Wu Changyun. But her seemingly fierce attack was deflected with a single move. Unperturbed, Wu Changyun scoffed. The demon suppressing pagoda can still summon its innate earth fire. Quite surprising. But regrettably, this is the demon suppressing pagoda. Even if you weren't injured, you couldn't use your full power here. It's like scratching an itch for me. A battle between humans and beasts. He casually drew in the air, forming a talisman. Go. Oh. The talisman expanded and adhered to the ground, dispersing the phoenix demon emperor's earth fire. What? You can suppress the earth fire? Wu Changyun looked arrogant. What other tricks do you have? Go ahead and show me. Since the earth fire can't restrain him, this one's skills must be extraordinary. Seeing no other choice, the phoenix demon emperor took a gamble. She stepped back, spun around, feathers flying from her robe. The razor-sharp feathers shot towards Wu Changyun. Before he could react, they pierced into his body. Though not using much force, that move aggravated her previous wounds. The phoenix demon emperor coughed up blood, smiling as she wiped it away. The demon race's calamity has finally ended. Even if I die, it was worth it. But her joy was short-lived for she had forgotten. Within the demon suppressing pagoda, Wu Changyun was a deity, the pagoda his domain. The rules here allowed him to manipulate speed and distance, altering space itself at will. Wu Chengyun's figure flickered as he spoke. Have you no memory at all? These are your phoenix feathers, aren't they? They turned, pointing back at the phoenix demon emperor. He wanted her to taste her own medicine. The phoenix demon emperor had no strength left to resist. She looked up, screaming, the heavens are unjust. To use the demon race as a shield, I don't care, I don't care. She closed her eyes, ready to embrace death. Fortunately, Tiu Triet arrived in time, shielding her with his life. Someone dares to ruin my good work? You're courting death. Wu Changyun was just about to eliminate the phoenix demon emperor. But this nobody ruined it, angering him greatly. This familiar face, I can't forget it. It's Tiu Triet. Don't you value your life? The phoenix feathers contained immortal energy. Being struck means death. Luckily Tiu Triet's immortal armor protected him from dying. Why didn't you say so earlier? Ouch, it hurts. Help me pluck them out, it hurts and itches. Ouch ouch. Hearing the phoenix demon emperor, Wu Changyun didn't want to bother with Tiu Triet. Minister, are you trying to save her? But you must consider, you're holding the prince's tiger tally. Doing this means the prince is rebelling. What tiger tally? Tiu Triet crushed it instantly. No, destroying the tiger tally means he has nothing holding him back. The phoenix demon emperor didn't expect Tiu Triet to do that. Forgive me, I used a cruel scheme to obtain your blood, implicating you. Oh, so you tricked me earlier? No matter. After being imprisoned so long, it's good you didn't go insane. Wanting to live and go outside, that's only natural. All this time, the phoenix demon emperor risked her life to save her kind, not hesitating to sacrifice herself for them. Now that Tiu Triet has come to my aid, if any soul can be reincarnated today, I will definitely repay this kindness. Be it as a servant or slave, I will absolutely return this favor. The honeyed words fell on deaf ears as Wu Changyun didn't want to hear any more. He had refrained from dealing with Tiu Triet only because of the prince's tiger tally. But now that it's gone, there's no need to hold back. How strange, the incense summit I created, you stole before I could take it. Truly infuriating. To be honest, I wanted to get rid of you for a long time. Wu Changyun drew his iron arm, wanting Tiu Triet to taste it. The arm moved unpredictably. So Tiu Triet had to use the nine swords of roaming clouds. He unsheathed his sword, determination on his face. Rest assured, after dealing with you, I'll take good care of Jade Issa. My Zhu Xi'an skill has grown much stronger lately, and the Nine Swords are exceptional, perfect for testing on you. Tiu Triet attacked with all his might, but Wu Changyun easily dodged. You dodged? Tiu Triet sensed something amiss about the speed. Wu Changyun spread his hands, shrugging. It's useless. In this demon suppressing pagoda, don't dream of your sword touching even my sleeves. Suddenly, his iron arm appeared from behind, aiming to stab Tiu Triet. Be careful, be careful. The phoenix demon emperor shouted, but the arm was too fast, stabbing Tiu Triet. The impact made him spin backwards, his expression changing. Phew, he's alright. The phoenix demon emperor sighed in relief. Even phoenix feathers couldn't pierce through. Wu Changyun knew Tiu Triet wore an immortal armor. 
so he changed tactics, controlling the iron arm to grab Tiyu Triet's robe with half its strength, ripping apart the immortal armor. Oh, how terrifying. There was no way to avoid it. Layer after layer was torn off, revealing a large, muscular, healthy physique that women would love. Even the Phoenix Demon Emperor exclaimed, What an amazing body. Tiu Triet focused, his movements unpredictable, unable to attack. No, it's not speed, but space. Hua Chongyun narrowed the space between them, reducing the distance to 10 centimeters, making defense impossible. Finally, he caught Tiu Triet, smiling in satisfaction. To you, Triet, you're finished. Without your immortal armor, you're just an ordinary golden core cultivator. In my eyes, you're not even worth an ant. He gripped to you, Triet's shoulders, lifting him up. To you, Triet swiftly cut the chains with his sword, smiling faintly. Just that? Really? You underestimate me, kid. Hua Chongyun didn't stop there, taking out a soul-locking talisman and slapping it onto Tiu Triet's face. Once hit by the soul-locking talisman, the victim's primordial spirit would be sealed, leaving them helpless to resist being killed. Hua Chongyun thought, since Tiu Triet hadn't cultivated his primordial spirit, once sealed, his sea of consciousness would instantly become void. But shortly after being applied, the soul-locking talisman peeled off and fell. What's going on? Why didn't it work? Perhaps Hua Chongyun didn't know, but Tiu Triet wore the Dragon God's longevity blessing, which made him immune to spiritual attacks, rendering the soul-locking talisman useless. Seizing this chance, Tiu Triet wanted to cleave him in two, to see if he could still live. Tiu Triet struck fiercely, his sword beam blinding. Hua Chongyun was sliced into two pieces, but the two halves squirmed and rejoined, reforming into one Hua Chongyun as if nothing happened. Hua Chongyun reappeared, saying, didn't you want to see how I live? Take a good look. Ha ha, you're too powerful, grandpa. Let me kowtow to this great immortal. Hua Chongyun wanted Tiu Triet to taste being split into pieces. Drawing talisman patterns with blood, he commanded them to fly at Tiu Triet. Seeing her benefactor in danger, the Phoenix Demon Emperor quickly stood, using her back as a shield. Be careful. She assumed doing so would save Tiu Triet's life, but no. By inertia, the Phoenix Demon Emperor rushed forward to embrace Tiu Triet. The talisman grew gigantic, enveloping them both. Why did you come here? To offer your head to be cut off? I, I wanted to save you. You call this saving? Now we're stuck like this. How can we escape? Split. Immediately, they were squeezed tighter. Uh, mung beans. I can't separate us. Hua Chongyun waved his hand, laughing loudly. Only now did the Phoenix Demon Emperor realize the severity, implicating the young master, it's my fault. If there's a next life, I vow to be your servant. The two were split into pieces. Fortunately, Tiu Triet was quick-witted, releasing his primordial spirit to avoid being killed. But his body was now dismembered, temporarily unable to return. Continuing like this wasn't the solution. Here, Hua Chongyun held the power, an opportunity Tiu Triet didn't have. To break this deadlock, he needed to find the key point. Tiu Triet tried to think, suddenly recalling the old man saying this place was also the key to the demon suppressing pagoda. So the key point must be here. Unfortunately, before he could pass on how to use it, his remaining soul dissipated. Gripping the celestial Han sealed tightly, he thought, register. This shouldn't be too difficult for him. The system appeared. Dang. Obtained operation guide for the celestial Han seal. Host, please check and receive. Step 1. Prepare your spiritual power. The human sovereign has authorized Tiu Triet, only supporting the use of Tiu Triet's spiritual power. Step 2. Please channel your spiritual power into the Celestial Han Seal. Step 3. The Celestial Han Seal will automatically recognize the host, allowing you to control it as you wish. Tiu Triet felt something was off, as if experiencing an extremely miserable illusion. There was an instructional video. There's no video, you mung bean. You've gone too far. He punched the system screen. Why make things so difficult? Fine then. I'll rely on myself. Celestial Han Seal. Let's see if you can restore my body. I know the Celestial Han Seal is a treasure of the demon suppressing pagoda. Within the pagoda, it is the supreme rule, able to suppress even the demon race. Seeing Tiu Triet and the Phoenix Demon Emperor dismembered, Hua Chongyun was overjoyed, but he didn't expect Tiu Triet's primordial spirit to escape. Ha ha. He sneered mockingly. I am the divine ruler of this place. Tiu Triet's primordial spirit hovered in the air, 
Wu Chongyun had secretly investigated the seal's rules before, allowing him to run rampant here. The Celestial Han seal could only maintain his rules through the talisman formation. I know how to break this deadlock. The area covered by the Celestial Han seal is its realm of rules, which Wu Chengyun's rules cannot affect. It's a small world under my control, so, repairing broken things is no issue. Merge, the pieces rejoined, and Tiu Triet and the Phoenix Demon Emperor woke up. What? Tiu Triet obtained the Celestial Han seal, and it recognized him as the host? Wu Chongyun stared at the seal in disbelief. The Phoenix Demon Emperor couldn't believe she was revived. She patted her cheeks, but her limbs kept sticking together, her face flushing red. Tiu Triet found it strange, wondering why she kept looking at him like that. Something felt off. He checked himself but saw nothing amiss. Yet, his lower body felt strangely cool. Looking down, he exclaimed, Damn it. Heads can roll, blood can flow, but this cannot be missing. In the demon suppressing pagoda, the national preceptor didn't understand how Tiu Triet broke that pervert's formation, but he would never let Tiu Triet take the celestial Han seal out. The national preceptor thanked Tiu Triet for helping him obtain it. Tiu Triet realized the preceptor's rules came from the celestial Han seal, which was why he couldn't break this restricted area. Tiu Triet swung his sword, forcing the preceptor to retreat. Actually, the national preceptor had no way to deal with Tiu Triet, but clearly Tiu Triet's area was now confined to that square. The preceptor threatened to imprison Tiu Triet to death in that square. He took out some talismans, then attacked Tiu Triet and the Demon Emperor. Facing this situation, the Demon Emperor wanted to help Tiu Triet but couldn't. Her crimson lotus flames could refine space, but being confined in such a small area, she couldn't break out. Tiu Triet told the Demon Emperor, who says there's no way out. He pointed out how to break the deadlock. Previously, when the preceptor underestimated her, the demon emperor used earth harmonization to burn down the demon suppressing pagoda. But she said, based on this underground formation being the preceptors, I have no way to remove that talisman, unless someone comes up from underground to help us, but who can we find now? As she spoke, a red clawed hand emerged from the ground, piercing through the talisman. The demon emperor didn't know who this was. Tiu Triet said it was his pet. The creature smelled its master and said it struggled to run here from the myriad immortal sect. Tiu Triet waited for it to join him. He ordered it to destroy the preceptor's talisman. The pet obediently did as told. It made a huge hole in the ground. The preceptor rushed over, shouting, it's too late. At this point, the demon emperor would open that preceptor's eyes. Let him witness the true power of the demon emperor. She used her crimson lotus earth flames to control the preceptor, forcing him to kneel, unable to do anything. Tiu Triet told the demon emperor, the preceptor's restrictions require talismans to maintain. Now that he can't maintain them, this is our chance. Tiu Triet handed her his sword, signaling her to take revenge. The demon emperor took the sword and thanked him, but the sword squirmed in her hand. Tiu Triet realized Kuyutka was probably acting up, but Kuyutka said he wasn't the mischievous type. He just really hated the preceptor. The demon emperor charged at the preceptor with the sword. Tiu Triet said he'd help her. The demon emperor expressed her resentment. Wu Chongyun had slaughtered 8,000 of her race. Today, she would take blood for blood. As she finished speaking, the sword slashed at the preceptor, leaving him gasping on the ground. Finally, the demon emperor had avenged them. She avenged Ahu, Shaolu, Juwei. The demon race now had hope for the future. Tiu Triet's notification window popped up. Assisted in killing an early cultivator, rewarded 50 million souls. 9 yin diamond body successfully upgraded to level 7. 43 million 10,000 souls needed to upgrade to level 8. Reading those notifications, Tiu Triet thought this system was quite strict. The higher the level, the higher the upgrade requirement. But it made sense, as relying solely on his own abilities, he couldn't have killed the Wu Chongyun preceptor. After all, the preceptor was at the fate realm. Without the Crimson Lotus Sacred Flames, he couldn't have been eliminated. The Phoenix Demon Emperor started feeling dizzy with physical issues. Tiu Triet supported her. Realizing she had exhausted all her blood essence to depletion, she placed her hand on Tiu Triet's cheek, saying, You're a good person, Sir Tiu. You helped me see my people in a better light. I owe you, but I fear I can only repay you in the next life. Those were her final words before leaving. She promised not to drink the invigorating soup again and would forever remember Tiu Triet. Tiu Triet panicked, don't die so soon. He opened a box, taking out a spirit pill. But the Phoenix Demon Emperor's teeth were clenched shut, unable to take it. No other way to save her. 
Tiu Triet put the spirit pill in his mouth and pressed his lips against hers, transferring it to revive her. Of course, saving her life was the priority, not Tiu Triet taking advantage of the situation. Their lips met, and the Phoenix Demon Emperor gradually opened her eyes. She didn't know what Tiu Triet was doing. Perhaps he was seizing the opportunity, but Tiu Triet wasn't that kind of person. She realized he was feeding her medicine. Some demons witnessing this thought it was spring, the season of rebirth and animal mating. One even said the Phoenix Demon Emperor was being controlled by the demon Tiu Triet. But someone noticed the look of enjoyment on her face from Tiu Triet's kiss. Seeing that scene, he couldn't help but think of the image of the hero and fairy from Legends. As the Phoenix Demon Emperor didn't wake up, Tiu Triet planned to give her more spirit pills. A notification appeared, received the Demon Emperor's respect, awarded 10 million divine awareness, received the Demon Emperor's admiration, awarded 10 million divine awareness, received the Demon Emperor's affection, awarded another 10 million divine awareness. The Demon Emperor gradually woke up. Consuming so many spirit pills might have strong side effects. At this time, the Dao Heart Demonic Seed leveled up to the 7th tier, 73,687,000 divine awareness needed to reach the 8th tier. After waking up, the Demon Emperor expressed her gratitude for Tiu Triet's care. As expected of the Demon Emperor, her digestive ability was impressive, but it left Tiu Triet slightly disappointed. Finally, the demons had seen the light of day. They were determined to wipe out humanity to avenge themselves. Outside the demon suppressing pagoda, Jade Naga ordered everyone to fight to the death without retreat, not letting any demon escape. Everyone loudly voiced their agreement, showing their resolute will. The demon and human races clashed fiercely, both sides brimming with fighting spirit. Jade Naga charged at Celestial General Bingxian, but he dodged. Celestial General Bingxian declared, You vile humans imprisoned us for over 8,000 years. Today, we vent our grievances. He thrust his halberd at Jade Naga, but a hand grabbed the shaft from behind, saving her life. It was Tiu Triet's pet, saying Tiu Triet ordered humans, demons, and spirits to coexist peacefully, not harming humans. But the demons objected, having been imprisoned by humans for over 8,000 years. They cultivated for 8,000 years to avenge this grievance. The demons unanimously wanted to kill the humans for revenge, each expressing their resentment. Suddenly, a brilliant aura approached. It was a dragon's aura. Everyone backed away as the Phoenix Demon Emperor appeared with Tiu Triet, ordering all demons to stand down. But Celestial General Bingxian requested the Phoenix Demon Emperor to allow him to lead the demon army, to conquer the human race and unify the continent. The demons behind him unanimously agreed. However, the Phoenix Demon Emperor firmly declined, saying she had reached an agreement with the human emperor's successor. For humans, demons, and spirits to coexist peacefully on the continent from now on, she added, there will be no more enmity. If any demon harms or eats humans, they will be imprisoned in the demon suppressing pagoda, with sentences depending on the severity of their crime. The former demon king celestial general Bingxian, for attempting to assassinate the demon suppressor Jade Naga, was sentenced to 80 years imprisonment, and a fine of 10,000 spirit stones. Tiu Triet's pet took him away despite his protests about returning to the pagoda. Seeing this, the other demons unanimously obeyed the order instead of fighting. They didn't want to go back to the demon suppressing pagoda. On the other side, Tiu Triet held Jade Naga's hand, asking if she was okay since protecting humanity required the demon suppressor. Jade Naga just said she was fine and politely thanked Tiu Triet. Tiu Triet found her gratitude distant, so he said since they got along so well, they should get closer in the future. Hearing this, Jade Naga's eyes lit up with joy. She shyly asked Tiu Triet if the bridal procession was coming soon, and if he would run away. But Tiu Triet knew that if he ran away, Jade Naga would be held responsible. He couldn't be so heartless. Seeing them chatting intimately, the Phoenix Demon Emperor interrupted with a cough as a signal. She said they had just defeated the Eternal Demon, but the Martial Emperor wouldn't let it go. The bridal procession was coming soon. She advised Tiu Triet to leave quickly while she handled the rest. But Tiu Triet didn't want to leave the Phoenix Demon Emperor to face the enemy alone. The Martial Emperor's profound power was unfathomable. Tiu Triet wouldn't let her risk herself alone. 
Hearing this, the Phoenix Demon Emperor replied, Now that humans, demons, and spirits have allied, we will advance and retreat together. Tiu Triet gestured for her not to say more, entering the pagoda to restore his divine armor before the martial emperor arrived. Inside, Tiu Triet thought it was fortunate the damage wasn't too severe. The heaven ceiling stamp could alter time and space. As Tiu Triet pondered, something emerged, saying, Master, you saved all the demons. I volunteered to be your steed to express my gratitude. Seeing Tiu Triet's surprise, the Phoenix Demon Emperor explained, That beast is Ahu, the Demon Emperor's mount. Hearing he would ride the Demon Emperor's mount, Tiu Triet found it quite amusing. Outside the Demon Suppressing Pagoda, the bridal procession awaited the eternal demon's arrival. After waiting in vain, the martial emperor descended into the pagoda himself. He sensed remnants of demonic and spiritual energy, indicating a great battle had occurred. The eternal demon's delay made him wonder if something had happened, but he thought no matter what, no one in this continent could threaten him. The martial emperor pushed open the door to see who this reckless person was. Inside, he saw the phoenix demon emperor's back. She said she had been waiting for him for a long time. The martial emperor was delighted, thinking the phoenix demon emperor had finally come to her senses. It had been thousands of years since they last met. He told her to turn around so he could take a good look at her. The martial emperor's hand touched her shoulder, gesturing for her to face him. The phoenix demon emperor turned with an ugly face, a long nose, and a big smile, saying, Your majesty, I really need you. The martial emperor was startled, his eyes nearly popping out. After thousands of years, the phoenix demon emperor had changed so much. As the martial emperor was stunned by his new bride's strange appearance, she suddenly attacked him. While attacking, she scolded him, so you want to take a new bride every night, then kill her the next day making it into a thousand and one nights? The martial emperor's hand touched the phoenix demon emperor's chest and felt something odd. He realized it was actually Tiu Triet disguised as her to trick him. You dare to attack the martial emperor from behind. I'll make you pay for this, Tiu Triet. As his aura raged, thousands of phoenix feathers flew towards the martial emperor's back. He realized it was too late. These were the phoenix demon emperor's feathers. She used the sacred lotus fire to trap him inside. The martial emperor clutched his head and screamed vowing not to spare the phoenix demon emperor and Tiu Triet. It's no use. He's about to explode. Tiu Triet activated the chaos suppressing great formation, blasting the martial emperor out of the pagoda. A massive explosion occurred. The system announced, successfully assisted in killing a celestial realm expert, rewarded 30 million souls. 13 million 10,000 more souls needed to upgrade to the 8th level. Tiu Triet thought, the martial emperor was indeed a celestial expert. Witnessing this terrifying explosion, more powerful than an atomic bomb, he couldn't help but exclaim, oh my god. But unfortunately, that was just one of the martial emperor's avatars. Tiu Triet and the phoenix demon emperor had used all their ultimate skills just to destroy that avatar. Next time, if the real martial emperor came, the demon suppressing pagoda might not be able to imprison him. The phoenix demon emperor said she had only recovered to the celestial realm stage and might need to undergo reincarnation to regain her peak power. That way, when the real martial emperor appears, there will be someone to fight him, she added. Tiu Triet agreed to help the phoenix demon emperor undergo reincarnation to restore her full strength upon hearing her suggestion. He would assist her reincarnation process to regain her power. In the palace of the Gen Wu Xi'an dynasty, the martial emperor sat on the golden throne, coughing violently. He couldn't believe that Tiu Triet and Feng Wu dared to plot to assassinate his incarnated self. In the late tribulation period, General Dong Ba Tian, a knight at the peak of his tribulation, clasped his hands and said to the martial emperor, I vow to eliminate those demons for your majesty. Beside him, Gong Yangxin, a senior official at the peak of his tribulation period, also clasped his hands and asked to go and eliminate the demon race. The martial emperor, sitting high on the golden throne, replied, whether demon or human race, they must all be destroyed. If the heavenly phenomena sense a major shift in the cosmic forces, it will trigger a tribulation of thunder. The martial emperor's wounds from his previous tribulation had not fully healed, so he was uncertain if he could withstand the fourth level of the thunder tribulation. The martial emperor continued, you too have consumed many demon pills with me, though at the divine speed level, you still carry many karmic obstacles. When the time comes, the thunder tribulation will be immense. Losing military power is one thing, but I fear someone may die. Hearing the emperor's concerns, General Dong Ba Tian clasped his hands, vowing to live and die with his majesty. The senior official also agreed to protect the emperor, 
as his majesty had protected him through previous tribulations. Seeing the loyalty of his two close subordinates, the martial emperor was very pleased. He ordered them to eliminate Tiyu Triet and Feng Wu at all costs. The two of them nodded in unison, obeying his majesty's command. At the demon suppressing pagoda, Tiyu Triet was rummaging through piles of gold, silver, and jewels. He found the mysterious box from the celestial palace, but it looked like something sold at a street market. The reward was found. Inside were 1,000 body refining pills, 1,000 bamboo root pills, 1,000 minor restoration pills, and 100 major restoration pills. Such a reward seemed intended to sustain the entire demon race. A new mission appeared, location at the Imperial Palace of the Great Sha Kingdom, Celestial Palace level, 100 day time limit. Punishment is reversion to larval form. Note, unable to teleport, so find your own way there. Seeing the new mission, Tiu Triet wondered, what is the Great Sha Kingdom? In this continent, only the Gen Wu Celestial Dynasty is considered a country. He felt this mission was mocking him. In the eastern city, the Phoenix Demon Emperor and Tiu Triet stood on a rooftop conversing. Tiu Triet pointed towards the eastern city, telling the Phoenix Demon Emperor, this place just went through a plague and fire. Now it's a desolate wasteland. The East Sea's troops, the Tai Luan's remnants, make this a good place to live. Atop the pagoda, Tiu Triet ordered his pet to increase the demon suppressing pagoda's height. Unfortunately, its heavenly seal imprint had not reached the highest level. Otherwise, it could freely adjust the demon suppressing pagoda's size without this laborious effort that left it breathless. Tiu Triet and his pet were moving the demon suppressing pagoda, followed by Jade Yila and a large group of demons and humans. A while later, people below saw a moving pagoda, panicking as they thought it was a demon. Tiu Triet had returned, his beauties standing to welcome him home calling him your excellency or Tiu Lang as they joyfully ran to embrace him. The Phoenix Demon Emperor and Jade Yila stood behind, somewhat speechless witnessing Tiu Triet's philandering ways with his harem. Tiu Triet noticed Wu Aoi looked thinner lately. She shyly blushed at his concern for her. In the eastern city, Tiu Triet rode his demonic horse A Hu, gathering everyone to make an announcement. He boldly declared, from now on, I shall rule alone. I want to build a harmonious community for humans, demons and spirits to coexist. No one can harm any human or demon. No evil deeds, theft or rape shall be tolerated. Now, the celestial and mortal paths are equal. All beings are equal. Everyone below knelt down in unison. We will obey your command. Lu Shuang became the governor of the eastern city, ruling over all within. End of translation. Jade Yi Le was appointed to lead the demon suppressing pagoda, governing the demon race. Wu Aoi was appointed to lead the spirits, managing spirit cultivators. The three appointed by Tiu Triet to lead acknowledged their roles, but the phoenix demon emperor seemed upset about something. Despite preaching equality, the demon race held no high positions. Did Tiu Triet look down upon the demon race's intelligence? He was deceiving them. Seeing the Phoenix Demon Emperor's anger, Tiu Triet tried to appease her. He wanted to value them, but where was the demon race's high wisdom? Tiu Triet promised to ensure the Phoenix Demon Emperor would have a position second only to him in the future. Hearing Tiu Triet's appeasement and promise, the Phoenix Demon Emperor found this idea acceptable for now. In the study room, KCA and Tiu Triet were researching information information about the Great Sha Kingdom. She said she was over 16,000 years old and had lived in the continent since childhood, but had never heard of the Great Sha Kingdom before. She had heard of the Demon Kingdom, Celestial Demon Kingdom and others, but not the Great Sha Kingdom. The Celestial Being sect was one of the oldest sects, housing all kinds of ancient records. If they couldn't find any trace of the Great Sha Kingdom, then there was no hope elsewhere. If the Great Sha Kingdom couldn't be found, would Tiu Triet really have to turn into an ugly insect? That would be too cruel. KCA said, if we can't find the Great Sha Kingdom, then we can just create one ourselves. Hearing her suggestion of creating one, Tiu Triet thought it sounded like an exploit or cheat. She continued, saying Tiu Triet now had the capital to establish a kingdom, with the human race's heavenly seal imprint controlling the cosmic energies. The demon suppressing pagoda governing life and death of the demon race, as well as the celestial demon order and war god order of spirit cultivators. If Tiu Triet just gave the order, the four seas would submit, and the nine continents would celebrate, with humans, demons and spirits all obeying him. Simply put, wouldn't the great Sha kingdom be established? Hearing K Sa's plan, Tiu Triet was nosebleeding from excitement. It was brilliant, such a great idea. 
Tiu Triet began his philandering ways, pulling KCA into his embrace and sweet-talking her. He said when he became emperor, he would make the female demon her empress, and point to the continent, saying this was the territory he gifted her, but the empress had to let him claim his reward first with a kiss. As Tiu Triet tried to kiss KCA, she turned back into a sword, slapping him in the face. Ouch. KCA is so vicious, slapping me for just a kiss. KCA scolded to you Triette. You lecher, trying to seduce me with sweet words. You think I don't know you're using status to lure me? I don't need that empress position. Scolded, Tiu Triette put on a pitiful look, explaining to KCA, You wrong me. I'm alone in this strange world, with no family or friends. It's only you by my side day and night. I've already seen you as my closest kin. But KCA was so guarded against him, seeing him as a lecher. Seeing his pitiful face, KCA softened, realizing that no matter how powerful, he was just an overgrown child of over 20 years old. KCA thought, he had already seen her as his emotional support, yet she treated him this way, not very womanly at all. KCA consoled Tiu Triet, who embraced her tightly. KCA admitted her fault, saying she didn't want the Empress role to limit Tiu Triet's better choices. Tiu Triet didn't know who KCA thought deserved the Empress role more than her. KCA said it was the Phoenix Demon Emperor. Humans and demons on the continent were not truly the three races, and spirit cultivators were not the spirit race either. This related to the celestial demon war 10,000 years ago. She mentioned in the past, when the demon emperor self-detonated his demon pill to protect other demons, the violent explosion caused space to collapse, utterly destroying the demon realm. Other demons used the spatial rift to flee to the mortal realm, forming the current mixed human demon continent. The heavenly way took pity on the demons, opening a path of ascension, allowing ascended demons to join the ranks of celestials in the celestial realms. KCA continued, since the continent constantly had humans and demons ascending, it was as if the celestial realms had a stable supply of new recruits. The demon race's attacks continuously failed, reaching an impasse. As the heavenly way suppressed him, the demon emperor could not enter the continent, so he supported a representative in the mortal realm, to attract followers, teaching them demonic cultivation arts. This is the origin of spirit cultivators on the continent, and KCA was the demon emperor's representative. These spirit cultivators called themselves celestial demons, while cultivators called them spirit cultivators. Currently, Tiu Triet with his order tallies is also a spirit cultivator representative. In summary, KCA told Tiu Triet these old matters he wanted to know. The Phoenix Demon Emperor is not just the Demon Emperor. She is the ruler of the demon realm, currently in exile in the mortal realm. To put it simply, the Phoenix Demon Emperor is a noble elder who can negotiate on equal terms with the Demon Emperor, the Human Emperor, and the Celestial Emperor. The Celestial Emperor is the ruler of the six realms, whom the Phoenix must obey. But she, the Demon Emperor, the Naga King, and the Underworld King converse without issue. The Demon Emperor doesn't even respect the Celestial Emperor, so how could he look favorably upon the exiled demon race? Although the demons are declining, they are still the rulers of the demon realm. If Tiu Triet's Great Sha Kingdom could take the Phoenix Demon Emperor as Empress, the Heavenly Way would provide some protection for Tiu Triet. After hearing what KCA said, Tiu Triet understood one thing. The Empress of his Great Kingdom must be the Demon Empress. Next, Tiu Triet headed for the door, saying he would go propose to the Phoenix Demon Emperor. But as soon as he opened the door, he met Miao Shen, who immediately noticed his hurried demeanor. At the spirit transcending gate, Miao Shen used her foot to close the door, then approached Tiu Triet. She scolded him for just going out once but bringing back two beauties, asking if the women here weren't good enough. How dare Tiu Triet hide from her to flirt outside, so she would have to use her feminine charms to make him remember. After a passionate session with Miao Shen on the bed, Tiu Triet's back was no longer fine. As expected of the joyful intimacy sect, Tiu Triet was almost defeated by Miao Shen, who sat on the bed laughing mischievously. As he was about to leave, he met Lu Shuang outside. Shuang Shuang felt she came at an inopportune time. Tiu Triet didn't understand what was going on. Miao Shen was pleased, revealing she had called Shuang Shuang here. Then Miao Shen took out some great elixir pills, leaving Tiu Triet wondering what his senior martial sister was going to do with them. Miao Shen swiftly stuffed the great elixir pills into Shuang Shuang's mouth, also instructing her to punish the irresponsible Tiu Triet. After swallowing the great elixir pills, Shuang Shuang's body began burning hot. Miao Shen laughed mischievously, Tiu Lang, 
You wouldn't want to just watch Shuang Shuang explode and die, would you? Seeing this, Tiu Triet didn't know what to say. He had to admit Miao Shen was daring to use this method on him. Before leaving Shuang Shuang with Tiu Triet, Miao Shen left some parting words. She instructed Shuang Shuang to demonstrate her full skills, so that Tiu Lang could experience her delights. Thanking her senior sister, Shuang Shuang got to work. With her burning hot body, she pressed against Tiu Triet suggestively. Your Excellency, I'm here for you. Undeterred by Shuang Shuang's heat, Tiu Triet replied, Come on in. Sometime later, Tiu Triet emerged from the room, back almost broken. Miao Shen even taught Lu Shuang the great intimacy arts, defeating Tiu Triet twice over. Suddenly the Phoenix Demon Emperor appeared, asking about Tiu Triet's trembling body. Tiu Triet's inner energy was depleted, without any strength left, as if his Yuan Qi had been drained. The Phoenix Demon Emperor worried, did the Dragon Prince of the Marsh Clan come for Tiu Triet, leaving him in this sorry state? Tiu Triet sheepishly replied, No, I just overexerted myself cultivating. The Phoenix Demon Emperor arrived just as Tiu Triet had something to tell her. She was puzzled by Tiu Triet's expression, unsure of what he wanted to discuss. Tiu Triet explained that after careful consideration, he decided to establish the Great Sha Kingdom. As humans and demons must have proper legitimacy to coexist long term, therefore, the relationship between leaders like Tiu Triet and the Phoenix Demon Emperor must progress further. Hearing Tiu Triet mention progress further, the Phoenix Demon Emperor blushed shyly. Tiu Triet affirmed his words resolutely, indeed, only by making our relationship more intimate. We ensure lasting peace between humans and demons. The Phoenix Demon Emperor tensed up, hearing this, clenching her fists, indicating she would obey Tiu Triet. Tiu Triet then suggested a blood alliance, becoming sworn siblings. From now on, Tiu Triet and the Phoenix Demon Emperor would be siblings of different surnames. Though not born on the same day, month, or year, they vowed to die together, sharing joys and sorrows. Hearing this, the Phoenix Demon Emperor's attitude changed completely. She turned and left. The Phoenix Demon Emperor was tens of thousands of years old. She could be Tiu Triet's ancestor, but he wanted her as a younger sister instead. It was a daydream. At this moment, KCA appeared, angrily scolding Tiu Triet. Tiu Triet, you scoundrel, what nonsense are you saying? Seeing he had messed up, Tiu Triet froze and could only scratch his head. A while later, Tiu Triet went to the Phoenix Demon Emperor's room pleading for another chance to rephrase his words. But the two demon guards at the door blocked him, as the Phoenix Demon Emperor had ordered no one to enter. With nothing else to do at the spirit transcending gate, Tiu Triet left, writing a hu to the construction site of East Capital City to check on progress. Noticing Tiu Triet's worried look, a hu shared, My lord, don't fret. Our empress is just momentarily angry. To appease her, simply indulge her interests. Hearing interests, Tiu Triet asked a hu what the Phoenix Demon Emperor liked liked, receiving the answer, novels. Writing a novel shouldn't be too difficult. With your talents, you could write the Phoenix Demon Emperor an excellent novel. But Tiu Triet didn't know what genre to write, unsure of the Phoenix Demon Emperor's preferences. Ahu said, of course, the romance genre. Don't all female demons like that kind of thing? Like those popular Wa Mao novels among the demon race. Tiu Triet decided he would write an epic romance novel, guaranteed to make the Phoenix Demon Emperor kneel before him in tears. Ahu and Tiu Triet headed to the construction area of East Capital City. They saw a group of humans and demons arguing over something. No one was working, as some conflict had occurred. Humans and demons found it difficult to coexist harmoniously. The demons mocked the weak humans, saying they lacked even a rabbit's strength, yet received equal pay for little work. The humans argued back that the demons only followed the port's design and led carpenters' instructions made by humans. The builders were human too, so what great effort did the demons put in? Neither side would concede. The demons wanted to exterminate the humans, who in turn feared not the beastly demons. As they were about to fight, the demon suppressing Marshal Neil appeared, asking who dared cause trouble. Neil admonished the bickering demons and humans. Observing from behind, this scene seemed to give Tiu Triet an idea. He would not write an epic romance, but a love story between humans and demons instead. The next morning at the Phoenix Demon Emperor's palace, the demon princes were merrily discussing something. They talked about a romance novel where the protagonist in the Black Serpent transmission was purple hair. How thrilling that she secretly bore a child with a mortal. The Marsh clan's purple hair really knew how to write. Half of the strange tales of Liao Pavilion were love stories between fox spirits and humans too. The Phoenix Demon Emperor, lying on her bed, 
noticed the demon princes laughing and chatting merrily these days. Pink Hair brought a book that had captivated the demon race. The Phoenix Demon Emperor scolded her, asking why her second senior sister and Chu Feng Lu dared not see her. How audacious. Hearing the Phoenix Demon Emperor's raised voice, Pink Hair knelt, Your Majesty, please calm your anger. Chu Feng Lu and your second senior sister received orders from the great Sha King Tiyu Triet to lead troops suppressing regions in Thunder Continent. Hearing this enraged the Phoenix Demon Emperor, as she had not agreed to help Tiyu Triet, yet he dared issue false orders. Tiyu Triet must be dealt with. As she spoke, the Phoenix Demon Emperor picked up the book, wondering what captivated the demon race so. This is merely like those sailing boat and immortal herb novels. But the more she read, the more intrigued she became by details like Golden Water Lily, empathizing with Black Thorn Chant's feelings. The days in Thunder Peak Tower mirrored the Phoenix Demon Emperor's own imprisonment in the Demon Suppressing Tower. The tragic ending left her wanting answers from the author, listed as a member of the demon race. The Phoenix Demon Emperor never expected her demon race to have such a brilliant writer. She had to meet them. She ordered Pink Hair to investigate the author's background. After the investigation, Pink Hair told the Phoenix Demon Emperor that the author was currently storytelling at this tea house, where she could meet him. The Phoenix Demon Emperor entered the tea house and heard someone's voice narrating a story. He spoke of Zhao Zilong's Chang Ban Pao formation with 36 deadly moves that killed soldiers and shattered armies, a true tiger general. Chong Ban Pao was slain, his troops scattered, befitting a generation's fierce commander. The Phoenix Demon Emperor was surprised to see humans and demons coexisting so harmoniously. She realized it was Tiu Triet storytelling. Tiu Triet continued, but Chong Ban Pao was no spent lamp without oil. As beautiful as a flower or jade, top ranked at the Dihong Institute. How could she allow Zhao Zilong to enter and leave as he pleased? Meeting Chong Ban Pao, her body took flight, two jade hands offering beetle nuts. Tiu Triet's captivating storytelling drew a large, admiring crowd. But the Phoenix Demon Emperor scolded him. How tasteless to use such lowly tricks to deceive me. Tiu Triet respectfully joined his palms before her. Demon Emperor, greetings. Seeing Tiu Triet's feigned act made the Phoenix Demon Emperor chuckle awkwardly. Tiu Triet and the Phoenix Demon emperor stood on the tea house, looking down at the bustling street below. The human and demon races coexist far better now than before. Even you can't deny this sight. The best way to unite is through marriage. Saying this, Tiu Triet turned and embraced a large bouquet, formally proposing to the Phoenix Demon Emperor. Tiu Triet, the human emperor's successor, officially proposed marriage to the Phoenix Demon Emperor of the Demon Race, hoping she would agree to become his Demon Empress. The Phoenix Demon Emperor was flustered and surprised by this scene. She did not know what merits she had for Tiu Triet to value her so highly. The Phoenix Demon Emperor humbly said, I grew up ugly and my cultivation is low. I'm fundamentally unqualified to be Tiu Triet's Empress. But it seemed she was being too modest. How could she be called ugly? How could her cultivation be considered low? Her identity was the Demon Empress, at the early stage of immortality, possessing supreme skills like the Phoenix Dance, Sky Soaring Dance, and Sacred Lotus Fire. Tiu Triet began displaying his romantic talents. One hand gently lifted the Phoenix Demon Emperor's face as he tenderly said, Meeting you was my life's mistake. Had I known you were in the Demon Suppressing Tower, I certainly would not have entered, avoiding this loss of soul. For the days the Phoenix Demon Emperor ignored Tiu Triet, he felt heartbroken, preferring death to life. Tiu Triet was utterly dejected, uncaring about everything knowingly pursuing the poisonous Phoenix Demon Emperor. Moved by Tiu Triet's confession, the Phoenix Demon Emperor agreed, promising to become his Empress. To become Tiu Triet's Demon Empress, never to part. Tiu Triet gently kissed the Phoenix Demon Emperor's lips, sealing their love. A Hu and Pink Hair joyfully applauded this new blossoming romance. Seeing everyone present, the Phoenix Demon Emperor felt shy, chiding them lightly, you all wait for me. Tiu Triet pulled the Phoenix Demon Emperor into an embrace, doting on her. Aren't you happy? The Phoenix Demon Emperor gently replied, Yes, I'm very happy. The Great Sha Kingdom was established. Envoys were dispatched, a proclamation issued to all under heaven. The Celestial Approved Emperor's Edict read, I accept heaven's mandate to establish the Great Sha Kingdom, with its capital in Dongdai City. The Imperial Palace is in Zushin City. One month later, an inauguration ceremony was held, inviting the leaders of the Nine Continent Sects. Simultaneously, the human and demon armies of Great Sha began punishing the Nine Continents. The Harmony 
sect of Thunder Continent, Heavenly Demon Sect of Sea Continent, and Heartless Valley of Terrace Continent were named first. Other demon cultivators gradually joined, as did demons from internal territories. The human demon forces overthrew the rule of the previous Chanjen dynasty, declaring allegiance to Great Sha. The two major orthodox sects, Liu Yin Sword Sect of Flower Continent and Wan Xian Religion of Cloud Continent, also immediately joined Great Sha after its proclamation. The internal snake race and other demon races later joined after being subdued. In just one month, five of the nine continents on the Moonstar Continent had fallen under the Great Sha Kingdom's rule. Only the the central and incense continents, long controlled by the previous Chanjen dynasty, and the sea continent, where the Danhe sect refused allegiance, remained. The Wajin sect of the eastern continent brought a coral treasure to pay respects to the demon empress. The Kilin Gate of the Cloud Continent brought the Supreme Spirit Kilin Treasure Sword to seek an audience. These were the Zhao Lingfeng and Yuan Anhao clans. A meeting between their families could influence the entire continent's direction. Their formidable strength, with just a flick, could wipe out ordinary sects, especially Zhao Lingfeng, a once in a millennium genius of his clan. Now not only a Yuan Ying expert but considered the heir. Zhao Lingfeng presented gifts, saying they were to propose to the demon empress, 100,000 top-grade spirit stones, 10,000 mid-grade spirit herbs, 1,000 minor pellet pills, 100 body transformation pills, 10 boxes of pearls. His gifts left everyone in awe, utterly shocking, especially the body transformation pills, for demons, even better than immortality pills. The Zhao family's power was heaven-defying. With such sincerity, the demon empress would surely open the door for him. Inside, Pink Hair was asking the Phoenix Demon Emperor if she should admit them. But the Phoenix Demon Emperor refused, unless they came to participate in the Grand Ascension Ceremony. She had already rejected them earlier. It was all thanks to Tiu Triet's actions, writing so many romantic dialogues between humans and demons, changing the atmosphere greatly, making all human males want to marry demon females as an honor. But it was also because the beautiful and single Phoenix Demon Emperor attracted so many suitors. Unable to enter, Zhao Lingfeng grumbled outside, what do you mean by this? I brought so many gifts. Even if you refuse, shouldn't I at least have the chance to see the demon emperor's face? Is there really someone better than me in this world? Then an announcement came of the human emperor's tribute arriving. The dragon and tiger tribute, an impressive face, but could it match the wealthy Za family? The gifts included. 1 million top grade spirit stones, 100,000 body transformation pills, 10,000 bamboo spirit pills, 10,000 minor pellet pills, 1,000 major pellet pills, 100 demon spirit books and paintings, and many other accompanying books. Such grand gifts, the major pellet pills alone surpassed the entire Za family's tribute, plus so many lost demon race treasures, truly priceless artifacts. As expected of the human emperor, his grandeur commands respect. The phoenix demon emperor waited inside, until finally Tiu Triet arrived. She quickly ran out to open the door. Everyone witnessed the phoenix demon emperor's beauty. They all exclaimed that she was truly peerless beauty. Even the world's number one beauty wouldn't be an overstatement. Tiu Triet gently approached the phoenix demon emperor, saying, I'm here. Everyone respectfully paid obeisance to the human emperor, except that Za fellow who was arrogant. He mocked, so what if Tiu Triet proclaimed himself human emperor? The Za family is the number one aristocratic family. Don't think you can take the sea continent from us. Hearing Za Lingfeng mention aristocratic family, Tiu Triet couldn't help but laugh. It seems the people of the Moon Star continent lack proper reverence for the human emperor. Perhaps Tiu Triet must appear before all under heaven to make them truly submit. The Phoenix Demon Emperor was overjoyed and rushed to embrace Tiu Triet. It had been so long since he came. She missed him terribly. Indeed, Tiu Triet had been busy preparing for the Grand Ascension Ceremony, so he couldn't visit the Phoenix Demon Emperor often. Everyone witnessed their intimacy. The Human Emperor and Demon Empress were together. They had lost their chance, or rather, they simply couldn't compete. At the Thunder Continent Pass, Dong Ba Xian was leading troops to attack the rebel forces in the Western Continent when orders suddenly came. In three days, Tiu Triet would hold the ascension ceremony in Zushan City. All the sects of the Moon Star Continent had gathered there. The commander immediately changed his plans. He ordered the troops to return to Zushan City, kill Tiu Triet, and conquer the Great Sha Kingdom. 
As his order ended, the soldiers behind him shouted in unison, Kill Tiu Triet. Conquer the great Shaw at the Dian Yuan sect. The leader contacted the Za family, saying, My troops will attack Donghai City at noon. At that time, the Demon Empress Phoenix Demon Emperor and the experts will surely go to reinforce, providing an opportunity to deal with Tiu Triet. The rewards promised by the Emperor will be given in full to the Za family if you succeed. The Wolf Demon King, Wang Zan Bane, and Zha Lingfeng expressed gratitude, shouting long live the martial emperor. Then they made plans. The wolf demon king, having just completed his fusion, could handle Tiu Triet's beloved beast. Wang Zan Bing would take care of Tiu Triet's dragon. Zha Lingfeng clasped his hands before them. This matter rests on you too. As for Tiu Triet, he would handle him personally. He looked down on Tiu Triet as just a golden dan cultivator, even calling him a dead dog. Zha Lingfeng imagined that after succeeding, the Zha family would become the number one aristocratic family on the Moon Star continent. The Zan Tian sect would be the number one major sect, and the Wolf Demon King would become the Demon Emperor. A powerful spear led the charging troops into the city. The commander introduced himself as Dong Ba Xian, a cavalry general of the Chanzhen dynasty, demanding Emperor Tiu Triet come out to face execution. Tiu Triet and the Phoenix Demon Emperor sat on the golden throne in the city, along with other experts, calculating their strategy. Tiu Triet thought before that he considered Dian Kong the number one expert under heaven, but unexpectedly there were so many hidden experts in the world. The Phoenix Demon Emperor continued, Dong Ba Xian's martial prowess is formidable, likely having passed a tribulation, it's best if I go and receive him. The Phoenix Demon Emperor stood up, ready for battle. Everyone cautioned her to be careful. She confidently assured them, I absolutely won't let the Great Shaw Kingdom die in its infancy. After the Phoenix Demon Emperor and the other experts left to face Dong Ba Xian, only Tiu Triet and his two beasts remained. Tiu Triet called out, Those fellows, come out now. Everyone's gone far away. It seems Tiu Triet had detected them long ago. The three, Zha Lingfeng, Wang Zan Bane, and the Wolf Demon King appeared before Tiu Triet. Then, they began their pre-planned scheme. Zan Bane and the Wolf Demon King leapt into the air, seeking their targets. Below, Zha Lingfeng reminded them to proceed according to plan, capture first, then kill, and don't mistake their opponents. Tiu Triet smiled confidently. You want to use your strengths to defeat me? What a futile effort. Tiu Triet pointed two fingers at the Wolf Demon King instantly killing him on the spot. Who said Tiu Triet was at the Golden Dan Realm? A deceiver. He killed a separating spirit demonic realm expert with a single strike. Just how formidable is his actual cultivation after all? Killing a separating spirit demonic realm cultivator rewarded Tiu Triet with 5 million soul essences. Although Zan Bing didn't know how Tiu Triet concealed his true power, he had cultivated the Zan Tian adamantine force after painstaking practice for thousands of years. The Zan Tian sect was an ancient sect on the Moon Star continent, existing 20,000 years before Tiu Triet. Yet's flowing cloud sword Dao. If Dian Kong wasn't dead, he wouldn't dare fight him. Yet he arrogantly declared that today, Tiu Triet would close his eyes as a sacrifice. With that, Zan Bing charged at Tiu Triet, shouting, Accept death. But Tiu Triet showed no fear, standing still with a smile. Zan Bing was dumbfounded. Why wasn't Tiu Triet affected by his technique? For fairness, Tiu Triet used the reunion technique, gently flicking Wang Zan Bing's forehead causing him to explode into powder. Zha Lingfeng watched, his face turning pale. With just one move, Tiu Triet turned the separating spirit expert to powder. Notifications popped up continuously. Killed separating spirit expert, rewarded 10 million soul essences. Congratulations, host has successfully upgraded. Currently at the 8th level of the 9 Yang adamantine body. 98 million 10,000 more soul essences needed to reach the 9th level. Thunder tribulation clouds appeared around Tiu Triet, startling Zha Lingfeng. Just what realm was he in? But Tiu Triet frankly said as he drew his sword, Golden Dan Immortal Venerable, no deception. Fearing death, Zha Lingfeng knelt before Tiu Triet to surrender. He said from now on, the Zha family would be subjects of the Great Sha Kingdom, eternally loyal. Long live the Emperor. Long live the Emperor. Tiu Triet scolded him, saying if he wanted to contend for the throne, that was fine. But how dare he contend for a woman with Tiu Triet? Despite Zha Liangfeng's surrender, Tiu Triet couldn't stand it and killed him with one strike. Seeing her master kill Zha Lingfeng, Bat Ling finally spoke up. 
The Zha family's ancestor Zha Wen Dao was known as the continent's divine immortal. Since he cultivated outside, no one on the moon star continent knew of him. With his skills, he would be more than capable of killing Tiu Triet. If she had spoken sooner, Tiu Triet wouldn't have invited more trouble. But she had only just remembered. Zha Wen Dao was neighbors with the dragon race. When young, she saw him undergo a tribulation at sea. But it had been so long ago, she couldn't recall the details clearly. From Bat Ling's demeanor, this Zha Wen Dao seemed formidable. But Tiu Triet reassured Bat Ling's fearful look, saying, When the enemy comes, we fight. When the waters rise, we damn them. We should go to Mount Dong Tai and deal with that Dong Ba Xian. Saying that, Bat Ling transformed into a dragon for Tiu Triet to ride, not forgetting to call for the demon Heavenly Wheel to follow quickly. At the eastern suburbs of Dong Tai City, the Phoenix Demon Emperor had transformed into a phoenix to battle Dong Ba Xian. In her prime, the Phoenix Demon Emperor might have been able to fight back, but now she could not match Dong Ba Xian. One strike from Dong Ba Xian pierced straight through the Phoenix Demon Emperor's phoenix form, causing her immense pain. Behind her, Lu Shang, Miao Xin, and A Hu all rushed forward together, but they did not know their own limits. For Dong Ba Xian's power was immense. He used his weapon to pierce through the Phoenix Demon Emperor's shoulder, causing her to bleed profusely. Emboldened by his victory, he mocked the Phoenix Demon Emperor. Don't think escaping the demon suppressing pagoda means you can face the martial emperor. But vain delusions. He insulted the demon race, saying it was an honor for the phoenix demon emperor's demon race to be enslaved by the martial emperor, and they should be grateful instead of rebelling. As he finished speaking and prepared to finish off the phoenix demon emperor, a beam of light shot towards him, forcing Dong Ba Xian to retreat. Such powerful sword intent, who could this be? It was none other than Tiu Triet. The Phoenix Demon Emperor was overjoyed that Tiu Triet had arrived in time. Everyone in the world mocked Tiu Triet as just an ignorant Golden Dan cultivator. Wanting to recklessly face a tribulation expert was simply seeking death. Yet they agreed to honor Tiu Triet as the human emperor just for the heavenly demon seal. Then Tiu Triet considered himself formidable. Dong Ba Xian was searching to kill Tiu Triet, and now he appeared like this, practically delivering himself. Dong Ba Xian leapt up and used his weapon to strike directly at Tiu Triet. At this moment, Tiu Triet thought, this is the nation founding battle of the Great Sha Kingdom, and also the battle to establish the human emperor's authority. If Tiu Triet did not win, the Great Sha Kingdom would collapse before its founding, and Tiu Triet would lose his chance to complete his mission, so he must win this battle. Tiu Triet rode the dragon up into the sky, using the human skill descending righteous thunder. But how could such a meager skill affect Dong Ba Xian? Dong Ba Xian stood below spinning his staff to create a shielding formation to block Tiu Triet's technique. As expected of a tribulation expert, Tiu Triet's sword energy could not break through his true chi. It seemed Tiu Triet had to go all out. Tiu Triet unleashed a 40-meter sword, the great sword rebirth from the nine swords of Shu Luo Cloud. Powerful sword energy, Tiu Triet had succeeded in gaining Dong Ba Xian's attention. Dong Ba Xian thrust his staff into the ground, clasped his hands together. This was his battle formation. Dong Ba Xian's killing intent was intense. If Tiu Triet fought within his formation, he could not win. But Tiu Triet still decided to charge straight into his formation. Surely he had made his own plans. Seeing Tiu Triet enter, Dong Ba Xian thought he would surely die this time. Dong Ba Xian attacked Tiu Triet from behind. Tiu Triet reacted but the time was too short, causing Tiu Triet to falter and fall down. Dong Ba Xian sat on his horse, a triumphant look as he prepared to deliver the final blow to kill Tiu Triet. But as Dong Ba Xian's staff thrust towards Tiu Triet, an immortal armor appeared. If the Golden Dan Peak couldn't defeat Dong Ba Xian, then he would advance his realm. Tiu Triet raised his hands and chanted to break through. Tiu Triet was undergoing realm breakthrough to the Yuan Ying stage. Late Yuan Ying, Yuan Ying Peak, directly to the outgoing formation stage. Not good. At this moment, Dong Ba Xian's formation was shattered by Tiu Triet's immense power, suddenly breaking through ten realms at once. No wonder Miao Xin saw the man in him. Tiu Triet dared to confront a tribulation expert head on. Truly extraordinary. Wasn't this man the strongest in the Moonstar continent? Dong Ba Xian witnessed from behind. In the blink of an eye he had reached the realm separation stage. Even the Golden Dan was this difficult to deal with? If Dong Ba Xian let Tiu Triet continue breaking through, 
would he be able to stop him? Without much thought, Dong Ba Xian thrust his staff at the seated, tribulating Tiu Triet and shouted loudly, Don't blame me for being vile, it's all for the martial emperor's domain. But Tiu Triet grabbed the staff's tip and snapped it. This is the million-year-old dragon bone staff, one of the supreme ancient weapons. But Tiu Triet didn't care whether it was a treasured or regular weapon. He directly slapped Dong Ba Xian in the face. The powerful force sent Dong Ba Xian flying far away, making him wonder if this was truly the strength an ordinary person like Tiu Triet should possess. Everyone witnessing the scene was astonished, eyes and mouths wide open at the terrifying power Tiu Triet displayed. The battle continued, after Tiu Triet struck Dong Ba Xian flying into the mountain wall. But don't think that was the end, for it was only the beginning. Dong Ba Xian had touched Tiu Triet's limit, which was that Tiu Triet's woman must die. No matter how he begged for his life, Tiu Triet struck him until his tendons snapped and bones shattered before stopping. At this point, Dong Ba Xian's soul tried to flee but was caught by Tiu Triet. It wasn't that easy to escape. Tiu Triet then turned to the demon Heavenly Wheel and rewarded it with Dong Ba Xian's living soul. For demon beasts love this the most. Dong Ba Xian's soul went straight into the mouth of Tiu Triet's pet, which swallowed it while thanking its master for the reward. Killing the number one late tribulation expert earned Tiu Triet a reward of 3 billion soul fragments. Everyone who witnessed the bloody battle was astonished. The human emperor was this powerful, and even devoured the person. It's good that the demon clan surrendered early, or who knows what torture they would have faced. Receiving respect from the demon clan, demon cultivators and orthodox cultivators were each rewarded 10 million spirit awareness. Tiu Triet boldly declared, you all still haven't surrendered? Do you want to wage war against your emperor? At this, the soldiers knelt down and shouted loudly, long live the emperor. For subjugating 100,000 soldiers of the martial immortal dynasty, he was rewarded 10 million spirit awareness. Tiu Triet was still 3,368 levels away from the 8th floor, requiring 700,000 spirit awareness. Choosing this was not worth it today. So Tiu Triet decided to ascend the throne here. Phoenix danced forward and presented Tiu Triet with the emperor's crown. Tiu Triet ascended the throne and boldly declared, I swear here in the name of the emperor, I shall open up new frontiers, pacify the four directions, and establish the root of my human race for eternity. When I die, I will become a dragon soul to protect my great kingdom's prosperity forever without decline. Let the sun, moon, heaven, earth, immortals, demons, ghosts and gods bear witness to this oath. Everyone knelt and clasped their hands. Long live the emperor. Long live. Long long live. The system announced. Great kingdom founded successfully. Rewarded 40 million spirit awareness. Upgraded demonic heart seed to 8th floor. The system confirmed the login location was the Great Kingdom's Imperial Palace. This system could even build a respawn point. Indeed, the more you play, the more expensive it gets. The benevolent and upright Demon King Phoenix Dance was appointed by Tiu Triet as the Demon Queen. The incomparably beautiful Miao Xin was appointed as the Demon Consort, Willow Mist, the Graceful Lady, was appointed as the Concubine. Tiger King was appointed as the Tiger Guard General. Demon Heavenly Wheel as the Guardian Grand General, and Gao Bat Ling as the Flying Dragon General. The three of them knelt down, grateful for Tiu Triet's grace. Heavenly Dao's aura appeared in the sky. With such strong national aura, everyone's cultivation improved by a few levels. Miao Shen unconsciously entered the realm unification stage, while Willow Mist had just awakened her talents. So far behind Miao Shen, she was now much better. Miao Shen turned and advised Wu Yu, seize opportunities, don't waste your superior talents. The future of demon cultivators rests on you. Thunder tribulation appeared in the sky, it was time for the demon king to face it. After the death aura would be the thunder tribulation. This tribulation would likely have Phoenix Dance face six levels of thunder tribulation. Phoenix Dance went to Tiu Triet with her final words before the tribulation. Having received Tiu Triet's favor these past few days, Phoenix Dance had no regrets. If she didn't make it through, she asked Tiu Triet not to grieve too much. If Phoenix Dance could keep part of her soul, she would certainly continue their destiny with Tiu Triet in the next life. But Tiu Triet wasn't worried at all. Isn't it just a thunder tribulation? Don't worry, he reassured Phoenix Dance. I only need to wave my hand and I can resolve it. Seeing Tiu Triet's intention to defy heaven, the thunder god wanted to see his skill of resolving the tribulation with a wave of his hand. Inside the demon suppressing pagoda, loud thunderclaps continuously erupted outside. It had reached the sixth level of thunder tribulation, 
but there was a lightning rod here, so there was no problem. Tiu Triet laughed mockingly, pointing to the sky and saying to the weak thunder god, if you're so capable, keep thundering. Provoked by his words, the thunder god angrily wanted to unleash more thunderbolts, but someone stopped him. He had reached the limit, continuing would violate heaven's laws. The thunder god warned Tiu Triet to remember this. He would return one day, then disappeared. In the imperial palace, Tiu Triet pressed the mark button. Finally, he obtained the mysterious immortal box. Last time it was from the demon clan. Hopefully this time he would get something of better quality. Blueprints for manufacturing 5th generation fighter jets. Maintenance of nuclear powered aircraft carriers. All scientific knowledge and difficult tasks. Tiu Triet saw some similarities to Hextech. Tiu Triet had no lack of spirit stones with the skybombing formation. The great kingdom would have defensive power. Finally, Tiu Triet obtained the reincarnation pill, allowing him to be reborn after death while retaining his cultivation base and memories. It seems Tiu Triet didn't give up halfway. Tiu Triet loaded an extremely high quality spirit stone into the gun barrel and tested its power. A single shot towards the mountain behind caused the entire mountain to explode. The destructive power of a nuclear warhead. No wonder the tribulations were merely like this. A system notification appeared. Register new mission. Demon suppression. Location. Great wilderness. Time limit. 30 years. Penalty. 5 thunder strikes. Due to the high registration level, guidance cannot be opened. Please find your own way. Yu Triet thought, there's still 30 years, no need to rush. I'll enjoy my time on the continent of vast wilderness. This is the land I built. Suddenly, he heard the melody of someone playing music from afar. It was Wu Yu. She was playing a melancholic tune. It seems she had something on her mind. Tiu Triet went to Wu Yu. She was sitting on a tree playing music. Tiu Triet gently asked about her state of mind. Seeing his majesty appear, Wu Yu jumped down and paid respects to Tiu Triet. Wu Yu acted so formally with Tiu Triet. It seems there was an issue among the demon cultivators. Wu Yu softly replied, No, it's just that there's a part of the melody I can't play properly. The tune is too difficult, I can't do it due to my innate flaws. Tiu Triet invited Wu Yu to go shopping, saying he would teach her the ways of the rivers and lakes. But Wu Yu declined Tiu Triet's offer. After all, Tiu Triet was now the king of a country. But Tiu Triet brushed it off, saying he was just an ordinary cultivator. On the bustling East Main Street, Tiu Triet happily ate and chatted with Wu Yu. Look at the lively scene here. Tiu Triet said, I like watching the bustling human realm like this. This is what it means to be among mortals. Isn't the current peace and prosperity all due to your majesty's brilliant governance? Tiu Triet also spoke of his simple joy, which was to have a beautiful consort ascend to immortality. Hearing Tiu Triet's simple joy, Wu Yu couldn't help but exclaim, Your majesty is truly innocent at heart. As they were about to enter, Kaga appeared, blocking their path. She detected a strange scent inside. It's best if Tiu Triet didn't rashly put himself in danger. But Tiu Triet didn't believe the strange scent Kaga mentioned. Of course, when Kaga was in the cultivation world, Tiu Triet wasn't even born yet, so how could he match her skills? Seeing guests, the owner came out to greet them. Two esteemed guests, what can I do for you? Tiu Triet confirmed there was cultivation aura here, but not high level. Cultivators like you in the east are a dime a dozen. Nothing to be concerned about. Wu Yu told the owner they needed high quality spirit herbs and spirit wood. She asked the owner to pick out the best quality items. The owner happily agreed to Wu Yu's request. Wu Yu went inside. Tiu Triet couldn't just let her go alone. Moreover, given Tiu Triet's current strength, he could handle any trouble that might arise. K Ga said personal safety should be the top priority. The owner introduced that these were all high quality materials. He could try them out. Tiu Triet and Wu Yu didn't hesitate to inspect the items in the shop. Seeing them trying out the items, the owner thought, their temperaments are so natural, embodying the boundless Tao. It's a pity my own temperament is completely contradictory. If they could awaken and take a step into the great vehicle, that would be good. After trying everything, Tiu Triet placed two gold ingots on the table to pay the owner then took the instruments and left. Not forgetting to leave a compliment, the instruments are not bad, thank you. Just as they stepped out, 
Tiu Triet was startled by the scene before him. Wasn't this supposed to be the bustling East Main Street? When did it turn into a volcanic crater? Looking back, the instrument shop owner was actually the Bai Palace's Yang Jian supervisor from the Gen Wu Immortal Dynasty, who had specially come today to take Tiu Triet's life. Tiu Triet and Wu Yu turned back and scolded him as a scoundrel. This was the infinite ice and fire peak. The moment Tiu Triet and Wu Yu entered the shop, they had entered the peak. At this moment, no one could sense their presence, nor could anyone come to their rescue. They were surely doomed. The old man ordered the ice blocks to attack them. Tiu Triet stood in front, shielding Wu Yu. Although wearing immortal armor, even at the peak of tribulation, he still had to endure the force. The shockwaves alone could shatter Tiu Triet's internal organs. Tiu Triet knew he couldn't defeat the old man, so he could only use this foolish method of a swift battle and swift victory. Tiu Triet took out the newly made gun and fired straight at the old man, causing a terrifying, powerful explosion. The old man underestimated Tiu Triet, never expecting Tiu Triet to be able to destroy his own body. But the old man affirmed that Tiu Triet could never leave the infinite ice and fire peak. Tiu Triet would die here. Tiu Triet was severely injured. Wu Yu worriedly supported Tiu Triet's body and asked after him. Your Majesty, how are you? Your Majesty, Tiu Triet, Tiu Triet, don't scare me. Tiu Triet kept coughing, seeming unwell. Tiu Triet was hit by too much cold energy, they had to quickly reach the center of the volcano. Tiu Triet's body now felt icy cold all over, seeming unwell. Tiu Triet was hit by too much cold energy, they had to quickly reach the center of the volcano. Tiu Triet's body now felt icy cold all over. Wu Yu carried Tiu Triet and ran to the center of the volcanic peak. Wu Yu felt extremely hot all over. Yet Tiu Triet kept shivering from the cold while clinging to her. For some reason, Tiu Triet was still feeling cold even inside the volcano. Wu Yu didn't know how to save Tiu Triet. Wu Yu's hands touched Tiu Triet's cheeks, allowing him to feel her warmth. Tiu Triet felt comforted by the touch of Wu Yu's skin. Tiu Triet ended up in this situation while helping her buy instruments. Now that Tiu Triet needed her like this, how could she not save him from death? Without hesitation, Wu Yu took off her clothes and pressed her burning body tightly against Tiu Triet's. At Evil Dragon Valley, he enlarged the Bagua vase, then the arrogant five elemental dragons turned into a giant dragon that entered the vase. Although he couldn't kill Tiu Triet, his great vehicle realm was equivalent to a continental immortal. His true chi and dragon chi were on par with immortals. That fake immortal Tiu Triet was nothing but a useless person before them. This time, Tiu Triet was doomed for sure. On the other side, Tiu Triet had finally made it through. He had to properly thank Wu Yu, but when he woke up, she was nowhere to be seen. Tiu Triet found this place to be quite special, a nice place to live. As he was admiring the scenery, Wu Yu suddenly came running over, screaming in panic. Not good. Run quickly. There's a dragon. A huge dragon. The giant dragon appeared and breathed fire at Tiu Triet and Wu Yu. Tiu Triet didn't understand what was happening. Wu Yu explained to him, This morning I went to check out the roads, and ran into this dragon. It won't listen to reason at all. It kept demanding to kill Wu Yu. The dragon breathed fire while roaring. Humans deserve to die, deserve to die. Tiu Triet realized this dragon knew both ice and fire. In this infinite ice and fire realm, it was like a tiger with wings added. They were basically no match for it. Wu Yu lay in Tiu Triet's arms, contentedly saying, To die in your majesty's embrace is my blessing. But Tiu Triet felt the opposite. He was afraid, he didn't want to die. The ring on Tiu Triet's neck glowed, it was the dragon god's blessing. Seizing this chance, Tiu Triet took Wu Yu away, temporarily avoiding this crisis. Seeing the appearance of the dragon god's blessing, that red dragon seemed to recall something. Its mind became chaotic. Seeing Tiu Triet fleeing, it gave chase. Humans deserve to die. Come out to me. Tiu Triet brought Wu Yu into a small cave in the cliff. The dragon was too big to enter and got its head stuck at the entrance. Tiu Triet taunted it. If you dare, come in here. Wu Yu stood behind, covering her mouth as she giggled at this ridiculous yet funny situation. Tiu Triet touched the ground, logged in, and took out a bed. Wu Yu exclaimed in surprise. Wow, what kind of household item is this? I've never seen anything like it before. Tiu Triet introduced that they were from his homeland. Then Tiu Triet climbed onto the bed. He opened the blanket and called her, Wu Yu, come here quickly. It's warm here. Wu Yu felt shy before Tiu Triet's strong physique and said shyly, your majesty bears the heavy responsibility of leading the uprising. 
Don't be licentious and unrighteous, and don't let a woman cause you to neglect the territories and customs. Tiu Triet replied without hesitation, The territories are beautiful, but not as beautiful as you. Customs are important, but not as important as your image in my heart. Tiu Triet thought to himself, For this type of cultured lady, he must speak sweet words. He continued, I only want to hold your hand, grow old together with you until our hair turns white. Finally, Tiu Triet asked Wu Yu if she agreed to be his wife. Wu Yu lay beneath him, her cheeks flushed red, and softly replied, I agree. Tiu Triet gently placed a passionate kiss on Wu Yu's lips. The dragon stuck its head in the cave entrance, watching the lewd scenes between the two of them, and cursed Tiu Triet as a vile man. In response, Tiu Triet threw his clothes straight at its face to cover its eyes. That should be reasonable. Tiu Triet and Wu Yu had been missing for 29 years. Feng Wu in the royal palace still hadn't found any news of Tiu Triet. It was as if Tiu Triet had vanished from the mortal world. Even after searching the entire continent, he couldn't be found. Ling Shen was saddened that Tiu Triet left without a word just as he had appeared without a word in the beginning. Seeing everyone's sadness, a Hu spoke up to console them, don't be too sad, who knows, he might be drinking somewhere right now. It's not like he took Wu Yu with him, right? Maybe their child has already reached the golden core stage. Hearing this, all the women angrily scolded a Hu. Shut your mouth. Kai Thien Luan reported to Feng Wu about the situation of the TSA family alliance with the Xi'an Ha sect, the Tian Zan sect, and the demon race, defeating their troops that went to fight the rebels at Tian Hai Pass. They also said they wanted to kill all the way to Zhu Xi'an city and capture the demon queen alive. Although Tiu Triet is not here, the majesty of the great kingdom must not be disrespected. Feng Wu gave Kai Thien Luan a dragon talisman, ordering him to personally lead 100,000 troops to suppress the rebellion and kill them all. On the third day after being trapped in the volcano, after the evil dragon left, Tiu Triet and Wu Yu seized the chance to find a way out. But after flying for so long, Tiu Triet still couldn't see any borders. Fearing this volcano was basically without an exit, this might even rival the Buddha's palm in size. Tiu Triet stopped, realizing this was an independent space, with distance and time different from the outside world. No matter how far they flew, they couldn't escape. Wu Yu worried, unsure how they would get out. Water and fire are mutually exclusive, but can be combined into one. Unless the mind is unified, the fisheye is the key. When they entered here, they appeared at the foot of a snowy mountain. The fisheye of the snowy mountain was probably the entrance, but if Tiu Triet's guess was correct, then the mouth of this volcano is the exit. Tiu Triet turned to ask Wu Yu, dare to take a gamble? Wu Yu completely trusted her Tiu Triet. At the evil dragon valley, the man Gong Yangshin was laughing gleefully, thinking that Tiu Triet had probably become a hungry ghost in the golden dragon's belly. The petty thief who made the east fall, it's still me after all. As he was laughing triumphantly, Tiu Triet and Wu Yu suddenly appeared, startling him. Even this couldn't kill Tiu Triet. It seems he can only kill Tiu Triet himself. At this moment, a system warning notification appeared. Warning. Warning. The mission deadline has passed. The five thunders are coming. Host please be careful. Tiu Triet didn't expect that while they were in the volcano for three days. Thirty years had passed in the outside world. This is insane. Gong Yangshin noticed something strange. Because in this evil dragon valley, only he had reached the tribulation realm, but he had clearly hidden his aura. So why did it still attract the tribulation lightning here? How bizarre. Tiu Triet was struck by a bolt of lightning, sending him flying. The lightning is too strong. Just one bolt has already taken half of Tiu Triet's life. It felt like his soul was about to be shattered. Gong Yangshin realized it was the brat Tiu Triet being struck by lightning, not his own tribulation. Tiu Triet said they need to avoid the twin lightning bolts first, then immediately carried Wu Yu and hid back inside the volcano. This situation doesn't seem good. The man Gong Yangshin stood outside shouting angrily, Come out, you can't go in there. This volcano is my life's work, it took me half my life to create it. You can't treat me like this. Lightning struck into the volcano causing it to crack apart piece by piece. Gong Yangshin was pained to see his treasure being destroyed. The volcano split in two, and Tiu Triet, Wu Yu, and the evil dragon all crawled out. Finally, that dragon found Tiu Triet. Seeing the lightning about to strike, Tiu Triet jumped straight into the dragon's mouth. Seeing Tiu Triet offering himself as food, what was his intention? The lightning struck the evil dragon directly, making it realize there was nothing good coming. This tribulation was too bizarre. Even when it underwent its own tribulation, 
the power was not half as strong as this. The final tribulation bolt was about to strike down. If Tiu Triet was hit this time, even if he didn't die, he would be severely injured. At that point, Gong Yangshin could just raise his hand to kill him. Tiu Triet couldn't just sit and wait for death. He had to save himself. Tiu Triet cut down some bamboo nearby to make a kite frame, then took off his clothes to complete the kite. Then he flew it into the sky, tying the kite string to a tree trunk nearby. According to Tiu Triet's thinking, as long as he could lure the lightning to strike down, with the ground as a buffer, the lightning's impact would be reduced. After that, Tiu Triet hid behind the tree trunk. Gong Yangshin grabbed the kite, wondering if Tiu Triet was hiding some secret he didn't want others to see inside. As he was pondering, a lightning bolt struck straight at the kite that Gong Yangshin was holding. Tiu Triet succeeded. Gong Yangshin, struck by lightning, cursed Tiu Triet, you're not human. 